Hello, Hello, everybody, and welcome. We are live. We're here. We are ready for some action. And a solid game that's coming up now. Quest facing off against Tundra. Trent, how you doing? I'm doing great. We're here. That's right. <laughs> it's uh, it's day two. Uh, and uh, I don't know. Expected results yesterday. A little bit of this. A little bit of that. Definitely some big surprises. Some uh, perhaps unfortunate surprises. Some okay. some really exciting upsets. Uh, in particular in this group, if I'm going to be real. This is uh, this is definitely the group here where we're starting out with Quest versus Tundra. They are playing in Group D, and it's Keith Stars who are starting to make a mess of things here. Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, they have been owning. And the other thing that's crazy about their run so far is that if you look at the teams that they've played against, Tundra, uh, you know, is obviously one of the, the big bad boys in the group and the one that you'd be looking out for. They've already gone 1-1 against them. Uh, they played against Quest. They went 1-1 against Quest. So teams less to play for Keed Stars are Talon, who have not won a game. Um, and then uh, I think, well, what's the other one? TSM. Uh, so there's a chance that that team that, I, I don't think I saw a single person put them in there, like in this group, at least outside of the top. You might have a couple of like SA particular uh, focus people that would have had it a little bit higher, but they were sort of universally thought of as not going to be putting up as much of a response as you would have thought. And they have completely blown people out of the water. Love to see it. Yeah, crazy. Uh, I mean, you can't really expect it, honestly. It's like, you know, like, sure, they have some experience and stuff, some pretty well-known names on there, but you're you're coming into TI, you, you know? it's uh, That can kind of go both ways, though, of course, right? It doesn't matter how much experience you have. There's always the opportunity for uh, for the choke at TI. Oh, yeah. The pressure is on, especially in this newfangled group stage that we're doing where these two the days are incredibly important. That's in right. In the road to TI. That's right. Exactly. We're on the road. On the road. And speaking of the road, we're going to head right on in and look at that road ahead for today. It is going to be the schedule. Uh, that we're looking at a shorter one. Yesterday was absolute insanity. Uh, today we've got Tundra versus Quest and then Entity facing off against SMG. Last up, Gaming Gladiators versus Beast Coast. Or is it last up, Trent? There's a chance mm. there might be some tiebreakers that happen afterwards. Yeah, we get ourselves four groups and uh, the potential for a heck of a lot of tiebreakers there, just in case. Uh, only one team going home, but then, of course, there, there's still important things outside of elimination. That upper bracket versus lower bracket. Uh, I'd, I'd rather be on top of my group. That, that seems to be a, a good idea. I want to choose who, I, who I'd like. And, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to be fighting for here in the rest of this uh, group stage of the road to TI. Let's take a look at what that group stage situation is right now as we do have the standings after day one coming into this day number two. And as we said, in group C, where we're currently uh, looking, nope, not sorry. No, we're stream C. We're not, not group C. We're group D. Uh, it's Tundra sitting on top with TSM Quest. You'd say Keed Stars and then Talon bringing up the rear. And right now, a very important matchup for Quest because of their 1-1 series earlier. Uh, against Keed Stars, uh, they've got more that are coming up soon. Things could rapidly fall apart, depending upon how this goes. Uh, you're at a situation where if they can get one game off of Tundra, Quest is one of those teams that you might be looking at as being able to make it up into that upper bracket. Otherwise, TSM might take that spot. A lot on the line. Yeah, TSM, of course, just having a little bit of a, uh, a last-minute glow up there. Oh, at yeah. Dream League, but some of our NA teams doing surprisingly well there. I believe TSM were also missing uh, Moonmander for a lot of that too, they were saying. So they were, they were kind of like trying out some new ideas and really working well together and sort of having this different dynamic in the team where he, I don't think he was in the room for a lot of them, uh, where they had to like work a little bit more by themselves. So I don't know if that gave them some more confidence, but they performed well there. They're performing well here now in this group stage. So uh, it would be a pretty big surprise, I would say, for them to grab that. Of course, you know, that 0-4 talent is what's making all this room as well. And, oh, yeah. and we're expecting them to fire back here today. We'll see if they can pull things together. One bad day and you're in a bit of a hole needing to drag yourself out of it. Should also mention while we're taking a look at these standings, uh, a couple of other surprises around the area. Group B thought of as the group of death. Right now, it's kind of what some people would have expected. But C is also a pretty interesting one. Gaming Gladiators dropping a lot of games, and some of those games to teams people weren't expecting. Nouns going in two and four uh, at the start of this day. There's a chance that they might make it through, and Virtus Pro would instead be the ones that get dropped down that group. But we do have a draft. So let's oh. get ready. Enough talking about the grand picture, and let's just hop right into the game as it currently stands. Quest PSG 
uh, facing off against Tundra Esports. I should have done mm-hmm. Esports Tundra after Quest PSG, so that way I sort of kept that uh, verbal trickery of saying the name backwards, Trent. I Quest and Tundra Esports. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Amazing. I-, I noticed that uh, you guys can't see it because you'll have the draft showing up here on, on, the, on the lower third here, but... Uh, we have the Tundra banner that we can see in the game here. And they have TI-11 champions Ooh. written on their banner. I mean, true. They should write in like really small font, you know, and, and 9 and 10. Yeah, okay. Sorry, and 8 and 9, right? Because they got Thompson. That's, you know. I like that. Kind of fair. Yeah. You know? a, lot of, a lot of Aegises upon this roster right now here. But uh, no Phoenix. Again, a hero that I haven't caught a Phoenix game yet. No. Uh, I've seen a ton of bands, though. I, I think in this era of having like crazy big beefy burly heroes all over the place, Phoenix feels just very strong, right? Imagine all those yep. games that we saw yesterday where like Kunkka's just sitting there with a heart and a blade mail not dying, and then you have a Phoenix on top of that. Like it just sounds horrific to play against. Um, yeah, it's uh, it just makes sense too because like sure there's other percent based damage although we have been losing a lot of them over the years in Dota they they've been whittled down a little bit here but who has percent damage and healing I mean that's just crazy right, right. Phoenix you know, you got BP heroes on your team BP heroes on their team so take advantage of it both ways don't want to see that one come out it's also like the signature Kaori hero of course I was a little surprised to see it banned so often versus other teams this is kind of more uh, more where I would have been expecting it well they are not going to let them have it. Um, and in the meantime, a lot of interesting bands. So you're looking at the quest bands right now. A lot of the heroes that Tundra have been having a ton of success with, but with uh, the Nature's Prophet band out, with the Brewmaster band out, that leaves open the potential to take the Spirit Breaker in the early phase, which a lot of other teams have been first phasing, uh, banning against Tundra. And Tundra don't ever want to give up this hero if the chance comes around to them. So a scary situation, um, giving that Spirit Breaker over to them. We've seen what Snake King can do with it. Yeah, this is uh, something that often happens during the the group stage at TI2 is after the first day, you know, everyone settles down. There's so many games happening at once. You can't really keep track of them all. Some teams will have like maybe an analyst watching some games and maybe even a coach watching the other ones. Sometimes multiple staff members are just like keeping track of things and just bringing things to the coaches and the analysts trying to keep an eye on all that that's happening at once because total chaos. And so when you finally get a chance to sit down after the end of the day uh, and look at all these games, we're going to see who they've distilled to be the most powerful heroes and perhaps some overlooked heroes. Right. As this Naga Siren will be come back again. We've already been privy to a couple of games of Naga Siren. I, I wouldn't say she's looked fantastic in hours. We did see a win from her earlier. Right. We also saw a loss, but she definitely looks weaker than her previous state. Well, and it's interesting. It looks like, again, back through the games that Quest have played, uh, this has been kind of a perennial thing. First phasing the Naga Siren. Uh, just wanting to get that right away for TA2000 to set them up for it. Um, they did this yesterday against TSM and lost with it. Uh, they also paired it together with a Hoodwink. And TSM, they had Spirit Breaker in the first phase. So it was the exact same draft. But then they picked up a Dark Seer. We'll see if a similar thing happens here. I actually think a Dark Seer would be amazing here for Tundra. Um, 33, one of the best players in the world on it, and you already have the Spirit Breaker pairing. Yeah, surely that's getting banned, right? I feel like Quest aren't going to let that happen again. Like maybe if they hadn't lost to it yesterday, it sneaks through, but I can't imagine they allow it here again. Unless they're like really prepared for it and they're going to try. I mean, they actually tried the Oracle counter pick anyway, and it didn't work out. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, to try and remove the Iron Shell during the laning stage, if you guys aren't Darkseer players, um, they're going to leave it in. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm looking at the wrong band here. Okay, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if quests are going to leave it in here as the Disruptor is removed by Tundra, certainly a hero that uh, bothers Spirit Breaker. Both Shadow Demon and Disruptor are pretty solid supports versus the Spirit Breaker, so that could signal something about this being moved into a core role for 3-3, but also they pair extremely well with Naga Siren. So it's a little bit of both there doesn't necessarily mean that they're pivoting towards like core spear breaker this can easily just still be support they steal it i think that's the only way that i feel good about this um because the the, the other thing about the bands of uh shadow demon disruptor is that the big way you deal with the oracle as a dark seer in lane is you just pull waves those are two heroes that stop you from being able to pull waves uh, yeah, that's true so i i think quest I mean, maybe Tundra don't want to take the Darkseer, but 
I this is scary to me. I'm wondering if we might get a primal beast here too. Seeing some of these bands. It's you know, looking kinda nice, right? Yeah. No, no uh no Phoenix. No Pango. Pango's pretty annoying too. Like bouncing around. Taking some of your mana. I guess you can also grab Pango, which is kinda funny, but no Shadow Demon's obviously the, the big one and the disruptor's also pretty frustrating. So a hero that they've used before in the past as well from Quest. Dude, if they if they primal Dark Seer, I <laughs> I'm ready to call it. I don't know. Go next. <laughs> like they, they go primal mid for Tundra. Oh, that's pretty nasty, actually. Like, why not? I mean, maybe the problem is that you didn't have three melee heroes into like a Naga Siren, but whatever. Tundra I think a too be beefy and strong deal with it. They go Doom. Oh, snap. That's cool, too. Doom. What are they seeing in the Doom that makes them want to Doom right now? That's kind of interesting. I, I wouldn't look at this as a doom game. Like straight up, I wouldn't be like, "Oh, I see the doom counters this." Like it feels like we've moved into like ah, doom counters healing now, uh, or, or or like satanic lifesteal heroes. Right. I think, I mean, to me at least, this this is interesting uh, for just like we're gonna out greed you. Maybe that's the idea. Like Snake King's gonna spam out waves constantly, and then Doom's just gonna be there getting a Midas and just gobbling up all the creeps. But that feels weird then with CM. Hmm. That's just the owie. That's he's just he's like yeah yeah we we gotta pick it. It's it's Crystal Vaden. Like, every time I look at Owie, what he's doing at pubs, it's just Crystal Vaden. Like mm. Crystal Vaden drums, Crystal Vaden drums. It doesn't matter what patch it is. He's busting her out. Uh, she's notoriously good versus uh, Naga Sirens with the attack speed slow on the, the Crystal Nova. It's always going to be good versus Naga, so that's pretty cool. Clearing Illusions. She has a ton of armor, so she can do some some wild tanky plays. And then Doom definitely likes the mana. Spirit Breaker as well. It doesn't hurt, necessarily. Just not giving out too much info. But yeah, this Doom definitely not selling me still. All right. No healing will occur in this game at all. Nope. Not allowed. Interesting. Yeah, I guess. So now seeing Ancient Apparition Hoodwink, it's making me even more want that primal that you were talking about um, or the Darkseer again. But I don't think that we're going to be seeing that now unless there's some really weird shenanigans going up with the tops and doom or something. But I'm sure this is just 33 playing it. Uh, the A getting taken, it's like you kind of have set up and fight a little bit with Hoodwink. It's sort of two assassins in a way. Hoodwink and AA kind of fulfilling that same role. So they need somebody that isn't really Tidehunter, a different hero is their last pick that's going to set them up for like pick off kills when Naga's AFK farming. They have giant setup. I mean, they have Song, they have uh, Into the Ravage afterwards, like follow up Bushwhack. They're going to have, whenever I see Tide now, I have to immediately think of the Shard. Uh, it looks kind of okay right. here, right? Getting, getting a leash down, try and lock down um spear break or something but it's it's not as effective as other heroes uh when you think about uh, how solid leash is like am i am i that worried about wasting that on a spear breaker not really hey where where's owie by the way am i am i missing him in these camera shots he might be behind that monitor <laughs> okay maybe are you running for the spin so more beat down more greed in farming I think if nothing else, I'm seeing just a lot of greed from Tundra where, I mean, we know how Snake King plays with the Spirit seconds, Breaker. Man. He might do something different this time, but you've got Doom, you've got Sven. It really seconds, only is the Spirit Breaker to run around and make things happen in this game right now. That's got to be one of the worst feelings, too. When you're playing Spirit Breaker where no one wants to do anything. Yeah, you, you definitely... I mean, they have Thompson mid, though, right? So yeah. he's notorious sure. for being someone who wants to be super active. And uh, that, that'll that definitely be the goal. It's something that can play a lot with this Spirit Breaker. Uh, he, he's obviously also known for going a little bit out there. So I'm curious if he's got anything in the tank. I see he's played a little bit of uh, Clinks. He's, he's busted that one out so far. That's, that's pretty sweet. I don't know if he had the... Uh, was he playing the Earth Spirit as well? I think that's still in, right? I mean, and this is a testament to it. They ban out the Grimstroke, right? Like, these weird heroes that you don't oh, always yeah. think about, but it could have been pretty cool. It could have been Thompson mid Spirit Breaker, right? Or Grimstroke mid. He's played that before, yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, true. Yeah. You could, you could do it either way, and that's also just pretty solid. It's funny because Nine and Thompson are, are very similar in that regard, right? Like, yeah. they, they both... 
I'm sure they probably share a lot of ideas too now at this point as to how I try and like build up these uh, like non-meta mid heroes. Well, time will tell. Okay, just ban the Darkseer though. Seriously. You think so? Like just like what? What if? Like what if they just pick Darkseer and then it's like support Doom and then like mid Spirit Breaker and and you're just sad. I don't know. I, it is like I see Sven, I see Spirit Breaker, I see wanting auras versus this quest lineup. I don't know. They go Pugna instead. We we've all been waiting for the tops and Pugna since it got buffed, the TI8 classic. If you did go Darkseer, you could go like Echo Saber Agonims, and that would melt AA and Hoodwink. They they would be very very sad. Um, but I feel like that maybe is a little bit two out of left field. I mean, I I actually I, I still like it honestly, but I don't know if they're gonna do it. It is really funny that uh, Dazzle, Grimstroke, and Pugna bands are all targeting their mid. Yeah, right. <laughs> Damn you, Thompson. I, the only thing I don't want to see is Zeus. As much as I love a good Tops and Zeus, I think that that is too slow for this game. No! As, dude, I, the second you said <laughs> no! it, the second you said it, I was like, that's that's it. That's a guarantee. No! Like, that's, that's, okay, but no, you said that, and I was like, but how do they get on the Zeus? Like, you kind of made a, uh, no. a bit of a, a good point, because, like, I'm looking at this Hoogan AA. Before they picked the Sven, I was thinking, like, you could get kind of nasty with a Spectre, but then you're in a bit of an awkward Spectre versus Naga game. Uh, but Zeus provides a similar thing there with the ulti, right? Scanning out this Hoodwing AA, it's providing vision for the Spirit Breaker, so he can set up the, a good fight. Like, their moves out of smoke are disgusting. Like, you're smoked up, your smoke pops, Zeus ults, Spirit Breaker charges one side, Sven ults and jumps the other. And yeah. if the BKBs are up, there's no counter-initiation from Tidehunter. That's a pretty scary thought. I, I love that idea. I think it's a great pick to win the game. <laughs> I think we are going to see no rush 20 minutes. And that's why I didn't want to see the Zeus. <laughs> I think I think they are going to be AFK farming for a while, um, which is fine because we have five streams going on simultaneously, everybody. So, uh, so, so. <laughs> <laughs> you want to just come back in a little bit? It's going to be a great time. <laughs> just kidding. I promise. Stay here. It's going to be good. We're going to we're going to love it. Let's see what uh, quests end up taking. You really sold it there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, can they storm? Ooh. Shaker. Now select your heroes. Okay. All right. I assume that is indeed for the the mid here. Don't tease me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Interesting. Pretty beefy. Um, no other surprises here, other than nine. I guess is playing the Spear Breaker and, and Snaking's playing the, the Call. I guess that's not that surprising. Uh, that's pretty much the setup you want once the CM's out. You could definitely try the position for Crystal Maiden and be a little bit more aggressive and spammy and stuff. But uh, we, we want to secure Sven a good lane. You're not going to be able to pressure a Naga Siren that hard anyway. Yeah. Oh, I'm with you. Um, I want to see how well they're able to uh, uh, kind of put pressure on the map if that's something that they're even interested in doing but i think probably the most pressure that's going to be put on the map is toby getting a meteor hammer right like yeah pretty much i i, I don't really see a way that anybody else does much of anything in this early stage game but maybe i'm wrong about that quests have been known to do some crazy stuff hoodwink Omar might be the, the X factor in that regard, running around with bushwhacks and trying to set up kills. And uh, what does Thompson do this game? Does he, I mean, it's versus a Naga Siren, so are we, are Dude, we zip zappy? Are we he manta might, styling? He might. Mjolnir Manta? Zip zap. I, the true lightning. I, have you played that build much at no. all? I, I've watched it quite a bit, though. I, I have played a couple of games and it's very fun. I cannot speak to how good it is almost at all. Uh, you would obviously be better about that with watching a bunch of people doing it, but uh, who know what they're doing, those ones? What when when I play it, I have fun. And I think that's a good place for Topson to be at. You know, have I, I don't think I've actually seen Mule near it though. You you just want double lightning? Do double you lightning. go beyond? <laughs> exactly. Well it's triple actually, okay. because if you put the static shell <laughs> okay, on the belt, yeah. it's all the lightning. All right, you've thought through this. This is good. Well, it's uh, ready. 
Uh, I'll tell you, one hero who I am constantly checking on in top tier pops is Hoodwick. I like playing Hoodwick. I think she's really fun. I think she's one of the, my favorite heroes I've been at in the past few years. Right. Uh, she's not that great. Um, there's some players that try and make her work. They, they just keep attempting it. Crit's definitely one of them. And uh, Omar is busting out here. I, I think the hero is viable, but I feel like she's just worse at a lot of things. And her more recent buffs haven't felt that incredible. Like she's got another buff now on the scurry. So you get this like higher level one buff. So it's, it is a little bit better because you like to keep it level one anyway. Uh, you get more cast, you get more attack range, but it's, uh, you know, you just got to hit your spells to feel solid in this hero. And the break this game, it's, it's a little... Um, no, I, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, it doesn't feel great. I was looking up real quickly while you were talking uh, at the, the pick rate and everything else. Four picks so far on Hoodwink, 15% win rate. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, quests are three, all four of the picks. They're the only team to have picked Hoodwink, and they have done it every game that they've played at TI so far. Okay. All right, Omar. I mean, he's 50-50. He's, he's just running it. Yep. Fair enough. He's a believer. A player who gets the longest win streak. I'm gonna go. Make to... those skitter. Wait a minute. Stun. We'll get out of there, buddy. Uh, player with highest net worth by 10 minutes. Oh, it's gotta be Doom. Surely. Uh, number of ancient can't stack by 30. I'm gonna say 21 plus. I think you're, this is... you're insane. <laughs> I think this is gonna be a stacking game. Uh, and player with the most rush kills. Probably Tundra. Thirty seconds to battle. Pretty fair. You don't think twenty-one plus? I think that's pretty ambitious. I think that that is how you win this game, and both teams are just going to try and farm as much as possible, and that's what so much of this game is going to come down to. That that could happen. Maybe. But probably not. Okay. Either way, we're invading. Run, 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 run. in, trying to get a bounty rune. Oh, Ooh, okay. They still get two of them apiece. Off to a good start. As looks like Kaori down bottom was able to sneak away and get the uh, D ward. And actually, this is really interesting. Quests are already blocking out multiple camps to make sure that there isn't a creep for Doom to eat. Uh, yeah, Hero has fallen off a little bit. I mean, he plummeted to one of the worst win rates. He it, Actually, across like top tier pups, he was the worst win rate by a lot. He dipped into the 30s for a hot second there. Jeez. Uh, and then right after the changes, and then he built himself back up as people started to learn how to play the hero a little bit more. But one thing that stays the same versus these Dooms, Enchantresses, and Chens is controlling those creep camps are always going to be so important. Right. They uh, it's a little bit rough, too, being a Spearbreaker, I think, in this setup, because you're not going to get so much help from the Doom. I mean, sure, Doom is good in isolation, so you get to leave the hero, and you can rotate to other lanes, but it's going to be hard for you to actually bully Kaori if he ever stays too far away from the Doom. Right. Yeah, he uh, he's not going to be able to do much of anything uh, on that Spearbreaker to keep A from just tucking those snowballs at him constantly, uh, which is pretty annoying to deal with. Um... On the top lane, we haven't really uh, looked at that one that, all that much yet. Skitter's already taken a good amount of harassment up top. Uh, snaking, trying to stay with him, bought a bunch of tangos. And not a whole heck of a lot of region on the other side. As we do have a disconnect, should be back underway in just a moment. This is definitely the kind of lane that Hoodwink likes to play in, though. Uh, you, you have an aggressive partner there who has a slow and has quite a bit of damage. It's also someone who plays in the lane the whole time, which I think is really important when you have Hoodwink, because like, you don't want to be really obvious whenever you're you're coming in for the play on the Hoodwink. And so if you're playing with certain position threes, it's like really obvious where they're going to go make an aggro play, right? But but Ty just sits in the wave, and at any second, he might turn with a gush. And so he's just waiting for that moment where, you know, maybe you're close to a tree or something, or you're not going to be able to get out into a, a kind of position where the bushwhack doesn't come in immediately after, make it nice and easy. But uh, they're already starting to cut through those trees there as well. And I'm sure he'll be sitting there ready to spam his Quelling Blade if he attempts to go for a uh, acorn shot into Bushwhack later. Definitely. 
I also like in this top lane too that Snake King already has four tangos in his inventory and he's bringing out another set already. Just they are putting as much emphasis as they can on trying to keep Skitter alive, but Skitter, he is not going to oblige. He's going to go down. Toby draws first blood. Ah, uh, no war cry yet there, Mr. Strength Hero. So Blightstone, Gush, some right clicks. A lot of minus armor early. Getting away from the tower as well, of course, too. Making that nice and easy. So certainly gonna need a lot of that. Oh my goodness, three, three. His his PC is doomed. Hello? There's something wrong with it. Sir? What's going on there? He looks he's not moving. That camera's not frozen. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe he's frozen. Uh, it looks like he's, you know, working some stuff out. It could be like a sound issue or something every now and then. That's been a bit of an issue. Uh, or he's yelling at Skitter, uh, one or the other. Possibility. I just don't see how you die in that lane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Immediately, Snaking passes over some more tangos. He's like, dude, just just don't die. That's, I, I, I love... Wait. I can see... Oh. Oh, have you seen okay. this bug? Uh, I had a while ago. I haven't seen it recently. Oh, I didn't no. even know it was still a thing. Cheater. <laughs> <laughs> check his uh, check, check him PC. Check. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That that is that is going to be a problem. It's because he reconnect. Isn't it because did he disconnect last time? He did, right? He disconnected a second ago. Yeah, so I think, if I'm not crazy, after these illusions die, isn't it fine? Or maybe he waited for that and saw that they respawned and he could see them again. Yeah, because I think that's how it happens, just right? Summoned. Yeah. Or these summoned 12 seconds ago. When was the pause? I'm not, uh, I don't know. It was, it was quite a while ago. I think that's how this bug happens, right? It has something to do with when you disconnect and you come back into the game. You, you're almost treated like an observer, and then you can see the real Naga. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's what causes it. Um, yeah. I, well, let's. So. All right. You want to you want to hit up the admins? You want to let them know? That I thought you were going to say, do you want to type into the. Yeah, I thought you were about to try and go to me into chatting. No, no. I I'm just like tell three, three, how it works. No, 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 three no. knows. OK, you can, you can tell. <laughs> we ready. You can tell the admins. Let them know. Is it we ready? Is it fixed? I'm sure they're working on it. They, they know things. They have Howie. Howie knows every interaction. That's true, but he's not in the room. Trent, you got to let him know. Come on. Tell him. Tell him what's going on. Trent, fix it. Come on, Trent. Trent. Fix TI. Come on, Trent. Let's go. Look, I don't know if it works. I'm sure they know more than I do. They they probably know that... Like He probably waited till he resummoned and could still tell and just said it. Okay. Uh, th this is way too broken to play the real game. Yeah, they're looking into it. Uh, obviously, we cannot continue the game where Doom can see the real Naga Siren. That would be <laughs> that insane. Would be that so would be like gnarly. that would be the best hero for this to happen on, yeah. short of like Storm Spirit, maybe. Like, well, I mean, even Storm. What, how, what do you mean Storm Spirit? Well, because you can zip the right one every single time. It's kind of the same oh, idea. I see. Like I, thought, I thought you meant that you could see the real Storm. Oh no, Spirit. no, no, no. like <laughs> Storm Mantis. The hell. All right. Um, it's only him. He just okay. So he just can't <laughs> say anything. <laughs> That's the fix. Uh, yeah, just just leave the game. Should be fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, so everybody, in case you are wondering what's going on, Doom can see the real Naga Siren. Uh, it's probably we need to check next illusions. They heard you, Trent. They heard you. Uh, so he can see which one is the real Naga Siren. If you've seen this bug before in your own games, what will happen is that there's like a really, really weird... Uh, this is the second round that I can see. Oh, no. There's like a weird like halo that surrounds the illusions, basically. And you can very clearly see which one is the real hero. It's happened to me when I've played against Terrorblade before. He said yeah. he already waited for the second cast. All right. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. Yeah. Hi, chat. Um, we're, we're not delayed, no. so well, what's going on? You guys, you guys having a good time here? Dude, you know, I just saw somebody in chat say something. What's that? What if Gem of True Sight gave you that vision of which one were the real illusions? Uh, maybe we could buff it. 
That, that, I mean, the Illusion Heroes are kind of catching some L's already. I don't know if we need to give them any more. Go play? Dude, that's... Dude, Giga Chad. <laughs> that's a psycho. <laughs> that's the most Giga Chad thing I've ever seen. I don't care. Go, go play. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Run at me. See which one's real. <laughs> that guy's a psycho. <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> just go. All right, here's the thing. There's no way that they're going to allow them to just go, but TA 2000's winning the mental battle. That's what's that, that right That is here. winning. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> uh, I love that. Well, fun. Um, how's your how's your morning going, Trent? Oh, pretty well. I had to uh, take a... I had to get up early, you know, get the kids out of the house. I'd take a nap. We we're up till 2 a.m. So I, know, I only caught but... a few hours of sleep. Then I'm all groggy getting the kids up. True. I send them off. I nap a little bit. Midday nap. And I wasn't have one of those. That was pretty hype. And now I'm here. That's great. I, uh, I yeah, woke, how about you? I woke up. I took a delivery of uh, a bunch of wood to my uh, garage, um, which is not a euphemism. Uh, I am building a <laughs> gate that goes down my driveway, which I'm pretty excited about. Oh, um, chat, you like that? You like that? <laughs> this guy builds gates. That's right. Huh? Well, you hear be- that? It builds gates. I do. Gatekeeper. I, I got... Uh, oh, I see. I see what you did there. God damn it. Be uh, So I took... I, I, I got 20 uh, fence slats that I'm going to use to 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 be as like the main gate thing. And then I have uh, two 4x4x10s four by four by that are going yeah, to yeah. be like the the frame of the gate. A four right, by right. four by twelve that's going to go across, but I have to cut with a miter saw down into an angle so that that way it can fit in between the four by four by tens. And pay then attention, I, there will be a quiz, folks. And then I have two four by four by eights that are going to be like the vertical posts that connect that whole gate together. Wow, this is like Baldur's Gate, dude. This thing's pretty intense. It is it's a thick gate. But here's the here's the bonus part. Don't tell anybody. Chat, be quiet about this. I ordered the wood, but I also took two four by four by eights when I ordered the wood back as fence posts, but they brought the extra ones in on the order. So oh, I got two shit. free four by four by eights. I'm living large, baby. Oh it's my all God. Coming up lyrical. That's a, that's abuse. That's bug abuse. It is. Oh my goodness. Much like free wood in this economy. I know. Dude, wood is wood is crazy. You guys know wood has gone like at one point, it was like 3x during the pandemic. That was insane. It was pretty nuts. I don't know yeah. what I'm going to do with it, though, because it's like free <laughs> to <Infinite> wood hack. <laughs> this guy's got lumber. He's got lumber hack. Carpenters hate him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, so that that's what I did this morning. And also, um, I had some leftover pie, and so I've been eating pumpkin pie. Uh, this so you got breakfast. free lumber and, yep. and pie. That's what I'm hearing. This is the American dream, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is Seattle TI, baby. Exactly. We're back. Dude, also, that, that Team Spirit song, do you, we haven't talked about that. Wasn't oh, that yeah. amazing? That was crazy, actually. I uh, I I want them to, and I put this on, on X, sorry, I almost said Twitter. Uh, I, I, I want them to come out with a line of merch that's like, flannel jerseys for like grunge ti grunge ti <laughs> you know what i mean All right, i mean it is pretty seattle yeah right it, it fits the theme that's where nirvana were from yeah good i would love to see that i would totally buy like a flannel jersey i think that it would also be like incredibly unique it would have like a smells like team spirit like have you know who was playing guitar at the time i don't no, know if you um, watch my Dota analysis on twitch.tv slash Trent. You earn mm. flannel points instead That's of channel plays. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Oh. Yeah. On twitch.tv slash lyrical Dota, we only have Twitch MMR. Uh, right. You can yeah. Get. Yeah. Yeah. On those streams. Yep. Yeah. We're not plugging it. Why are we paused? Okay. We're paused because there's a bug right now where Doom can see the real Naga Siren. He yes. is a hacking detective. He does not want to be, he wants to change his ways. And uh, that's why we're paused. So we're trying to figure that out and see if we need to do a remake. Absolutely. It's going to be great. Yep, Will we go. have... A... And you know, what's awesome is that there is the remake thing, whatever they did yesterday. You remember? That's that's very dangerous. All right. What do you mean it's dangerous? 
How is it dangerous? Very dangerous to reload games. Okay? Why? What? Because things it, happen. Things go wrong. Weird stuff happens. Dude, can I tell you Have about... Have you ever cast a game that's been reloaded? I had an ancient camp that was just spawned. They, it created a new ancient camp one time. <laughs> really? And we just... Awesome. Yes, and we had to play the rest of the game with a new ancient <laughs> camp that kept spawning ancients. Dude, that sounds so cool, though. I would love to see <laughs> that. It would, like, screw up one team's economy completely. One side yes, gets an extra ancient camp. <laughs> yes, that's what happened. Listen, the, the sides are already unequal anyways. Just, you know, lean into it. Why not? Oh, All right, disconnect. we're going to see if Skitter disconnecting fixes it. Um, I I remember casting a game one time, and it was just after Reborn dropped, so there wasn't the reload feature anymore. And as we were casting it, there was this crazy team fight that was happening. Uh, a Terra Blade starts, like, A, right-clicking into the battle, and, like, there's a puck on the enemy team and a bunch of other, like, squirrely invoker heroes or something. Right as the battle begins... Everybody in the game disconnects. All the observers stay in, and Terra Blade just kills the oh, entire that. team. Do you remember that? Yeah, game? yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Whatever, just loads back in. It's like, uh, yeah. Like, what the hell are we gonna do? Because it was like also a horrific position for the Terra Blade team to be in. But yeah, because <laughs> like the only way they win this fight is if they don't press any buttons, and then that's what happened. It was great. I think I think uh, they still lost though, if I recall. Yeah, thankfully. Yeah, it's true. Good times. Good times. Um, what's a? Oh, apparently we're going to be coming back to, to to camera on us. Um, are we just okay. going to have? We're just. Are, are we going to be going to a a break? Sorry, you guys get to hear the behind the scenes here and from production. Uh, if there's any updates at all that are going on while we uh, we wait for this game to get back good to go. Um, I'll give you guys this race car. That's Drive great. Along. It'd be like, like a little reload on the road to TI. It like, just keeps on going. Look at that. This is the road to TI. Well, how does that magic even happen? How does it come from the same side every time? Look at this. We may never know. Look at that. It's oh, cool. now, now we're talking. Yeah, I got some coolness. Oh, I thought it was a Beyblade. Now I'm just disappointed. I know. It should be a Beyblade, honestly. The other thing that I do have is some delicious delectable pie. Oh, sorry. That a chat. Oh, oh, is it that pumpkin like, pie? It's very aesthetically pleasing. Nice. Welcome, it looks more like squash pie than pumpkin pie, though. Welcome if I can be to real. the road to tea. Well, pumpkin is a squash, so yeah, but you right. know, you got pumpkin pie, you got squash pie. Um, you know, have you ever squashes? Have you ever had sweet potato pie? No, oh, buddy, that is that's a good one right there. <laughs> oh, buddy, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, a sweet potato pie is beautiful. Uh, the other one, my brother used to make this, uh, is a pumpkin pecan pie. And then you, oh, yeah. along, the, good. along the bottom of it, you do like a layer of chocolate. So you, you make your pie crust and then like you do a layer of like nice ganache along the mm -hmm. bottom. Ooh, it's, it's, it's diabetically good. Um, very yummy. But yeah. How's Tell viewers chat? to buy Battle Pass. Okay, chat. Uh, game Newell, no. apparently, in the chat. Um, guys, don't forget to buy... Buy voice lines. Buy your... Oh, <laughs> buy your voice lines. <laughs> buy the that's voice That's a good lines. idea. You know? And I, I don't, I don't want to, like, tell you which one to buy. Yeah. That's that's not rude. Um, I saw one ly lyrical. He's tagged as Big L. That's and he's true. like, oh, no. Yeah. That one's pretty good. I like that one. I, yeah. I think that I have the the sticker. That's the big thing. The sticker is where the value's at right there. Um, mm. So that's a pretty solid one. Uh, yeah. Quest keeps yeah. saying go. There's a chance that this game might just play out with a bug. How how likely do you think that would be? I I think very unlikely. <laughs> that seems crazy. You, you can unpause? unpause? All right, we're back in. Go back to the game. All right, they're Ch playing with the handicap like as we're we're going to get into this. Dude, there's As, no way. Uh, we're ready to go. My goodness gracious, Trent. That's Ooh. actually so crazy. It is. Uh, yes, please go ahead. Take us in. Dude, what? Snaking? What boss. Going down? Oh. oh so I cast her curse by saying Zeus would be a horrible pick here. You cast her curse by saying it'd be very unlikely that the game's going to start right as it goes on. <laughs> All right. All right, chat. I'm going to go back to watching the game now. Enjoy. Oh, uh, this this is crazy. I, I hope it doesn't stay the whole time because that seems wild. 
But, uh, you know, they had first blood, so he's decided to trade full vulnerability the entire game for first blood and up to up. Oh, Toby. No. Not even close. That was, uh, that was like 20 <laughs> HP or something. That was, it was, it was 12, you know, <laughs> no big deal. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not insignificant. And 33 able to make the move on over and wait, actually, who got it? Did he pop it immediately? I didn't see who got that Lotus. I wasn't looking. Okay. I was elsewhere. Oh, uh, that's good though. We have been on pause for a long time. Where are we? We're three minutes in. Um, we haven't talked about mid at all, but they're kind of just chilling. Looks like the last hits are fairly similar. I mean, we'll have to watch to see how much harass is coming on the noob because Zeus is stacking up the levels. You can imagine that's going to be kind of frustrating for a melee hero at this point. And very hard to go full commitment onto a Zeus too. Does he have rotations? I mean, Hoodwink potentially, but Hoodwink's a little bit busy trying to slow down this Sven farm here. It is kind of crazy that we've been gone this entire time and I almost completely forgot what was happening in the entire game. As we do see a courier uh, get taken away by nine there on the Spirit Breaker, who's going to TP mid and immediately going to try and find Noob and stop him from getting oh, the rune. Huge. That is really nice. And for Noob, very upsetting. Good play there, though, with the Enchant Totem. Just keep himself safe. I mean, you know, not exactly. Yeah, it's a little bit of a, oh, he's got to do it soon. Wow. But if you don't hit that, you probably die. So, yeah. And now a long walk back home. Well, one of the things that we did see in this one uh, as 33 down bottom in trouble, starting to drop, oh. can see the real Naga Siren kill him as TA2000 gets the finish. And Doom is going to pause. Again. I just, I just think it's unfair. I think we should remake. I mean, you know, I just, I, I really feel uncomfortable with this, guys. That's, you know, I think three three's right. Yeah, yeah, remake. yeah. It's, it's not fair. It's just, I feel too bad for this enemy team. Uh. It's, uh, yeah, we also haven't even talked about this, though. We have ourselves the Naga Siren plus a, uh, AA. So really good to get early points in the cold feet. You have this virtually guaranteed, but not a lot of core players can actually give you that, that good cold feet early. But between the illusion blocks and 2.75 seconds on the early route, um, because one of the things that happened, if you guys remember that patch ages ago, right. was that all the stuns got nerfed. Uh, they all went down, but roots did not get nerfed. So by consequence, all roots essentially got buffed in the entire game. Yeah. So it's really solid with Ancient Apparition. And uh, we have, we've heard the cameras coming back. Hello again. So we're going to see if... Oh, uh, we got their camera have, too for a second. That would have been fun. They might have decided that uh, if it kept happening that they were going to remake, that might be something. I'm not mm, sure. Okay. Oh, well, hello, everybody. Hey, we're back. Um... It's been uh, it's been a nice little bit talking about the Dota for about like a minute and a half, um, and now I forgot where we were in our vamp session. I, well, so. here's what I'll say. Okay, I think that the common thread. So what happened? We had ourselves the Earth Spirit, right? Okay, he got stuck rolling. Okay, and that was supposedly Earth Spirit and and Centaur War Runner issue, which has been patched. But mm -hmm. who was in that game, Lyrical? Uh, a Naga Siren. A Naga Siren. Okay, That's right. and now again. So I think we just banned Naga Siren, guys. I think we can all agree that if we just ban Naga Siren for the rest of the international, everyone wins. Do you remember there was that like brief period at the start of uh, one of the tournaments recently where they banned Invoker in every game? Like when yeah. the patch immediately came out because it, it was TI qualifiers. Was it? Oh, yeah, you're right. It was TI qualifiers. They were just like, no, we can't. We can't have Invoker. Yeah, and they didn't tell us as casters. And I was there singing the praises of Invoker and how it was going to be in every game. And he was ignored <laughs> the first day. And I felt like the biggest idiot. I was like, man, I thought I thought Invoker was so good. I yeah. thought for sure he was going to be super relevant. Then next day, they're like, Invoker is pickable now. And then he's in every game. I'm like, oh, okay, we're, we're, we're fine. That makes sense. This is okay. Oh, uh, well, thank goodness for that. Let me see if I can do something cool here. I'm going to try this. <laughs> You got party tricks? Yeah. Wait for it. Wait okay, for it. Rit, there's no way. This is this ah! one. This one. <laughs> I almost canceled uh, the V mix there. <laughs> that would be pretty it amazing. lands on the unpause key. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I can turn it. I can't turn my microphone that much. Let me see if I can do it like this. Here we go. I got another idea. Ready? Here it is. This is like the, the Har Harlem Globetrotters. 
fidget spinning. All right. <laughs> oh! 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 Better than T.I. Where Woo! are you at? Where are you at? Here we are. Oh, that line C stream three, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, don't even it. bring back the game. Holy shit. No. Okay. It's okay. I caught it. Um, Insane. Man, we, just the, the links that we go to to, to entertain the masses. It's, uh, it's really a beautiful <laughs> it's thing. It's tough out, out here, guys. You know, <laughs> We got um, we got a tough job. That's right, absolutely true. Yeah, I uh, I think that uh, I I'm I'm curious if they were just like the go ahead on pause was just like yo, we're 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 just gonna give it a shot. We're gonna give it a try. Um, and if they actually are gonna need to remake, or like if this is a <laughs> continuing issue, you know, like what if yeah. they have to redraft? That that is definitely possible. Um, for the record, we know nothing. Ooh, we're trying a disconnection on the Naga Siren now. Interesting tactic. Yeah. All right. That's our next plan. That's pretty cool. I like maybe that. that a lot. Maybe that does something. Um, should we talk more about my gate? Um, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. Do you, is there more to say about it? You got to paint that thing. Um, Staining. I don't think I need to stain it. I do need to stain the the like the slats that are going on. Yeah, also. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I can grab this. I have another thing that I need to do too. Give me a second here. Come one second. Oh, we're gonna we're just gonna do some some housework on stream. Is that what's happening now? All right, bye, lyrical. Okay, cool. Got this. I got, <laughs> I got this too, which I'm gonna need to use to cut down Why some trees. That still within reach of your computer. <laughs> you gotta you gotta get it. I don't really want to start it but if i need it you're to, gonna set off your dogs i Do probably not start the chainsaw <laughs> okay hold on i don't i don't have a chainsaw guys like i Sorry. said this is the pacific northwest uh you know casting schedule that we have and this is what you can expect from ti although now i have all this like grease and stuff on my hand from it <laughs> oh Oh yeah, I got I got greasy hands now. That's the danger of chainsaws. They're very efficient machines, but they also they are. are um very dirty. They really are, but they're but, very fun. And they you know? fit well in, you know, a regular casting studio. <laughs> yeah, nice. you just put them up on the shelf and bring them out when you need it. Literally they're on the shelf. So convenient. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ah, oh, got to love it. Um, but yeah, so that's that's basically, uh, I think, uh, emblematic of what's going to happen in this game as we get oh, back hey, into we're it. We're back. We're restarting. We're going to try again. See if the Naga Siren disconnect is going to get us where we need to go. Unbelievable. Oh, it's right. Friday the 13th, too. This makes sense. It's it's cursed. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, Kaori's dead. Nine okay. gets the kill there on the Spirit Breaker. We're working on it, guys. Well, we'll get you guys back in ASAP. Uh, now, now we got an FPS drop. Uh, uh and now Tundra are asking for a remake. Yep. Time to remake. Quest says go. <laughs> okay. All right. We're starting. All right, let, let's just get back into the game production. We 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 should be able to to see all this, I think, now because the game is going. Um it's all right. We got the the cast. Uh why you take it away. Oh my god, he's gonna diamond. Thompson, run! Run! Oh, Zeus! Get out of there! Running, trying to escape, in trouble, but dead. All right, now the quest is like, okay, we can remake now. Here's the problem. If they're saying that we're willing to go, like, at a certain point, there needs to be a choice made of, like, are we going to remake or are we just going to continue to play this out? And well, I, we have to be past that at this point. I mean, you'd think so, but there's still some questions about, like, is remake going to happen or not? I, I guess now that, th that this game is just going to take place as it is. Because, like... Anything that happens after this point, it's going to like contribute to the idea of like, do they think that they're going to win more or not? And then it becomes unfair the other direction. It is kind of crazy that Dota Plus already has them at a Ooh. big advantage. Ooh. Oh, it's a double back to back kill. That's a 69% win probability for Quest. Nice. All right, let's let's remake everybody. <laughs> <laughs> they're just going to keep spamming it. <laughs> Voice line next TI. Yeah. Someone on Tundra. It's time for a remake. <laughs> Well, that is uh, pretty huge. I mean, Quest, I I think with the draft that they've gotten, how everything's gone, realistically, there's a way that they can play this and come to a pretty substantial lead with it not mattering that their Naga Siren is viewable, right? 
Like that's basically oh, yeah. what they're saying. It's not that often that it makes a huge difference. So yeah, they, I mean, they've just decided they really like the position they're in, like you're saying. So, and uh, I definitely agree, especially with how well this Earthshaker's game is going. That, that's got to be the big thing, right? All right? Earthshaker really needs this solid start. And he has one. He also still has a... Uh, oh, no, he actually did burn through the Invis rune. Okay, so maybe he's going to try and set up with something. But he just needs to get some more levels. And he's feeling fine about it. Meanwhile, Kyori trying to sneak on in and get the Wisdom rune here. He's going to be rooted. They used that a little early, but doesn't matter. Still managed to get the kill. And it's going to be two Wisdom runes apiece. Or one Wisdom rune apiece, rather. Yeah, and so far, the XP for the Hoodwink looking great after the rotation towards mid. 202 on Omar. I think this is definitely a hero that wants that early six as fast as possible. And, and really, all the levels in Hoodwink feel amazing, right? Every single point into Bushwhack just feels so much better. Same thing with the Acorn Shot. Scary is also cool, but it's almost certainly going to be your last spell these days. Yeah. Well, now seven and a half minutes in and a rotation coming around from nine wanting to find a jump here onto noob maybe with Thompson having level six can they connect onto it though Kori still a little ways away and it looks like they oh, don't feel comfortable going for the play uh, nine just feeds instead? i think and instead yeah Ooh, no wait rotating in one omar is there too they're doing this on the eight minute rune so I, he just can't get it wow and yeah, it's up top. It's an arcane. So Omar gets some damage on the nine, but wanting to ensure that Noob gets the rune. And you have a Naga Siren down here in this bottom lane, a Tidehunter up top. So no real concerns about your supports. You can just rotate wherever they want at the moment. It does free up this bottom lane for the Doom. So, I mean, Arcane's Vanguard is kind of fine. Charge mid. Noob in trouble. Has it. This is dead Noob. Can even save the uh, Zeus ulti. Very nicely played. So that's so got a little greedy with that arcane rune. Yeah, and, and that should signal that you know root or ward is up there on the high ground. Probably will see that one taken out pretty soon. But Toby doing his job up top, meteor hammering the tower, starting to put the pressure on. The job that he has here. Both offlaners certainly feeling great about it. I mean, as you predicted, the, uh, the highest net worth of 10 minutes is looking pretty good for 3 3 on his Doom. Ooh, who up top has just dropped Doom down on Toby, who is looking to just walk this one off. The stun is going to be there. Can meet your hammer if he wants, but doesn't look like that's going to happen. Thompson comes in to clean up. You know what makes walking difficult? No boots. Yeah. Hard to walk it off with no boots. True. Uh, when Doom just dooms you. Well, so far, so the good. Um, I mean, it, realistically, now with these next couple Ice of minutes, bottom? yeah, that's that's going to be kill on to nine. So he burns <laughs> down to the Ancient Apparition. Feels kind of strange, right? Because TA 2000's off to a great start, just about to have Midas done at 10 minutes. But there is still, like, the overwhelming amount of damage that Topson's going to have, and then also a 33 Doom that's getting incredibly farmed. I think Noob is the, the driver of this game. Like, when this Blink Dagger comes out, and then in combination with moving across this map with a Hoodwink and Ancient Apparition, it feels like they're going to be kind of driving up the middle and controlling both of the jungle spaces while the side lanes are pushed and controlled by Tide and Naga Siren. And, like, that, it's just going to be like a little mid, like, mid lane playground, essentially, for quests. They are trying to invade right now on Tundra. See if they can find this Naga Siren. Everyone knows where she's going to be farming. Oh, yeah. No level 5 on 9. Snaking has the ulti, though. Oh, here we go. Crystal Nova, will it hit? Oh, mm. oh, there it is. It's a little off. They find the real one. 33, which one is it? <laughs> no, they're going <laughs> to not be able to chase him down anymore. Up top, Toby takes the tower. Also, I'm just going to say, if I ever see 33 pinging the real Naga Siren, I have no problem with that at all at this point, right? Like, you can't uh, expect no, it's somebody... been decided. Right, you can't yeah, expect 100%. somebody to not take that advantage if it's there in front of you in the game. It's like really hard to try and cut the information out of your head. Radiant structures are fortified. Radiant I think the admin should be right over his shoulder the whole time and stopping him. 
<laughs> they actually had to mute him. That was the condition. He's yeah. just not allowed to talk for the whole game. No talking, no pinging. He can only use paid talent voice lines to communicate. Yes. Now we're yeah. talking. Well, six to four. And all of the tier one towers still standing for the side of quest. I want to see what this tide hunter wants to do now. Is Toby going to just keep farming up this area? Does he try and make a move towards middle eventually to finish off this tier one tower? I think what's great about his life right now is that he's not concerned about this like spirit breaker charge because the follow up, it, it, I feel it'd be kind of obvious if he's getting followed up on for the most part. Like Doom's kind of showing a lot of the time. So if Doom's missing, maybe they're after him, but right. they don't really have the damage unless like I'd say maybe Zeus and Crystal Maiden are there and they hard commit like big ultis and then they just rush mid. Yeah. Oh, that does uh probably it's a little bit less dangerous because you know that 33 is going like the super greed build has the midas after the vanguard so no like early blink coming out from that uh at the moment at the very least but likewise speaking of blink yeah this is this is going to be time to go for it they're going to smoke up as you said as three and they're actually going to run to the tide hunter they had a ward too they, they know that nine jump. just moved up here would love to get another kill besides just nine and yeah, they want a big fish. Oh, oh Thompson. Find it. Oh, oh. Thompson's oh. over there. Instead, they go off onto 33. This is a nice kill if they can connect onto him. The doom comes out, but Toby is there. Move in, find the finish. They will find one kill here. No, deny. deny. Omar got him. Keeps him alive. Ice Blast already connecting onto Thompson. This is a 1v1. Kyori versus Thompson. Thompson's starting to die. He might burn down to the ulti barely stays alive as Toby tries to run out now. Nine able to come on in and finish off Omar. And now Toby, the last one left, a double for Thompson. Oh man, it was a high price to pay to get the kill on to Doom. It was indeed. It felt like they pinged over towards Thompson, but I guess they just didn't uh, have the, the vision. I don't know, it was yeah. close. Instead trying to go for 3D. Also so close to catching him before he's able to get that Doom off as well. Right. Look at that. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot. And he's already got a Sky. He's going to go for the Octarine next by the looks of it here and do what Zeus does best. It did look like somebody pinged Topson. I think that they were already just so committed in on to uh, 33 that, you know, maybe Noob did not want to try and change targets at the last second as he was jumping in. But it was so close to being the moment. Oh, seven well, to seven. I haven't checked in in a... Uh... Skinner in a while. Yeah. It's, uh, he's catching up to this Naga Siren. Looks like he might have been taking a couple stacks here. He's got Mask Madness. He's got his Echo Saber. And uh, looks like they're, they're feeling all right. Oh, yeah. I mean, he he's looking to have a good game for sure. Um, there There is still the fact that it's, you know, Naga with a Midas and trying to get towards Manta. Her farm speed is going to be absolutely ridiculous uh but you kind of got like this very much tricore coming in from tundra and if they're just left to afk farm i don't know how you keep up with this quest a lot of it definitely comes down to that assass uh, assassination trio of right hoodwink a and, and shaker and, and they're kind of chilling right now he's trying to get uh some quicker farm towards his agonim scepter so finish off the ogre club yeah, I, I think you're right that they need to, like, go in for, um, you know, some type of a fight around Noob with this Blink Dagger. Hey, Ori, this is a risky spot to show yourself. Yeah, he, he won't even. Oh, my God, he, Topson. He's scared. Holy moly. Topson was trying to go in for the kill there. He had Thunder God's Wrath, but didn't quite get the Shaker. Pops for generation. So nine doing a big loop around up top there. Grab himself a Lotus and has an OBS. He's going to plant it here. Okay. So not super aggressive vision being placed. Uh oh. Considering you've already lost your tier one up there. This almost feels like they're trying to set up. This, oh, they actually do catch breeze moving. This, this is rough for Toby. Ravage. Try and get away. And the very contained play to not go for more there on Tundra. 
I mean, it's so close to the tier one. They know that it's in their best interest to come and fight this because they could theoretically even roast. Find everybody. Ice Blast there trying to take down the Zeus right at the start of this. But it doesn't look like it's quite going to be enough. But the jump in from Noob, that will get him. Fissure connect onto three, but they find him with Skitter. Skitter moving in. Song of the Siren to try and get Noob out. It might be enough. They've already lost three, though, for the Zeus. Tundra definitely getting the best out of these fights again here. Really cool how they, they sort of left the Tide alone and they still felt compelled to come up here as Quest and try and force that engagement uh, while you're missing these resources he's already burnt out. So another well-played one there from Tundra. They don't really mind too much that they're losing tops and it's okay. We got, like you said, big Tricor. You know, they're all going to be pretty even throughout most of this. Van Brace now picked up from Skitter. And that career with the double void stones making its way over to Thompson. So done and done here. Very farmed. Oh, sorry. Those are not Thompson. Oh, no. Those. <laughs> no, those, <laughs> those are, are three, three. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong octarine core. My mistake. I yeah. apologize. I mean, 33 is doing a little bit of inventory management right now as he tries to put it all together, get the <laughs> octarine core in, um, and has the Midas good to go. Yeah, that is Heart no longer best friend of this match. Now Octarine Core. The All right. Too is it, like if this goes long enough, Nine is gonna get one also. <laughs> I, I'm, I, this is a greedy draft from Tundra, and so far they're getting away with it. All right, solid stuff. Well, uh, the, the certain heart buyer in this game, though, TA2000, working towards it now, that Naga Siren, trying to tank them up a little bit, but it is a Sven and a Zeus, so there's quite a bit to clear through these illusions. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what Topson's uh, item build ends up being eventually, because I, I do think that there is some value in, in that shard eventually. Uh, does have the Kaya already with the Octarine core. This just feels like it's mass spam out, farm up, get uh, incredibly hard to deal with, and then the boots to travel next. But time will tell what ends up happening. Omar in the mid as Tundra is going to smoke to the top, trying to find one, but Noob, he's already away. Hopefully they don't waste Thunder God's Wrath here trying to find him. Yeah. Not going to happen this time. Oh, it's Courier, though, with his Aghanims. That's gone. Nicely played. So two minutes without Ags for the Earthshaker. Although I guess he was still, what, 700 gold away or so? Yeah. Well, the No Rush uh, is indeed the name of the game here. How many towers have we lost? One down bottom. Uh, and then two more. one mid, one top. Okay, so three total towers in 20 minutes. Bottom tower. Nine under a ward here. Echo. Oh, wow. They just dunk him. Trying to bring him down, and they get the finish. Skitter going to get hit by the Ice Blast. Omar trying to get away, and he does manage to escape. So they get that easy pickoff there on to nine. And Topson trying to run away the moment. Interesting. They, well, they didn't get the tower. That was really expensive for a Spearbreaker kill. Yeah. They're immediately going to go back out, though, as they are lacking the Echo, but they still have the Ravage. No mobility for this Tide, though, but uh, they did just get the talent on Hoodwink, which feels really nice, getting the uh, the cooldown reduction on the Bushwhack. So right. very likely you can get off two if, uh, in most skirmishes. They are smoked as four, and the call was to catch Doom uh, over here in between these Creepways, and they're going to find him in the oh. exact spot that they pinged. The they were super ready. Now, oh, trying to go off to the side, they instead find 33, but don't think that they can go for it. Another one of these moments when it's the right idea by Quest, but the target prioritization, not all on the same page. Oh, yeah. Missing Did some skills there as well. Oh, no, Kaori! Oh. <laughs> he tried. He tried the Glimmer channel, but not on top of it with the sentry. That was sick. Well played. More time Botho for TA2000. Heart done.
And that spin was zooming out of there when Omar went for that play with the, the bushwhack. Not even close. Yeah. He was just gone. That wisdom rune is still waiting. Saw them ping it on the side of Tundra though, so someone's gonna slowly make their way over there. Aether Lens gonna be the first choice here for snaking, so really prioritizing his positioning in these fights. Let's make sure he gets off these good frostbites as well as those crystal novas. Very important. Uh both to potentially cancel a shake or blink. But uh, mostly versus the Naga Siren Illusions. Slow down all that Riptide damage. We have seen this a couple of times now from CMs. The like Aether Lens sit back and then has like this mobility stuff too, which is it's kind of cool. Um, I do feel like there's a way in which you might need to get like Shard or something else. Because if Naga Siren Illusions just get it snaking, um, he's not going to have that many defensive items and options. Yeah, point. I mean, he's lowest net worth, so he's he's the candidate for the Tormentor. And yeah. uh, with the ability, like, versus Nogasiron in particular, if you're ulting and now that you can use the Shard during ulti, that's pretty cool. Right. Very helpful. But uh, Radiant, they will finally get their Roche. I think it's something they've been considering for a while, but now they're at the point where with this heart, it feels pretty good for them. And despite being down 4K, I mean, I, I think they're in a really good spot. Tundra are definitely of the style that they... They just need that one good jump from a spend and the fight can be over. But if you miss that jump and you get controlled up by the song and stuff, you'll, you're certainly going to be in trouble. That butterfly as well, super key item coming up for TA2000. You know, he can't evade them with his illusions this game, but he can right. evade them with some evasion. Yeah, and that will be like a huge injection of, you know, pushing power to it. Still takes a couple of like seconds for those waves to get shoved out. But the extra agi, you like to see that for the Naga Siren. Um, and Tundra, I think the reality of the situation is that their game plan does not change. They continue yeah. to farm. They are building a difference in net worth between like, you know, this Sven, Doom, Maybe Zeus combo and then the Shaker and the Tide. And this, uh, this right here mid, this is the story of this game because they're running in blind again because typically they want to be going for these plays, but they have no vision because Thompson just keeps nuking everything. So... You're playing a lineup that's kind of forced to go for these smoke plays, but you never have lingering vision because they're covering with a ton of sentries and Thompson's checking all the pillars constantly. Z9 comes through, breaks the smoke, Yule Scepter lift up. So they will find the Spirit Breaker as he is caught completely on his own. But Nine doing a good job of, you know, just making sure that he... Uh, is in to break the areas where the fight's supposed to go on. <laughs> Skinner takes the mid tower too, T-1000. Kind of chasing after him, but so fast. Let go. Just running out of there, and and quest just chasing shadows. It feels like, like obviously, yeah. You get the kill on nine. That kind of feels good, but he finds them. Oh, he gets them. Thompson caught trying to TP out. Can they shut him down here though? Ice blast is gonna go out. Oh, Connection man. from range manages to be found, and the ravage to follow up. It's enough to get the kill. That was so necessary, and Noob, he played it perfect. Great use of the Aegis. Uh, I love putting it on the Earthshaker in this. Slime get really aggressive, take these risks down bottom. Omar catches with the Yules here on a skitter. Has the TP with the BKB though, so heading on out of here. But they want to keep this pressure up. They don't really want to come back here right now. I mean, you got to grab some more towers. That So that's the thing, right? Like, I think the, the difference between a quest making a good rotation or not is if they can actually get that, that catch. And the mobility of this Aghanim Shaker is winning them these last couple of minutes here. The, the fact that they get to kill on the Spirit Breaker and then can chase all the way through, huge. Yeah, and finally having a blink on Tide. It's yeah. certainly doing a lot for them. Uh, but there is also now a Silver Edge here on the Sven. So definitely some concerns here for Toby. You have to keep an eye on that. Might get uh, blown up. Perhaps he's not expecting it. The other thing about this is that, I mean, this style of Dota is something that we've seen from Tundra a lot. If Quest can show a reliable way to punish the, like, hide, duck away, farm, 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 be there forever, it's really important for the rest of the teams watching. But the other flip side of that is that when Tundra decide to fight, it's pretty dangerous. They get one. It's only going to be the Ancient Apparition, as it looks like Noob can get some separation, although he's walking high ground right in at 33. Now has to jump away a little bit crazy. Fisher goes out. TA2000 is right on top of him. A very weird situation in this one. 
Yeah, there was also no BKB there for Skitter. It's actually just coming back in five more seconds. So potentially a song setup could have happened, but there's no okay. echo for five more seconds. Hunting. These are all lining up. Oh, finds him. Snaking tries to get away, but they get him with the bushwhack and then the jump forward. Quest are playing very fast. I, I love what I'm seeing from them here. This is what you have to do because otherwise the Tricor is just going to take over later. They need to take advantage of this. Oh, they baited that pretty hard. Wow. Uh, he did get the wave. But the next one is coming. No one else is able to catch it. Omar even comes back to make sure someone doesn't grab it. Man, that is big. Quest coming in playing with TA2000 on a bug Tiro, and it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. First phase if Naga Siren, one. and you can see it. Like, what? Just go. <laughs> the boss. Oh, baby. Okay, we're back. Vindicator's Axe, Mask of Madness. Skitter has entered the game. Skitter is strong. Yeah. Level 20 on Sven now, too. So needing that extra bit of armor. But uh, of course, as you said, the extra attack speed, the extra damage um, coming from Vindicator's Axe with the Mask of Madness going, it's going to be quite hard to deal with. Um, but flip side to that, too, is no MKB yet, you know? And this butterfly, it's done. Okay, just hit the other people. Okay. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> Work some angles, get the protractor out. What about uh, the Naga? <laughs> what about her? No, no, you're hitting the other people, and that's killing the Naga. Oh, she's okay. close. Got see? It. Makes sense. You see, the cleave's 100% damage, Lyrical. That's fair. Oh, she's got a sight, though. That makes things a little harder. She also is... You're like one dude. Right. She's many. Also, uh, what, 27 armor? Um, could be a bit of an issue there. A lot of physical resist. Okay. That's fair. Oh. Time will tell what ends up happening. Quest, another big smoke. They can't have too many more of these left either. They have one more on AA. So need to make the most of this. Will they be able to find somebody? Snaking up on the high ground. They're all grouped for they Tundra. no vision up here. They send in the illusions. Find 33. He's stuck there. He's BKB. He's trying to get out. Oh, my God. They're right on him. BKB oh now down. That was he crazy. stuck with the seven collision size illusion. That was nuts. Yeah, and now Quest make the call to go up top and take this tier two tower. It's such a casual push. It's just the creep wave coming in, the illusion sitting there. Now Toby comes in for the actual meteor hammer. I mean, uh, you can see Tundra playing together, trying to push on the side lanes, but they do need to come back and deal with this eventually. Illusion spam. I mean, it's not fast, and, and that is one of the issues. Topson is doing a good job of holding their high ground, and the rest of the team is cutting waves. Like, this is yeah, really good for nine, Tundra. Man. Does he have enough right now to one-shot waves? Uh, Doom? Oh, okay, no. Well, they know the real one. They caught her, but it's not going to matter. 33's gone. Skinner shows up, wants to take down this Tidehunter. They still find the Naga Siren, even though she's doomed. I don't know if they have enough to kill her off in time. The jump board, the sun is there. TA 2000 turns it around. They throw out the illusion damage. Skinner manages to burn through them all. Song of the Siren to stop and reset. TA 2000, TP's out. Wow. All right. Find themselves a win here on Tundra. Punish her, get her out of the fight at the start there. And not quite enough. It was close uh, from, from new, but not enough damage to secure the rest of that fight there. Good backup from his allies coming through. Almost all the damage was just Sven, you know, Skinner right. getting in there, actually getting his damage off like he needs to, not being controlled up the side of these fights. Also clearing through that tide under, of course, BK being in his face. Uh, I think he even did get the break on him there too. And so just no real hope and wasn't a good situation to actually pop the ravage. And, uh, the main problem will be if Rush spawns in 10 seconds, ba -ba 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 20, Ooh. Ooh, 32. Oh, it's quick. It is. They, uh, what's that going to be? That'll be daytime, though. Radiant side. They're nah. kind of out of position. Does he hit up the twin oh. gate? Almost got him. Well, oh. Through. Skitter hits the twin gate. He's down this here. This is their chance. Yeah, Nine's going to use that to charge down. Kyrie will see him, though. 
So they at least know that Skitter's down here and they actually see him running towards the Roche pit too. So oh. there's no way that this should catch Quest unawares. Oh, will they look? Will they look? They're going to see the super early side. It just spawned. He's going in. Oh, man. Quest probably think they have more time. They have an Off ice blast, but they're not throwing it down. I think this is theirs. I think Tundra just get it. Oh, here it comes. Yeah, they, they can't. There's no way they get there in time. A quick Roche spawn sets them up to take it. They had Song. They're moving over. There's no way they get there fast enough. Yeah, that's just Aegis in hand. Oh, they check for sentries and wards. They know that they're not under vision right now. They still want to come in here on quest. They just want to get a scythe pick. Hunting, big moment, jump. Trying to find one. They oh, get a big, 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 big. Oh, no. At the time. Unreal. <laughs> that was so close. He just TPs out. T2000, maybe he's going to find one. Oh, the song. He knew. Yeah. He saw him nearby. Can they find him with the illusions? Oh, does he realize? He's in this. The Shadow Blade oh, wears out. Okay, they find him now. Interesting. The other thing about this TA2000. That's, that's where I call him a hacker if I'm nine. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The other thing about this TA2000 build that's going to be really interesting oh, is, uh, well, wait, they hold find up, noob. noob. He's gone. Uh, now that he has Hex and Shadow Blade, and Manta too, for that matter, although less so for that case, he can still kind of get out of Doom, right? Pop items and just run away. That is so weird, actually. Yeah, right? Yeah. For anybody that doesn't know that's watching, that's, you know, taking a break from Dota for a while, uh, Doom no longer mutes. So you can cast there. You can use all of your items. You're still silenced, um, but instead it means that you can't regen. There's no healing. Um, yeah. Which, you know, if you've been wondering why your teammates are pinging you when you're, you know, purifying flames in them on Rubik as you're doing Yeah, so and, and you're still throwing dust on Broodmother, you know, those yeah. kind of things. It's, it's it's tough coming back to Dota after a while. Yes. You're putting your death ward inside Chronosphere. It's, uh, it's a hard time. Oh, that was the dandy. Oh, he didn't mean to, though, on that one. <laughs> no, no, that, that didn't count. And obviously, it's only level 18 on 33. It's going to be a while before that changes since it comes back at the level 25 talent. Uh, Omar will get the shard. So has the Hunter's Boomerang. Great shard. One of, one of the better ones here. A lot of uh, spell damage amp here as they already have the Ice Vortex. We haven't talked too much about that this game, but in combination with that and the Boomerang, you can certainly lay into somebody. Sven, MKB done. The wraparound coming, or rather Noob, just hanging onto the high ground here. Radiance top tower is under attack. Skitter walks forward. Ice Blast. Fissure is out. Hoodwink connects. Bushwhack down low. Almost dead. Force Staff keeps him alive. Meanwhile, the charge goes through. Connects onto two. Root is there. Nine. Not long for this world. As the Thunder God's Wrath comes out, do they decide to go? Tundra seeing their Spearbreaker friend die in front of them and then have to run away from the Nogas Iron Illusions. Skitter so low. Chasing. Wants to get him. Ravage is there. Does he throw it out? Waiting for the moment. Still has an opportunity. Oh, not quite there. The boomerang connects. Skitter is so low HP, and now Thompson shows up to fight. They pop the BKB on 33 to try and run away. Hoping to escape. Omar. He pees out and barely going to get away. They want to keep chasing, though. They know BKBs are popped. They know they don't really want to fight right now. But despite all these illusions fanning out across the map, they can't find anything. I want to sink their teeth into these fights, and it's just not quite happening. And again, I, I keep looking oh, at they're these coming, they're coming back out. inflated. Like, T2000 is strong right now, but eventually this Naga Siren, it's going to be hard to deal with all the cores. I mean, you can see it too, like when Noob gets caught just for half a second and he gets blown up so fast. Like he is a, a strength mid here. He still has 10 armor on Earthshaker. Like he just dies. Skitter walks in. Dust. Dust is there. They find him. Skitter isolated. No man's land. Hex now on to the CM. They back away. Immediately found the real Naga Siren. Doom is out, but they're trying to run away. Noob walks in, goes through all of them, trying to get set up for a good angle. At the moment, they find this Naga. Can they kill her off in time? Ice Blast out. They get her. 
No more Naga in this one. Omar hoping to escape will skitter away. Great fissure by Noob to make sure that that hoodwink gets out. But the key kill is that Naga. Yeah, getting the Doom on top. Just, uh, I mean, as you said, has the items and everything, but certainly can't bail out the fight if things are looking good. Attempts a Ravage there to try and cover her, but they had been holding the BKB, so Toby is uh, nullified there. And now multiple Dooms can be ready here from 3-3 as he purchases up the Refresher Orb. And now Satanic for Skitter too. Whew. I mean, so this is the thing, right? Like, in a lot of ways, what we talked about earlier, I don't know if the bug is still going on at all or not for 33, but if it is, you see the, the finding immediately of the Naga Sire and how big of an impact that can have. Um, it's pretty huge, and it makes these fights really hard, I feel like, for quests. They have to sort of get that initial jump or find a way to find 33. Skitter, Shadow Blade. Oh, oh, yo. They found Toby him. gets found. Nicely played. Yeah, they caught sight. Broken, dropping, dead. Gem on the deck. Wow, oh, really nicely done here. Great use of the Nimbus. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. I, I mean, this might be that time when Tundra starts going into their, like, super duper. Oh, du oh, oh lurking. Finds them. Kyra just gone. <laughs> yeah, dude, they're, they are getting picked apart now. The game oh, is that's, really that's rough. That's such a bad death, dude. That's a death where you, you look at what you were doing, you're like, what, what was I hoping to gain by standing there? I get nothing. Like, there's Omar, nothing there. Wanting to get away. Another fissure to try and hop out, but 33 right on top of him. Will Getch with the bushwhack. Tries to get up to the high ground, get some separation, but Omar will die. They're trying to shove out waves, but Tundra just taking it to him. This is where you have to start reevaluating the game plan here from quest trying to figure out how do you actually win these fights i mean oh nine song. Pops the bkb to keep controlling song of the siren well very well played they know which one's the real one turns and says fine you want to fight me fight me and they bring it oh, the time ta 2000 four staff staying alive pulls it back in though and the doom comes out in time they managed to get that kill but the illusions the illusions they're ripping them apart taking them down from the grave can they find more 33 pops it Refresher backs away, hump fake the Doom, but didn't go for it. All right, the T2000 is still scary. When you can't clear those illusions, absolutely brutal. Noob finding that damage they needed so badly. Oh my God. And you just trade one for one. Uh, not really where you want to be right now for, for quest, but oh, he's eyeing up snaking. He's going in, he throws down the leash. <laughs> He's just sitting there watching him. Gets brought uh, down in the end. The famously fast hero, Crystal Maiden, now anchored, so she can't escape. This is an interesting one. 23 to 20. And you sort of see because, like, this Sven is having to go for these other, you know, items, the MKB, uh, the harpoon to keep on top of targets. If Warcry is down, really get shredded by the Naga. That is true as well. Maybe they could find um, some dispels for what? it as well. I mean, he doesn't have the shard yet, but... Oh my god. Opsin just moves in, oh, tries to get a fissure to get away, but it's not going to happen. That's somebody else that shreds heroes. Opsin. I think one of the hardest parts of this game, too, is just as Nine gets more and more farmed, uh, like you already saw it with that first use of the BKB, they're going to be able to utilize Thunder God's Wrath and then just stick Nine onto somebody. Because yeah. if he's charging through these fights with the BKB versus Tidehunter versus the Naga Siren, he just breaks up the way you want to play these engagements. You also have Hoodwink, who unfortunately doesn't do really anything to BKB targets. Shaker, fairly similar when you're that beefy on the, uh, the Spirit Breaker as well. And, of course, AA... Not a whole lot you can do. So so nine is just this like disruptive force in the middle of things. Now a ninja gear picked up here from Noob though. Great item for the shakers. It's KR blown up. Yeah. <laughs> it's not live very long when the Sven's right on top of you. I actually forgot he doesn't have a blink this game. Yeah. It has not felt that way. He's been getting a lot done. The the way that Tundra control the map, you gotta admit, it's it's a 
pretty devastating way to play it. It's freaking Thompson. After going for the E Blade, he's trying to uh, queue up and go for the Dagon next. So, maximum zap from the Zeus yeah. man. E Blade's just not what it used to be. So, you gotta, you gotta help it out a little bit. Oh, yeah. All right. Aghanim Scepter. Who are we giving it to? Um, I thought that maybe Quest was going to make the run down Doom? here, but it's going to take too long. Are, are they not going to give it to Doom? Oh, I think. Oh, they're going to give it to Nine. Wow. Oh, that's pretty crazy. All right. And I now look at Doom. the net worths. This is this is a problem. Jeez. Damn, that's actually so sick for nine though. Because now he can get into his Octarine and immediately be crazy strong with his yeah. Aghanim Scepter. It's such a big buff on him. Toby throws the anchor down. And CM does have the level 20, but not taking the attack speed just yet. Uh, Best neutrals in the game, by the way. Um, on snaking. He has himself Ninja Gear and a pocketed Ogre Seal Totem. I like that. That's oh, great. For the attack speed talent versus the dead in the water. I know. The answer is there. Dude, I, Let's I, go. Was saying, I, I did not think he was going to go for it, but he got anchored one time and immediately took the attack speed <laughs> on CM. That's sick. It actually feels so good picking CM into those heroes. When this happens, like you're playing against a Phoenix and then the late game pops up and like, yes. Do, 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 do. I'm valuable. Oh. The game. A uh, steep hill to climb for quests as Tundra are in such economic uh, just heaven. They, they are incredibly farmed on everybody. But again, with this lineup, Earthshaker AA. Oh, we've seen crazy things before with this combination. Vision on Omar with the charge here. Cancels out. What do you think about Toby potentially eyeing up a heart next? That kind of surprises me. I guess he can't really make a refresher work with his current item build, can he? He doesn't really have the mana for it. No. It is a little bit strange. I guess that just feeling, you know, he needs to survive the break from Sven. Yeah. Man, that seems tough. That's so expensive. Listen, everybody's buying hard, okay? I, it's cool. Yeah, it's true. Um, the third Octoring Core. That's that's a good point. We've got two hearts on Quest, uh, three Octoring Cores on Tundra. So the new heart, as you will, is seeming to have some pretty good success in this one as Nagathiron finishes the completed Aghanim Scepter. Uh, Reel them in. They're ready to. Have you ever seen Reel in do anything? Uh, no. I mean, at the end <laughs> yeah. of the game. But I'm ready for it. I I'm here for when Reel in wins the game. Let's see if it can happen. Another Tormentor goes down and noob is the one that gets it just pretty nice of course you mentioned the ninja gear before it will probably help him a lot to try and set up for these fights here the skitter gets shown in the mid lane dead in the water bushwhack snaking saying i will come help you and then does not hit the anchor oh. meanwhile they jumped on to nine and killed him yeah all. i think he was trying to disrupt to ensure that uh skitter got out I don't know if he expected to survive there. Illusions. Illusions. Skitter. Oh my, oh my god. on to three, but the turnaround. Is it going to be big enough? Trying to do what they can. Doom down onto one. It's only onto the hood wing. Uh, do you want to fight scary. this? I don't think you want to fight this. Oh, it's a bit too scary. I mean, maybe they can still once. Oh, right, yeah. They're going to have to deny Omar. Yeah. Hmm. That was really interesting, too, because it was such an insane situation that he found there on that spend, but he didn't have his BKB out. He had it in his backpack. Yeah. Uh, so he wasn't able to really capitalize on that. Otherwise, they might have got like two or three kills, but he just gets fissured instead because, you know, it's obviously a very common play is you put the BKB in the backpack and you know, lead it for after the ages. But one of those rare situations where he probably wishes it had been in his inventory. Skitter, There's no Echo Slam showing. here as they close in. Want to find him if possible. To Toby has gem. A little bit hard to catch up. And now it's been so long, you're like, I don't know if I want to fight this guy right now. I know. The vision. Kaori oh. smoke's going to oh. be broken. They see him right away. Stun is there. Can they get him out? Fourth staff keeping him alive. Illusions getting hit. 
control on the Sven, and then backing away. So enough to make sure that the uh, AA did not go down. I like how he still farms the camps on the way out. Skitter's not concerned with his Aegis. Yeah. Feels very strong. He's so farmed. I mean, he almost has Swift Blink on top of everything else. <laughs> we've gotten to the point now where it's Naga Siren and then four dire heroes. Yeah. I mean, we've been there for a little while. It's 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 a tough game for quests, no doubt about it. Will Snaking ever leapfrog? I don't think so. <laughs> I think he's staying at the near the bottom at least for a while. The plight of CMs. He does have an Octarine core queued up on Snaking after the BKB, so maybe he's we'll ambitious. get to a fourth. Who knows? Listen, I never thought Snaking was going to win TI, so... That's right. You know, that's he can definitely get Nocturne Core. Oh. Staying in this one for the moment. Want to see what the, uh, the goal is over the next couple of minutes here. Uh, obviously, a lot of room still to grow for a couple of these heroes, um, but are they going to be able to get the... The fight's one that's going to give the gold to sort of turn Kyori or Omar into a little bit more scary of a position four or oh. five. Nine, using that night vision talent. Investigating. And the dust. Can't find anybody. Noob steps forward. Smoke about to pop. Sees it there now. Decides to keep going for more. But yeah, Shadow Blade's very good in these late game scenarios. And Thompson, jeez. After getting the gold, now has a uh, Dagon coming out to him, and a bigger Dagon coming out to him. Up top, maybe going on to nine. Fuel Scepter lift up. He's so greedy. BKB is there, tries to get away, dead in the water. He's pulling that anchor. Pull. Oh, he's stuck up on the high ground. Okay, they got him. Echo even dropped, and they find the kill finally on a nine. That gives yeah, so much gold to Kaori. Oh, wow. Yeah, he got the final blow, eh? Yeah, it's one of those things where it, uh, you can put it on the debuff immune target, like the BKB, and then when it ends, it'll anchor them down, which is pretty cool. So very useful to fight, because like, they don't really want to target it. And then uh, either he intentionally stopped there or it was at the same time. Wouldn't really have mattered. Right. But good catch there. Kind of greedy going for that wave again here from nine. But he's also been playing very greedy this whole time, which is partially why he's so farmed. So every once in a while, you do get punished. He has the Timeless Relic, which is so good on this hero. Uh, even better once you get the Kaya, of course. Keep hamming things up. Omar might be dead. He's in the hot tub. It's a very dangerous spot. Super vulnerable. Just barely gets out. Running, running. Drop forward. Oh. See Skitter. Maybe trying to set up with the rest of the team here. He can Yules by a tree and then force a BKB, maybe. Uh, he's like, oh, there's multiple. Scouted, find him, evasion, and Song of the Siren out. And they kill Skitter. Reel him in, tries to escape, gets away. Dude, boots of travel level two are so sick for that. He's, he's so fast. I think Kyori needs to get shard too, because then they have a way to break TPs uh, through. Uh, BKB with the ice blast. Blast him up. But even then, like it, it happens so quickly because the TP takes such a short Wait, amount of time. Does that work? Yeah. Are you sure? Positive. Wow, that's crazy. Why does that work? I would have thought it would apply a cold feed and the cold feed wouldn't latch because it's debuff immune. Um, I saw it instantly hit and it broke something, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. Uh -huh. I, I okay. could be wrong about that. But I, Only one way to find out. Right. I'm pretty sure that I saw it oh. break. Like it was a mini stun or something. All right. Don't look at Omar's next item. Why? Oh, I love that. <laughs> I actually love that. Like going Midas? Yeah, dude. This game, like, legitimately, I feel like could go much longer. 50 minute Hoodwink Midas? You say I like that? I do. That's terrifying. I think it's pretty sick. We'll see. Uh, 50 seconds until Roche. That's going to keep it on Radiant's side. That's an Agonims now. Finished up for the Doom. Already has the Mute talent too. So this Doom is getting uh, 
better and better. Oh, so it's real doom now. Okay, we're back. We're, we're back, yep. Um, Quest being here with a relatively quick grocery spawn it provides some interesting dynamics. Man, how to set up for this on the side of quest. It's so hard to win the vision battle again because you're dealing with this Zeus. Uh, do they have a gem right now? I have not seen one. Is there one in their base? No. So that is a bit problematic. Uh, oh, sorry. There is on Toby. My bad. Thank you. Observer, help me out. That is good. They definitely need that. Yeah. So I'm trying to win that battle, but Roche is here and so are Tundra. Ice Blast's going to come through, but I don't think it's going to matter. Well, the other thing is that Sven just bought an Ag, so this one is actually going to go to CM. As they are waiting back to the side and will just be Dagoning it down. Is it just Topson as the Dagon? Yeah. And of course, Quest very much willing to give this one up. It is going to further increase the lead that Tundra has built up as Skitter tries to finish this one. Gets it done. Yeah, snaking, Ags for him. G's for top. Kinda took him a second. He's like, oh, really? For me? <laughs> a little unexpected here. Betty wishes he took the freezing field damage talent now. Oh, true, true, true. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So I have seen Noob up here so often. He's been camping this spot at the top of the map, hoping to maybe like punish someone who comes up for a wave and immediately escape. Will it finally happen now? Unlikely. He's just getting just out of there. there. I'm very sad that Omar is not buying Midas. That that makes me very sad. It seemed a little ambitious. <laughs> talking about oh yeah how many levels are you gonna get out of that at this point i mean maybe enough you never know i don't I like know Aeon. what he would turn it into though i mean it's just levels i assume is that's the only reason to buy it you know yeah get into that 25 talent another thing would be getting quicker uh you know tier five neutrals no oh, there you go that's actually the play uh will we get there i mean it's kind of feeling that way, isn't it? I think a little bit. I mean, I, I think if you're seeing okay. Tundra sit back and farm with this Aegis, we are we are getting to tier five neutrals. Uh, what do you think the win probability is right now between the two teams? Uh, I would guess like 90s. Why don't, why don't we bring that up here for Lyrical? Can we do that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <Can> we... <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? All right, take a look at the graph real quickly. It'll show it. It's uh, fifty-six percent uh, in favor of Tundra, forty-four percent in Quest. It's they, uh, it's very even according to Dota Plus. Dota Plus does not give a, a crap about twenty-five k gold lead. A wise curl once said, "Lead doesn't matter if you can't go high ground." Yep. Kyori, TP's away. Can't fallen. find him. Toby shoving out bottom line. TP, does he manage to escape? Yes. And another wave shove. Man, after watching Sven TP with the bots too, it looked so long. I checked to see if Toby was going to like a tower. Yeah. It, it, that is actually such a crazy aspect of level twos in these late game scenarios. And that's a Wind Waker. That's how you know the game's gone too long. The second this item comes out. Who got the Wind Waker? Thompson. Oh, yeah. He already has Dagon 5 with E-Blade. Dude, if he gets X Machina, can you imagine? Do, 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 do. <laughs> and look, the illusions eventually take that tier 3 tower down. Blink away from Toby. Try to Toby, escape their TP in on him. And yeah, that's the classic. The 33 play. Doom yourself and then TP in. But now, oh, he the gem. TA 2000 picks it back up. No gem for you. And then the Fissure, the Runaway. Skitter wants to take it down. Bushwhack is there. Ice Blast to follow. In trouble. Control. Can they bring him down? Yes. That's Aegis number one. Fissure about to be back up. They have a little bit of long range control there. The stun comes out. Didn't have his BKB in time. Now finally has it. 
Oh, 33 oh having already popped the Doom. This is a dangerous position. They have one more BKB, no more Dooms available on 33. But with Tidehunter dead, it's enough that, at least for now, Quest do not want to chase. Was he preempting a Shaker jump in? Is that what that was? I think so. That was kind of sick. If that had worked and Noob had hopped into that Doom, that would have been insane. Yeah. All right, well, solid coverage. I mean, I guess it goes both ways too. Like maybe like Tide buys back or something crazy. I don't, I don't know, I, but mostly just Noob, I suppose. There's smoke, hoping to find somebody. And this moment of getting the Aegis taken out. Skitter, he's going over to the Ancients and already Noob, they're pinging right where he's going to be. They killed where all the, the camp already though. Uh, it's on Kaori, the Observer Ward. Trying to move in. Tormentor is up, but Skitter, he's going to run into all of them. TA2000, they break the smoke. Ooh. They know he's there. Walking in, but he walked into vision. Oh, they saw him. Oh, my God. Dude, Skitter, that's crazy. They just stood there. New walks in again. They have vision. Take it away. Jumps out. Pops BKB. <laughs> what is happening? And, and, a and there we go. The 57 minute minus on Kyori. Oh, he's got the stones. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Omar, you've been given permission. Go buy the Midas. No, he's fine. They on this. I feel like I can open chat up again now. What's up, guys? <laughs> Wait, BKB CD. Yep. Oh. <laughs> uh, I actually am a little upset that Kari used the Midas right away. Wait, see the cooldown. Actually, yeah, no, he, did, he did the math. He's good. Okay, we'll have we have two charges when the time it comes up. No, he won't. Oh, he'll have one though. Oh, Wait I see minute. what you're saying. Like hold it the whole time. Echo nine under control. Brought down, dude. They're right. fighting it back down. Almost thirty k gold, but Quest are finding a way to make this one work. Sixty thousand net worth on this Naga Siren, 10,000 gold to make. Start buying your other heroes' moon shards. <laughs> uh. Not, nine's just feeding. Oh, with the kills. He's just getting his greedy farm. He's doing his thing. Yeah. He has no cares. He's got his buyback. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're getting the items. We're getting all <laughs> the you items. Know what to do. Listen, like Naga Siren, it's a tough on this hero uh, to, to get the XP, right? The illusions soak it all. So That's now will he well, prep it for the, the tier fives? Well, he's already stacking ancients right now. The, the thing is, is that TA2000 also, this is the second Midas he's bought this game. He started oh, he, the he game. He bought two's in. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. Fissure. Oh, BKB's Stun. there. Ice Blast catches the up. Real the real in. in. The real in's too good. He tries to get out of there. Double Doom and the, the diagram. Song of the Siren got him caught. No help for 33 nearby as they will turn him into some Swiss cheese. Look at the gold. Omar got 20 the last seconds. Hit. 20 seconds. Oh my goodness. All right, dude. Kyrie got the one charge. Midas. I mean, whatever. It's fine. He's using the Midas also to get to 25 for himself. That's fair. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it that one. Come on now. <laughs> We're this close. Get the items. They are stacking the ancients though, and immediately in to clean these ones up. Trying to get tier fives. Again, for anybody that's coming in to tune into this game at the later stages. Uh, this game all started with a bug that is still, as far as we know, currently in effect, where everybody on Tundra, well, actually, at 33, can see which is the real Naga Siren because oh, of a gem, bug. Gem, gem. Now they find he's, he's nine. nine. Caught BKB, tries to run away. Reel him in, baby! Reel him in! Okay, do they decide to go for more? Thinking about it. TA2000 in some trouble. Superman from downtown! And the stun with the Ravage to turn around! Zap, zap, zap from Thompson! They kill off the spend. Now looking for more. See a multi doing work from snaking. Gotta run away. The Naga Siren in trouble, still dying oh. to see a multi, but they are all grouped together as four. Gotta run away. Gotta hide. 
Got to escape. coming back. TP's out. Can they get out he's, of there? Toby's he's got the pirate trouble. hat. They got him caught. D2000 thinking about going for more. Toby, they're going to have to leave him for dead. He maybe gets away, but they can't save him. Oh, yeah, matey. And you've got 150 attack speed. Wait, who has that? Who has pirate hat? And I hit real hard. <laughs> who the hell is this? It's Skinner. Oh, Come on. Skinner does. Jesus. Um, yeah, other items. Let's see. Uh... So pirate hat there, you've got force boots on nine, so even harder to get away. 33 hasn't chosen this item yet. Zeus took giant's ring, which is crazy. That is so sick. Uh, we got force boots on AA, mirror shield for hoodwink, mirror shield for Earthshaker, another pirate hat for Toby, okay. And force boots on Naga. So double mirror shields on uh, quest is gonna be pretty important for Doom. Gotta watch out for that. And it's X Machina for 33. Toby took Pirate Hat? Yeah. What What are his choices that he takes Pirate Hat? <laughs> I don't know. That is kind of crazy, isn't it? I'm like trying to think of five items I would want less. I guess that they're thinking with how long this game has been going on, like the extra gold is probably pretty value for somebody to have. I, I don't know. I, I, I get what you mean, because I think the other thing is that, like, realistically, gold is important, um, but winning the fights is very important, and I don't know. I like I like chat's idea here. They said uh, Pirate Hat equals buyback farm. I mean, that's true. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. Well, 62 minutes, and all hell has broken loose in this game, and again... They can see on 33 which one is the real Naga Siren. Important to keep that in mind. Or at least that's what it was at the beginning of the game. Who knows if that's mm -hmm. still the case. Uh, there's nobody that doesn't have tier 5s, right? Everybody has them at this point? Yes. He, he does not have the talent, guys. You guys are pointing out the talent. He doesn't have that talent. <laughs> All right? All right. Sunspan has the extension, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, yeah, maybe he'll get he'll maybe he'll get there, Level but you got to wait. Yeah, that's fair. Well, another uh, Roche gonna be claimed, and no Aghanim Scepter this time uh, to be gifted because they all have it. Is the point? It doesn't have it yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no, right, you guys are on fire. I gotta say, <laughs> oh, good today. Zeus sold. Okay, he sold. So now he has it again. Okay, so Zeus sold his eggs. And now is actually going to have full refresher as he uh, as he sells it, has the refresher brought out. So just just look at Zeus's inventory for a second. E Blade, yeah. Dagon, Refresher with Aghanim's Wind Waker. The Giant's Ring is actually so sick just for the mobility. Yeah. Like in combination with the Heavenly Jump too, and you know, all the other benefits that you get. Plus it's lore appropriate because he's a god. Right. True. Uh Yep, solid. Another Wind Waker gained, this time by nine. I I do have to wonder, at this point, like, like what, what is it going to take that Tundra feel comfortable going high ground? I don't think there's going to be anything. Because there's, no, there's nothing else in this game that they can get. They don't have Book of the Dead. Like, you're maybe snaking Fallen Skying around or something. But I think they just have to win a fight. And I, I don't think Tundra are ever going to go high ground can't lose if you don't go high ground. I, I don't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, interesting. Another Wind Waker. Okay. Good, good. Keep them coming. Oh, these fights are going to get... Dude, late game Dota is just so crazy at this point. It truly is just initial vision is probably the most important thing yeah. in every single late game in Dota 2. Once we get to this point, it's just who sees who first and they have Zeus. So that's a pretty huge advantage. They also have this immediate uh, 1,358 movement speed charge from Dude. Spirit Breaker. I, I, I was going to say that they had a ward down that two people were on top of and nobody was heading over there. I thought they were going to go for it. Yeah, the Spirit Breaker feels like he's a, a game changer in this along with like the Boots of Travel level 2. That's That's like a mobility mm, element yeah. that quests are just not going to be able to keep up with. They have three boots of travel level two. Um, 
and then a global hero. This game is sitting at about 50-50 right now, by the way, yeah. in terms of what Dota Plus thinks, which is fair, honestly. This fight can go either way. I do love the number of saves on Dire, though. Like, we have no Wind Wakers on the Radiant. And we, do we have three? Is that right? We have three Wind Wakers on Tundra. It's really hard to fight into that. They really need it, too, because the control in the AoE that you get from, from Earthshaker, from a Tide Hunter jump in Ravage, it's going to be incredibly problematic. So Zeus Ulti goes out, and Noob is not TP yet. Omar going for the TP out. They somehow get away with both of them, although they find oh, Noob again. Oh. Break it! He didn't Insane. BKB! Oh, Noob in trouble. Can he manage to escape from this, though? We'll have Blink Dagger back up again in a second. Throws out the Fissure. Oh, the Wind, Wind Waker! Wind Waker in wall <laughs> Dude, what is happening in this game? Noob, another Enchant Totem, but he's silent, oh, and they find dude. him now. He tried to big break. Wait, wait, wait. Nope. Invis, not going to happen. And that's gem down. They don't see the gem, though. And now the fight happening down south. Toby found. Dude, the global element. They run in oh, after nice. this new soul just to find him. Ravage to interrupt the BKB out. Now Toby trying to run away. TA2000, Song of the Siren connects. Connect. Oh, wait, he came in no BKB? To keep him stuck. Has the BKB ready to go, connecting onto Zeus, trying to reel him in, but the Wind Waker gets him away and the illusions immediately evaporate. They don't have a creep wave, though. And Noob doesn't buy back. He doesn't panic. That was actually a pretty wild play from Noob. So what he tried to do was he was hoping that they would blink over those trees and not see him, I think was the play, right? He was trying, like, making the assumption that they would guess he'd jump. Is they're going to lose uh, Kaori down here? I mean, this is... This is just really good play by Tundra. They, they're understanding what they need to do in this late game scenario. Like the charges across the map from nine is making the difference. As soon as he finds anybody, Yule Scepter, double TP in, he gets you. Um, does have the threshold for Ice Blast. They walk high ground. Dual Scepter, that was the Wind Waker used from Topson, but they start to hit the Tier 3 tower. Dude, look at the cooldown. It's a 9.8 second cooldown. That's so crazy. How do you deal with that? Yeah, I don't know if you can. I mean, the, the whole idea of Chain Stun goes out the window now. And Topson, even though he has 51,000 net worth and 12,000 gold in the bank on Topson, he has not bought the shard. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. There's entire builds around the shard. And Thompson's like, I'm a bit of a purist. All right, you know? he bought it right now. He heard me. All right, there we go. Okay, that's good. Oh, geez. This is just the giving my crystal maiden the tormentor purchase. He's just like, I really want to make sure that I don't get it. Yeah. 68 minutes. And the insanity that is the gank squad that comes out. I mean, here's the thing, right? Like they find these pickoffs onto, you know, the AA, they find a pickoff onto, who was it, Toby or was it Noob? Somebody else goes down there, but the outcome of that is like 300 damage onto a tier three tower. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> there was not that much gained for two incredibly important hero pickoffs in these fights. So I don't, I don't know what Tundra needs to feel comfortable for them to like really commit to something. I don't think that they're ever going to unless they get like a full wipe. Yes, they're just going to wait for a big win outside of the base. That, that's all they want. Because like they, they own this map outside the base, man. Like nine, yeah. I, I can't imagine like, sure, yes, you replace Gem with something, but he also really wants the Gem this game. His inventory is fantastic. He even has force boots. I mean, he... <laughs> Like, he does so much damage when he bashes in right now. He's level 30. He's got all those insane talents. This is ridiculous. This is when Dota starts to become, like, a battle of attrition almost, I feel like. And eventually, like, we, we have seen 1,400 last hits for TA2000, uh, most in this tournament so far. And it's, it's not going to stop anytime soon. Um, the thing that we're probably going to see here, we've already seen the mid tier three tower get whittled down by Naga Siren Illusions and that range racks go down. I, I don't know if, uh, 
I mean, Tundra, if they show on lanes and they kind of have to show on lanes to push, there's a chance that maybe you make a big smoke play to kill them. Uh, whereas Quest have the luxury of, you know, Naga Siren being able to spam out the waves regardless. Yeah, it's true. Well, there's the smoke play right now from Tundra. Let's see if they can make their way back here. They don't have much vision at all in terms of what's going on. Um, they have one OBS and four sentries right now on snaking. Find We're people. Scout. Thinking about Kaori. going. Kaori. Nope. Oh. Backing away. Jump. Double blink. Tries to find him. Gets oh, onto triple. a triple blink. And the Song of the Siren is there. Ravage comes out. They reset the fight. That was one Doom used. They still have another Doom and BKB ready to go. And a Wind Waker. And they walk away. The Hex is there. The control comes out, but immediately kept alive. And now the jump board, the Echo Slam immediately runs away. Doom is ready. 33 waiting for the Doom. Wants to jump Get in him out of there. Being onto a hero, but they don't decide to go for it. And now the control is there. Wind Waker, Wall of Doom, tries to get away. Another Refractor used. So, excuse me, Ex Machina used. And then the back out. Nobody dies. Oh, uh, no damage this? onto towers. Uh, what is this custom game? But look. This up, triple blinking Doom. Up top wall that's happening, the tier three tower for Tundra is almost dead. Uh, they, they're whittling it away when these, like, fights over nothing are happening. Getting so ridiculous. Oh, I mean, constantly having this mid lane pushing in is doing so much for them, too, even if it's just the range racks. Very helpful. <laughs> I don't know. I, I love seeing them hit neutral creeps right now. It's just like, yep. How do you, like, how do you fashion an item? Like, is, is there going to come a point where, like, Zeus just has an entire other inventory that he, like, swaps around when he wants to do different stuff? There's three level 30s in this game, and one of them is Spirit Breaker. Nine level he 30. Just, yeah, he just has the Manta build, and then he just has the Spellcast build. He just swaps in between. Right. Let's hold on. i going to use my quick slots here. <laughs> 47,000 gold lead. And in terms of Dota plus win probability, it's at 54 to 46%. Gold does not matter right now. Everybody except for AA has buyback. Bro, he just used two Midas charges on a creep wave and got hit by a Nimbus. Like, give him a break. Yeah. So he's been waiting for those. He has a moon shard. <laughs> yeah, he handed it over to him. <laughs> Level 30 for an, the Earthshaker and another aid just going to be claimed. Nobody can get the Agadims this time, I don't think. Pretty sure they all have it sin. Uh, yes, they definitely do. All right, Snake King just kills it. And stacking up cheese is, oh, you know what it's time for? Where's, Where's that? that block of cheese, baby? Oh, I have not been keeping an eye on the lowest pools at all. They're, they've been taken pretty well. Does anybody have anything close to it? They have one greater Lotus on Spirit Breaker. Um, not seeing that many other Lotuses. Oh, okay. I see we're uh, we're gonna do a little bit of defusing here. Who took that? It looks like from nine. He's got himself the disperser. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> I mean, what's the what's the thought process here? You know, more item. What are they dispelling? Oh, dispelling cold feet. That's pretty good. Get him. I don't even know, man. Oh, he found a gem. His speed is going to oh, be off the chain. Oh, he just left it. He just doesn't have a place to pick it up. How much speed is he going to get up to? Courier's making its way. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Group together. 33. Walks forward. Echo slam. Control is there. Where is it? Where's the save? There's nothing. No Wind Waker. But it doesn't matter. Now off to the side. Kaori tries to back away. He has no movement speed. Slow down the guts. The right click. Kaori says, fight me. I got an Agonyms, baby. Couple more hits. Wait, but the dead in the water. It. And the turn. Now the doom. Fissure block up. Oh, noob. What a play. What a save. Oh, he's thinking about it. He almost goes back in with the Wind Waker. Coulda. Decides not to. 
<laughs> yeah, Tundra, they don't want to take the chance. Okay. You know they have those, like, challenges of, like, how long can you keep your hand on the car or something? That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like this. How how long can you not go high ground? You know, the last person to, to finally give up and say, well, go high ground is the one that loses. I love how they just hunt nine because he's the one who's just been in the most vulnerable spots this entire time. No detection. He's going to make a big prediction. TP coming in right They're now. They're coming it's in Doom. with Doom. They're oh, coming with everybody. TPs. They oh, find Toby. They got him pop, but the Yule Scepter lift up. Toby now in trouble. Does have Ravage ready. Ice Blast out. Trying to find him, but 33 able to force Staff away. Omar under fire. He's in trouble. Does have the A on this Brock, but there's the Ravage. The turnaround comes out. TA2000 trying to do what he can. Skitter can't find his target. Already they explode Omar, though. Dies to the Dagon and everything else as Toby tries to get away. He will be caught, though. Frostbite from the freezing field. An eventual kill. The fight ends up going massively into their favor as Nine finds himself a creep wave. I thought that was another hero. He is so fast. Yeah, 3 3 was close there to maybe finding new before he TV back home, but he can't quite get it. As 76 minutes in, they get two kills outside of the base. This is what they've been waiting for. And Skitter will jump if he sees anything right now. He wants to burn this BKB. He's getting annoyed. X. Oh, I saw another fourth. Keeps him fine. Jump in. 33 onto two. Is there a save? Doesn't look like it. That is going to be a dead Kyori. As the control is there, he falls. Does go for the buyback. That's double buybacks now. Can they get anything out of this? If you chase too far out of the base, you might just lose the game. Man, he has been level 27 for so long on Toby. I've just been waiting. I wanted to see the pirate hat. I wanted to see the anchor smash talent. We're not getting there. No, it's not happening. And noob. Oh, noob. I mean, nine has been able to do so much in this game. It feels like to me feeling like the MVP. Probably. <laughs> Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I could pick a lot of people. Yeah, I could say so, though. I think so. Like, with the way that he controlled the map, too, and the way that he was just uh, forcing these these charges like throughout the entire map and it never mattered when he died like whenever he died he always had buyback and he did a global charge yeah i go with that also he had like the first pick hero too and he's still making it this relevant right i can't believe this is still just game one <laughs> the first, yeah the first game of the day no <laughs> not a boss please no oh geez man as something for, for reference, on. I was texted from my wife, how are your games going? And I said, slow, might be done. Uh, and I said, in an hour and a half. And she said, when did you start? Question mark, question mark, <laughs> question mark. Yeah, that'll, uh, that'll yeah. happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe they're going to ask for a remake. Yeah, you got <laughs> 2,000 is ready. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the remake is fine. Honestly, uh, just, you know, get us out of here. <laughs> Let's just do a redraft. I, I, that'd be so funny. <laughs> it'd, it'd be like, <laughs> that's what they almost did for that crazy long game, right? Uh, the game just started. I think that's a pretty, uh, the fun is here for me now. I think that it's a decent point that like, in a lot of ways, we're <laughs> finally playing a whole new game of Dota here. Uh, which Nate King's laughing. <laughs> I don't know. 66,000 gold lead, but still very much a game that could go either way. I think the big thing, of course, is those three buybacks. Um, but I don't know if that's going to be enough to make Tundra want to go high ground. You know who's really suffering here is just Roche. I thought you were going to say Owie. No, <laughs> just Roche. Just like, again, yeah. like, I have nothing left to give you. Tundra just keep killing him. I really hope you guys took Tundra on team with the most Roche kills. I did. That's currently at five. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Too. Although who knows? Maybe by the end of this one, Quest will take it. <laughs> that is true. I'm currently right on all my predictions. I don't know about you. Uh, let me check. Because uh, I did not choose. Um, what did you choose? 21 agent camp stacks? Yeah, I chose that. Uh, it was 11 to 15, but I was right on player gets the longest kill streak so far, which was Skitter at seven. Uh, Same and player with highest net worth at 10 minutes, which was 33. Same. All right. 
See if we can lock it down. Uh, the Fox's left ear says, at Trent, uh, TA2000, 1,000 plus GPM at 78 minutes. That's true. That is kind of insane. Thank you for pointing that out. That's quite gnarly. He's just so incredibly farmed. Which I think was in the predictions, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, this is feeling like one of those games that uh, is just... It's going to break the majority of the records for the tournament, probably. You would imagine. It's 3 a.m. here in Philippines, and I have work tomorrow. End this game. <laughs> you didn't quite finish that message there, I noticed. Uh, well, I, you know, I family-friendly <laughs> did a little bit there. Not wrong. And yep, here it is. I know, I know. You guys all need to sleep. I know. This is the win probability right now for Dota Plus. Oh, my God. Uh, it's still It's still that close. I mean, the the reality of it is that if Tundra win one more fight and, like, those heroes without buyback die again, I think it's... It might not be over at that point. There's still a tier two top! There's still <laughs> a tier... Why? How have you not taken that yet, Tund? Like, is that too much of a commitment? I made stand? extra coffee for our BO2, and now I'm out. I have drank all my coffee, and... How, how long? It's a 78 minute game, but we started two hours ago. That is crazy, dude. There's still another tier two bottom, also. Oh, wow. Oh, all right. Yeah, we might actually, like, okay, let's take a realistic approach of how long we <laughs> might actually still be in this one. Well, um, luckily, we have tiebreakers we were not scheduled for a cast after this so right. that's good no but i mean yeah. how, how long do you think reasonably this game might actually keep going uh i actually think the tundra are gonna do it i think that it's it's over soon i think this game ends before i'm gonna say before 90 okay in the next 12 minutes i think this game ends so i think that that is possible that's like that's <laughs> something that Thank can you. happen but i think realistically based upon how tundra have played i think we might be in this game for another hour because i don't i think in terms of like making sure they don't make mistakes making sure they don't overextend like that that tundra tenacity of just making sure that they never put themselves in a bad position oh i good. i think if you play that to its maximum oh i don't see illusions by the way all right there we go 33 let them know that's some good quality stuff right there um, I think that if that's the case, that it, like if you don't want to take any risks, it, it could still be another hour. All righty. But I think you're right. They should. End uh, soon. I think they're going to end. I think the buybacks. I mean, how much time do we have left after this pause here? So it's still six minutes there, folks. Six and a half, 620, 613. For those oh, they're already there for you, fine folks. Excellent. Thank you very so much. So you think server. they're going to go? Glam helping out. You think that they're going to? Yes. Okay. I think they will capitalize on this, assuming they remember about the buybacks, which I'm sure they do. Yeah. Uh, the Tormentor gives some gold. Woohoo! Aeon Disc, four staff away. Omar's fine. Sitting in the fountain, dropping gems down, dropping healing lotuses down. Oh. They go out and forge for the lotuses to get the uh, the goodness. Imagine if they have the lotuses, but no cheeses, and it could have actually <laughs> happened. <laughs> Set up a trade. All right, meet in the middle. <laughs> What is, is it? Three graders? I actually don't even remember. I don't know. I, I have no idea. Fissure out. But nothing really follow up there. Uh, level 25s, or rather, not 25s, 30s. Uh, everybody on Tundra, yeah, except grader. for Snake King, has level 30. Yeah, meanwhile, on the Radiant, it's not. Is it just Noob? Yeah, it's just Noob. Yeah. Who's level 30? Whatever happened to that minus? T8000 dished it pretty fast, huh? Yeah. Oh, he rebought it. Oh, oh, he. Okay. <laughs> well, that was. I mean, because same thought, honestly. Oh, wait. Oh, it keeps the. Yeah, that would be pretty funny, actually. So is he. Uh, he's rebought because he has so much gold that he just wants the experience. Could you. Wait, it did. You keep the cooldown, though, right? That would be insane. That would actually be so broken. I don't know. I, I mean, he rebought it right now, and it looked like it was a restarted cooldown. And he has 27,000 gold. Does that work? I don't like, know. Like, if he takes this and sells it and just buys another one, does it go back to, like, immediately available? I feel like that's not how it works. Jump in, finding one. 
See, this is the problem too right here, right? Like you look at that play, he can't commit onto nine because if there's a TP onto him with Doom, like they're dead. And you can see Skitter runs in through bottom, able to sneak in and take away that range track. It was always going to fall down. So they do get one of their own now on Tundra. <laughs> Oh, I just keep my eye on TA2000. I, I want to see this Midas mode that he's working on here. <laughs> I want to see the this mad science he's concocting. He's at 29,000 gold. The current gold stat has never been both more relevant and less relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Chat's asking about divines, but I mean, it's not really a divine game. No, no one really benefits. Like Sven, Sven doesn't really care about a divine. No. It's not really worth it to him with like bots too and stuff. Like he's kind of down to just YOLO. I mean, he's got his refresher and stuff. And then you got a Naga Siren on the other side. It doesn't really benefit from it either. So, so I, I think we're divineless here, folks. I mean, I guess theoretically, nah, no, not really. We're divineless. Uh, I mean, it might happen at some check. point. Um, There's three minutes left on these buybacks and it looks like Tundra is set up to make something happen <laughs> for it. There is Roche back up in a minute and a bit. So if they take a fight in a bad way here, Fissure backs away. Nice play to interrupt that. That was really well done. Uh-oh, I'm getting a little nervous with this 90 minute decision. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's dangerous, right? If you go without Roche, there is going to be this window where Roche respawns and then they can maybe take a fight okay. then. But Oh, look, they're trying to get here so fast right now. They find Will it one. be nine again? He just wind wakered. Okay. Has refresher. Nullifier. Jump in. BKB. Yeah, he can't Chasing. live. He cannot live. Running. Oh, the real in. And then the Fisher. The connection. Tries to TP out. It's not going to happen. They got him. And Jason <laughs> Bowser gives him the tip. 82 minutes in. All right. The last time they got a kill. Uh. Oh, my God. When was it? Wait. They find another? Oh, oh wait. Oh, hold, hold. Uh, somebody has to get an abyssal blade, surely. Dude, it was like, it was like 22 minutes ago. They last got a kill, I think. Is that right? Maybe. That seems kind of crazy. All right. Oh, jeez. And yeah, see and he immediately tips. First. That's a Dota player, dude. First kill in 22 minutes, tip him. Okay, they're going down for Roche without Spear Breaker. Um. Harry not going to try and make any ice blast play to see if they can scout it out. Instead, just focusing at the moment on getting these waves shoved and farming a bit for what they're worth. <laughs> but another Aegis killed. Oh, no. And another cheese that Snaking has to take. Uh, There's only a minute combining. left on buybacks, Lyrical. They left cheese. He didn't want to combine a third one on Snaking. Yeah, and, and they, they have buybacks to back up again. Basically, I mean, uh, what's the angle on this cheese here? If we take a look at it on the ground, I feel like what one, two, three, four, what, maybe six cheeses. Is that a sixth of a cheese? Uh, so they're going to get that it. Could also make a block of cheese. Oh wait a minute, Toby, they find him. Okay, that is the danger of this type of play. The combination of like Zeus with all of this crazy shit is so gnarly. Yeah. It's, it's so good late game. Just the pure vision aspect. I mean, we've seen 3-3 using these multiple blinks over and over. And like, Topson is just waiting here. If he finds somebody, they're dead. Like, immediately. Oh. Giant's ring has really paid off. They finally are going to take this tier 2 tower, it looks like. Um... So more objectives being claimed. A refresher now done on snaking as they hunt in. Kyori caught in no man's land. A good stun though. Oh, they're all caught together. Do they have any follow-up though? They can't really go. Nine is brazenly running into all oh. of them. It's the man to dodge away for the moment. Rooted, Skitter. reeled in, able to get away. Skitter goes for the tower. He's had it. They're enough. distracted. I mean, this is, they're, they're going in now pretty far. 33 in, doesn't have another Doom. Tries to jump away with one. That was no buyback on AA, although he's about, oh, he doesn't have the gold for it, actually, of all things. Dude, this inventory management rate right now from 3-3. Uh, he uses the Maka. Stun, finds it, Noob in trouble, but he gets it off. 
the Yule save, tries to escape, not gonna happen. CM ulti too strong, K2000 has to jump away. Noob, under fire, now reeled in. Can he get out of there? Toby pops the Ravage, tries to bring him down. CM still surviving. Another Yule, oh, there was the but they the G's off. Extra one, Echo Slam, second round. Do they have enough? 33 in with the Doom, connects onto him. The turn is there, they have a lot of damage out. And another don't Ravage. quite manage to get the kill, but another Ravage is there. Pulls him in closer and closer, trying to take down 33, but can't do it. Stuck on the wrong side of the fissure is Skinner. Get the he spin. starts to die, he starts to fall. Can they get it off the heel? It's so much. Team 2000 tries to run away, but the control is there. Everybody back alive, back into this fight. They don't have time for a Thompson. little while longer. Trying to buy space, Team 2000 back into the fountain. They finally keep him alive, but Zeus is dead. And now the jump in onto Omar, he's gone. On. Buy back Thunder God's Wrath. End this damn game. Let us move on with our life. I don't know if it's going to happen, but Tundra trying to close this one out. They jump in again. Omar under control and trying to take down TA2000. Noob is there with the jump, but TA2000 finally falls. Buys back immediately. Ancient exposed. Tundra, they've had enough. They don't want any more. Song of the Siren. Yeah, Five that more was time. Stop, dude. They stop. To slow down. They have a back up again. Noob there. Looks for the Fisher. Ice Blast. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's no way. There's no way this should happen. Are they actually going to hold this? Snaking. It's four steps away. Hitting. They try to escape Kyori throwing snowballs, but the agent is exposed. In the end, the right clicks are going to come through, and Tundra <laughs> win the game. 87 minutes. What in the heck was that, man? I mean, I'd say just like, you know, GG oh. easy, probably, if I had to summarize that one uh, as, a, oh. as a Dota player. It sounds about right. Oh, okay. All right. So Tundra, they tundered that one pretty hard, oh. you know? Because we're just going to control this map. I, I got to appreciate it, though, because you really don't want to chuck a game going high ground. And uh, tons of space made in the end. They had... The Wind Wakers in combination with the Refreshers and the Aeon Discs and then the Ex Machina as well. 3-3 uh, three, three did an excellent job in the later parts of this game. I feel like he just controlled that entire zone and Skidder just hit buildings and they were able to just clean this one up. Oh. Um, How you doing there, bud? You're, you're right. You're right. There's these it's moments right. where you, you, you see this AA come back in, the Ice Blast connect, they're all grouped together and they just didn't have the damage that they needed. It was almost there. That's still just the first game of the day. It's good. Wow. That's a good little warm up, I would say. Thanks, everyone. Um, shout out to our uh, our far eastern viewers who are currently, uh, well, at least eastern for me, at least. Uh, you're 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 tired. Mm. It's the middle of. Well, I guess it's the morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of good night when you started watching this. Oh but yeah. Good morning. So uh, welcome. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of numbers there. They're all really big. They're kind of meaningless at this point. It's true. I, I mean, I think the big thing for me, you don't plan for games like that to go that way. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, it was, we talked about a very greedy draft from Tundra that got to an end game that was just checkmate, right? <laughs> yeah. Spirit Breaker charges, Zeus ultis after, or flip that, Zeus ulti, Spirit Break charges, whoever's on the map dies. And... In the end, they just, it, it was, it was unstoppable. I think for me, oh. MVP still feels like nine. Do you think 33? We can give it a nine. All right, nine. Yeah, we can go nine. Give it the Spirit Breaker. Oh. Hand it over. There's a lot of reasons for a, a lot of people in this game to, to hand it over, but uh, I think nine just constantly disrupting anything they wanted to do. Because if you wanted to win a fight at the end of this game there, um, for PSG Quest, it, it felt like it had to be like through good setup and like careful coordination and stuff. And then the Spirit Breaker charging through the whole time just really breaks a lot of those ideas. And yeah. I think his control of the map was excellent. They they really hampered the efforts of the Naga Siren. Sure, they delayed the game, but the waves never got to a point where it felt like Quest could actually leave the base confidently. Uh, every time they left because of this ability to just like scout out and get these like multiple blinks off from 3-3, it was very hazardous. So big part of that was definitely uh, nine. Well, he looks happy about it now. They looked happy about the win. Um, we'll see what happens in game number two. It feels like the type of thing to me that could absolutely just, I mean, it could be over in like 10 minutes, but holy crap. I'm looking at some of these numbers too. You talked about it. Uh, 1250 GPM on TA 2000 throughout the entire course 
of that 127 minute game. Insane. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go to a break though. When we come back, we're going to have game number two. We'll see you on the other side.
And hello and welcome back, everybody. We are here again, uh, ready for some more Whee! insanity. Trentster, I'm just refreshing the page on Dota Buff so I can look at the draft again because I forgot what happened uh, <laughs> over an hour and a half ago. I think that game probably from start to finish, pauses included, was two hours long, I think. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that's going to take a toll on you. I mean, it's one thing to be casters for it. Playing that game, you can kind of right. see in the end. I saw a lot of people just kind of like, standing there now they're not even doing like the walk back and forth a little bit it's, it's when you see the aa just like stops moving for a second yeah and it's like 10 seconds long you're like oof that's a tough one that that's one of those moments where it's eat like it, you know they have those things where it's like herald level dota or pro level dota for item build <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, it's yeah. like pro level gameplay or like jack falling asleep while playing dota at 2 a.m gameplay it's the same yeah. thing exactly the same thing um Shout out to KBBQ Dota. Uh, as we are into the game right now, and a draft should be coming up in just a moment here. Um, in terms of that draft, I'm looking back through it real quickly, do you think yeah. we see a very similar thing or is stuff going to change? Well, I just, I want to just go back to like that last pick where you were like, man, I really hope they don't pick Zeus. Yeah, I was wrong. That's that just wrong. what I remember that hearing. Was, I was not correct about that one. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind and of then they, then they won. But it, a lot of it because of the Zeus. I just wanted you to remember that. Right. So here's the thing. I also equivocated my statement immediately after saying, man, that <laughs> Zeus, I don't want to see it with. I don't so want to see it because we're going to go to like 90 minutes. And guess what happened? We went to 90 minutes. It was a good pick, but I didn't like it. Oh, all right. You were, you were double right. Uh, turned you. out. Five Thank you. All righty. There are our lovely players. Oh, they look so energized. Ooh. Woo! Go, go, go. I mean, they look all right. I mean, you, at least you won, right? True. You played that long game. You got the W. I will say, Quest, they were looking pretty cheery throughout that game, too. L lots of laughs and fun times there. I'm, I feel oh, they kind of knew he does exist. I was worried. Sorry, we didn't see him last draft, so I was a little worried about him. They interrupted <laughs> you. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's fine. We're good, please. It's more important that we know that Owie exists. I don't even remember what I was saying. That's good. Uh, well, one yeah. thing that you did say was that you, like, at least they won that game, which, mm -hmm. you know, now, looking at the other team, a uh, bit of a rough one to, to lose out on that one. Uh, so they look hungover. Yeah. <laughs> that game was an experience. Five seconds remaining. Well, in terms of the draft, the changes that we're seeing, what is it? Phoenix still banned, Tango banned, TA banned. And on the other side, it was Invoker in the first phase, uh, along with Earth Spirit. Still in is Brewmaster, Nature's Prophet. Uh, and those are the main ones. And then the question of like Spirit Breaker and Naga. The Spirit Breaker is definitely a big one for me. I, okay. uh, I don't think I really want to see that one left there. I think Quest might take it first overall here. Okay. I guess. Uh, and then the other big one, I guess, would be Tree. Because he's still just kind of chilling there, huh? Was he ignored last draft? Uh, yes. Yes, he was. Okay. So they're going to ban. They're going to take the other Tree fella. Got himself to Nature's Prophet. Right. And banning out the Spirit Breaker. I, I kind of like that. Um, The other thing that we should mention is just the, the state of the group stage as well that's going on um while these these games are happening uh it is again quests that are trying to maintain in decent position in this group tundra are already sitting the top of it and they have secured with that last win that they move on uh yes. quest though on the other hand needing to get some wins here and i i mean that puts them at six wins right uh yes and who does TSM still play? Like, am I crazy? TSM uh, still has... Because no one else can get to six, right? Five yeah. Yeah, so they, they're guaranteed first. They're guaranteed upper bracket, exactly. Um, Talon... Yeah, but, they're, but they're even guaranteed point, or like choice, I right. believe, for Tundra. Exactly. Yeah. Um, TSM, or excuse me, Talon, on the other hand, they won their next two games that they played this morning already. Spoiler alert for that one. Uh, which now puts quest in a really rough position if they get o 2 here then they're bottom of the group with talent and they would oh, set them up and for maybe stars yeah they'd all be two four yes oh no 
Uh, yeah, it's and then who does Keith Saris play though? Then, so, then it becomes a decider. Oh Keith my Keith Saris plays against TSM and Talon versus uh, Quest for the last match. So it sets up in a situation where Keith Stars could still end up bottom of the group, or if everybody won ones in those last two games, it would be yeah. a three way tie for one spot going home. Yeah, then if they all won one, then TSM gets second, and then those three all wind up being, yeah. Just playing a best of three to see who gets eliminated. Or sorry, best of ones probably to see who gets eliminated. Yeah. Around the BO1s. Well, All right. Well, that's terrifying. And I mean, these teams very familiar with having to play best of ones to, you know, break ties as we've seen happen a lot throughout the European uh, qualifiers for yeah. events this entire year. Um, but again, it all comes down to if you can win, you take yourself out of that uh, situation to a large extent, not completely for Quest, but it would help a lot. This win matters so much, and for Tundra, it matters not a whole heck of a lot, except trying to build momentum going into the next stage on the road to TI. I'm just a smile there from Noob, though. Yeah, they still, they still got some energy. Uh, Tundra, have they been messing around with this bristleback already? Because I don't remember seeing it. No, they have not. So. This is the first time they brought out the Bristleback so far this tournament. They did defeat TSM's Bristleback. And they will, in fact, grab that Dream Protector since he is left in and seems to have fallen down in the uh, the pick value. They even ban Omar's Hoodwink. Get a new hero. Interesting. Might be doing him a favor. I mean, it would pair kind of nicely with the Nature's Prophet. It'd be kind of cute. It is interesting because so far at this tournament, uh, let's see. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. It's your strat, bud. Is it? Oh. It's online. The Azure. Uh, we did witness them defeat Liquid. The only loss that Liquid had yesterday was to Azure playing a strategy with his Nature's Prophet and Luna. It was FY playing the Nature's Prophet, and he really, he just got rolling in the early game. And then once nighttime hit with that bonus damage on top of his own bonus damage, he was all over the map causing problems with his urn constantly killing people and he had the uh was it, it was the most kills ever at the international at nine minutes courtesy of knoxville so that's pretty wild and now the shadow demon's there too so i, I just wanted to kind of do a little bit of research while you were talking about that um we did see the value and the power of this combination that's coming out from quest and on the other side after having secured their spot tundra now uh they they have not played any of these heroes before Mm -hmm. So definitely a situation where they're attempting to try some new stuff out. Um, it could also just be that they think this is maybe an answer for the Nature's Prophet because they've been playing Nature's Prophet a good amount themselves. Uh, and they think that this is a good answer to it. But um, a, a new direction from Tundra here in this game. Yeah, and the Shadow Demon is really cool here because uh, you're obviously going to have a Dispel versus Living Armor. If you get the Aghanims, eventually you have the Break versus Bristleback. You're paired up with a Luna, so you can even do some cheesy illusion stuff. That's a lot of nice benefits that you're going to have going here. And Tundra going to bring out another hero who doesn't want to be broken. Uh, so the Agnum's now for Shadow Demon is insanely good. <laughs> you get a break. You get a break. Another hero that they haven't played this tournament. Okay. A lot of uh, tanky heroes is what I'm seeing right now. Oh, yeah. Five seconds remaining. Trying to isolate out that Shadow Demon as well, of course, with the Desolate can be very sad for Shadow Demon to get caught out like that. Yeah. does have a better answer to it than some other things, but I think the other thing that we're seeing here is if this gets to late game scenarios again, I mean, obviously we don't imagine that this next game is going to go to like 80 minutes, uh, but if it does, you kind of run into a similar scenario with like the Zeus stuff where you just find somebody on the map and pick them up and kill them. And Tundra take another hero that they have not played at TI. They have not played any of these heroes at TI so far. I, I wonder if they're just like, guys, let's take a little break. Let's have a chill, fun game of Dota. Play what we want to play uh, after securing their spot moving on. Or are they just like, this is the best? Uh, it could be a little bit of both. Ooh, oh, wow. God. Viper into Rubik. I mean, obviously, again, the breaks are insanely valuable. There's no doubt about that. If the Shadow Demon is five, it's very hard to get eggs. If it's four, it's reliable to get eggs, but it's always going to come later. So if the if the break just becomes that good, then it's more important to just get it as fast as you can. And Viper is the hero in the game who has the fastest and most reliable break that you can get. Tundra 
but Jeez. it's still a, a hero that not a lot of teams want to opt for. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that like you, you, you know, put the nail on the head though, the break and how good it is. This game just is part of what makes them feel comfortable doing it. I do wonder a little bit about their control in this game. Uh, they're not super mobile heroes on Tundra, like Spectre is in weird ways. Bristleback just kind of stands there. Um, so Viper, in a way, does kind of, you know, if you Viper strike one of these heroes, they're just kind of stuck there for a bit. Yeah, and that's always been a problem with Viper, too, is trying to find an item build. Because sometimes you feel forced to take the Atos, but then it doesn't necessarily feel that great. At least it has some build up now. True. And now Kunkka and the Dazzle. Tundra will have the last Five pick overall. Is there anything that you're seeing? Do you like this Viper probably off lane, or do you think that's end up being mid? I mean, my initial guess is Noob, because he definitely plays Viper, uh, and he is certainly willing to take it mid. I think in pro matches, though, we definitely see it more often in the off lane. Uh, it would be into the Spectre. It would probably be... I assume the tree seems like the more likely way you would set this up, right? Nine takes the Rubik. He goes in the off lane with the bristle. They spam a little bit. Uh, I think you could run it off lane if they can find something that's a little bit more active. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to counter mid though, and they don't have last pick. I mean, Tundra just assumed like, hey, I don't want to mess with a uh, one of these other mid heroes for noob that he likes. So get rid of the Kunk get rid of the tiny. Try and stop any snowball potential there. If they're going to ban out that Zeus. Fair. Tundra esports turn to pick. And they Run grab the these. Ah, okay, keeping their options open even further. This is a very aggro lineup. I like this a lot. I mean, you have tower takers, you have building hitters, you have fighters, you've got gap close. I really like the quest draft. It's really important control too for the Viper, because you really don't want to go Atos build, right? Like you want to do yeah. some like Dragon Lance thing, you wanna you wanna get into the hurricane fight, you wanna keep clicking people. Uh so Try and avoid that as much as possible. Looks good. Still going to be concerned about the Rubik for sure. Stealing the uh, the break is always one of the better things you can do. And only a little bit of time left here to find presumably Thompson's hero, unless he feels like playing mid Rubik. Ah, oh, there it is. It got banned last game, but is it the Thompson Bugna? It is indeed. All right. Wow. Bringing back a classic. It wasn't Seattle where he got to play it. It was Vancouver, but it's pretty close. So... He's going to be bringing back one of his most famed heroes. It's been a long time. Well, and while it is a comfort pick for him and something that he's played a lot, I should mention that continues the streak. Every single one of Tundra's heroes is one that they have not played so far at this tournament. Um, so it, it, it's a change up because they were running uh, a couple of drafts that looked somewhat similar to each other, but willing to try out a bunch of different stuff here. Um, in these, you know, valuable matches to figure out the idea. So much of what the road to TI and TI itself is, is getting a good read on what's going on in Pro Dota and how they need to act um, and getting a, a chance here to, to mess around with some stuff. And you, you mentioned earlier the, uh, the idea of like, you know, the lowest MMR and then the pro game. Sometimes the ideas blend a little bit together. Uh, his last pub, he did go Aether and then immediately towards Dagon 5. Yes. So, <laughs> oh, please. Also known as the Slacks build, although Slacks wouldn't get an Aether. That seems a little bit out of his style. Bro. Uh, but uh, I mean, there's a couple different choices, obviously. Um, Octarine, still really valuable in this hero, too. And uh, looking forward to seeing what Dobsa does with uh, one of his favorites. So, and it is Toby Viper. It is new Primal Beast. I think that's the, the one that people would mostly expect. And everything else shakes out the way you would think. We'll see uh, uh, how much stacking Omar is able to get done. That's what I really want to yes. see in this one. That's by far the most important thing here is having the Shadow Demon on position four. I think it's way better than having the, the Nature's Prophet in that case. He's going to be on the dire side. So you get uh, that Ancient Camp you can reach really easily as well as the Hard Camp. So if you have a hero that can farm Ancients early, you can prioritize that. If you have a hero that farms the Hard Camp a little bit more easily, you can prioritize that just by from the same essentially spot. You can like Shadow Poison both, which is always nice. Or just run there in time if you've got the... Uh, the space for it so yeah see if he can accelerate his off lane but more importantly get his own golden xp get towards that uh Agon scepter and if a philly stone ever shows up he is going to be oh. the happiest shadow demon in the world uh we'll see if that indeed happens as we get ready to hop into this game number two of an incredibly long opening series of the day one entire series has already finished in the amount of time that it took for these teams to play <laughs> this one game together 
uh, and see if it happens again. This is one of those uh, series that really creates a nice bond between two teams, you know? Oh, yeah. They're always going to remember this one. I remember that time we went like, you know, for an hour, <laughs> for 90 <laughs> minutes when we were stuck for two hours in that game versus uh, their quest and I could see their illusions. That was cool. I think it's going to be different this time. Um, and I uh, particularly like having Kyori on this, this nature's profit. That's what I'm thinking is going to be the game changer. Uh, it feels like this combination of, you know, right click that he's going to have with the, the lunar blessing eventually is just going to do so much damage in this lane. Although are they swapping things up is no T 2000s running back top. Okay, good. I was like, there's no way that they stick him bottom. Another thing that we've talked about before with the Luna is that if you look at the uh, the win rates for Luna just right now in like top tier pubs, she's pretty significantly better on that dire side, and a lot of that comes down to having the uh, the Mighty Minds buff, being able to get some HP regen since you don't have any any naturally, but you got these Moon Glaives, so it could be a little bit faster for you to farm up on that top part of the map. So they have that benefit going for them on the side of uh, quest here, as they're gonna find three three making his way up the hill and driving back. Oh, nice little sneak away here. Make sure that quest can. Pick themselves up the double bounty runes. OB, some trouble hoping to escape. They move in with nine. Nine does have a fade bolt. I think Toby's gone. Yeah, they got dagger back soon. Yeah, he's going to end up dying. Wants to do what damage he can to snaking beforehand, but they do manage to draw first blood. Skitter picking it up. A good way to start the game. Gets even the value dagger hit onto Omar at the same time, too. So, and Snakey stands by the one tree that was left. Oh, Snakey. All right. Just mad chilling there. Okay. The damage. Needs to be careful there. And will be forced back for the moment. But it is for the second now, a full-on tri lane as Nine has stayed down bottom. This is uh, setting up to some pretty good bullying onto 33, who... Yeah, uh, Toby? In Are trouble. they going to try this? 33 is also going to die. So TA2000 gets that kill. And then on the bottom side, trying to do what they can here, Omar, and they get hit a bit. Lots of action at the early stages. Yeah, I don't know. That was pretty greedy. Uh, trying to use another blood grenade, maybe hoping to uh, get a second kill on the Toby for the walk of shame. Really shut down his game. But instead, yeah, 3-3 three, three is getting hung out to dry a little bit here gonna have to send him back through to the other side no way to, to keep that tri lane going when they're losing the bristle back and in fact bristle he's got to be so careful at the very least they have fade bolt damage reduction but having this point in lunar blessing with the, the hard hitting nature's profit is pretty scary particularly once they get up to the second level of it oh mid Thompson down is it going to be enough for the kill? Yes, it will. And up top, there's more damage that was thrown out. They managed to kill off 33. Lots of action. Yeah. He just got straight up trampled on. Caught out in the river there versus the Primal Beast. Not sure how it happened. I was still watching the battle up top, but that's a huge one there for Noob. Not first blood, of course, but three to one for them. And he gets both water runes off of that without missing anything. Thompson does get a D ward though. He runs straight up, says, I know that ward's there. Right. So he does get in at the very least. Much needed. And kind of a weird one. A lot of times you would see this, uh, you know, decrep used to try and one, whittle down your opponent, but two, stop them from last hitting. He can't really do either against the primal beast. He can trample for CS if it's really bad. And, you know, you're not really whittling down the <laughs> zero. He's got a huge HP pool. He's at a thousand HP already. Yeah, he does have the boots now, too. I mean, obviously, Pugna, a very fast hero. But if he finds the right angle, and perhaps, perhaps right. like near a cliff or something, it could be bad. Comes back in and gets the Lotus. Well, look at this trample. Out onto 33. Keeps oh, him in Thompson's play. almost dead. Noob Mid? committing? Oh, Noob's Gone. crazy. There's so much action. I mean, they're playing really aggressively in both of these lanes. Kind of terrified right now. Yeah, I don't even know where to watch. Everyone's vulnerable. Uh, I saw the urn was picked up already here for Skitter. This is something we're seeing a lot. We're seeing a lot of Radiance builds uh, out of the Spectres right now. That's what we had in our last game. This one, uh, that looks pretty solid. I, I could see him going either way and kind of being all right with it. Maybe see how the game starts. 
Right. The other way being like, you know, manta, more manta based style to, to begin with. Diffusal, yeah. That as well. Sometimes we see it. Pops in, heads on over, picks up the bounty rune. New wants to onslaught through to the far side and manages to do just that. Kyori shows up, ensures that there was no way he's going to get that water rune, and now TP's back to lane. So doing a good job of controlling and nine actually in some trouble himself. Lucent Beam needs one more hit and is gonna get it. The TA 2000 off to a great start. Three kills on this Luna, a hero that wants this snowball to occur. Yeah, I mean, getting kills with level two Lucent Beam feels great because, you know, obviously you're investing a lot when you're going for this and you're taking away from possibilities of your farming. So you really wanna make sure you're actually pressuring in the laning stage if you've gone this route. Which most of our Luna's there. And move on to Omar. And Skitter will manage to get that kill, but a couple stacks of poison and Toby cleans up. Can Skitter get the follow up? Now onto this Viper. Does have the healing salve ready going underneath oh, the tower. Desolate. And it's enough. Skitter just brings him down for a double kill. Now, does he earn up? He does indeed. Oh, that's oh noob though. Kyori. Oh, will this work? They are gonna get Kyori instead in the mid. Yes, nine Let's brings get her down, down bottom. All ends. They move in to find the kill on the skitter. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's such a good part about Primal Beast. He's very puck esque in that regard. Like how, how quick you can just go to the tower and guarantee a kill with your six. Oh yeah. Gets a bottle refill too there. Thank you, Toby. And. You can see here that 33, after a pretty tragic start to his laning stage, is just cutting the wave. He he knows he can't stay here against TA2000 and level three. I mean, this is really good for him, actually. If he can make that happen, his mid lane tops in. <laughs> Some copium. It's just, this is really good for him. He's running around with his creep wave. I know what you mean, but I mean, you gotta take the positive. it would also be nice to just play the lane, you know? That's true. The fact he can get away with it is making uh, lemonade as snake yeah, King is going to be turned to a lemon. Let but yeah, treat. look at 33. I mean, he's got a triple wave up here. Dire they're oh my God, they glyphed it and they're making the move up. He's still going to get to finish off the whole thing, though. He I, might. That's mango huge. GP. Uh, he's accepting his fate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a bit of a toughie. The world's greatest jukes, the bootless bristle versus phase boots <laughs> primal beast. <laughs> well, space created, surely. Yeah. All uh, right, they've successfully given the enemy mid laner the streak. Now just kill him to redeem your rewards. Mm -hmm. Thompson gets arcane boots delivered. I mean, his last hits are okay, but my goodness, he is far behind. That's a 600 gold gap between Thompson and Noob. Yeah, the early rotating potential of Primal Beast definitely shown off here. They did get a stack set up there for 3-3, so we can try and get back into this one a bit on the bristle. The Ancients being ready. Toby going to be brought down. And Omar just has to look on. And this is the thing with those kills and those movements over, it actually is bringing the offlaners to kind of even territory. Look at where Noob is right now. He's under a ward. He's just roaming through their jungle. No cares in the world. Thompson takes his tower. Noob trying to get a punish onto it. Man. The ulti. Yeah, they don't need to even. He's just going to get no. brought down. Well played. Noob is everywhere. Four zero and one. Meanwhile, Luna is three zero zero and going for an early Midas on top of Treads. Carrie's also almost level six too. So that's when you're going to have like it's already nighttime right now. He's got two points in the teleportation. There's three points in Lunar Blessing. So you're going to have this uh, TP in Wrath of Nature. Get those big hits hitting for like three, four, five hundred damage early on. It can happen to you. I just hear this primal beast guttural noises here. I mean, he's ready for more. They're he's under a ward. They know, at least. Vision, Onslaught, finds him in trouble, trying to kill him off, saving the Pulverize, and well, now they throw it out. Skinner oh. gonna get caught. Good damage there. The everything dropped down on his head in quest. They came to play in game number two.
looking very solid. Yeah, Spectre joining in up here, not down in the bottom lane, getting killed. I mean, while well, Luna's just happily chipping away at some farm. Very good start here for Quest. And they're looking to, of course, just keep this rolling. That is the whole idea of this Nature's Prophet and this Primal Beast, too. One of the most active heroes you can get at the moment. Uh, continuously, though, they are finding Toby. Yeah, he goes down for the fourth time. He's not having a good time right now. And, you know, it should be mentioned, this is a Spectre, and the gold lead is not huge. I think that there is definitely going to come a window here where, like, oh, Luna no. hits super hard, but, you know, it's something to watch for. He's buying the cursed item. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's every Viper game, dude. I know. It's you see the Atos queued up. You're just like, oh, this didn't go the way you wanted, Heather. But <laughs> I don't think it ever feels good. I think you have to buy it some games, and I get it. But it's always out of just like, Ugh. oh, jeez. Well, Toby actually is not going to get fully taken down there, but does give a little bit of a love tap by the Spectre. The dagger, nice little bit of damage onto him. Skitter tries to heal up. Uh, and also, stacks being built like crazy right now over in the Dire Ancients. It, it might be time for TA2000 to head in there pretty soon. Needs to get maybe the Mask of Madness or possibly even just take it. Yeah, Primal's starting to take some of them. Don't mind me. You had your chance, Luna. I mean, she's just got so much from up here. This is great for them. Yeah. Obviously, she, uh, she also was feeling pretty safe for the last five minutes there with all those points in Lunar Blessing. A bit of bonus night vision. Didn't hurt, but daytime now. Trying to find her. And uh, no that, steals yet for nine. We'd love to get uh, the Lucent Beam. That's always a solid one early on for Rubik. Look at this movement by Tundra. Oh, they know courier. exactly where he's going to be. Yeah, and they got him. Easy. Easy kill. Oh, oh, he got Eclipse. That's, uh, that's pretty big. I mean, I guess not that. How many points in Lucent? It's just two. I, I mean, it's still... Actually, I don't even know if it is better than Lucent. It's actually kind of worse than Lucent, to be honest. <laughs> I'd rather just have the spam ability here. Oh, no. All right, well... Let it rip, Nine. He's waiting for Come the on. TP in. The green Lucent beam. Nope. Wanting to punish. They find Thompson. Thompson in trouble now. Oh, but the left screen, Keeping him out of range. No, he ends up going down. Thinking be able to find them but instead they get to the side pulverize back off cooldown in one and there it goes as they will find nine try and take him down but can't quite get it all right now though they're low okay things look weird but it ends up being enough all righty more moves four zero five here from noob having a great primal beast game maybe Hey, Toby's really been doing some solid work. Oh, he didn't... But did he not come from Fountain? I thought he was going to pass in the bottle. He was getting it out for a second there. Mm. thought that was Toby's whole role so far this game. Fair. Just filling up Noob's bottle. Dude. Spirit Vessel done. Another stack of Ancients. TA2000 is going to have so much gold. Doesn't quite have the quarter staff done yet, but will after this. Oh, and Omar's just softening it up for him. Oh, I love to see this. All right. TA2000 at 6,400 gold at the start of this. Oh, man. And with the spark of courage, too. Yeah, that's nice. It's still taking a while, but is whittling through them. Well, not much punish on it. Noob is uh, sort of exploring the area here. See if there's any dangers for his allies, but they're going to get away with this one. No vision in the area laid down from Tundra. Didn't really have the opportunity with how much they've been losing it on these fights because they obviously know this is going to be a plan when it comes to any sort of a Luna lineup, but they couldn't get in there for it. Now they're coming, but it's too late. Yep. Uh, also, no Nether Ward so far because it is a mid Pugna, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, with some of the Pugna games we've been seeing lately, you often notice that the Nether Ward is so much of Pugna's damage throughout the game. It is crazy, but it's not really something you can abuse that early, obviously. It kind of comes down to like those mid game team fights, Roche Pit things, but. He's just looking for the uh, the quick blow-ups here with his Aether Lens. Well, and maybe Ascent eventually will be seeing that Dagon come out. Although, no, he's going Octarine. That's sad, but it's probably for the best. Yeah. Hobson hunting. Uh, and okay, the jump Okay, there out. we go. And Kyrie goes down. Level 4 Sprout stolen as well for Rubik. That's pretty good. I, I think this Tundra global strategy is something people are going to look at later and be like, we need to not ever let them get this. 
the the last game with the Zeus Spirit Breaker uh, was terrifying, and this one Spectre with any like scouting hero, it's they're really abusing it. And we got to see the strategy as well, uh, right? In one of our previous series, I uh, was it VP who played it. I can't. I think it was. Uh, where they had Kiritich on the uh, the Spectre and they had the Tree Protector running around doing a very right. similar thing where he would just like give a little bit of vision, hop out. Can't remember who it was actually, but either way, I uh, think it was makes a lot of sense. I think you're right. Noob comes on in, Hunts takes away the Tundra stacks and it's going to do it again here. This is very nice for them. The big question mark in this game is 100% Viper. Right. Uh, I mean, it, it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. Uh, does have the Ato stun, though. So that's where you expect him to get a little bit aggressive. Unfortunately, not going to be there in time to help out. As they're going to lose KRA there to 9, who still has the spread stolen. Yeah. Well, and yeah, how, how much is he going to be able to get done? Also, will Spectre be able to get to, like, super duper scary territory because right now she is barely ahead of the viper at this point in the game and it's a lot of hp to try and burn through the primal with specter in particular there's uh you know in terms of getting through tanky heroes here an interesting dynamic is 3-3 he's gone for this one point bristle back whereas we saw a game that went pretty disastrously for a bristle who did this um because he just kept getting hunted over and over and over again and they were able to punish him but 3-3, he died a lot in the lane, but since then, it hasn't been so bad, and it just increases his farm speed, having these higher points in the goo. Right. It also really opens up Roche for them on the earlier end, and that's something that Quest will be looking for here, right? Like, they have the medallion done, they got themselves a Luna, Kaori, again, just gone. I mean, the Ato Toby with the punish? Oh, no. It's just not going to work. Ooh, disruption. Never mind. Quick save. Toby low, but not quite dead. 28 HP. Get him out of there. Manages to survive. But nine gets the level four Lucent Beam. A yeah. great steal for Rubik. And he's got three points already in the Arcane Supremacy. So that's 390 damage every six seconds. Quite good. Skitter. Oh, there it is. With Noob and he finds him. Yep, the Lucent Beam interrupting the Onslaught. Still going to take a while, but eventually there with the lift and now the overgrowth to try and turn it. They're giving away more kills. Kaori is now in trouble. Dude, oh, this team is so good. Owning. It's doing so much for them. Wow. Oh, How nine. different that could have been if he didn't have Lucent Beam. Yeah. The only way to stop that onslaught out of there. The turn, though, she's got some Lucent Beams of her own. 3-3 three, three shows on the back, but it's level one, so it's, it's not that uh, amazing. Despite his agonims, which is also kind of funny, to have ags and level one bristleback. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it goes. A very aggressive Thompson? positioning right now for him as Thompson runs in and with Skitter there, it's not quite enough damage. Skitter wants to clean up, not able to take down TA2000 yet. Kaori punching onto Thompson a few more times. There's the life drain. Summon some trees, but able to move in at the end. Toby did die to nine when all was said and done, and now Snaking also going to go down. Oh, that was costly. How did he die? He just, uh, oh, he just got loosened beam twice and punched. Okay, he actually just died to the two supports. Hmm. The Viper. Probably because he's the same level as them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Toby's had a bit of a rough one. But at the end of the day, all he needs to do is lay down another toxin, with, which is he level just needs, one. Yeah, he just needs Omar to get eggs. Right? Radiance middle tower yeah. Under attack. yeah. 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 I like it's it. Fine. And his job's done. And this is a navalist support here. I mean, that is going to be the thing to watch. The tier two items are coming out now. Oh, Noob gets a shield rune. Ooh. I like Skitter committing for the uh, Radiance with how they're playing this game, too. This whole idea of, like, Thompson running in, doing these decrep into Nether Blast, and then he haunts in, he daggers, and then he... You saw a couple times where he couldn't finish the kill because of the decrep, so the Radiance will at least assist with that a bit more. It's crazy how much they're playing around Thompson, just, like, running in, decrepping, and then the Spectre haunt. They do, like, an insane amount of damage. 
And the way he's using these twin gates too, to just be all over the map. And he's playing like a monkey kick. He's yeah. just in the trees constantly. It's true. And he just tumbles out. Here he comes. He's playing like the Pop assassination. That, that is indeed. <laughs> And Kairi just has to sit there and accept it. He just gets life training killed. It's kind of sick. We need the Yules. Bring them back. It's been buffed up a little bit here. Nine goes down, and now they chase Snake King. But he's even a little bit worried about this. As well, he should. Still. Luna Farms and TA2000 getting larger and larger is going to be a problem uh, for the Sundra lineup. Yeah, I'm really curious to see uh, what they can do with the first Aegis. I feel like Quest probably get it and uh, maybe take two tier twos and that could actually put them in a good spot. For now, I definitely feel a little bit better about how Tundra is playing this out. Uh, maybe some Wisdom Rune shenanigans could change my mind here in another minute, but... Jeez, 3-3 three, three is... He has no TP. Yeah. I think he's given up his life for this one. <laughs> for, for what? Uh, I mean, he was farming the ancients. I think he's going to steal their tormentor as... I mean, meanwhile, Toby just... I mean, they just killed Spectre, but I'm, I'm too distracted by this. Sorry. He Or he's waiting the full 50 seconds for the wisdom rune. That's, <laughs> that's a crazy play, dude. He's, I mean, I got nothing to farm. Oh, no, he is doing it. He's going for the tormentor. Oh, this is so greedy, dude. That's... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Quick, quick, kill them. Kill oh, them with it. it. <laughs> no, Kyori got the Tormentor. <laughs> oh. All right. Oh, that was the thing. That's great. All right. Quality stuff right there. Uh, I mean, it would have been pretty funny. Yeah. If he manages to pull that one off. Radiance but no Wisdom Rune, no Tormentor. Oh, does Kyrie go and for the other one? Yeah, they have a ward on it, but nine's ready. Yeah, that's too difficult. Wow, that's great. All right. Bottom tower well, sometimes you got to make plays like that, and sometimes you don't. Uh, as Noob has the heart completed. God, they yes. have so many different ways to break. Now they're getting Aghanim Scepter on the uh, Primal Beast next too. That's true. We didn't even talk about that one. That's a, another nice one that you can pick up a little bit later into the game. Uh, what else? Is, I mean, they have a really big power spike right now. Having the heart blade mail finished on noob and no radiance done. This is the perfect time to Roche, and they're already setting up for it down here. It does not get any better than this. Like before, radiance does not want to fight. It's actually thirty gold away from Skitter, but you know, there's no, you know, this is new Spectre, so you have to have the vision for the shadow step. It's not just some like free guaranteed initiation here without the Aghanim Scepter. So despite this smoke here from Tundra, I think the most they get out of it is some solid vision on this dire side of the map. I, if they I, even get that, I don't see any odds. I'm really uh, concerned for Tundra's ability to hold off this push that's coming. Like you're talking about, you're going to have the uh, Aegis on this Luna. Um, even though she's going Shadow Blade, like you almost have Aghanim Scepter on Shadow Demon. He's got two components on Omar. He's so far. That's without freaking Philosopher's Stone. Yeah, and they're really respecting the passives here. Like yeah. Going for the Silver Edge on the Luna, going for the Agnes of Primal Beast, going for the Agnes of Shadow Demon. It, it's a really good combination here. And then having Viper. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Toby will get there someday. He's just a distraction. Well, Tier 2 Tower going to fall and. I want to see Quest go high ground here. Force him back. Just, just get him back into their base. You've got four minutes on this Aegis. They don't have a creep wave mid. See if they decide to do it or not. J2000 walks high ground for a moment. The rest of the team a little ways away and... Well, as soon as that happens, got to back out. Up top, wanting to chase, can't get the tree. T2000, uh, that early shard here as well. Yeah, I saw that. That's kind of interesting. I mean, pretty cool if you're being surrounded, obviously. Uh, oh. And the defensive option of it, it's nice, but it's kind of costly early on in the game. Spectre tries to get away, immediately runs into Noob. Got wow, hopped by spot. the Shadow Demon ulti. That's not what you want to have happen. 
and as nine. well as new using the uproar too. So nine gets the bad steal. Yep. Nine gonna be found and did steal pulverize. Tries to get away. Ain't gonna happen. Just ends up waits in a TP, but it's okay. He's dying. He's got plenty. Yeah, this is uh, a strong window now for Quest. With Spectre dead for a little bit, they might think about stepping up high ground again here. And Look at the Force them back. Yeah. They, they have not seen this. Oh, now they're pinging. They're like, hey, wait a second. Something's happening here. And he immediately TPs out. He runs and he throws another word up on the cliff. And then he just hits the tower a few times. He's doing a great job of playing outside their vision this game. Yeah. Oh, and he needs to because they, they can't really fight at this point. So hard to play into this. Snaking. Has the blink dagger. Middle tower is under attack. Where is he trying to go? Yeah, no way. Okay. He's out of here. Yeah, he's gone. But definitely yeah. wants to play with Thompson. Those two together are solid. They have a radiant observer board here. It's going to spot Luna coming in. Primal Beast. It's going to see everybody coming in here. Now nighttime. Ooh, can't get it. TP, or rather the, the portal take gets him away from trouble. Dust. Hit snaking. Blinks out though. Yeah, he's gone. I think at least. Um, yeah, and also Omar now 100 gold away from Aghanims. <laughs> he is... He's oh, there. nine. Mid lane, TA2000, gonna find him. Right on top with all of the illusions. Wants to chase. Mask of Madness run down. Nobody coming for nine's help. And with the Shadow Blade, that should be enough with one more hit to kill off the Rubik. I mean, yeah, they, they are so incredibly in control. Noob has found snaking, though, and hunting him, killing him. Another one bites the dust. Quest is keeping this momentum moving. <laughs> and Noob is just drawing down the lanes. Like, we have to push these lanes. Like, keep it going. Keep the creep waves down. Because it, I don't know, it feels like they're still getting a decent amount out on the map right now. But Skitter is starting to suffer, I suppose. And I mean, when you see 3 3 and Skitter on the same camp wave, that's never really a really good sign. Toby even bullying him back. So he's feeling a lot better about this game at this point. Oh, yeah. Atos wasn't quite able to get there. And I mean, as much as like his game is not going great, Omar's is going so well that it almost doesn't matter. Like him and getting to Aghanims is a game changer. And yeah, and like we haven't really gotten anything out of 3 3 either. Like he, his no. farm was kind of okay. He had a few times in lane. He recovered in the jungle. He got his Aghanims. He now still has one point, though. Oh, wait, am I? Uh, No, you're right. He only has one point in it. What? Is, is this the stats? Yes, he is. Is this? Oh, because the break. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's a genius. That makes so much sense. That's that's actually so big brain. I mean, he's like, I'm getting broken no matter what, dude. Like they're all getting breaks, so screw it. <laughs> I heard it. Yeah, that's okay. That actually makes total sense. All right, I'm down. That's that's three three awesome. to go. <laughs> I mean, it's really good if it's a terrible Bristleback game. It does beg the question: Should they be playing in this terrible Bristleback game? As Kaori is starting to die, very low, almost gone. New gets the control onto the Pugna, trying to take him down, and will get him. Oh my God! He keeps covering the pulverized too. Nine only got trampled. They managed to take down Toby after Topson's death, and now trying to escape his 33 without his Bristleback form, manages to escape. Uh, even has the 250 goo cast range talent. Yeah. He's all over it. That's great. Very logical, honestly. Ooh, noob. Gonna get himself a wisdom rune. Dang. Ouch. But snaking least stole theirs too, so it's okay. Wait. Oh, there we go. Got it indeed. Uh, Roche, a minute 40 away here as they clear up these radiant ancient creeps. Snake King just trying to push out waves wherever he can. Is also eyeing up an Agnum Scepter of his own. We'll see if Snake King can get to it. It has one of those items that 
Uh, I feel like every tree in your pub tries to go for it, and it can be amazingly strong in the late, late game if you can get there, but oftentimes feels a bit like a pipe dream. That is really interesting. Yeah, we do not see very often competitive. Obviously, we tend to see like a a medallion rush into maybe a blink. Uh, lately, it's been a lot of blink first, but this is pretty hype. And they try and go on Kaori. That just reveals that, hey, there's people nearby that you can maybe go for the kill on. It is going to be enough to take down the Nature's Prophet. Can they get any more on the side of Quest? Trying to hunt. Finding one, Pugna there, immediately connects, good damage out, goes into the decrep, but the chase is there, and Toby enough for the kill. Noob now chasing, wanting to connect onto 33. They've got him in their grasps, still hanging out, not using the pulverize because he's afraid of nine. But now we'll get it, and well, nine just has to run away. Yeah, I might not get caught at the very least here as he escapes behind Roche. Only has a four staff though, and no TP for a while. Whoop! Uh, nice use of the trample there to get to the tree line and obscure his route out. Snake King catching another wave here. Going to blink back. He's been down here the whole time. This is truly the uh, the Owie tree, really. Priming out side lanes nonstop. The Owie Jakiro, you know? Oh, yeah. Doing his thing. Keep himself survivable and fine. Corey <laughs> has a shadow blade, I just realized. Seen a lot of that item recently. It's definitely yeah. uh, coming back into Vogue. Everyone saw Weaver coming back. They're just like, yeah, run around Invis is kind of cool. Yeah. Elven Tunic picked up here for Skitter, so that'll help quite a bit here. Butterfly, right. though, the next item for TA2000, so. Yeah, yeah, he's looking like in trouble there. He's just the bird down. Gonna grab him. Stolen. Wait, how did Snaking steal that? Oh, uh, no. Nice. the Bramble? Get to oh, the low feet. ground, keeping himself alive for now, but not for very long. As they eventually do have enough to take down and kill off nine. And they even find a ward. Primal with the gem, feeling pretty good about things. They're doing such a good job of chasing these heroes around the map, securing the kills, and keeping their farm up all at the same time on the side yeah. of quest. Because this is one of those things where you can run the problems of like chasing too much, missing out on kills, using too many resources for it. And despite it being a pretty long roast spawn, still a minute left, they've done a good job of uh, securing their lead right now. Now, the problem is that, you know, that Spectre is also doing kind of okay. Yeah. Uh, Pogna's still up there, too. They're, they're, it's not like home free yet for Quest. It, it really just takes one solid fight star where they manage to uh, catch T2000 in a bad spot. Maybe he doesn't get off the Satanic. They're going to smoke up, though, and come out behind 3 3. Mm. Is he just dead? Yeah, it looks like it. They find him with Omar and, I mean, broken, gone. Did almost go down to the Quill Spray, but managed to keep himself alive. I mean, this is why we talk about Shadow Demon Agonims is just such a debilitating counter to all of these heroes. You don't get to play Dota. Yeah, I mean, you're just removing things the heroes rely upon. As they're going to haunt into Kaori. <laughs> oh, the illusions moving in for the finish. God, that's got to feel so annoying. I mean, to be fair, he's a nature's prophet. He kind of deserves it here. Chase down chasing on the Thompson. Hmm. Not enough. Eh. Gets out. Although, no. Omar can't get there in time. Oh, the egg's now done here for Thompson. Okay. Love to see that one. So that puts the cooldown down to 2.6 seconds for him with the Octarine core. Uh, and it does reduce their outgoing spell damage by 8% per second up to a maximum of 75%. That could become kind of interesting versus some of these heroes, right? Yeah. Oh, totally. Ah, neat. Um, here's a question. Has Topson played a game where he hasn't bought Octarine Core <laughs> this entire tournament? <laughs> I, feel like I know he played Hango earlier. Maybe not that one. Okay. I feel like that's all we're seeing on this guy. So, second Roche as quests are still in very good position across the map. Gonna try and claim this one with all the outer tier oh, no. three powers down. You gotta imagine it's gonna be <laughs> attempt for high ground. No, he got it at 38 minutes right before they won on, on Pango too. So, okay. <laughs> so every game he's had Octor in court. Probably. Yeah, that's uh, something to watch out for. 
I feel like that's most heroes too right now. We're seeing a ton of this item. We're seeing a lot of support heroes get it. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Blinks away. Topson pushing the wave. Carry oh, wait. comes it again. His Clink's game, he did not get it. Or his Dazzle cool. game, kind of surprisingly enough. Did he played two Clink's games? This guy's a beast. Force staff up to the high ground on TA2000. The life drain doing good damage. Almost dead. And now walking forward. That's broken. That's Aghanim's. Luna is gone. That was about as bad of a high ground siege as you can get from oh. West. Okay. Was, Still have one more ulti. That was quite bad. t 2000s gone. Wait a minute. Tundra finding an opportunity. And they just went on autopilot over a cliff. Noob maybe can make something happen here, but... I don't know. They're starting to die. Noob is gone. What happened? It says Owie's just tapping the sign in the room right now. She's like, never go high ground. This is why. Do you see what they did? Tundra doesn't go high oh ground God. there. Oh, no. <laughs> Dude, oh, did... no. Look at the damage. The fight recap right now. 11,080 damage by Pugna. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. Nether Ward yeah. Life Drain is way too good. Dude. He did more damage than their entire team. Oh, geez. Man, the four staff play to get Luna out of position right at the start was yeah. absolutely clutch. Nine doing it. It was it was such a casual siege, too. Like, yeah. it's, you know, they're, they're going up. They're like, okay, we're going to see what happens. Poke and prod a little bit. Retreat when things get bad. And, and no, it was just immediately flipped there from Tundra. And now they're getting this big pressure on the tier three. Knocking this down will be huge for them. But will Thompson be punished? Yeah, he's in trouble. Doesn't have a way out of this one. So they managed to get some return uh, kills, at least the one, which is a big kill. But I mean, so much momentum lost in that. And take a look right here. This oh, yeah, here it is. Play. That was so sick. Uh, that was what was needed. And. Then the decision to go back in a little bit questionable and, of course, immediately pulling them further out of position. And what's funny about that, too, is that the four staffs aren't very good defensively, as we just saw, because like they couldn't bail out Thompson there because you have the ulti from the Shadow Demon on top to get immediately dispelled. So he's probably been looking more so for those aggressive plays partially because of that. Yeah. Get some use out of that item. And then, of course, once Luna's gone, it was just free reign. And there was a moment where it maybe could have turned around, but all the stick charges, all the heals back up and Noob just couldn't handle it. 3-3, mm, three, three, got to run right through Kaori here. Kaori does have the Enchanted Quivery. It's pretty hard. Broken? Can't get it. BKB, TP out. All right, they're going to try and go again. You are incredibly farmed on the Luna. 6,000 gold ahead of the Spectre. Everything going well, but... I mean, I think you actually have to wait for the next Aegis. I don't know. And snaking as Ags now, like the entire complexion of this game has changed. Yeah, it's it's actually so sick watching the Ags too. And then he goes, I mean, of course, immediately into Octarine, like every single train protector wants to do. Yeah, level twenty. They and they have a they have Spectre on their team. So this idea of the Shadow Step, right? with these trees like oh this has never God. really been a combination before but this is something that has now opened up with the changes of specter i didn't think it could get worse for a team going into late game than last game when they're playing with like spirit breakers zeus and all the other like bots level two this is going to be worse because they're going to have specter that can one shot anybody they're going to have treant constantly oh, they see luna vision. i mean yeah they, they oh god man I am really oh, the worried. Haunt. The X is up. Yeah, they have haunt. I, I I think if you're quest, you actually can't go late game against this. They, you got to make some type of a play. You play for next Roche, I think for sure. And then you try and go high ground again. I don't know. Maybe you just go for ultra late game. <sighs> I I worry that like by the time they, they get to the next one, Skitter is going to have another item and it's going to be too hard. He already has BKB. With the, or the Aghanims. Yeah. Oh, they find one. Getting tops in here is big, but will it be enough? Now they steal Pulverize, trying to take him down. A couple more hits. They're trying to take this fight perfectly, but they can't get in range. Has the blink out, manages to escape. Oh, her. wait a minute, they got him. Tries to jump away, not able to do it. Ogre still put him away by the Shadow Demon. 
and they kite away from this fight. Being able to reality back into that fight, that was really close. Yeah. And now Rubik has pulverized. I, I yeah. This is a problem. Four Two and a half minutes until the uh, potential roach spawn as well. So uh, it's pretty much guaranteed that, it'll, yeah, it'll be Radiant side no matter what. Uh, so slight edge there to Tundra. Of course, they'll also have the Haunt back up by then in combination with the Shadow Step. So it's going to be very difficult to fight around that area for Quest. How do they win a Roche fight? For Quest? Yeah, I guess it's blowing up the Spectre. But then, of course, you have to be worried about... Uh, oh, she doesn't actually have gold for buyback. Probably will by the point, though. Right. I think... One of the things, too, about this is that as long as Treant doesn't get set up on the bottom side of the map, the quests do still feel very strong if they can control an area, which I think they can. But it's plays like this with Kyori, right? Where, like, a Spectre Haunt in here, it's just that he's gone. So that, that type of play playing in this area, I think it's too scary now. It's farming so fast, too. Yeah game these free picks like this and yeah as you said snaking's making his way down here so eyes in the forest being laid down probably gonna wait for the next one to get really close to roche they're not in off century time. combo by omar is spots a noob coming oh! in oh thompson, thompson jumped away but they find him and now running in that is what they needed this pick off onto thompson is huge pulverized is there and immediately they need to control all of this area okay if they get an instant roche spawn thompson will still be out Snaking, blinking back, not going to get caught out there from Toby. Gem picked up here from Kaori. He's going to send it out on the courier. They want to control up this part of the map. Will they get lucky on a Roche spawn? First, they're going to try and poke high ground a little bit. And he's gone for 60. Yo, go for it. Tier 4, let's go, baby. It was such oh, a big pro. Oh, again! Give another four step. They did it again. Nine pulled them back under tier four, and then they pull over to the side there. Disruption. TA two thousand pops the eclipse. The damage is there. That is what they needed. Rooted, gone. Just like that, they blow this game wide open again. That was so close to horrifically bad for Quest. Oh, he can he can cover with the Luna shard. I didn't even know that was possible. That's really good. They can't steal anything. He, he can't get loosened. He can't get Eclipse. He just got the stupid Luna Shard. <laughs> He's rolling around stats above him. I mean, okay, so no tops in for 20. Oh, still really scary to walk forward on Luna, but they're going to do it now. Start to hit away as the Glyph wears out. Get a lane of racks. No Spectre for 50. You got to be aware of the buyback. Now got to run away. Tries to escape. They leave the racks there. Skinner keeps going in for more. Glaive's going everywhere. Do they have enough now to take down 33? They turn, they hit. He's falling low, but he heals back up. And the Nether Ward damage is down, but they managed to barely connect. 33 caught by Noob. Thompson, they jump on him. Find Omar. That's a big kill to get. Can they kill any more? He buys back. Needs to get into the fight, though. Doesn't have a pulverize to break the Thompson life drain. Kaori in complete trouble, isolated. They're doing so much damage here. Thompson living in the midst of all of this mayhem. They can't stop the green little man. He's coming from more. He's taking you all down. Thompson life drain. Kaori can't do it. You can't stop it. It's way too much. Noob tries to get away. The banishment is there. An ultra kill coming out in a second for Thompson. If he can catch up oh. to the rest of them. Lift. Find the chase down. Looking for the kill. Looking for the oh, finish. He got him. Ultra kill on him. Denied the rampage. But that was everything. He's already top. Thompson's already up there instantly with the bots. Forces the buyback out of Noob. Holy wow. Oh, so that's the Omar die back, the Kaori die back. What, what a turn at the end. The damage from tops is just absolutely ridiculous. Great use of the Nether Ward there at the end, too, with the Shard. Unreal. They have no cares for a Roche. They are in your base. I And again, you talked about it going high ground. Roche was back up. It, it, it's back up now. I mean, you always end up thinking what could have been, but that one has got to hurt. It's Say not. the line, Owie. <laughs> <laughs> Never go high ground. <laughs> Unless everybody's dead, which is what happened here. And Thompson's sticking around. He's hitting tier four towers. He keeps going for the nether blast. They're dropping. 
manages to blink away. Now down to Roche, claiming it. Uh, how quickly things have swung. The graph for this game is insane. Oh, and right into the Roche with the Aghanim Scepter. Ah, uh, jeez. I mean, we got so many people to to think about here. Oh, he sells. Is that what's happening here? They're going to give it to Skitter? They are. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. I mean, I guess. Oh, Rubik already has one. Okay, never mind. They find one. It's Kyori caught again. Has had a rough game on this Nature's Prophet. 14 deaths. They have done a terrific job of just hunting him constantly. Oh, and look at this. Sells it for the instant Scotty. Yeah, great choice. Infuse it into that. Get the Scotty. Knock down this uh, recovery chance for TA2000 in these fights. If it wasn't hard enough already, it just gets more difficult now. Wow. I mean, with the Luna draft, it always comes down to like, if you can get one really good fight uh, and you win it, you are going to take the building so rapidly, but their avenues for winning fights now feel incredibly difficult. <laughs> and they're coming for this last tier two. They want to knock down any opportunities of a defense inside the base from the other lanes. Yeah. And you, you, I mean, Skitters in Fountain and Thompson can just nether blast. Like they don't have to worry about anything. Although Refresher is there for the Luna with Eclipse, thinking about going. They want to throw this out. Don't want to initiate. It's, I don't know. I. It's not like an egg to close though, you know? It's true. Feels like this is mostly just trying to make use of that BKB and that Satanic, but that's also being worked on here from that new Scotty from Skitter. So very tough fight at this point in the game. Kaori is just down here trying to steal a bit of farm and put some pressure and cut waves. All he can really do. The trees, man, they're just lighting up the map. They're everywhere. I mean, that, that wrote the Aegis four staff play uh, by nine. I, I mean, I think that it's hard Again. not to think about Thompson as MVP for this, but nine had a, a really game winning play. It's one of those situations where he just reads the only way that they have to play this game. Like it's the Luna siege machine covered by all these breaks that they've had. And it looks scary because if you try and approach the Luna, the logic is that she gets covered with disruption and you get uh, broken and then noob charges in and it feels kind of over. To like Toby's just this big body that hops inside. He's going to have this cross of skin. He even has a defiant shell. But all of that went out the window when they just force into 2000 and completely break the formation that you're trying to achieve. Yeah. Unbelievable. And again, in these next couple of minutes, it's it's the similar situation that Quest ended up in last game, where if you leave your base on Quest, you die. They they have to like smoke out as five because otherwise Spectre Haunt be with all these eyes in the forest. Like and look at them, Tundra's just farming. They they know they can be there in a second. It's no problem at all. You have boots of travel on freaking snaking. He's way too far of this game. He really is. Ags, Octarine, Blink, Bots. He's almost caught up to Primal. Yeah. Tundra. What a absolute turnaround. Okay. <laughs> and Refresher, really? Okay. The, so Refresher on Spectre. Also Refresher on Bristleback. <laughs> The old bristle is back here. Backless bristle, I suppose. Mm. Finally has a second point in there. Through no choice of his own. I think they are not going to push. <laughs> like, it's all happened the quest <laughs> two times in a row, and they're like, hell no, nah, guys. We're not doing it. I mean, it's one thing to say you, like, control the map, but they really control the map. <laughs> this game. Like, they have haunts. They have these trees everywhere. Like, there's there's really no benefit of going high ground at all. All high ground has is risk. The map has gold and experience. And that's painful to say. Yeah. Because I would like to go see my family as we only had a single <laughs> best of two to cast. <laughs> but... It's it's just true, you know? Yeah, yeah. So we're here. It's true. 
<laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, this is what it is. Oh man. My, my children won't remember what it was like to have a father. You know, That's small fine. kids have no memory, no. really. It's, <laughs> it's okay. Me though. being gone for this many hours <laughs> is just <laughs> it's about it. Oh, you know, it'll be worth it because they'll look back on this moment, see Tundra booing it, and be like, man, snaking a farm. Yeah, man, that, that train protector. I'll be just like snaking when I grow up. What a nice fatherly figure for me. Yeah. Snaking. Because <laughs> Trent was gone. They only yep. have Trent now. Oh, but Pop look at that. They find Topfin. Okay, kills are huge. But eventually, the play that you make is you smoke out and you try and find somebody, and they actually were able to connect onto it. Uh, that was a lot of gold, by the way. That was a 4x kill streak at this point in the game. Yeah. Was 988 for Luna and 555 for each of the assists. Whew. Dude, is it time? Get the rapier, walk down lanes. Let's go. TA2000. Do it not one till time. The Roche. Not till the Roche. Come on. I, I feel like you're probably right, but every minute that goes by <laughs> with them in this game is like, I think it's just more opportunities for them to die, right? Like, I mean, they're, they're, they're going down this bottom lane, prepping to head on up. Nine's just warming up his four staff right now. Where is she? And they're good to go. Skitter goes in, gets on the to Oh, they're pulling them apart. Oh, no. Scary stuff. TA 2000 under fire. Toby right there. Haunt is out. Tries to back away. See if they can get some extra vision. Skitter pops the ulti. BKB is there. Break. He's broken. He's slowed down. They threw down a couple of them now. How much damage do they have? He pops. Oh. Skitter's gone. Buy back Buy immediately. TA2000 trying to back away. Needs to run. The Eclipse Mantle stolen. Refresher. TA2000 dies. That was the stolen Eclipse. All right. Nine's having a game. Both dead. No. Well, they do have buyback now. Okay. There's maybe something there. And creeps are in the base. Oh, man. Yeah. Mantle Refresher is some tough stuff there. He really tried to get back into that one, but he just ran into mana. It's the play. I, I I feel like this is a moment where, God. I mean, I can tell you what the play is. Yeah, the problem is if they go hanger right now and they manage to kill Skitter again because they just have this break from the Shadow Demon, they just lose the game, yeah, right? Exactly. Like, so they don't go high ground. Do they go high ground? I mean, this is the final test. Is the they, rule they go, never go high ground really that strong? They see buyback Luna, they run. Yeah. Immediately. And they force it. Decrep, heal. Thompson throws another blast. If you're a quest, you need to force it. This is the moment. If they can kill Spectre. He if they can like kill 700. Thompson. Thompson doesn't have buyback either. He can't show. They only can walk up with the bristle. The heal is there. They got him. Ato slow. Omar, though. Oh, he got him. He got oh. him with the banishment. He can't get in further, though. Oh, I thought he can maybe go with a demonic purge but it's too scary instead they purge 33 he starts to die eclipse now out doing a good oh. chunk of damage the control is there Kyrie almost dead toby also in trouble the eclipse doing more damage than luna ever did with it toby does manage to survive with the demonic cleanse and now the buybacks come out looking for the hunt with noob right over at him but they can't chase over for more they tp away oh, and after God, buybacks so are used they still are gonna manage to barely hold out 300 HP on that melee Rex. That's so scary for a uh, a Rubik. Like to have this Agnum Scepter to steal Eclipse like that, because of the way that now BKBs work, you could just see that his amp is essentially like nullifying a whole lot of their protection. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's still a lot of damage considering how many BKB targets he was hitting. Oh. Maybe another chance gifted over to Quest. Use up the rapier. Luna, I mean, we're waiting on it. There, there's still a window here. Again, Spectre, no buyback, and the Pugna, no buyback for five minutes. Do you try and go for an all-in play now? Do you try and find a pickoff in a little bit? See which way they decide to go with it. I mean, you get some trance in that Roche pit now, alongside this Manta illusion. You just, Radiant you wait and see. Time. Yeah, 50 seconds on the respawn time for that one. And somehow we managed to get to 53 minutes again. Oh my I God. thought this game was going to be over at like 30, and then we just went the distance. 
yeah, I got one best of two, and then I'll I'll come help the kids, and then uh, I got a series <laughs> later. There's tiebreakers I got to cast later. That was me. <laughs> That's my Trent impression. <laughs> That was uh, three and a half hours ago. Oh, that's great. I love that. Yep. 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 Overgrowth. Some standard stuff. This is just ton the Tundra Dota. The, the quickest Tundra series of <laughs> Road to the International. But. It is going to be back up now as Bristleback respawns. And I think Quest will see it. No, the fusion it expires right as that happens. <laughs> no, 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 no. Dude. Come on. No, 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 no. Not Dude. like this. No, 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 no. Dude. <laughs> snake it. Look at right Snake it. There. Oh, the ward. What a good ward. It's oh right God. there. And they have eyes in the forest now. Oh, they okay. see it. But All right. Okay, okay. Here it is. Here it is. The courier is going to come to this job. Snaking's gonna kill it when he goes to buy the rapier. He's gonna forget about the jet, the tree. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Oh wow! Snaking's gonna kill his rapier courier. I mean, he hasn't even sent it yet, so he oh, might it'll just happen. walk there. For it'll it. happen. Yeah, you might be right. I that would be can't insane, believe though. that. All right, Agnes oh, Scepter for Luna. Now haunts. Looking for a fit. What? Okay, double, double, double! Oh my god, no! no they burned through the ages! Yo, <laughs> nine! What a god! Get vision and then the double snipe! He's so good, dude. <laughs> he's, he's insane, this series. That's so good. He's just, look, he's just losing it. In like three seconds, he's gonna lose Eclipse. That is insane. And now it's gone. And he finds that play. That is so crazy. Dude, I love Dota. This is, this is awesome. So they also, by nature of this, they didn't commit for the Aegis onto the Luna. I thought yeah. they were going to do Aegis Rapier. I thought that was going to be the play. Well, they had they, they they bought back on Primal. So yeah, I mean, it's the yeah. it's the safer play, quote unquote, until he gets sniped like that. Oh, wow. Jeez. Nine position four is terrifying. I mean... Is it even really position four anymore? <laughs> no, not with what he's been doing these games. Not, not. Is that why they keep dragging these games out so long? Uh, pretty much. You know, he's like I'm they, just having core farm. He, he is a mid player for a long time. It's a tough, uh, tough pill to swallow. Need to get away from that. I admire TA 2000's restraint because the, the call to like not go high ground at various points, the call to not go all in for the rapier and instead play for this later time. I mean, it's a lot. And he's been making the right calls over and over again, it feels like. Nine is nearby. They're just seeing everything. I This is like my backyard. It's taken over by goat weed, all right? It's really hard to deal with, and they, I just gave up. They've given up on the trees, yeah, all no, right? Gonna the, the goat weed is everywhere. Oh, yo, nine, he got him. Yeah, they're on him. TA 2000. Wait, hold on. Off to the side, they also caught the 2000 Nine's going to go down, but their Luna in some trouble manages to get away. But yeah, the, the dagger from downtown. Needed. It is funny that he's only playing that aggressive because he has so much vision. It's like a false sense of security. He's willing to do that. Even has the OBS up there as well over the Ancients, which doesn't get dewarded. All right. They, they did get the gem now, though. So they're going to start trying to clear it, although Toby just passed by one. They need to... <laughs> like it's just run it, it with it's primal? just such a pain yeah. yeah like dealing with them is very frustrating they're even in their base <laughs> and <laughs> oh not again dude please <laughs> end me Tom dude Tom let me go the 57 minute oh. minus <laughs> oh man come on <laughs> 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 Uh, oh, Trent Lyrical only got one best of two today. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that dumbass thing I said for this year. I said, wow, it's going to be weird going from four best of twos to one today. <laughs> Thanks, Thompson. Thanks, Tundra. I love it. It's so good. Eyes in the forest down, hunting for heroes, not able to find them. And now, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. T2000 walked right by Skitter. Going to start clearing out these illusions but close to 60 minute items 
could two series finish before ours does? I think so. It's definitely possible. We've had some pretty fast games. We're not even going to know. Tiebreakers are going to start in the other groups. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> up, up. Oh, here we go. Find Kaori. He tries to get away, but the TP in. TA2000 looking for some help. And, well, Skitter is there, manages to jump away. Oh, they get out on the other side. Oh, the king! Snake King pops the overgrowth. Oh, there will be no regicide. King. Wait a minute. Rubik, can he go down? If they walk in in a scary way, TP's coming oh, they're in. TPing back in. TA2000 finds the boat. Wait, what? They're onto him. Nine now in trouble. Noob jumps forward, wants to find one. The pulverize. There. Connection. But the heel coming in. Thompson keeping his buddy nine alive. Is it going to be enough? Steals the overgrowth. It's not quite enough damage as of yet. Still not onto this fight quite yet. But they buy back on the Luna. She got brought down. 33 was on top of him. She's already back in the fight. Snaking's in behind. Keeping an eye on him. Need to reset. No more demonic purges, but they have one more Delonic cleanse. He's, gonna, he's an overgrowth coming hunting. up. Find Skitter, but oh, was right behind a tree. Instead, they managed to connect onto 33. So they will at least get one kill here, but lose the Luna. As nine Can they tries get more? to jump away and looks like he's going to escape. Yes, just barely. What a ridiculous way for this fight to start. I, all up there for a chase on to just like a nature's profit and then the bots two in from the luna it's just green everywhere up there they have full vision for tundra I, you, you can't fight into this as quest yeah there's there's no honorable fighting here that is for sure you are always gonna be on the back foot seer stone for topson the range on this hero is unmatched now luna managed to pick up an ex machina still has the rapier queued up Look how far he can decrypt someone. And keep in mind, he can do that during the life drain, of course. You guys haven't played Pugna in a while. That is crazy. It's like the whole screen. Yeah. Oh. There it is, though. Yeah, as you said, the the big items, the rapier is up here, the Book of the Dead. Okay, <laughs> okay, nine. Force boots. Uh, what else was that? There was force boots on Primal. Uh, we talked big. about Ex Machina for Luna. Double Satanic, double BKB. Very nice stuff there. But yeah, Book of the Dead going to be a thorn in their side. Ex Machina for the Shadow Demon. Yeah, the double blink. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Two games in a row. Find one. Thinking is no fear. They get on to tops and he manages to blink away. They have the overgrowth, but not going to commit it. Buyback status. But we Yarr. have five minutes with no buyback on Nature's Prophet in the Luna. Look at him attack right now. On who? Th this pirate hat, Kaori. Oh, yeah. He hits so fast. He's got 578 attack speed. He is a strong guy. And, well, going to be digging up more gold to try and build back into this gold lead here. Rocks, rocks. Noob gets the shard. Toby oh my goodness. Yet. Friendly reminder, they have one Rax right now. Yeah. That is keeping them alive. Although, I, I don't know if Mega Creeps stopped this lineup. <laughs> it, it doesn't in a sense, but it's just, it's already so hard to get it on the map. Yeah. It also just completely kills the economy at that point. True. It kind of becomes more like today with like the inflation. That's what it feels like when okay. Mega Creeps happen. It's like when you go to the grocery store now and everything's so expensive because you're not making as much gold. Right. That's what it's like when you get Mega, which is why Mega Creeps are so impressive. Mm. Or sorry, Mega Creep comebacks are so impressive. That makes sense. I like this. Oh, you know yeah. the biggest thing about this? Mm. The force boots means more opportunities for Noob to cut down the trees. He just deforests all this area along the top side of the map. I've always said that deforestation is what we should be after. Exactly. Yeah. And Kyori not that's, able to get away. A, oh, he tried to do an in-base ward? Yeah. All right. Sorry, I missed that one. I mean, I think he immediately died because eyes in the forest make it not happen. <laughs> it's like, oh, right. And now it gets deforested. Yeah, it feels bad. Like, why was he there? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, does not have buyback either. Ooh. 
Yeah, that is known to them as well if they're keeping track. Oh, there it is! We didn't even talk about it this whole time. Viper, level 25, the best talent in the game. Oh my god, Become got it. universal. Look at him. He's Whoa. still strong. Oh my goodness. He should have changed. Like, he should grow legs <laughs> or something. He should be like, like a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, he just starts walking, you know? He also, we need some sort of a shift. He still has yet to get his next neutral, so he might get some pirate hat action. Oh my goodness, the universal. Wow, Mr. Universe, insane. As... Uh, yeah, not when you see too often. Another ages. Uh, <laughs> Death of Kaori leads to the ages. Hunter have gotten like 10 ages this, in this, <laughs> the past two games. <laughs> Uh, I made such a mistake. One of the predictions was, how long will the game be? I immediately <laughs> hit 60 plus minutes. I, like, I, there's no question. I did 37 to 44. I was so wrong. I was like, ah, Pugna. You know, Thompson will run this down. Not happening. Nope, 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 nope. But right, here we go. Ages, cheese, trees. Like, you wouldn't believe. Very hard to kill 33. Eventually, the pirate hat gold is going to start to help out a little bit because uh, I don't think anybody on Tundra has it, right? No, nobody has, has pirate hat on Tundra. Oh, 33. Broken. Good damage. Viper strikes Solon. Down to half HP, but the heal is there. Ooh, my stops it though. Refresh. Getting low. He took a lot there. And okay. Keeping the creeps off of the ancient for all their worth. Stolen Hurl Boulder. Still the melee rack stance. Nine. What's he doing? He's getting a little sneaky here. Hoping to find somebody. Hurling some more boulders as 33 heals up. And they will manage Look to at find the, the lift. Thousand. It's just waiting. Force boots keeping them alive more and more spam being thrown as the building the melee racks keeps falling lower and lower oh they tried to get they tried to force him out dude the long range nether blast topson's taking it 300 damage at a time it's they starting gotta go. to fall they need to nope. make something happen and they're gonna do it right away but lifted stolen disruption that's a huge get for the rubik can they do any more still trying to take this down banished again Melee Rax still standing, and in the front of all of them is going to be Noob. He starts to get life drain, able to get the Force Boots to keep him away. Walk forward from Thompson, almost dead. Melee Rax, it's about to fall. One last hit, it's down. Oh, that so is Mega Dreams for the Radiant. Oh, no, no honorable game play here. You love to see it. That's how you get this game going your way. Use this Aegis to secure the Megas and then dare them to leave. Yeah. I mean,. It's incredibly hard to stop this. Now it is a whole nother battle to try and get <laughs> the range on that life drain. There's still BKB and Refresher and X Machina now coming back up here. 4-3-3. Breaks it. They break him. Omar, disruption there, tries to find the heal. this out, the turnaround noob. Still very tanky, a lot of HP on this guy. 33 trying to stay alive, overgrowth keeps him at bay. Turns now on to the nether ward. But the decrep to stop it from being hit. Dude, the Nether Ward oh, is can't doing fight. everything. The damage comes out. Thompson under control for a moment. But no, he BKBs. He just walks away from him. Bristol back down to such low HP. Still has that Aegis in hand. The Ancient is being hit. They're going to smoke up looking to control on anybody. The Nether Ward cannot be stopped. He just keeps life draining it. Broken. Chase. Wants to kill, wants to hunt, wants to find oh, that finish. Thompson finally in trouble. Finally killed. 33, though, is hitting the Ancient. They don't want to play this game anymore. Toby almost gone, is going to fall. Has buyback, and now the oh, control Thompson, is there. Dead? Walking 33? forward, another Hex, snaking, keeping people under control. The Ancient getting hit now by Mega Creeps. They need to keep it off of it. Omar trying to keep him at bay, and Thompson at the buyback, the run forward, with the life drain still onto him. TA2000 turns to the damage is there. Wait a minute, they might have done it. There's still creeps hitting in on the ancient Omar, keeping them back. Snaking broken, starts to fall down. TA2000 doling out the damage. 
but the light oh. frame will not stop disrupting the save from the nether blast it was almost enough to take down the luna but not quite thompson he won't be denied it's him versus the world everybody buy back with the clip the turn they have enough damage he's gone buy back from luna finally tundra might have done it as they will take the series 2-0 gg 68 minutes Hobson, what a gamer. Oh, they have provided us with some fantastic games, but I have to feel <laughs> for Quest, man. Like smiles all around here for Tundra. You're coming in against the TI champions. You know, they've got Thompson, the two time, now joining them. And you go this deep both games with them. Oh. And now you're in a spot where, like, this was looking like it might be a 1 1, but now with the 0 2, this is what's going to create that scenario where they might end up in this three way tiebreaker at the bottom of this group. I, I I can't believe that. That is insane. Um, two games back to back. My throat is raw. <laughs> I can't handle <laughs> what ended up happening in that one. And, you know, in the end, the little green man that <sighs> could 94,000 damage done, 29,000 yep. building damage done. And it was like, just pecked him to death. A little freaking, I don't even know what, a little bird of, of destruction. Um, Tops an MVP for me, for sure. Nine had a couple yeah. of clutch plays that turned the game around, but uh, Topson was the little engine that could. Yeah, I think that the, his little lean, mean, green fighting machine, getting all over the other side of the map, but you think about how he dominated this mid game where he was playing like a monkey king. He's running through the trees in combination with Snake King, who also played an incredible game, could easily also be an MVP for sure. But this idea of... They were behind. Like, this Luna lineup was balling up. It was doing its thing. Sure, the Viper was a little slow to come online, but then it gets there. They're getting this Aegis. They're going to push. And all of that time got delayed so much by Thompson running through the side of the map, getting these decreps into the Shadow Steps, snaking, doing the same thing there on the Train Protector. They did an excellent job of slowing down their plans here. But, man, some of those fights <laughs> where you could see it was just all Thompson. The most important fights of this game, his damage was completely overwhelming. Dude, how does this happen? You look at this guy, comes in, wins TI, millions of dollars. He's just floating around looking like a goddamn model. He swole his head. I know, and he looks so good. Like, like, that's the worst. What like, look the at him. hell? Wait, wait, where, 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 where are the like sliders that you can dial back a little bit on this guy? Yeah, how did he roll so high on all his stats? It feels a little unfair. Unbelievable. I'm. I'm, I'm oh, wow. Yeah, and that uh, yeah that was indeed 94k damage, I believe. So he even edged out Skitter there, who was 91,000. Uh, the two of them absolutely dominating. Insane building damage of 306 from Skitter uh, in this game. 94, oh, sorry, uh, 29,000 building damage as well from Thompson. He did all of it. Well, uh, an yeah. An impressive series. Uh, that's going to do it for us here as we are going to move on quickly because there's still more Dota to be played. I'm pretty sure the other groups have started the second series. Uh, so everybody, <laughs> the the tiebreakers, go look at what the situation is. Five other streams that are happening. More great Dota. Road to TI continuing on right after this. We'll be back in a bit.
All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. The road to TI continues on with day number two. And at the end of today, we're going to definitely find out how things are starting to shape up, at least as we continue on with the group stages here. And ultimately, which four teams will be eliminated one from each group. Excited to see those results right here on Break CBK, joined by Keizu to cast the remaining couple of series that we're going to be doing here on this stream. But Keizu, Entity versus SMG should be another fun one here. Yeah, I had to wait quite a while. I'm not going to lie. I've been quite excited to cast today. I've been watching the right. Tundra, and now I even like, I've watched it so long that I just like tune out on even who they played against. Yeah, against Quest, which took forever. Quest, yeah. So I'm hoping Entity SMG, you know, they can do something similar because SMG, I mean, yeah, they're fighting for their lives. They're one in five, and mm -hmm. I expect better from them. I'm sure they expect better from themselves too. So it's time to make it happen right here, right now. Yeah, put up or shut up, you could say. I mean, yeah. with a team like Team SMG, obviously this is a roster that certainly is very capable and experienced oh, across yeah. the board to not only qualify to the further part of TI, but potentially go, you know, even deep into the event. But they got to get past the group stages. And right now, as you're pointing out with a 1-5 record, yeah. they need to at least get one, if not a 2 nothing victory here against a solid entity team who comes in with that 3-3 three and three record. So both these teams, this is their last series of uh, of the group stages here entity a little more safer but technically not fully not safe, safe. Yet. If, yeah if things definitely fall in place we could be seeing a three-way tie then that's tiebreakers we're not going to worry about that just yet casey we're going to worry about a draft that we have right here when a first pick invoker for an entity that's uh i mean it could be a flex but they do have storm stormer probably one of the best invoker players in the world and yeah so entity are three and three uh, which is a pretty solid score. They also, you know, some of their losses came from like Team Spirit and so on. So, you know, it's no real shame losing to them. So as we touched on already, SMG, yeah, they've they've got to step it up. They have the players that can make it happen, you know, mid one, no one. They have Afu on plus four, John Well of mm. five. They have MC as a stand-in, probably like one of the best <laughs> stand-ins you could ever ask for. Um, there's one thing that is slightly concerning to me. I think Invoker is an incredible hero. Mm -hmm. I've tried it myself to counter it with Puck. I got my ass kicked. I saw someone else try it here in this tournament. They got their ass kicked. So okay. if anyone can do it, it's no one. No one, it's time to reverse it. Show me that I'm trash and beat Stormstorm as stupid invoker. <laughs> uh, uh, you got some strong opinions on that one. I from do. The, <laughs> that stupid invoker, all right. Uh, no, it, that, that's a definitely a good point to make here. Obviously, SMG confident with the Puck response going yep. up against the invoker. So it does kind of make you wonder the possibility if knowing that especially is maybe a swap of the invoker to more of a support arch. We've talked about that before and then getting a different mid hero. If they truly feel like that, that matchup is not the strongest, but uh, something to keep in mind as the draft uh, it does continue on here. And it must be something that SMG feel good about. Cause when I look at their recent draft, they did actually play this exact matchup. They played nine pandas, nine pandas, first pick invoker, they go puck. They get their ass kicked. So it must be like, okay, I've learned something from this matchup. It's time for round two, baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're starting to develop a little bit more of the, the TI meta. So it's going to take through the road to TI here. But obviously all these teams competing really at the, the big event that is TI of sorts. And, and But like we see all the time with the event like this, you know, like the evolving meta. This is day number two. We've had plenty of matches now from the day one and even so far yeah. with today. So getting a little bit more. Uh, information right there and yeah things like Murta, for example being banned oh, here yeah. has been the most picked hero actually of these qualifiers or the round or the group stages i should say in the road to di uh so far but yeah banned out here so of course not going to be seen yeah the hero's very strong I mean, it's just a flex potential it can carry even if they pick it on their own with the puck but looks like they'll just have a, a different combo i do like the grimstroke against invoker i may have touched on this yesterday just having like a dispel later in the game that you just get the shard, you take away cold snap, vessel, whatever meteor burn might be on someone, take it away, and you combo great with puck. So I do like mm -hmm. how SMG are currently like just building their foundation of the draft. Yeah, Grimstroke certainly uh, one of the stronger support heroes right now that we have seen bringing that silence to the table. That inks well defensive tool though, as we yeah. mentioned before, you know, similar to like that Shadow Demon idea as well. Why he's also oh, yeah. so popular in, in at least one of the reasons that that very good saving tool. Uh, that brings to the table and, uh, you know, get a shard on Grimstroke that really enables him to be just that. So speaking of saving, uh, Snowball save is going to be online here for Entity as they go mm -hmm. the Tusk direction and they throw a Dawnbreaker in there as well. Oh, I actually really like the Dawn. I think Dawn is, first of all, a great hero, 
but being able to use your ult reliably is pretty cool. And when you play against Puck, he holds people down for a long time, doesn't deal the most damage. So you can actually really counterplay Coil quite easily in the early game. And Tusk Dawnbreaker is something we've seen Shopify do a lot in like recent tournaments. And I have seen this lane dominate every single time. I don't know what the answer is to it yet. So hopefully SMG know what the answer is. Yeah, you know, it's something I think keep in consider as well as we're showing the players right here. They even make comments about that. Like, hey, we were ready two hours ago. It's like, uh, technically, this yeah. series was supposed <laughs> to start. You know, to, it's obviously a rolling schedule, though. So understandably, you know, give or take half an hour, maybe. But to have it be two hours later because that that previous series, uh, you know, taking a while, you know, <laughs> you got it. It's but uh, on the serious point there, though, it's like, you know, that that, that psyche, the mental state, it, you mm -hmm. think you have a game, you have it away that much longer. It's taking that much longer to play out and, you know, making you wait. And so you're playing maybe another pub or you continue to talk and overthink things. So you kind of wonder what that uh, what that psyche is possibly like right there. But hopefully they're zoned in now as the draft is obviously finally here. Ah, that's also funny. I forgot that SMG have uh, Heen on their roster, so he's coaching them. And I'm, my right. April and Heen know each other very well. When the MC won TI, I'm fairly sure that Heen was his coach. So, yeah, I'm a bit surprised about their score, but it is it's time. I'm I'm feeling some you know some magic power. It's around the time of the year you want to show up, and I get to see a uh, a techies. Have not seen it too much in this tournament. I think I saw Save played earlier. Still a very underutilized hero, in my opinion. Wow, yeah. So I'm bringing up the stats right here. Techies, uh, two and zero oh so there far in these uh, in the road to Unbeatable. TI here. Yeah, is is actually undefeated with those two games. So, yeah, pretty good sign for Team SFG, I suppose, with that third pick, Techies. Yeah, I mean, you've got a lot of this like AOE damage. I do think that's what you needed. Like when you talk about, okay, there's a save with the snowball. There's a potential like Solar Guardian coming out as well. You need a lot of like blast damage. You have blast off. You're gonna have Inkswell getting like into the coil so i think it's very nice what they have going for now and i would say the void doesn't necessarily beat the tusk dawn lane but time dilation is great and time walk you should not really be in danger of dying in this lane. yeah yeah going back to the dawn break here it's something else i want to stress on too is this this kind of somewhat global presence that entity is starting to bring to the table here you know all three of these girls to an extent Obviously, Dombreaker with the ultimate invoker, Sun Strikes, and just a lot of range. And even Tusk, you know, has a plenty of range himself as far as initiating with shards and snowball. So that very good potential to just get you from a distance, uh, yeah. they are certainly bringing to the table right here. But that's going to be a Templar Assassin for Entity. TA is a pretty damn good pick in this game. I think something that people underestimate too is like the shard on this hero, where you get the silence on your trap slater, is very nasty against both of these cores, like both White Park if they're suddenly silenced. You can catch them off guard. I think the supports are not the best against TA either. And Watson is damn scary on this. And another added benefit, Tusk could potentially go safe lane with this range carry. So it also gives you a bigger option of you could also potentially pick a four on entity if you if you do want to later down the line. So you're pretty set on the idea that Dawnbreaker is gonna be a core as well with that statement? Yeah, I think so. Like I'm yeah, I'm pretty sure these are just gonna be your three cores. The Dawn off lane, Invoker mid, TA safe lane. And I think you're you're chilling. All right. Well, I mean, SMG, they, yeah, so they are going to ban a Chen so far. So it seems like they certainly are thinking along those lines as well. Thinking of, you know, what heroes may be going to babysit the Templar Assassin. So banning out the Chen and another one that uh, they'll have to consider right here. I mean, El Shadow Demon is still on the board and mm -hmm. hasn't been banned out yet. So maybe another one they want to think about, but... So SMG needs, you definitely need an offlaner, I feel, that you can try to play through. I'm kind of looking and thinking at what MC could want to play. I think it's Earthshaker is great, but Earthshaker and lane against TA is not, uh, I don't know, I think it's not too great. There are some Darkseer teams. If they had a melee four, I would really love Darkseer. Hmm. I think SMG needs something good. Like at this point, yeah, you have great team fight with your Void and Puck, but it's not easy to connect that on the map against these very mobile heroes from Entity. So I really want their offlaner to be able to pressure this TA a lot in the early game and in the lane. I always go back to something like a, like a Visage style hero here, mm -hmm. building hitter, with some solo lane presence as well. So maybe one they could consider. Obviously, Beastmaster being banned out and yeah. To that point, and he's certainly trying to think of a hero that comes to mind there that you want to make sure they don't get in their hands and they got plenty of time to do so. It's going to be SMG will have to react pretty quickly here. Only 12 seconds of reserve time themselves. And there you go. They're going to be on the clock because that's going to be a warlock as the Darkseer ban happens just prior to that. 
It's a very late Warlock pick. Like, just a week ago, you, you go into any pub, Warlock, just your first pick there. But yeah, I think Warlock's just nice for your draft. You do, like, more slow, more team fight, nice wave shots. I think that's pretty chill. They did end up banning the Darks here, so maybe that was still one of, like, the best picks you could go for. So for SMG, my friends, what, what is it going to be? If I expect anyone to have something more spicy than others, it's going to be mind control. This, especially when you're, when you're standing in a team, I'm pretty sure you, you get to choose your hero here. <laughs> what is MC going to decide or give his opinion on or maybe just none of that involved either way it's going to be Underlord is All right. what they decide to go with so more, a little bit team fight and just that bulky presence an aura carrier it's, even yeah I would not have called that one it's definitely here that is somewhat I think pro underrated is definitely a good word but also not really on like people's radar at all um, I think they have three quite greedy cores in a way like i definitely consider underlord and void very slow heroes i think puck's tempo is very reliant on his laning phase mm -hmm. so i'm a little afraid for how smg's draft will come together but if they can stay even in this game then we're gonna have a lot of very even team fighting in a very even game yeah it definitely has potential to be as you said right there a lot of good team fight now and it's team perhaps you maybe lean a little bit towards their direction and all five of, well four of these heroes at least certainly bring plenty to the table when it yeah. comes to initiating and making some big plays within these team fights obviously there's like golem from that warlock uh yeah. especially by dom breaker just jumping in of course invoker throwing all those spells left and right but yeah mid one on the faceless void gonna expect some good farm out of him and certainly yeah. he can take over the game as well if he's able to do so there He's certainly going to be the win condition for his team, like with the Void. If mid one can get to a good stage later where he's not far behind, or if he's even even with the TA after like 30 minutes, they're, I think they're in for a good position. But just getting there, I think that's going to be the hard part of this game. Well, with the way things are going so far on the stream especially, we're in for a 60-plus minute game oh, at we least. Are. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to wonder who that's going to favorite. No, obviously, completely different series here. But hey, you know, we had a longer one yesterday ourselves. We just had those two. And... I feel like there's been there's been maybe a little bit more these longer games here on the road to TI yeah. than uh, than perhaps typical. So something to uh, consider when you're looking at the lineups as well. But loading in now and again, this is like we say, do or die time, especially more so for Team SMG. Uh, they they really do need a two and zero here to at least feel like they're they have a chance because yeah. even with the two and zero, they're still not out of the woods yet. I mean that's just how the start has been for them. But hey. You know, it is yeah. what it is. Like it's, oh, at this point here. right now, it's, it's going to be like, okay, you want to just put faith in like kind of your own hands as much as you can. So you don't care about the other matchups. Let's just two oldest boys. Let's play our best. And then, you know, hopefully after it worked out and it gives you tiebreakers or something like that. <laughs> so we just got to hope and pray. And for SMG, yeah. it's time to, it's, it's A game time. You know, no excuses, no nothing. Help each other, play good Dota. And, you know, good things may just happen. Absolutely. So Entity, you're on the radiant side. Got uh, what well, little predictions while we're actually lining up right here. Of course, we got to go over those real quickly. Team with the most kills at the end of the game. Let's go over that one. Uh, who's who's winning, Breaky? I'm letting you call I mean, this one. <laughs> that's that's what it comes down to, I suppose. Um, I, God, I, I honestly want to say Entity's lineup just feels like more of a gotcha team. And even if they don't win, I still think uh, they potentially would have more kills in the end. So yeah, I did go, go with them. With Entity, yeah. Power kill before ten. I'm gonna say yes. Uh, whose total number of player drafts by 25. I'm going with Jeez. a lot of deaths. So I'm going yeah. with 26 plus. 26, 26 to 35. 35. I like that. And team of the most runes picked up by 10. I don't know. Who cares? Entity, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? That's one of them. I like Whatever. that. <laughs> Select one and coin flip anyways. All right. Bounty rune control. Um, it's going to be a two for two. I'm get Oh, they're looking Ooh, at the they're waiting. Out. Wait, what? Uh, they're waiting a little too hard, but let's see. They're going on John Well. I mean, that should be a kill, I suppose. So, yeah, All they, good. They literally let him grab the bounty room and they take him out right after. I love it. All good. Like, I guess so there's the fact that they actually had the Watcher, so they didn't want to step in too far and steal it. So you give the bounty, you get the first blood. I like it. 500 IQ play. And it kind of shows you right there, like, just how potent this combo can be. Uh, with, yeah. with Tag Team, with Dawnbreaker, and a Starbreaker, I mean... If they get on top of you like that, you're just going to die. Yeah, like that's why sometimes, or most of the time, it's like, oh, double melee lane, that's going to be so easy. But if this double melee lane just kills you, like then who cares if they're double melee or double range, right? This lane has so much potential as MC. 
I guess he's just got some melds, oh. fatal bonds, and blood grenade on him. Because yeah, I was stuck talking about the top lane. I I'm with you. I mean, <laughs> it was on our screen like, and we like, missed it. What? I mean, TA down there. It's not a lane that you think you were going to be seeing a kill from a TA warlock, but. At level one, especially at an Underlord. I mean, that's just... TA melt is a disgusting spell. Still shouldn't happen, but, you know, nicely done by Entity. I mean, I miss it, even though it was literally all my stream. Yeah, well, that yeah. shows you how uh, unexpected it really was. But in the end, it did happen. 2 nothing start for Entity. Obviously already feeling very good for them. As Did you see that Firestorm, though? As MC, yeah, sure, he died, but now he's back with a full life. A lot of mana to work with, and... Oh, they want to oh. go for the kill of Fishman, but no more Firestorm means Fishman is going to walk it off for now. Still a lot of pressure. They've got all these sheets pushing in. They did get level two first. I mean, that's generally when you get some of these unexpected kills in the lane. You get the level up timing before them. MC being very annoying under the tower. Let's get two denies off there. And yeah, I've got my eyes a little bit on mid, and it looks like no one definitely learned from the matchup earlier because he played the same one and he lost. This time around, his CS very good in the mid lane. Yeah. Pretty good advantage, nine and three compared to the seven and two now invoker. So slight lead there, but it's still good to have at this point in the game. Also look at the top lane. They try to make a play on Faceless Void there, but of course he's got the time walk, so not much of a chance they can do. But here comes the rune control in the mid. Puck, he's gonna make sure to grab that bottom one as invoker, of course, gets the top rune there, so. I mean, you'll just see like why they picked this face as void. It's definitely going to be a very good void game, as we already talked about. But just having the time walk against these spells, which is still Gosh. on some cooldown, but he'll be able to just walk it off and like the time dilation as well to try and help us support. But if John will ever, if he's ever out of position for one second, he is toast. Yeah. He's straight up dead. Well, and time walk is also a little bit longer of a cooldown than things like, like the Starbreaker. So. You know, that's why mm -hmm. right there they weren't expecting to get a kill right there it's just more so let's force him to use time walk and then you know maybe get a chance on him again while it's still on cooldown yeah if anything make him use a, a more region to play defensive but yeah he has a backup now at least we're gonna make him now, this again. Is, it's it's a lane that i really like a lot because something i like to say is just like the kind of like vibe check and checking how ready your opponent is because if they're greedy for like a few seconds you can just punish that on the spot mm -hmm. bottom lane as well like entity lane is very chill fatal bonds fly blades push it out get levels pull very simple. Yeah. Oh, you see the shards going out right there, but mid one's not going to panic. He's just simply going to walk around the ice shards and he'll be fine for the time being. But yeah, this Dawnbreaker, not surprising. She's also managing Gabby playing it, of course, to, to get essentially free farm here, 15 to 4. Yeah. Pretty of the 14 and 2 faceless void. So I love his build too. Like just a early bracer, the double gauntlet for the soul ring magic. Like just massive, mass stats to be able to sit in this lane, right click the void, and try to LCS him. He had another game on Dawnbreaker just yesterday, and he played phenomenal. I'm gonna go in right there and once again force him to use that time walk. Grimstroke, though, showing back up here to support his team. But yeah, Grimstroke. Well, it's missing there for a little bit, but this is kind of why it's a bit. I think it's like his, if he gets in here, maybe he could be in trouble himself, but he's going to go with the Inkswell initiation and quickly run away. But you can tell Grimstroke knows he has to play this very careful. Yeah. Well, at least for now, I, I can definitely say that mid one knows exactly what he's doing in this lane. He's standing his ground exactly when he can. Like he's getting a lot of clicks off. The fact that Entity are low HP in this lane is definitely going to make it way harder for them to try and contest right now. So SMG mm -hmm. are playing this lane very well. All right, so bottom line though, how is that TA doing? 19 and seven compared to the 15 and six Underlord. It's certainly uh, looking pretty good for the Templar Assassin. Of course, when you factor in that kill that happened earlier, Techies looks like he's just gonna be stacking in the meantime as we're coming up to five minutes. Yeah, I Underlord. honestly don't see T TA does not get pressure by Underlord in the lane. Like the best thing Underlord can like maybe do is what? You, you get a Vanguard early on, a Ring of Health, high damage, and you like take some CS away, but TA has refraction against the damage that is, you know, the difference between the two of you. So mm -hmm. you don't really care about that. I think it's more going to be about the auras. And he's freeing up the techies, as we saw by the Observer. He's sacking the triangle, so it's going to help his team later. Yeah. Ooh, top lane, faceless void. Ooh, he got the time walk off just in time. If that, if that stun connects, maybe, maybe they have enough damage. But you see Warlock rotating over to try to make a play, unable to successfully do so. TA bottom lane. Refraction, it's already been taken off. MC is getting a little low himself, and Warlock's coming back in. What's on his sticks? Even throwing out the, the hand clap right there, but yeah, you're <laughs> right. He had, he had the wand there the whole time. Uh, just funny, like, both the both are, like, at 5% HP high-fiving each other because they know <laughs> if they both just back, neither will die. 
But yeah, it's I already the, just getting to see how they really know the limits of their stuff. Yeah. I'm a little surprised. You're because you have 13 charges of that one, like that he didn't go in to finish off the job. Uh, maybe expecting techies could have then killed him even after the fact. But either way, MC survives for now and he yeah. pops it's, himself. It's honestly pretty nice if you can hold the charges as up top. Looks like Rain just some pressure. Down. They forced Katome to TP back into the lane. Looks like Medvan will just be A okay. But yeah, getting to hold the stick charges as there's another move down bottom. No one is coming. That he is, and they really want this kill now. Onto the Templar Assassin, and dang it, they're going to get it. No one. Great rotation. Hits level six. However, Techies ends up falling to Storm Stormer. So, Invoker making a play himself, using that Sunstrike. Eye for an eye, I suppose. I do like the fact that nowadays, there's not everyone does this, but just one level in Exhort. Like, level one Sunstrike is 200 pure damage. It's honestly pretty insane. Like, that's 20% of, like, in, or even more, like a quarter of a support's health right now. Yeah, and making it work right there as he has hit. Yeah, because usually Puck, it's like not surprising. It helps set up a kill somewhere else because it's level six. Yeah. Get that drink coil, but exactly. Evoker, the fact that he's able to sun strike and still stand strong in the lane at level six because he got that one pointed X or that, that, that certainly is a big deal. So makes it three to one now. Lead for these lanes. These lanes are going great for SMG. The, the void is like up there with Dawnbreaker. Sure, they're the same. Stormstormer trying to put a stop to MC's early game. Will probably be successful. Yeah. EMP, a couple of auto attacks, and Watson will finish the job. So, great rotation from Invoker. He's certainly getting involved early on, and why not pick up some earn charges in the process? Oh, absolutely great. You want to slow down the Underlord at the same time, you get to speed up Watson on the TA, who he's going to be your, your tempo hero. The faster he gets his mm -hmm. items, Roche, Towers will fall. Because, yeah, SMG with how they're doing, at mid one doing well on his side, but most importantly, I'm looking at no one. His performance so far. Winning his lane, getting this gank off in the bottom lane. Like, if he can keep this up, he's gonna be the key to victory. Eight minute room, we're definitely having a battle. Silence up on Invoker, throws around with the EMP Tornado, cold snaps. No one though, he's able to get away. For now, the Shard and the Snowball in Sunstrike. He's too tanky though. Plenty of life to work with, so he'll be fine. In fact, Tusk is in trouble. Dream Ooh, Quill, here comes Dawnbreaker though, saving the teammate and still trying to make a kill happen. So far, nobody dead some way, somehow. It was keeping. It's still not going to die. Does he have Chrono? He does. He does have Chrono. Will it even come into play? Doesn't even look like it. Not even necessary. Gabby just eventually going to be run down. So slowed. Dawnbreaker, the only one to die after all that. Oh, that's so good for us. I'm a bit surprised that they decided to try like go under the puck in the tower with some snowballs. But the way that SMG just counterplayed this and mid one just comes in cool and chill. Time dilation, some hits. Doesn't even need to use the Chrono, and now Donald is down. They would love to have that, but mm -hmm. cannot. Will not be able to play around that for now. Man, that is something. That, that's the last hero I would have expected if only one yeah. hero is going <laughs> to die out of all that. But obviously, that's just you know both sides definitely having their moments there. But in the end, yeah, SMG is certainly feeling good in the outcome. And I, I love when this dynamic happens between your two and four. Your four gets to stack the camps. You give him the stacks. Now your four gets to take your mid lane to get some XP. Suddenly, your supports are going to be A-OK. -okay. I think it's just great. That's MC. Faith Boots tries to walk it off. Sunstrike. It's going to hit. So MC getting a little bit lower than maybe expected. Oh, However, Techies is there with the blast off. Oh, this Disarming. Is Go for the kill on Kategomi. Is going to make it happen. Maybe no way the regen is enough. And Techies will also fall. So close call. But Tusk survives. And two go the way of Entity. Oh, great rotation by Katomi. Like, he kind of knows, okay, I cannot pressure the Void very much. We don't really want to go mid. There's no Donald. Instead, they just go bottom, and I have to go again to the le two levels, even in Sunstrike. With yeah. all Sunstrike, that Underlord kill does not happen. And then there's no play in this lane. Yeah, you could tell that that definitely threw him off, too. As soon as that burst of life went away, he's like, oh, crap. Actually, this is a bad spot to be in now. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just too little too late there. So, 10 minutes in, and Invoker currently Ghost walked up, and he's hunting. And if you can find anyone in the jungle, but unable to do so. Instead, we'll head back to his zone. Doesn't want to waste too much time doing that as a counter smoke. Puck okay, included. So they're looking. I, I think it is not possible to kill the invoker mid. Look, they're going to oh. run into Kataomi. Good shards. What a great shard right there. Yeah. So no one. Okay, it's still around. Might just steal like this little one and a half stack, but very nice for Entity if they don't lose anyone on this. From someone's around. Yeah. Dawnbreaker going to crash in. Nice face shift, though. Manages to escape right there just barely. And 
That's D. Trying to figure out where they want to go from this. Well, they are going to get a kill on Grimstroke, it looks like, as TA is able to do that. So wow, TA is so... Like, fighting into the TA's area or, like, helping to, like, bait these fights for the TA around here is so good for the Zero. TA traps are incredible. The amount of physical damage. So just Entity's movement right now in the last two minutes, very crisp. Mm -hmm. That Faceless Void just in the meantime, just having a good time up there farming. Basket Madness in hand. And that net worth is certainly being reflected as a result as well. Looks like they definitely want to make a play once again on MC, though. You have Kataomi's nearby Tusk. Doesn't have six yet, so no Walrus Punch, but with Sunstrike presence in mind, maybe, but not going to really find the angle for it. But they're really trying to slow down the MC. This is giving me like some TIA, TI9 vibes. So you just have OG like try laning him, but he's, he's still doing okay. You know, his net worth is it's not great, but he's been in this position many times before. At least for Entity, Watson is on top of the network chart. They definitely need him to be here and also stay at this spot. Yeah. Ooh, Puck. 12 minutes. Going to come in. Chill Rune is down, but Puck instead going to be initiated on first. You see the slow from Warlock is not going to do too much, though, to Puck. The, the others are <laughs> going to be slowing down and angle a choke point like that. It's a pretty good tool to have. But yeah, in the end, they get the Rune and... They'll back off from it, so clearly the teams are definitely contesting for these runes this game. Oh yeah, it's it's really good for Entity to do this, not only for their own heroes, but just taking them away from no one. And in the meantime, your Dawnbreaker and TA love being alone in these side lanes. They get free farm, they get free XP, you get the shield rune now on your invoker as well. Suddenly, uh -uh, there's no play happening on Stormstormer now for like the next 50 seconds. Shield mm -hmm. rune plus Dawn ult, which is up soon? Yeah, no way. Yeah. And look at Storm Stormer, he is coming bottom lane. The Spirit Vessel, the one charge on it. He, he definitely wants to make a play with this. So far, in a decent spike. There's this big stack here. I don't think he saw that, though. Not that information just yet. All the double sentry <laughs> going down there, but... Yeah, it's just MCs. He's not here. A techie's just behind the tower, so... And they're actually going to be scanned. Tusk got scanned right there, so information for SMG. I mean, MC was like, screw this. I know that these clowns, when I keep playing here with like three, four heroes, one of you guys, you go defend the tower. I'm going to go recover, which I think is absolutely the right choice. Mm -hmm. It's like Entity will punish us a little bit, get the tower pushed in. I mean, in the meantime, sure, mid one, still just farming. First, the two supports are just clearing the ancients. Yeah. I think that's the correct choice. Before the Entity invade and steal it from you, just take that stuff. Exactly, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, there's a, they, they knew that they've been in the area, so maybe they figured they meant a spot it. It's just like, hey, let's just take yeah. this, at least get some use out of it, rather than giving it up to the other team. And so absolutely a, a fair call there. Techies doing a good job of getting uh, plenty of that. And hey, you know, Techies with some farm, he's going to be able to get a four staff here in the near future. So really make benefit of that. Okay, so I'm looking at a couple of the timings. So you're going to have a medallion rush, of course, on the Tusk with high-level tag team. You're going to have a Desolator completed on Mr. Watson, as I love this play. You just gate, you seal the Wisdom Rune. It's mm -hmm. honestly a big comeback for MC. But yeah, first Roshan of the game, that's going to be Entities. If SMG can somehow contest that, that'll be a miracle. Yeah, you know, we see this with like Nature's Prophet, of course, another hero that's fantastic for this Wizard Rune still concept. And Underlord certainly up there as well with his ultimate and ready to go. Oh, yeah. MC might as well use it, get the rune, get out. So yeah, fantastic play right there. Um, I noticed Dawnbreaker going the blade mail direction. This is a hero that I feel like could go so many different directions with yeah. his builds. What do you Good think? Good one is in, oh, trouble, in trouble, by trouble, the yeah. way. In a lot of trouble. He okay, absolutely is. The lockdown isn't enough. It sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's a golem. There's a golem for good measure. Hey, yeah, the no, tower's I'm, here. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm totally okay with this play. And yeah, blade mail, it's good against a lot of these heroes, I think. Like, it's just going to help you feel better about just going in. Like, then there's puck spells, there's faces void who might corner you, some firestorms. So, yeah, I'm totally okay with it. Yeah, that was great uh, coming together on the side of Entity. So, mid one. Basically had zero time to react right there, and that's that's what they hoped for. So, okay, and he's been having again pretty good farm, but that'll certainly slow him down. But speaking of pretty good farm, Watson is leading the way and has been doing so. Desolator now in hand, and yep. you know that blink dagger is coming up next to finish the typical build here on a TA. And the thing is, he's very likely to stay at the spot because while I do like the capabilities of what SMG can do in terms of ganking, how does the TA truly die? He needs to get coiled into 10 million spells or Cronut with the same story, but there's Snowballs Donald as no one is looking. But that's, a, I mean, Dawnbreak has 2k HP at 15 minutes. Yeah. These two heroes, yeah. 
no way you cannot kill this man and with the blade mill so even if you do yeah. jump him and then he's gonna, gonna kill reflect, you he's exactly he's gonna potentially kill you you got sunstrike coming in so it's just not worth the risk at that point and Don Raker can continue to feel pretty cozy. Techies is trying his best. Oh, he can spot it there, though. He actually threw a nade out, and they know he's here now. Yeah, the Sun Strike. Easy kill coming out here. Just a matter of time. Blast off. Oh, Yo. maybe not so easy, but eventually it'll happen. There you go. He's getting some damage out at least before he dies, you know, making the best of the situation. Because, yeah, at least for now, I don't think they have the fight really in them. They need to push out waves, get this void fat, try to delay the game. In the meantime, you know, it's going to be on Entity. How much can they increase their lead, take Roche and speed up the game? Because they're in a very good position here on Entity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Grimstroke just hiding in the trees up top, just getting any kind of farm that he can, pushing out the lane as this MC is <laughs> he's just been living up here in that jungle. He got away from the bottom lane a while ago, and this has been Mike Phil's new home as he's uh, going to finish off the last bit of that camp there before spawns take place. But look at Tusk, Katayomi. They want to find Grimstone. They know he's here. They got the vision. Sunstrike. It's gonna, it actually is going to hit. He turns around. Here comes Underlord as well with the portal. And Puck showing up. Puck still has a drink. Well, not going to be necessary here to kill Tusk. Blast off. No, it connects on Dawnbreaker. They absolutely want more. And Dawnbreaker, key target, of course. But as we go back to, not an easy one. There's a blade mail. And the reinforcements coming the other way. Entity knows they have a chance now. And SMG figures the better of it is to fall back. Ooh, Gabby played that very well. Already backing, or like, you know, backing nicely and turning around. But SMG, they know that they're all coming through this ward. Invoker, Tornado, it's going to be a swing and a miss, though. And Dawnbreaker's dead. And now the Dream Coil connected Invoker. Yeah, he held the coil that whole time. It's not going to be enough, though, as Storm Stormer just quickly walks it off, takes a snap, and has the distance. So, I, my, ga my bad, Gabby. I jinxed him, yeah. saying how beautiful he played the five times before. As Watson does say hello to no one, revealing the Desolator and the Bling Dagger. Yeah, this is a nasty TA timing at this point. Yeah, you do not feel good about giving up auto attack Stormer. against the TA, but Storm Stormer eventually is caught. The nade's going out. And down goes Invoker. All right, he got... Team SMG feeling pretty good right now, although oh, Grimstoke is going to be picked off right there, and now Underlord's in trouble. The TP, however, pretty good in that time. Ends up getting away, but a double kill for Templar Assassin. So Watson, in a, in a sense, has the last laugh. As Oh, he definitely does. He's got the shard now. He gets his, some Desolator stacks as well for bonus damage. Mid one is around the area. Let's see, Snowball. Donald. Uh, yeah, oh. is that going to be enough? The uh, Chrono Spirit defensively? No, maybe offensively. Going to kill Warlock. Wants to kill Tusk as well. Not enough damage just yet. Gets another proc. Double kill for mid one just like that. Is he still going to fight this out? It looks like for the time being. Wants another okay. pass. Proc on Watson. Not going to get it though. Mid one's getting low. Ooh, Needs the time. time gets it off in time. But he is melting right now. He's going to be locked in place by the Underlord. And the Firestorm as well takes out Templar Assassin. SMG. They said this fight ain't over. Oh, they just, honestly, they straight up outplayed them. The way that Midron was baiting this and like going back and forth, he hits a great chrono. I thought maybe he killed no one because he had just orb, but he had an arcane rune on the puck, which made all the difference oh. in the fight. Absolutely does. Storm uh, Stormer yeah, wants to kill this techies, but that's deep, man. That's on strike, it hits. That do be deep. Too deep. You better call it off. Uh, yeah, I not only the fact that you win this fight, but now you delaying the game without Watson having taking Roche. Like you're actually getting to territory where you can look to fight back as SMG in the next few minutes, like a more oh, head yeah. on, like just a head on fight. Yeah, especially when Chronosphere is ready to go. Another 80 seconds and mid one will have another one uh, ready to be used right there. Puck mid lane, uh oh. Well, he's just dead. Oh, we'll see you later. That was a quick one. That's that's the combo. The Tusk catches you, throws out the Walrus Punch as the Sun Strike's coming in. You just cannot get away from it. And that is a ton of burst damage. Now, level four on the Exhort. Yeah, also, like the, the TA traps now giving you more vision, having the silence. It's going to be something that you need to think about as these SMG heroes. Maybe a gem, maybe a defensive item on one of these cores. Uh, this looks like Entity. They just want to go for more because rightfully so, they should be doing that. Yeah, it goes back to Entity's lineup. It really just screams on paper, at least, with the trap. It's just, we're going gonna to go, go, go. A lineup that can catch you over and over again. And this is definitely being uh, showing part of that. In fact, TA is also going to get a nice little ancient stack that happened to be here as well. 
as they take out Techies. It, Wister Broom's going to spawn soon, but they're not going to try to contest that. They're going to let it be there. Yeah, it looks like perhaps it's a little just greedy to stick around instead. Looks like they're picking out Roche. They can kill that mid, very quickly. Mid lane, mid, though, Storm Storm is also already going. Yeah, Underlord's getting low right here, but Lotus Orb? Never mind, he's fine. Okay, but once again, SMG are getting both Wisdom Roots. And on, they got them on both of the cores, so a lot of XP going their way and the support's ways too. So sure, you're gonna get Rose, but I must say, like this 14 minute and 21 minute Wisdom Roots steal, that, it, that, that stuff is adding up. Absolutely. And, you know, Dawnbreaker was heading to the Wisdom Roots on, the, on their side, but got distracted by trying to make a play on Underlord right there, so it it over. And... Obviously, as you mentioned, Faceless Void has came in and stole it. Now, speaking of big objectives, Roshan is going to get taken out. He had SMG making the way down there with the smoke, but unable to get here in time. However, mid one, he's going to find Tusk, and that's certainly one kill at least. Can they get more? They possibly can. Go that Soulbind. Is, that is a big Soulbind on both. Templar Assassin, got to fight this out. Code of Spirit can make it difficult, though. TA's melting. The follow-up damage. Yes, another Bash Brock, and just like that, the Aegis is gone. Storm Stormer also gets picked off to the left. TA is going to come back up. Stun though oh. on Fishman. Mid one? going to blow it up. Mid one is actually going to pull it up right there. Excuse me. He manages a time lock in time. MC. Walrus punch in the air, so he'll be finished off. But Watson, no more agents. Going to be taking some bash procs again. And down goes the Templar Assassin. Mid one. He's feeling really good right now as no one else shows up with a puck to assist plenty of utility and damage himself. Dawnbreaker run down. And they get Roshan on the side of Entity, but SMG. They win the battle. Oh, I mean, SMG, literally, like, mid one and John Will did so much in this fight. Like, mid one having the dragon scale, he has the Manta style. They keep dispelling him with the Ink Swell shard as well. Like, he did so much tanking with spell damage as well, gets off a good chrono. Yeah, SMG are team fighting really, really nicely right now. This, these Chronospheres have been massive. You know, sometimes you see these uh, Faceless Void games, even in top tier players, sometimes the Chronosphere is not as big as you would expect or hope for. And mid one certainly making some big ones here in this game. And the back to back is it, absolutely critical on controlling these fights. Also, here, so. how, like how they fight split is so nice. You have the, the Grim and the Void playing together. And the yeah. mid on the left, you have those heroes. They take out Stormstormer. And even though they're buying back, that mid one barely gets to live here. Time walks it off, and then they just keep the fight going with the next Ink Spell. It's mid one. Already looking for more. Yeah. Donald. That's a dead faceless void. Now, so in the live action, you know, we're watching the replay right there, but you can see in the bottom right, uh, they were chasing Tusk that whole time. So that was just getting a little too confident. And now Grimstroke is also going to be picked off. So maybe a bit too cocky, feeling confident with uh, what just happened recently. That faceless void. Did not expect the whole team to show up there. All right, easy jinx once more. <laughs> Mid one goes down, as does John Well. Just getting a, maybe a little over happy from the recent fight, but still a decent position for them. I would say both teams are still fairly happy, I think, with how this game is going at this point. Yeah, definitely. It's, and you certainly don't want to overstate that death, but it's a death on the faceless void right there. Not only is he having a way to resurrect now and slowing down his momentum, but TA just really opened up farm once again. She gets, you know, free ancients in the meantime, and she's building up that gap that she has over the faceless void that much more by really about 2000 at this point, even more going to be coming here. And her BKB is almost finished as well. And kind of getting to that point of going to be slight, almost like an item ahead of the faceless void. Yeah. No, they're going to continue to like have to play this way, try to keep Watson at the top network. But one thing that they're going to have to deal with as well is a little bit of just tankiness and mobility from some of these SMG cores. Like Puck, Void are fairly similar in... If you can't catch them or lock them down for longer than one, two seconds, it's really hard to ultimately get to kill them. Mm -hmm. mid one, very... I don't know if he did this on purpose, but he, like he time walked over the trap. Yeah, never mind, now he will walk through it. <laughs> so they will know he's here. Yeah, they definitely have an insight that he's in the area. It's a matter of what do they do with that information. It's certainly going to see him, even Grimstroke showing up. So yeah, they, they know they're here, they're pinging out, but not really doing too much with it, at least just yet. Invoker, by the way, just got his own BKB, so putting high priority on the BKB, as you'd expect. Yeah, you can definitely, like, even, honestly, time dilation alone makes Invoker unplayable. Like, you're literally getting chrono if you're getting time dilated, because you can't cast spells. Okay. So that's uh, that that <laughs> BKB for that spell alone is good enough for me. Not too shabby. Maybe get a Lotus Orb on the team or something. But oh, they're gonna be a big fine here. The opening faces void. Cold snaps. Inkswell's up. 
It's on strike. It's going to miss, though. Here comes Dawnbreak with the Solar Guardian. The uh, Golem is out as well. Mid one oh, going to be disarmed, is... but he walks away at the last second. Techies, that disarm from him. Doing a work here, certainly, as well as all the nades. But Techies, it is going to be too much to handle. He'll end up falling. No one manages to barely live on Puck. Meanwhile, mid one's going at it with Watson. They're going toe-to-toe -to, -toe to the left over here. But no, the tornado hits, and now mid one could be in trouble. Snowball in. Yeah, I know we're watching the right as well, but mid one is going to go down to the sun strike. Back over the right side now. It's going to be a kill on Dawnbreaker. So another case of kind of two different fights happening. What happened even? What? That was such a strange fight. So first of all, I th I'm pretty sure that the deafening blast from Stormstormer canceled the blast off from Techies the moment before oh. he landed. I don't know if we can get a replay on that because I feel like that would have changed the entire fight. And then, yeah, so mid one was manning up on the TA, but I guess he had no mana for the Chrono. Ends up getting... Uh, he they got hardcore punished for that one. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. The, the no banner for the Chrono out, the, the EMP hitting, and that's threw him off clearly. Because, uh, like I said, I know we're, we're focused on there was really two different fights. You have the Underlord and Dawnbreaker going out to the right, and Tech even throwing, but then on the left, it was mid one was completely isolated. Speaking of isolation, Puck right here almost gets caught out in a bad spot, but no one. He's going to be fine as they back off, seeing Techies and maybe somebody else coming in. So. Man, I don't, this is definitely one of these games, though, KZ. It just feels like uh, anything can certainly happen in this one. Uh, there's a lot of action going on with a lot of back and forth. I do also like no one's itemization with like the Ghost Scepter into the E-Blade. You need it against these heroes and against the TA Silence. And it also helps you scale. So definitely very nice of him to understand exactly what he needs in order to scale. Because, yeah, yeah. also now they get him the gem. Get rid of these TA traps as his blink is canceled by the little golems. Always love some F Blade, so no one has more burst to work with now if it comes into that. You got uh, Ghost Scepter also picked up by Grimstroke, so yeah, really putting value. Yeah, oh, it's going gonna, ethereal. this is definitely a nullifier game for the Radiant Heroes. Like, look at the techies as well. Glimmer Force, it's gonna be a third Ghost Scepter, so you're gonna need to deal with those pesky defensive items. Fishman gets wards off. Oh, <laughs> techies. Blast off. Unfortunately, a bit of a miss there and easily gets countered. Now, you know, it's just techies, though. I mean, it's doing techies things uh, and whatever if you're SMG. Yeah, sometimes you blast off in the wrong direction or you have yeah. a wrong read. It's all good. In the meantime, at least, you know, your team's farming. You got this gem on no one. As long as he can stay alive, you can slowly take away all the vision, take away the traps. Gem is going to pay for itself. And yeah, just try to get a couple more items for the second Roche. Because Entity, they need to get their hands on that. I know they're ahead, but. I cannot stress enough. We all know how strong Faces Void can be in oh, yeah. drawn out games. And uh, BKB is almost finished. He just yeah. needs a little bit more for the recipe, and they're also going to get the Tormentor on the uh, on the dire side over here. So be able Grimstroke <laughs> has to be a little careful, but he'll survive. And there you go. It's going to be Techies getting his shard now. So that reactive taser. Let me cap right. on the allies. Though the plus with the 67% for Dire. I'm not hmm. too much against. I feel like it. It cannot That's be more than 60. Yeah, I think more than 60 is illegal. Maybe <laughs> even more than 50. So, yeah, we'll have to wait for the second Roche. I do think that Dire scaling is very... It is scary and nasty. Like, if you're Entity, you can feel it. You're definitely yeah. banking on the second Roche right now. You need to set it up and take that one properly. Tier 3 items have also been coming out. Vindicator's Axe picked up by Faceless Void. Um, and then he did just get the BKB, as we mentioned there, too. So... Warlock, you see he's just farming, pushing out the bottom lane. He's trying to work on that Ag Scepter himself. Get the uh, get the extra golem, so, and you know what? He's, he's getting there, 2,400 gold saved up, so becoming realistic. Hey, I love, actually playing support is so much fun in Dota right now. You can do so much, you can get so much gold. Every hero has like amazing spells and scalability, so I like what Fishman is going for. He already has the drums, the solar. He's already helping everyone. Now it's time to work on yourself. Get yourself strong and big <laughs> in this game. Uh, he's smoked up with the four other players, or I guess three other players and him included. Uh, equally four right there. You got Invoker, meanwhile, going to Ghost Walk. So they know that Roshan potentially could be spawning soon. Yeah. Uh, it's a smoke on smoke. Entity's initiation has to be clutch, because if they go on Puck or Void and they somehow face shift or bowed or get to time walk all the HP turn around with a Chrono, I think the fight is done. So the initial go on entity will make or break their entire team fight. Yeah, such a tense moment here. Underlord not there, but of course he's got the Fiend Skate to join the party as soon as possible. 
Oh, you know what catch is coming soon. Ghost Walk, it's gonna take them out of the smoke. It faces point, no something's up. Time to lay to the meet of the oh, chrono. chrono. Three. A big chrono opening. Templars has it dropping. The golem comes out, but it can't save him. It's not in time. The Cole and the Cataclysm raining down from the skies, but it's not enough damage either. Meanwhile, Dawnbreaker and Dana gonna kill himself, but it's just too much to handle. But he's isolated. Warlock also falls in uh, the opening that SMG was looking for. Another god tier chrono. Oh my god. That it's just it, it's just too good. They have a nice rotation, they go around, feel like they kind of catch entity of guard. Three man chrono. If they ever get to go on the TA first, the, the fight's done. Like the fight is just GG on the spot. Invisibility. Yeah, Underlord joined them ASAP, and I mean, I don't even think, I don't even know if he had vision on the other people to the right there because of all the trees and everything. But the placement was just beautiful. I mean, he knew the one target. He just put it behind him, like in case reinforcements were coming, and it just happened to hit all three. But. Yeah, uh, the, as you mentioned, the TA especially, they get the jump and you see what happens. Deafening blast used right here. Storm Stormer's in a bad spot, actually. Be go on him. He got all the mana burned, at least for now, from mid one. But yeah, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure he chrono three cores last fight. They do have to be a bit careful now, though, because Chrono is down, Roche is up. So yeah, sure, yeah. Entity, they did lose the last fight, but Roshan is what is on the menu and what they need to be able to get now. That is true. Uh, with Chronosphere down for about 50 more seconds, you can tell Entity wants to push the issue. They're, they're going in. TA's back up. In fact, everyone's back up, including Dawnbreaker. Solar Guardian in. Tusk going forward as well. Trying to go face this boy. Science is up. He's had about third okay. of his life, but the time walk away, he'll be fine for now. TA putting damage into MC. MC is a BP boy, though. Techies, he also launches himself in with the blast off, and one knows that once again, mid one has to time walk away. Oh, Watson, he's knocked out. This is the best rock's happening. Is dead? dead again. He does have buyback. Not going to use it yet, though. Kadiomi also gets caught up, too. Mid one is just so slippery on this faceless void. They're just not able to like connect on one hero nicely. MC is too tanky. He has a halberd. He has all the auras. And sure, even while all the Radiant cores have a good game, how do they truly initiate? Even if they go on one target, it's just an ink spell. It takes them out. Yeah, I think start tipping each other because SMG, I would feel damn good if I were any of their players at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is definitely a game too where it's you see the net worth doesn't really give us uh, a great idea as far as the lead it feels like SMG has. And you know, we talked about how the Dota Plus is already favoring SMG. Oh, yeah. Well, it's definitely favoring SMG now. It's upwards of the 85% plus. And, you know, with what just happened these last couple of fights and now a Roshan kill, I'm starting to be a bit more of a believer in that. Yeah, I'm not too surprised. Like, also now Void, he's level 22 mid one. He's got Aegis. He looks like he wants to queue up a butterfly. He's got the level 20 talent where he gets attack speed and a chrono. He's got the time book that damage on 15 as well. Like, this Void is... Yeah, whoever he chronos, that hero is dead. It doesn't matter if there's a Donald, if there's a Golem. I'm pretty sure you are going to be out of this game. <clears throat> He's got an Aegis now. He's building into a Butterfly. It's still a little bit before we'll see that, but of course that's going to be coming. You're right, though, with the utility around him. I mean, good. so yes, mid one's playing fantastic, looking good. Cataclysm, by the way. Scouting. Going to be no yeah, problem. Just, <laughs> scouting, basically, <laughs> like the Zeus style right there. But um, the supporting cast, though, you mentioned with MC and the way he's built and how he's become yeah. a nuisance. He got the Heaven's Halberd. Techies is also so freaking annoying in these fights, too. I mean, Techies is going to get big and like also just dropping the mines like around the Chrono and like in the coil with all the magic damage or the magic resistance you're going to steal from the enemies, too. So uh, there's a lot of scaling going on. Did yeah. try to kill a hero? But that's just an illusion for now. No one is here. Three coil. It's going to hit both, and he's just keeping them slowed and distracted as much as possible, but he has silence now. Oh, another winning rift, though. He's disarmed. Not really that big of a concern. Tusk is caught. You see the fiend skate in, and there's a blast off as well from Techies. Uh, Golem comes down, but that's a kill on Tusk. It's just too little, too late. Mid one, he's got Chrono. Obviously, he doesn't want to use it on a Warlock. Can he get a Bash Brock? Yes, he can. Fishman's dead, and two are out currently for the side of Entity now. This e blade's just doing too much. Like to on no one, they can't kill him. Like, Entity's draft has a huge overlap when it comes to physical damage and trying to like lock one hero down. It's Dawnbreaker task with the stuns and only physical damage. So they're running to some issues right now. Mm-hmm. 
All right, so a lot of issues, certainly. So the, the net worth continues to be all right, but as usual in Dota 2, there's a lot more than just net worth that, uh, that you factor in, in in these games. And as a team and just what they have to work with the resources, et cetera, it, it continues to feel really good for SMG. And no one, again, is... Look at this. He's going to find another plan. Star Stormer forcing a BKB and just trying to get the hell on out of here. That's, I mean, even if you don't, I mean, okay, can keep chasing him. He's got the gem. He's gone. Or... I mean, oh, he's, he's good dead. Tornado. Yeah. It's not going to matter. Uh, oh, maybe. Uh, uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> oh, he got. What a player. I mean, easy okay. tornado with the blink out. Honest, that tornado barely clipped him. Yeah. Good getaway, but nevertheless, all right, scouting it cataclysm. Mid lane, Kadiomi. Cataclysm, helping maybe deter them a little bit, but mid one doesn't care. He's just in. He's going for Fishman. No, no Kadok offering. Chronosphere, oh, never no mind. mana. <laughs> no Run, mana. Brother. He does He's, have the cheese uh... in the backpack if they want to do some fancy, fancy play, or maybe you just gate him to your fountain, bring him back to the boys, keep the pressure going. Looks like that's what they will do. Love it. We are talking about the Radiant team, Entity being the one so aggressive and just all that gotcha potential earlier on in this game, and they were performing, but... And now it's SMG's turn. Now they're, they're using the Fiend's Gate to kind of move around the map. They got Puck, obviously, with an Octarine Core. We all know what that can do, especially in the hands of somebody like No One and just constantly oh, yeah. jumping at you, so... Yeah, all their momentum on their side. Look at Mid One, he's just by himself almost pushing the mid lane. I mean, I love seeing... Okay, okay, Mid One going in. Should maybe look to get the shard, I think, so he doesn't overcommit himself. Because, okay, this might be Aegis. That, that be. was a little, little aggressive, but I guess it was getting a little lower on the Aegis, so I figured might as well use it, I suppose. But Snowball, Donald, oh BKB. My. He's getting so low, though, but he has cheese. You're right, yeah. There's the cheese. The Kona's real lockdown, and TA's out for 85. No buyback. The blast off in. Who were we to doubt mid one right there? Grimstroke, Solar Bind on both. Dawnbreaker's like, please let me go. Well, BKB will allow for that, but Tusk, he's back. not going to be the same. Now, this is, I love seeing aggressive plays. A lot of the time, you you know, like they go wrong or whatever, but there's a lot of teams that would not go high ground, that would not position themselves like this. But because you do this, you're still playing against humans, you know, you're just <laughs> testing them. And Entity, they fail to test. That test fail here, bolt. and Cataclysm again, it looks pretty, and it does some damage, but... That was damage right there. Tusk, he melts. He has, doesn't have a buyback, so it's easily the mid racks, and they're certainly not stopping. Uh, you got TA still dead for 35 seconds. They will have Golem in a couple seconds here, so okay, they are going to be able to get a retreat out of them. All right, at this point, okay, did Maybe. Kadomi even have to? Yeah, so Kadomi even bought back because I like what he has queued up on the Tusk. He knows that you need to kick some people in, as I don't know if they'll get there. I'm not a BKB forced. Yeah, so it's I mean, just going to be second Rex, huh? That probably. Like I mentioned they got Warlock with the Axe Chaotic Offering, but that's not... He's, he's going to die before he uses it. He's just dead. Yep, well, see ya. He sure is. <laughs> Never mind. Well, TA's back up, but you lose a lot of your initiation and team fight there, so... Yeah, they, they need five heroes to be up. I think Entity right now, they have one fight left in this game. They're going to have to... Go all out on it. Talk about exactly what you need to do. Uh, let's see if yes, SMG even give them this time to think. I sure wouldn't. Why? Why do that when you can just get BKB. even more kills? It's Gabby, BKB. He's running. He's trying his darnest. And Puck. Oh, I was gonna say Puck really goes for that, but that would have been uh, a little too risky. So, all right. Maybe they will say okay. The top. They got the tier two tower, so it's not gonna be megas, but. Obviously, plenty of damage done by SMG. Ooh. Yeah, there's, I think, too much going on at this point for SMG. Even a 25 talent on mid one, like he's already been having a great game. Mm. He actually took the Chronosphere AoE. That is very interesting. I have not seen this in, I don't know, God, how long. Because whenever I see people do this, the general consensus is like, yeah, I'm just griefing. You might <laughs> just like chrono your team and backtrack a soul P, but yeah, let's just see how he can put it to use. Uh, I mean, he. Yeah, there is the argument. It's like he's already had such great chronos. Like, does he really need more of it? Because th that is a that's an interesting point there, where it's potential to do m more negative against you. <laughs> but yeah. at the same time, yeah, I don't okay, think they're looking on MC. In a game like this, MC, he's dead. Yeah, wow, he's out for 95. Actually, he doesn't have a buyback. Okay. Mid one, he's looking and cooking. Manta, Manta used. Meatballs down. 
Silence. That's a mean, lot of damage. Yeah, that is a lot of damage. Uh, he's Man, dead. What is already? What is happening? <clears throat> About that backtrack. <laughs> oh God! Next guy is dead. That's a gem. Whoa. All right. I mean, again, big picture. I don't think SMG is like throwing this by any means, but they really let Entity have a much better shot here now than, frankly, it feels this, like it should have been. A, this is a hashtag for the viewers type moment, I think, from SMG. So we should all thank them for blessing us for a closer <laughs> game. But yeah, like what I was talking about earlier, that Entity have like one fight in them. And they were ready. They smoked. They find MC. You know, SMG were slacking for a few seconds. Bam, they get the first kill. And then SMG screwed up. They gave them more. So yeah, Entity, yeah. they're back, baby. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, it's basically a statement right there of, hey, don't underestimate our damage too. I mean, and this is a team, they're a tri-core, all scaling pretty damn well. I mean, do not underestimate Dawnbreaker and what she can do at this point in the game. She's got a Desolator yeah. uh, with that Echo Saber. And she just hit 25, by the way. All right, that's uh, not too shabby. It looks like Gabby's kind of owning. I, I must... They were also really liking those meatballs in that last fight, but either way, let's look. No one silenced. We'll be gone. Yeah, I know they look appetizing, but you don't want to eat those meatballs. They will hurt you. Uh, what? Okay, oh, next dead. one gone. Hello. He's got a buyback. But Faces is out for 15. Suddenly, they have Tusk Agonims. Like, you've got some kickback potential, like, happening. This whole, the whole game just turned in one minute. All right, my friends, yeah. it's time for a breather, because... We've got a Dota game on our hands. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we absolutely <laughs> do. What the hell? I'm still sitting here trying to, you know, process what really just happened. I, it, it, it really feels like one of those situations where SMG they maybe thought this game was a bit more over than they gave the game credit for. And again, all the credit to Entity at the same time in terms of capitalizing on the oh, yeah. mistakes. But holy crap, you are right. We, we This really feels like all of a sudden a somewhat even game now. Yeah, I mean, like, you could say SMG are screwing up, and sure, they kind of are. But without Entity smoking to that top place in the first, like, Radiant top area in the first place, that none of this would have happened. So it's yeah. on you to still make it happen. Now, okay, Roshan will be potentially the deciding factor of this game. He Absolutely. is up. Chrono, ready to go. Remember, with that extended range, with the AoE presence here, the level 25 talent. I feel oh, like they see him. Oh, the kickback. The kickback. Oh, no, the blow on mid one. Oh, it gets a time walk off. Okay. He's able to chrono. On top of TA, they want Donald, the kill. Golem, However, double Donald, golem. as well as the double golem in mid one oh, is dead. No. He's out for 100 seconds. Blast off it. MC's here as well. They got to kill TA, though. Invoker. Dawnbreaker wants more, though. Dawnbreaker is still an absolute beast here. The lockdown on Fishman, but they don't really care. They're going for Grimstroke. They find Grimstroke. They get the kill on him. Warlock. He's going to likely end up dead. Who are they hunting for? What's going on here? Oh, they're trying to TP back. Ooh, okay, so they got the Grim Stroke, and now they're going to try they gotta to get the out. Base. Okay, and they will. Yeah, MC and Afu, they hella carried that fight. I don't know if there's going to be a fight recap, but my god. Uh, I think this techie's dealt a shit ton of damage. Yeah. Because they won Looking that fight without it. their faces void. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, techies did the most damage. Five <laughs> followed by <laughs> Underlord. <laughs> You're wow. right. Yeah, they did like 9,000 damage. Because like, remember, your Void died instantly, and no, but no one was dead. He wasn't even in this fight. Uh, mid one, maybe you know, maybe there should be this token where you spend 2k gold and you can like take a different talent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a little too late for that, buddy. Yeah, he's, regret the... he's regretting that choice, I can assure uh, you. Yeah, you definitely got to wonder if you went the backtrack how things could be a little bit different. But Dawnbreaker wishing he had yeah, backtrack he... right now. He's in trouble. Support's coming. It's not going to be in time, though. He's out for 100, has buyback. But no one says, all right, it's my turn to take over the game. Ooh. Blast off with BKB. The kick back. Of course it. Oh, the meatballs. I like the positioning right there. Meanwhile, in the midst of it, Tusk is going to get it locked down, actually. John off. Oh, oh, the blast off. The blast off. Play. See ya. But now MC's left alone, and... He's likely dead. There you go. Obviously, the buyback on Tom Break could help make this happen, but... Mid one is back. He is. Careful. He doesn't have Chrono, though. Six more seconds. He's got Satanic. Beat down on Watson. Gets the Bash Brock. Oh, kicked away. Kicked away. I so now, I'm going to go back in. There's the buyback, and uh, the Fiends get in. Templar Assassin, the nice Cyclone, though. Or Tornado in the air, but it's too much damage. TA's dead. 
No buyback on him. It's three versus five right now. Star Stormer, no more BKB either. Blake's going to be coming up, not in time. Mid one, he's going to be shipped. They take out Invoker. Buyback immediately. Dawnbreaker realizing the number's not in their favor. Try to Starbreaker, try to get the hell on out of here, but the lockdown's too strong. A dieback on Gabby. And SMG trying to now finish the job. It's a two versus five. Okay, so Dawn has no buyback. Tusk just got hit, so they will have Kateomi, but they don't have Watson either. This is not an easy hold. And SMG, their supports are doing so much in these fights. SMC, MC's tankiness with Afus and Jonwo support casting, damn it, just carrying them. Now well, Tusk gets enough for the buyback himself, and that's gonna be mega creeps though. Does SMG stick around, trying to really get the tier four and finish this game? It looks like the answer is yes so far. Hex on Puck. It's, it's gonna get kicked in. Okay, he's fine for now. Yeah, the meatballs in the well right there. <laughs> oh. There's the kick. Okay, the golem. We got Where's the E-blade off though? The E-blade helping. He's fine. Now we're dead. Ancient exposed. This is it. SMG Cato. going all in. Cataclysm. Try to just scare them off. I mean, you got Invoker. You figure there's a chance to hold this off somewhat. Deafening Blast, the Golem, that that Pit of Malice is doing so much work right here. The Shard, they lock in MC. Not the best building damage here on the Ten side of SMG. One Middle one's <laughs> going for it. Middle one's focus fire, the lift out of him. Can he kill it? Yes, he can. SMG will take game number one. Boy, that was some entertaining Dota. All right, so the mid game, very good for SMG, and they should be very happy with that win, but damn, they sure made it entertaining with a couple of those mistakes in the late game. But yeah, nonetheless, very entertaining and back and forth game. Mm. I just I love seeing the reactions after a game like that, especially, you know, the sigh of relief certainly for SMG because we talked about not only is Whew. The game itself, you know, it had its moments where, hey, you know, there were those times of the mid one died there. Yeah. You're like, wait a second, is this the oh, comeback man. for Entity now? But what's on the line for them, though, at SMG? They, this is elimination in a lot of ways for them if they especially lose the series 2 nothing. So taking the yeah. first game, no, they, <laughs> that's they, a big deal. They need this, like not just momentum boost, but a 2 0. And from here on out, we're starting to see like where they really turned the game and fought super well, like going in and out, knowing exactly how like you want to play your heroes and go in and out with like your 200 HP, 300 HP and bring the game back. Cause yeah, their score before this win, one and five, they mm -hmm. need a 2-0 in this series. But this is step one. Yep, step one down. Now you can focus on game number two after a little bit of a break here. But while they're getting that little bit of break initially, obviously going through the recap of the game. I mean, this game, it had so many just highlights in terms of just entertaining fights. and. This fight right here was really one where you're like, okay, SMG is now getting that yeah. big lead. And uh, mid one here, I think this is where, yeah, he gets kicked away initially, goes back in, and then they kill TA with the Chronosphere lock. You just don't see how big that Chrono is, but clearly enough to, and no buyback for TA. That, that, that's yeah. fairly significant too, right? Because that wasn't a timer buyback. That was just a lack of gold buyback. Yeah, Entity definitely going to be a little upset, I think, about how some of this game went. Like, if for some of these, like, 15, 16, 17 minute fights that they lose, and then the first roll is just, like, super delayed, and they throw a couple fights. But then later on, I think SMG's heroes and their draft just gets so much easier to play with. Really, the more time that just goes on. And yeah, sure, Midwin had, like, some one or two very oopsie plays, but it, it doesn't matter. Overall, they, they just play better. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, hey, you're, it's going to happen, especially when games like this take place. You're playing a lot of Dota 2. I mean, yes, even the top tier players in the world, you're going to have some iffy plays uh, all the way even throughout finals of an event like this, right? But um, So that's understandable, but hey, you got the victory. That's yeah. what truly matters if you're SMG and you look across the board here. Stat-wise, I mean, Obviously, positive stats on the side of uh, on Entity 2. Look at Storm Stormer over there. 10-3 and 10 on Invoker. He had a hell of a game himself, but yeah. in the end, it uh, was not enough. But speaking of MVP, uh, Keizu, I think uh, I think Techies. Yeah. Somebody is, that we can uh, definitely agree on. Yeah, I, I, def I think he, he played the lane super well. He also, like, just stacking the triangle early on, building the right items, being in a nice place on the map, and, like, dishing all the damage. Like, we cannot forget some of these fights where they're getting forced around Glimmer Caves, Techies and MC are like carrying and dealing 9,000 damage. Like this stuff really matters in these games. So yeah, Afu on this Techies, sick performance. You know, sometimes you don't need the best KDA with 6, 9, 15. Like who cares? Yeah. <laughs> His impact is what matters. And he had a big one.
And I think this is one of those games as a spectator. It's just, it's hard to appreciate how yeah. much he was doing in the fights. I guarantee you entity understood that tech. Oh, was they know. very annoying. Oh yeah. This game between the disarms and just slow them down all constant nuking coming out from all the mines. Yeah. It's uh, it was a frustrating experience. I'm sure. But living up to the techies that we know and love of classic and techies is now three and oh here in uh, the road hmm. to TI. We mentioned it was two and oh going to do this. So yeah, it's undefeated. That's uh, something to consider. I suppose. Yeah. I see some heroes. They die off and then suddenly someone plays it. You know, Weaver gets busted out. Techies comes back and people yeah. show you it's actually good. You know, I just need to you know, trust your instincts. My friend suddenly, you know, techies is two oh now three oh next, you know, four oh <laughs> easy game. Easy game. Hey, maybe going to be a hero that's potentially banned. If not pick next game, we'll, we'll, we'll see here, Casey. <laughs> but obviously, we're going to go on that break ourselves. Entity versus SMG. SMG up one nothing. Can they make it a 2 nothing? Or will Entity split the series? Road to TI coverage continues next.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We got game number two going to be coming up between Entity and Team SMG. SMG continuing to try to stay away from elimination and doing good so far as they're up yep. one nothing here in this best out of two series or two game series. Anyways, I'm Frank CBK, joined by KZU Entertainment, though at its finest. Uh, no matter the outcome there, that oh, was yeah. a hell of a game to watch. But yeah, SMG did enough to become victorious in the end. Oh, SMG, you know, they're, uh, I mean, I don't know if I want to call it a high yet, but winning this game, you know, is definitely what they have to do. And they did do that entity now. They lost three games in a row, and maybe there's something about their tricor that doesn't feel too great with, like, Invoker, TA, Dawn. They, like, they can all kind of only play off of each other. Maybe it's not the easiest, so perhaps there's something small that they need to change there, but... Uh, this game is incredibly important for both teams, so yeah, both teams need to show up like right now. It well, is it is time, guys. That's interesting to bring that up because yeah, we're stressing this with SMG. How they're trying to you know prevent themselves from being eliminated, but one of the teams that could now potentially be eliminated if SMG does go 2-0 here yeah. is Entity. So yeah, in a sense, they're kind of playing for their tournament lives as this is the final series, and you know just. If the if entity manages to win one game, though, or obviously this game being the final one, then they at least keep themselves off of that list of uh, being eliminated. So you know that that's on their mind, and hey, the pressure's on in oh, a yeah. lot of ways for sure for them, even more so than SMG. So I mean, you, th I have had this experience. You lose in groups. You get this far. You know, you get to TI, the roll to TI. Like you get this far, and you lose first. It is the worst feeling you can have as a Dota professional. So I can assure you that they don't want to live that. They're going to yeah. have this, you know, light under their ass right now to make sure that they can be focused, bring out their A game, play their best heroes, and stay in the tournament. Because yeah. it can it can just start here. The whole transformation to you going far. It has to be. It has to start now. Yeah, the one game at a time mentality, and that certainly fits here. So fans, they're picking up. We got a uh, couple more to go before we get those first picks out of the way. You know, we talked about the heroes from the previous game that certainly we expect to maybe be addressed. Mentioned Techies even getting that MVP, a 3 0 <laughs> hero right now. You know, wonder if he's going to be addressed. Uh, Faceless Void has got to be another one you're thinking about, too, though. Oh, yeah. I and mean, that hero down the road is a good faceless void game like you can feel it and you can see it as a viewer like you just you just know eventually the hero will take over so certainly something you have to think about later down the road for both teams you know not just entity but uh yeah definitely have to say that smg should have the the momentum of on their side from game one mm -hmm. okay makes sense they ban the grim stroke and then they immediately pick up the pango so Go with the sound pango option, and Entity is like, okay, we'll just go our primal beast then. Sure. We've got the primal, like, the quote-unquote counter pick. It's still very good against pango, as you can polarize him during the roll and cancel it, and I think, like, your laning matchup is pretty fine. But, I mean, similarly to last game, like, SMG picked Puck into Invoker, which I wasn't fully sold on, but look good. Five, Apparently, you no, know, if you're just a boss at mid lane, you can make it work, so I'm sure that they're fine with this matchup as well. Well, it's looking at, again, referencing the stats here from uh, the day one, a little bit in day two. Primal Beast was was a hero that stood out to me a little bit higher on the win percentage here. was, uh, what, 11 games, 8 and 3 record, so not too shabby there. Uh, Pango, on the other hand, mm -hmm. kind of the not so good as far as win record goes. 19 games, so one of the more picked heroes, of course, but only 36% win percentage, so. Huh. Yeah, Pango's fallen off a little bit, huh? I mean, still, can maybe give it a bit more time because I still feel like when this hero has at least an okay game, he gives you so much in a draft. You know, mobility, wave shove, team fight, minus armor, Roshan. But yeah, not doing too hot. Well, that's good news for Entity so far with this matchup, but obviously you still got to ultimately play it out and anything can certainly happen in the end, but just always fun to look at the stats right there. Got more to ban once again. We referenced her previous game and being yeah, the most picked up here right now. In fact, I, I think what was it? Vengeful was actually the second. second or Vengeful's up there. Bristleback is actually the second most picked with Vengeful Sphere. Wow. Bristleback has been seen a lot. Uh, Bristleback is really like rising in songs. I think it probably already happened in scrims before. We saw it yesterday. LGD picked it twice and he just had godlike performances. Yeah. Like, literally. So not too surprised seeing the hero banned or picked in. 
most games. And in terms of how the draft will continue, both teams need to look at... You, they've got to look at supports, especially when we consider how many of them are already taken out of this pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of stuck on the, the whole stats thing here as we're using a little some more popular supports, of course, on like a Shadow Demon we mentioned a lot. But win percentage, 27% win percentage in 18 games. That's that's not that good. So maybe it is being a little valued there with that hero too. So something else to consider. I mean, that's certainly... Like, SD is... It's got to be a lot better than this win rate. Like, I've seen it earlier as well. Like, when you play against heroes like PA or Bristleback, you get to break all of them. You sack Ancients. I feel like you lane well, so... There's certainly still value in that hero being picked up. Yeah. All right. The Sven band eventually settled on. It took a while. A lot of reserve time to think of that final band there. Yeah. On the side of Entity. But yeah, going with the uh, the Sven. Now it's time to pick. You figure that's going to be a mid-primal beast here. So yeah, the support options. We're going through Dark Willow. We've been seeing some appearance from... Uh, okay, yeah, Warlock. I mean, it's obviously they ran at the previous game and losing effort, but still an understandable support hero. Okay, it's just going to go for the Warlock. I mean, it's still like a very, no, very potent support hero. It just does well. It gives you a good lane. It gives you a good team fight. I don't really think that Pango cares about this hero at any point ever, because it like upheaval, he gets out of it. Golem, he rolls through or just kills it. Mm -hmm. So it's more for your own draft setup rather than countering this Pangolia at this point. Yeah. Now, yeah, clearly comfort for them. Ran at the previous game. Certainly think Fishman did a good job of uh, running it there as well. But now at SMG, their turn for support options. I we saw the Disruptor ban even thrown out last game, so I wonder if that mm -hmm. could be a possibility here that SMG could be thinking. But I mean, you likely... It's... I think you might want to look at heroes that can help play with Pango, like something, a combo I already like. I don't know if that's really in their pool. I'm sure Afu can play just like some Kado. I think having heal or like sustain against Primal Warlock is pretty sweet. Helping Pango later in the game as well could be pretty cool because mm -hmm. I would be surprised if they don't pick at least one support here for a team SMG. Honestly, a save, though, against you like Primal Beast, also pretty good, though. That's where that Shadow Demon still does come to mind. You talk about the win percentage, not really the best reflection of that, the power of the hero. So, sure, he's uh, one of the many that's on that list that they're thinking about. But, again, they're using a lot of their reserve time here. They're going to dip down to about 30 seconds so far. Yeah. Huh. I mean, okay, so Coddle does there come out. I think it makes sense for what we talked about. Let's see about the rest. Maybe... I mean, I think you're best off just picking your five as well, because you don't really see any of your core matchups. So whatever John will play is like maybe a semi-catch or more damage, I think, are the boxes you would like to maybe cover. Oh, so they just go straight up darks here. Okay. Hmm. Sure. If they, you know, if they feel comfortable, they're probably like, okay, it's a Warlock five. It makes it a bit easier to pick the offlaner. Instead, you guys can have a bit later picks on potentially the five and the one. Go for it. Okay. The question is, though, so you're talking about Coddle's potentially going to be a four, but with a Dark Seer, you don't need one, but something like an Earth Spirit support with mm -hmm. him or Clockwork even comes to mind. So I wonder if maybe that's yeah, right. I mean, I guess Coddle can be five. It's not horrible. It can still be played with Dark Seer. It will, I mean, it means that they cannot play for kills, but they can just, it's like the easiest lane to like not play in the fact mm -hmm. that you drop a shell, you illuminate, the wave is dead, you go stack. And like you just play like the economy game. It's still okay. And okay, they're gonna take the Faceless Void, which it is a very good Faceless Void game. Mm. You don't care about Dark Seer, you heal through Coddle, you're good against Pango. So yeah. Uh, let's see if SMG know the correct answers to make this a bad faces void game. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, it's like it's our it's our turn to run it. We talked about how it's maybe going to be addressed here in in a band, but I said that's one way to do it. You know, they pick it up themselves. If you're empty and you're with a warlock synergy already there, um, it definitely feels really good. I mean, Primal Beast will be a little annoyed by the Chronosphere sometimes, but that's certainly not a reason to not pick up the hero. So. Yeah, SMG, again, they're, they're low on the reserve time we mentioned, so they're going to have to decide, you know, fairly quickly right here. You'd figure it's going to be their support option unless there's really a position one that they absolutely want here in this matchup. Hmm. 
Uh, I think this pick is not actually easy for them, especially being low on time. So it is Wraith King, Ooh. which... Yeah, I mean, this is going to have to mean that you, you need to play on tempo. Of course, we all know Wraith King against Void, yeah. you have a second life and so on. But the scaling is definitely in favor of Entity at this point. But SMG have like this mid-game timing where Caudal starts healing, Darkseer has like Grief's Pipe, you go in with your Pango, you go in with Wraith King, and it's too much for Entity to handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh... Yeah, as you said, it's like that's that classic matchup right there. It's and that's that. Yeah, if he wasn't picked up here, there's a good chance that he could have got banned here by Entity. So understandable. They want the Wraith King now. Kind of force that Chronosphere decision to be made a little more uh, conservative, perhaps with it, and knowing that he will be coming back up. But uh, yeah, that means it's going to be a final pick support for SMG, and there's going to be a couple bans that they'll have to deal with in the meantime. But Legion Commander so far. Band and SMG side, you figure Entity needs their off laner, so starting with one right there. Uh, Entity well, I... does have the last pick overall. Yeah, so I do think the Legion ban is pretty good. You sort of make sure that you just try to not give them an off lane that will also destroy that lane. Because at this point, at least, I do like the, the setup that Entity have in their draft. So yeah, you're going to need SMG with a 5, an Entity who need most likely an off laner for Gabby. I mean, he's going to have Willow in his lane, so their lane will be very strong nearly no matter what. Mm -hmm. Well, Entity has plenty of time themselves to think about what they want to do here, and they're understandably going to use it. Already thrown out the Ancient Apparition ban. Or figuring out what other support option makes them uh, again it's like is it going to be a dark seer synergy or is Kato going to be that four and then in somebody to protect the wraith king and yeah and dying certainly fits that mold too so it's good so it is, force. yeah i think it's just gonna be a five for smg um i don't see anything that like really like wows me i, I feel like one hero that's a bit underrated is a hero such as io um i think it would fit in terms of the tempo and the sustain you're looking for in the mid game and you can take someone out of chrono with your relocate but anything that lanes okay and gives you tempo i think i'm fine with mm -hmm. at least i'm not finding this like wow support pick like maybe <laughs> phoenix but he's banned no he was banned long ago so yeah no oh, phoenix yeah. option here oh Nothing maybe dazzle you. actually i may be overlooked like you oh, have the heal bomb ah uh, never mind <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say i mean dazzle's really <laughs> open bad. wow yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's one of those like, oh yeah, it was first band, of course. Yeah. Um, you see, they're getting up right now and coming to the conclusion. Ah, of a last pick, Nature's Prophet. Hello, my friend. You've okay. made it to the last stage. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. How did I not see that? That's a, you know, it plays with the tempo. I think again, it doesn't like counter what Entity really has, but it amplifies what you want to do, which is speed in the game and try to overrun them. I mean, team fight absolutely favors Entity. But yeah, to your point, it's just SMG. They're more about the individual presence, ganking, etc. Ooh, Entity going to finish with a Spear Breaker. This is another hero we have been seeing a lot of. And actually was looking at the list there. Uh, one of the most picked up heroes, actually. Uh, this hero is incredible. Yeah. Uh, like, I don't know how much viewers have seen this hero. If you have, you know how good it is. If you have not... Get ready, because if this game drags out, I think we have a completely reverse game where this time around, it's Entity. If this goes past 30 minutes, game is even. Mm -hmm. Face is void. It's just going to have a free game. Gabby's going to start charging around like a Ferrari. Could get, you know, hard for SMG. But their tempo and speed, it's time. If they can execute 15, 20 minutes, gold lead, keep it going, easy 2-0. If not, no. <laughs> easy lose. Easy. <laughs> All right. So, okay, <laughs> 30 minutes. We're going to know one way or the other. Yeah, we've the, got a timer here. The, the timer, you're you're on the clock, my my bros. Yeah, it is time. I, I love it. I mean, definitely SMG. The timer more than one way. Again, their tournament lives in a lot of ways are on the line here as we keep stressing. So, can they pull it out? That aggressive play style early on. I mean, we saw a bit of that last game from Entity, but obviously different uh, change of pace here and the expectations now for SMG. But yeah, going the Wraith King in response to Faces Foy. Not not a carry we're seeing a lot of, but understandable here. I mean, getting a last pick, Nature's Prophet support has to feel somewhat good. And you do have yeah. a Pango in the end that can certainly bring some uh, some good presence here. And expect to have some solid laning phase at least to help with that momentum. Yeah, I think you should. And I think if John Rill can really find some of these moves with the TP early on, it will be good. 
But ooh, they, uh, this is a nasty, nasty, nasty spirit breaker and faceless void game. So I cannot stress enough that SMG, they rely on a super crisp early game. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, both teams are going to be smoked up on either side and running towards one another. So we'll see if any early clashes taking place. But yeah, spirit breaker. We've seen the mid spirit breaker. If you're an offlane spirit breaker, in this case, Gabby planted, of course, for entity so we'll be in that off lane roll but still filling that core and it's going to constantly be running at you causing issues especially even in the later game if we get to that point as you're talking about watson no nope, gonna take a little bit of damage there but he's got time walk so yeah just uh doing faces void things you can scout pretty nicely both teams you know did get out of mid ward of course out of the smoke looks like we may not have too much happening early on at least let's see looks like stormstormer knows that they warded there they're pinging it god that wraith king taunt it's it goes inside the chair and just <laughs> chilling with the skeletons carrying him around that's Pretty an epic. easy experience as yeah so entity had a pre-war that okay. he done more but now they need to put their own low hp because they just even deny it because they know Entity or that SMG could just come and reward it. So nice heads up play. Well, here comes the Bounty Rune spawn. The wraparound play by Gabby and Kadiomi here just north in the Dire Jungle. They're going to steal the Bounty Rune. Yeah, mid one's making his way back over. He's like, wait a second, you sneaky players, you. All right, so three for one for Entity. Yeah, good start. They also have a little bit of more experience, I think, on their Warlock and Primal from the D-Ward. Cannot forget that. Can certainly catch you off guard in, like, some side lane. But yeah, I am expecting mid lane to just be a pretty big farm fest, I think, for both heroes. They should both be fairly happy with what they've got. All right, so expect a good clash of melee on melee in the mid. A lot of farm for both of them, perhaps. I'm intrigued by the bottom lane, you know, especially with the Dark Sierra throwing out that Iron Shell, and you also have Coddle throwing out that Illuminate. A lot of push potentially going to be happening here. How is Faceless Boy going to deal with that? Honestly, he should be pretty okay because he can time walk the Illuminate. I mean, he's taking a lot of damage right now. I think Watson is taking too much pressure in this early wave, so MC doing a very good job. Um, but overall, I feel like this is a very dishonest lane it's in the bottom lane. They're just going to shell. Illuminate and not play as mm -hmm. Carlos already pulling the wave. So really like how SMG are playing this. Yep. Taking advantage of what they have as now Coddle needs to be careful. <laughs> He's actually not the highest life and kind of <laughs> yeah. tank this creep wave here, but gonna have to bring it into the tower. So a bit of an awkward situation there by Afu, but in that the end. Very awkward now. He lost the range. They also missed the melee CS. They're burning through a lot of region on the Starks Ooh. here. I'm not a deny by Fishman yeah. too. Yeah, never mind. I said I love how they played. <laughs> I think this this second wave has been a disaster. That <laughs> uh, did not go as planned. So yeah, good job by Warlock. He softened up oh, quite a bit to make that that happen. Nature's Prophet, by the way, top lane. He might die. Yep. There's the Dota two gods in favor of Gabby. He gets another greater bash proc just in time and easy peasy kill with the uh, on the Nature's Prophet. Yeah, uh, please address it at skill. When you bash when you want, that is skill. It's My not bad. RNG, of course. Absolutely. But well, you will get it correct next I time. No problem. Still learning here. Me. Gabby, yeah. God's here. <laughs> Wouldn't expect anything less. Oh, hey, there it is there again. It is. In, in the bramble. <laughs> it's not going to be enough for the kill this time. Kadiyama also didn't want to risk it. But mid one, certainly getting low. He does have stick charges, though. He does. Kadiyama is looking for a little bit of bonus damage. We'll get that. How's that mid going? 12 and 2, now 13 and 2, Pango. 10 and 1, Storm Stormer as he's trampling around in that mid lane. So, yeah, pretty even back and forth there. Absolutely. That's Flag Bear. No one, of course, will be able to get that. Looks like Storm Stormer may already want to look at, well, some creep skipping, take the wave, take it into the medium camp, go trample. So, yeah, mid lane is going to join the bottom lane as being dishonest. They're just not even going to lane against each other. <laughs> just get the most for yourself. And there you go, Coddle, this time with a bit more life, doing the creep pull. Yeah, I love this, though. Yeah, starts to all the way into that dire jungle, and he's an onslaught, getting that CS up. Oh, the Ogre Smash! Ah, oh, good side step. Nice dodge. Oh, Coddle bought him again, though. We're going to see this, by the way. Coddle's getting a little bit low, pulling this creep wave. Fishman doing a great job, putting the damage in, but now Fishman has to... Be careful himself as MC shows up, but again, a little bit awkward on that creep pole because of Fishman. Oh, mid one. Oh, that's the side the Bramble, and they got him. Okay, this top lane entity, 
They're angry. They're showing up. And them having a good start, I mean, uh, this is not just a good start. This is a slaughtering. They're mm. doubling the CS and they're pulling the hard camp. Yeah, this is not a good sign for SMG. Yeah. Nine and three rating. You're right. And almost four minutes into the game. That is definitely not where you want to be. You absolutely need mid one to have a good start and get that momentum going as you're talking about. And speaking of momentum, this Spirit Breaker, Dark Willa have plenty of it. Nice job with this Sprout, but I think it's going to be too little too late. Shadow Realm Auto Attack will secure the kill right there, and it's already a 3 nothing start now. It's basically all this top lane going uh -oh. for empty. 2k gold lead, minute 4. Yeah. Ooh, not a good sign, my friends. Nah, not at all. MC having to fall back. You see Stormer, Stormer again going into the dire jungle, basically leaving the lane as you're talking about. And then Pango do his own thing. Maximizing, which of course is great for him. And what Primal Beast and Pango love in the mid lane is when their side lanes are going well. I think Pango ganking the bottom lane is not that easy for him. Like Darkseer, Kato, it's more a little awkward. But Primal Beast ganking for a Dark Little Breaker who are already owning? Yeah, sign me up. I'm going to that lane. Yeah. Yeah, I think it supports this Warlock especially. I think Fishman absolutely deserves a lot of credit here for oh, yeah. why this lane is also going pretty well for them. We talk about just that harassment on Coddle and making these creep pulls that much more awkward. Mid one is taking the gate right now. He is bottom. Oh, wow. He's well, diving as a Wraith King. He wants a kill. Gonna get surged up. They really want this kill, but no, Watson's gonna juke through the trees and manage to survive. And oh, MC has to be careful. Kadeoma's showing up. Bramble Maze making it awkward for MC. Good job pathing, though. Fatal Bonds are out, but it's not going to be enough damage. But yeah, you're right. A very early rotation by the Wraith King. Unable to get a kill out of it, though. I don't mind to try because they pushed in the top lane all the way that he didn't He didn't actually lose anything. And now he can just TP back up top. So as long as they all get out, they force Willow to go bottom. He gets back top. So basically everything's back to normal. Oh, kind of. Now they're clashing over here at the Twin Gate area. Now Wraith King's in trouble. Got it oh, coming in with no. a stun. The Bramble connects. He can't get away from it. And down goes mid one. And now oh, no. is Daniel another is one. also dead. Another one, baby. Double kill. Empty. Uh, well, Five nothing. Now that bottom play really hurts because he has no TP on Rave King. Ah, uh, this is a super fat spur breaker. Super fat faces void in a very good game for both of them. Uh, I feel pain. I'm, I'm in pain right now. <laughs> and you're not even playing for SMG. I mean, imagine what they're yeah. feeling right now. Yeah, that's, I hope uh... they I hope they can suppress this feeling right now, because they're the pain is right there. That's yeah, it's painful, but you know what? There's there's still game here. So yeah, it's Dota 2. Funny things can happen, but yeah, it's certainly right to to point out that this game is already getting a little bit out of control in uh, Empty's favor. MC he could be in trouble. Pulverize oh, ready. He's gonna on good bash. The pulverize and there's the kill. Uh, they've got some really high skill bashers in both side lanes. As yeah. Watson just got a bash on command down there as well to set up the onslaught for Storm Stormer. Yeah, when wisdom rune timing. I uh, don't lose this one. 4K gold lead and losing a wisdom rune. That's illegal. Primal beast onslaught. He's like, I don't care if it's illegal. I'm here to break the law. <gasps> and yep, he will take it. He might die for this. Okay. Oh, no one. Trying to get bounced on the high, on the low, oh, no. bro. <laughs> okay. Okay, they will get him. All right, fine enough. I think SMG is still okay with that, at least. You know, you get a kill on the most important hero, or one of them, for stealing your stupid wisdom rune. Yeah, a lot of resources there to, to get that kill. It's, but yeah, you're right. I mean, SMG, hey, the way this game is going, it's something. It's something positive. You're on the board as far as hero kills go. And mid one. He's about to charge. Oh, boy. That's awkward. Yep, charge is coming out. Oh, another Bramble. The cursed crown. Another Bramble. There's the stun of the Cursed Crown here. Are we going to see a bash? Yeah. Not even necessary. Killing spree for Gabby, and that's 0-3-0 oh, oh on the Wraith King. Oh, God. <laughs> I, uh, okay, active rune in 10. Let's, we're just going to keep looking at the next things and the positives. For now, all positive is Entity. they got to be feeling good. John well. Oh, we have a spur break in mid. Uh, that's a free kill. Great play by Gabby. That timing with another strike right as Pango thought he had the rune. It says, no, no, no. And <laughs> bashes him away. And they take him out. And then back to the top lane, Yanuel. He's dead as well. Caddy, this is a support just running down the other. I mean, uh, I know we're trying to stay positive here for SMG, but it's, it's becoming more and more difficult as we move on here, Kizzy. 
They are destroying them. Okay, let's look at the bottom triangle. What is MC up to? Because I think right now we need stacks and levels. Okay, they are going to lose mid one for the fourth time by the looks of it. Yeah, it's not, not enjoying six. life. No. No reincarnation as he's still, he just hit level five, so. That's not in play yet, and Johnny Well, he's also dead. I mean, the entity literally is just going anywhere they want on the map right now and getting kills. These are some of the, like, nastiest heroes to fall behind against, right? Spirit Wrecker can charge you on the entire map. Primal Beast is super mobile, and if they catch you, you're just dead. Mm -hmm. So, okay, the only thing that SMG can play for now is, yeah, you've got these sacks. Activate no one. Maybe let him form the defusal. Let him go together with your caudal and just pray. Pray that it works. <laughs> Put your faith in the Dota gods that they're, they're on your side. Yeah, certainly the praying is a part strategy here for SMG with where they're at. You, you see Warlock's kind of doing the taunt there with the Golem. It's ready to use, but not going to use it just yet. He's taking over mid, though, because Primal Beast, once again, it's elsewhere farming in the jungle. Um, Midas just picked up by the offlane Spirit Breaker, so already have a hell of a start. It's just going to get that much better. Yeah, that's a, a pre-10 minute Midas. Yeah, it's the fastest Midas. I'm just so not surprised. Uh, this is an incredible timing. Yeah, that is. Wow. I don't want to be more negative, but not only is it hard <laughs> to play the map, but the scaling, this is an incredible phase of the game later. So SMG, no one has got a lot of weight on his shoulders. Uh, he might just, his back might just crack from the pressure at this point yeah pango okay he's gonna roll up as he was getting charged in right there and blind light being used another strike hit though that roll's gonna end in any second pulverize the pulverize catches the problem as well and here comes Golem the as Golem. Well. the fear on top of that there's the team fight showing off from entity as if they truly needed it 13 to 1 lead and it might be more afu he's gonna be hunted down and Double kill for Storm Stormer, uh, pure domination. How many more ways can we describe what Entity's doing right here? Damn, I mean, the way that they're moving around the map is pretty top notch, whereas SMG, they are just bleeding everywhere. Can we look, mid one is lower net worth than every single player on uh, Radio. That's just rude. <laughs> that is. <laughs> I'm highlighting that. Yeah, but I'm is, sorry, it but it's, uh, yeah, that's rough. the state of the game right now. It, yeah, Fishman no. is out farming the enemy carry. That that's definitely happening. The night of siege. Oh god damn! They're they're bullying them right now. This is some some big brother bullying small brother, and he's doing it way too much. Playing with their food, absolutely. And the spear breaker, Gabby, just an once in a tournament performance here, as obviously is farming so well the 6800 net worth you mentioned it's like a minute plus faster than any Midas we've seen on this hero Afu he might be in trouble so yeah he's he's gonna be run down of course and it might be turns into a quick uh he absolutely is in trouble yep as uh Gabby is just doing his best to keep up the alchemist cosplay when it comes to the net worth he's 2000 gold ahead of anyone else as a spirit breaker Same. all right if Diffusal Blade online, it is it is Pango time. It's the one way to come back in this game. It's, yeah, it's go time, trying to make a play with it. Raid King getting charged up, holding that point as uh, just in case if he needs to reincarnate. But yeah, Pango with the Diffusal, you get that. I mean, you definitely just got to say, Coddle, let's go. Let's try something because <laughs> sitting back and farming more certainly is not going to be your, your win condition at this point, even if it was before. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, they, they've got a rough game ahead of them. But let's look. If they can try to take a couple fights where Pango gets some splashes off with Chakra Magic, maybe MC is going to be able to, you know, get an aura for them, a good vacuum wall with a few more levels, and this pipe that's about to be completed. They can look to strike back. It's not easy, but there's still game a game to be had. <laughs> I know that stat right there highlighting that, obviously, this defeat of Blade is a little bit slower than average but honestly for only being about 20 seconds slower than average with the way this game has been looking that's that's really not that bad no no one is doing well yeah he like he's he's doing good he's got the defu he's got the orp he even skipped the arcane boots he doesn't really need them with caudal and if he buys arcanes it will delay the fusel even more so 
yeah, he understands that you've got to take a small risk now in order to try and get back in this game. Yeah, and to that point, my control's also doing solid. I mean, him and Pingo are actually identical net worth. It really is just the... Okay, you well, jinxed him. I... Oh, sorry, buddy. He's doing good. He's, he's still doing all right, <laughs> but he's just going to have to think about it a little bit more because he'll be dead here. Mid one, he has reincarnate at least. I knew it, actually. I knew he would cancel that TP. Okay, but he might pay the price. Yeah, oh, self -sprout. that's a lot of gold, especially if mid one gets this. Get it to oh, mid one. Lightning oh, lightning lightning lightning. Lightning. Skeletons. No, <laughs> that's not no, 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 no. He lives. That's he not okay. He lives. <gasps> oh, that was your ticket back in the wow. game. Wow. And then he dodges that to uh, lock him up. This guy is, deserves <laughs> to be in jail right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's disgusting. <laughs> Wait, that's, that's illegal. Not okay. That's not okay, man. This is not okay. Yeah, that's just brutal, unfortunate, etc. Again, no one is clearly trying. Obviously not easy, but uh, Faceless Boy just time walks away the second he sees him. Says, no, I'm not going to give you any help. There is a haste room bottled up on Pango. Goes back to you. This is certainly a time to potentially make a play, but he's being charged right now, so they have the vision on him here. I mean, yeah, so it's it's 16 to 1. Dota Plus still giving them 15%. Uh, well, it would be maybe more like 10, so we're not too far away. But yeah, this the entire map is just... It's entities. I'm really trying to look at how do SMG want to punish them, because I think they have to farm, and all they can do is punish if and when entity overplay. <laughs> a spear breaker is about to get an Octarine core. What? It's going to be like a 16-minute Octarine core minus phase boots. Yeah, I think he might be having a good game. What, yeah. do, what do you think? That's yeah, a <laughs> good analysis there from you, Keizu. I love this heat map. This heat map's hilarious. He's been everywhere, oh, killing everyone. Top net worth. I love Spurbreaker. This, I, I, this hero's too good. It is. You're going to see, you're gonna see more of him in this format. And, yeah, he is one of those heroes. We don't... We, We've definitely been through plenty of TIs where he's, he's never really been the most relevant on the meta, etc. But the fact that he is in this one, it does be, he is an entertaining hero for sure. So I'm with oh, you yeah. there. And mid one saying, no, I, I hate what you guys are saying because this is what I have to deal with. He's dead, huh? No, yeah. he's dead. They made it look easy. I had a nice charge through everything. Stormstorm is having a good game. I don't even know what he's buying hard, BKB. I don't think it matters because either way, I don't know if the Mr. Primal Beast is going to die in this game. Mm -hmm. I mean, Wraith King, that was his first death in about five, six minutes. So he actually got a lot of farm right there in the meantime, kind of recovering. He's got the Midas now, but again, I'm still trying to be a little bit positive here. Ultimately, he yep. still is pretty far behind. Oh, mid lane, no one. Dead. That's a golem. Mid one showing up. Trying to get the farm bounty the for the golem, but or let the golem farm you. Yeah, that's not worth it, buddy. Gabby runs in, storm stormer. He's gonna go for the onslaught. Get the easy kill on Darks here. Here apparently the vacuum. That's not gonna save him. And the teammates are ain't gonna stick around either because they don't want to be next. Ooh, run out of vision, bro. Don't let the cowman charge you. <laughs> oh no, it's happening. Oh, oh, and the bed lamp. Oh, I love this combo. Oh, that is just juicy. All right, Roots. Push him into the next Roots. Never mind, no needs. Another strike. Let Primal Beast finish the job. He'll do just that. There's the fear on uh, Nature's Prophet as he was coming in. And then they all get out. So mission accomplished there. Kill Wraith King yet again. <laughs> Six minutes faster Octarine than the average. That yeah. guy is... The cheats are on. He's typed gold dash gold 999 a few times. Because, yeah, he, he, he's a big one. I, I mean, no one is still looking all right. He's almost got an axe. He a couple components in at least. So, I mean, yeah, he, he's been trying to make plays with the Diffusal, but obviously, as we understood, it's definitely not an easy task with the game state here. So, having to just take what he can get and continue to farm, but Faceless Boy, we really haven't even seen Watson. And Watson's kind of just been, he is 2-0-3, but for the most part, he's been AFK farming. Yeah, I mean, he's just chilling, right? AFK farming, getting some kills. Okay, we're looking to strike back. SMG are here. Chrono, 
Not going to use just yet. He has it though. Kadiomi going to get killed off. So another kill coming up for SMG. But there's a bash proc from Watson. And see the damage he can do. And now no one's in trouble. Uh oh. He's charged. Oh no. Charge in. Push back with another strike. Tango though with a pipe on him. It's mitigating some damage here going toe to toe with watson but with more heroes nearby for the radiant side means a kill oh uh, everyone's just dying <laughs> and yeah by the way dark series dead up here too everyone is dying i mean they tried to fight back you know some spells were on cooldown because they used it mid earlier but it's uh yeah it's a hard game i mean mc doesn't even have wall yet so i don't know what level he is but might want to probably want to look to squeeze that in before you fight it, it's a hard game I don't blame them. You're down 12k gold. You need to. You gotta do something. <laughs> yeah, it's in a, in a game state like this. It's exactly. It's just you gotta do something. You can't really overanalyze, overthink what they're really doing. It's yeah. <laughs> do what you think is best and hope that uh, the mistakes happen from the side of entity. This is definitely a big part of it too. But yeah, the fact he doesn't even have wall yet is a, a little interesting. You gotta figure out level 11, maybe we'll at least pick it up, but either way. Farming an axe himself. Pango trying to finish his, another thousand gold. Wraith King trying to go Radiance, is being charged though currently. He's just gonna go hug the tower. Does it even matter? <laughs> that I combo. don't know if it does. <laughs> okay. They're gonna try not to overplay. As I mean, you're up, you have BKB on your primal beast. You know, have BKB on your faces. Void spread breakers. Items are disgusting. I don't even want to say what he's got because mm. he's way too big. Yeah, that's. Oh, this is like a forty-minute spear breaker. You'd be happy. Yeah, Johnny Well, Johnny Well, uh, <laughs> probably not so happy. He has no clue how close to death he is right here. <laughs> even Midas the creep in front of his face. Oh no, you're trapped in with him. Okay, the, the lack of bash procs are disappointing, Gabby. Anyways, That's to the left, true. there's mid one's gonna get picked off. Okay, there's the kill finally on Ninja's Prophet. Mid one is fine. Mid one is fine. He's, he's, everything's okay. No, this he's is fine. fine. Okay. 26 to 2. So, not the prettiest kill store for Dire. But, uh, not all hope is lost. Let's see what Gaben thinks about this game. 7% for Dire. So you're telling yeah, me there's a chance. I always trust my Lord and Savior, Gaben. Yeah. Well, SMG is certainly having to put their, their trust in Lord Gaben this game because, again, the struggles continue. They got a Lotus Orb on Coddle, though. The Axe on Pango is going to be finished here soon, and you know what? They might kill Fishman. Yeah, they sure are. They got him. They just increased their kills by 50%. That's oh, pretty good. That Gabby's coming, though. Yeah, Cottle gets the golem, but here is Gabby, the raid boss. Can you deal with him? Nature's Prophet? Oh, and also, time dilation from Faceless Void as he shows up. Cottle has to run away. Nature's Prophet's dead. Cottle, Lotus Orb, he will escape. Okay, no one has Aghanim, so this Pango's still getting pretty damn big. So uh, this is... You've got to use your Pango in order to try and do anything this game, because yeah, mid one... He's about 15 minutes away from coming online in this game on this Raid King. Mm -hmm. 50 or 15? 15, I think. Okay. 15 <laughs> is, uh, you know, in, in 15 minutes, yeah, I'm not sure we're getting to see that minute mark in this game. So, <laughs> I mean, in 15 minutes, he could have Radiance, Blink, and maybe a BKB or something like that. As yeah. MC comes here, you know, pops three salves to mid one's inventory. Mm -hmm. Always like himself a good supporting offlaner. Spirit Breaker continuing to just scout around. Of course, he's got a gem. Looking for anyone. Obviously, they're just constricting the map as much as they can here on the radiant side. Look where he's charging bottom lane. I'm going for the creep wave, though. So, Daniel is uh, way down here. Just doing anything. Uh -oh. Hello, no one. Hello, Yule Scepter. There's a good combo. Bye, bye, no one. That's yeah. an easy kill on Pango. He's out for 50. Oh yeah, a godlike spirit breaker. He's got the gem. He's got a big chunk of gold. Pings out the tormentor. Looks like it's gonna be an easy one. Ooh, MC's here. Okay. He's trying to be annoying with the wall. It's certainly being successful for now. Yeah. 
making this take a lot longer than they want. Watson keeps creating illusions of himself. <laughs> this freaking wall placement, man. Okay, they do get it though. And Kateyome does get the Cursed Crown upgrade now as well. And Nature's Prophet, though, continues to farm away while all that's happening. I mean, his own axe is coming. He's got a lot of aid tail. So, again, cr credit to SMG, absolutely. We're just certainly not giving up here. And is managing some some decent farm considering. Uh-oh. We've got the old on mid one. But let's see if that second life does anything. Okay, Lotus Orb. There's another fight. MC ends up going down. But yeah, mid one, the Lotus Orb wears off. And being currently on cooldown, Pulverize going to catch no one. Ooh. Okay. No. Oh, Stormstormer wants to get out of there, though. Uh -oh. Mid one. They're coming. The rest of the boys are coming. Yeah, Gabby dash. finishes off the job. Where's no one? No one's all the way over here. He's going to have to uh, go for the TP. Maybe. No, he doesn't have TP. Oh, boy. Yeah, he TP'd in to save. Oh, the creeps. They're going to see the creeps hitting him. They know. Mm -hmm. Nope. Pushes them down. Oh. There's the oh. chrono. <laughs> Where are they even? <laughs> okay. He gets them. Uh... Yeah, it's a good try. If we do... Nah, I thought we had 3-2-2, three, two, two, but we have 3-2-3, three, three, so... Yeah. Who cares? Gabby gets up another charge. Ulti. Eh. Uh. Um... Ooh. Maybe. He might actually be dead. It? Yeah, is this it? The bounty? No. Yeah. Oh, they got him. All right, GG. Johnny Will go to John carry well. this game now. All right, let's click John Well's inventory. He's buying eggs or something, right? Like, yep. we're getting close to... Yeah, he's going to carry this game. It's all good, guys. That's a lot 800 of 800 gold of agonims. Let's go. 1,800 gold. Thank you very much. It's like a uh, primal beast. So he's going to get the gem. That was actually Dark Willa ended up picking up the gem that was dropped and hands it off to primal beast. So they, they keep that as at least. But yeah, I mean, all nature's profit, though. That axe is almost going to be finished. And Wrath of Nature, rooting, doing more. Seems pretty good. There's an axe finished on Dark Seer as well, so he finally has that normal punch to work with now. All right, so they just need to hit one or two more items. They need blink Dark Seer, so you can blink punch. You probably really, yeah, you need this blink on no one as well, because right now it's just so tailored what you do. Like, oh, they hear a roll, they just BKB, they run away, so it's too hard to connect. So, Dyer's gotta need those blink daggers. Dire scan coming out, not going to hit anyone currently. Obviously, Roshan is available as Gabby changes his mind and charging in, gets the uh, gets the bedlam there. But you got to think, XD is uh, Roshan feels like a good possibility for them, almost free. Oh yeah, right. There's Roshan in this game. Yeah. <laughs> With how many kills there have been, was, I guess not something I've really thought about, but. I mean, you're, they're, of course, very, very happy. But, you know, one or two big mistakes could allow SMG to get back in this game. You don't want to take your foot off the gas too much. Yeah. That's what I'm kind of getting at. It's like, yeah, I mean, you have just an insane lead here. And, but, exactly. You don't want to overplay your hand. Um, and, you know, getting the easy objective, oh. such as Roshan, seems like a good play. But this also seems like a good play, especially with the Golden Beat. Oh, yeah. Is. They take out Pango. MC, good wall placement. <laughs> very good wall. Make it very awkward there. The TP. Yes. Oh, he makes it. Close call. Chrono, not worth it. But now you think, speaking of Roshad, I mean, he is up here. Oh, never mind. They're TPing elsewhere. Uh oh. They know that Afu is here, or maybe they don't. Nope. It looks like it's just. They're just hunting for someone else. But he is a sneaky man. He's on the left hand side. And he's a little too deep right there. A shining light for SMG as mid one did overtake Fishman. So we, we are back. <laughs> there you go. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are stating facts here. Uh, I am. Do that that um, is true. That's what I'm here for. Stating facts and being very smart. Yep. Roshan, he's, he's definitely dying here, so... As mentioned, a matter of time before they eventually do it. Apparently, they're also killing Johnny Well as well. As MC is now in an awkward spot, but he will survive. Gets a little bit of teammate support there. But there's the Aegis now in the hands of Faceless Void. Double damage runes up top, by the way, but no one's seeing it That's currently. That's a pretty cool rune. I mean, for now, you can see SMG. There's just a whole lot of 
And that's just how you have to play from this position. It is a whole lot of single and individual play where you just try to get really big, keep farming. Honestly, I love what Afu is doing where he's just racking up gold. You know, he's no joke. He's got a Lotus Orb. He's closing in on a Scythe of Ice. So mm -hmm. there's potential. Gabby spots the double damage rune. At least he walked right over it. So assume they're going to save that for uh, Primal Beast. We'll actually just bottle it here. You can make a play with that now, but Faceless Void, a full Maelstrom finished. Mentioned the Aegis, of course, that he has. Uh, Mjolnir, I should say, finished. And that's going to be a Tier 2 mid-tower going down as well. And now, I guess, do they go bottom Tier 2? Or they probably are just going to go to the base here, though. Waves being pushed out bottom, so. Yeah, I guess they can, right? Like, what's really stopping you? You just want to force them back so they stop farming the whole map. Like, you can either continue and you're like, okay, what are you going to do? And then you just base it on... How do SMG respond? As mm -hmm. mid one is getting ready for the flank. Maybe he throws his Midas on them. Oh, vacuum. Going in. Oh, immediately lifted up, though. He knew he was there. Being a little sneaky, mid one. Gonna get some help, though, with the Lotus Orb. Primal Beast. He is very tanky with that heart. Gets to half life, but manages to get out of there. Oh, no. Death in the end. And honestly, gotta think the SMG is uh, pretty happy with that outcome there. Absolutely. You've got the blink now on no one, so he can start to maybe make some things happen. It's like mid one is going for the Aghanim, so I mean, maybe the, him carrying this game train has kind of left. Or it, It's going to help their team fight, of course, because people get to stay alive longer, maybe cast their spells, so they're hoping for something big. Mm -hmm. I just hear a Gabby. Afu. <laughs> He's... Checking it out. He knows Coddle's up here somewhere, but unable nice to juice. find him. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure Afu has like not died in the last 10 minutes against a Spirit Breaker who's top net worth. Honestly, that alone is impressive. I mean, he sees the Illuminate right there, but Afu is just too hidden. And yeah, that Scythe Jeep? is almost finished. Well, that's... Uh... Honestly, he could end up getting top net worth on his team <laughs> on this Coddle. Sure. It's actually not out of reach. Warlock losing his courier right there, by the way. That was a pretty big one. A juicy one. He, I, I believe that was the full axe that was going to be finished on the courier. Oh, I mean, that's, that's uh, pretty chill for SMG then. That's mid one does find Gabby. Gabby decides to go for it. Watson, is this worth a chrono commitment? Oh, not yet. At least, in fact, oh my god, the damage oh, on route. mid one. The root, they're going to force an Aegis. Okay, they could look for a roll. Mid one, reincarnate is ready. So even if you could, uh, there you go. There's the roll as you mentioned. Watson having to be careful. Good Still the corner, though. The pulverized locked down on no one. And it's oh, a damage. The that's chrono a sexy in the chrono. background gets three. Darks here not included, but the damage follow-up is absolutely there. Johnny Wells also gonna get picked off, and this is just a case of too much of a lead that NC has had in this game. The firepower is too much to handle. And they wipe out Team SMG. Oh boy. Yeah, I guess all it took was really one fight. And when they're ahead so much, oh, I mean, that Chrono, that, that's a beautiful one by Watson. He just gets all of them, gets all the damage up with the Mjolnir, follow up Terrorize, and yeah, everyone, yeah, everyone's dead. I mean, you got 18 seconds on Raid King, but even when he's up, he's certainly not going to do anything by himself here. So pretty much just going to have to wait about another 15 seconds for the whole team to be up. That means it's the middle racks for sure. They're probably going to be able to defend the top racks and I say defend very loosely. Because that's going to be a difficult task still. Then you're going to smoke. Okay, everyone's smoking up. Good roots. Darks here going in. No wall though, but he does have a vacuum. Nature's Prophet gets caught by the brambles. He jumps in. Scythe the Primal Beast. Illuminate on through. So Warlock's getting low. The roll from no one. Get Fishman. Beast, though, <laughs> using that act. They did get Fishman. However, turning the attention back to mid one. Mid one, no reincarnate. Gabby on top into the bash. No, he's going to be five for now. Never mind. Charge in. Will finish the job. He's out for 50. With no buyback. Nature's Prophet. The beat down on him coming up from Watson. A great fear on top of that. Means a free kill on Nature's Prophet who buys back immediately. Well, SMG still not giving up just okay. yet. Get to hold, no one gets all his stuff refreshed. Kateomi, see you later. No one wants more. 
Yeah, in pursuit. I mean, Storm Stormer. Nomada. Nearly 5,000 life, but maybe. I feel like I'm watching a World of Warcraft raid. Yeah. The Storm Stormer just stands his ground. I don't know how much you want. I was going to say, how much you want to chase this guy? Because this could happen. Now, Gabby, though, in an awkward spot. The Sprout making this difficult. Yeah, this this store stormer, you're not. Yeah, killing run, it. run away, guys. You guys leave him. Trust me. To <laughs> run away from the, the rock man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They get to hold. They get a couple of kills, but a storm stormer without mana is too strong for them. That that's nasty. <laughs> Mid one, bottom lane, spotted by Gabby. But Gabby's actually going to TP back to base, and it is going to be kind of a full reset here by the side of Entity. Obviously, they did plenty of damage, and oh, actually, that's Warlock. Oh, Fishman, Golem, double Golem. As the Golems, he's going to be spread in the mist, but now Gabby shows up. No one is rolling around, though, with an Iron Shell. Show crashing away. Gabby goes for John Got Well, him. the Bash proc, pushes him back with another strike, and finishes the job there. Mid one. Pulverize is ready, no matter who he wants to use it on. Oh, not going to use it just yet. Coddle's able to walk away for the time being. Fear off to the side. That's going to be a kill on to Pango. Pango has a buyback, but gets picked off to the left. He will use it pretty quickly. Another strike in the back. Let's watch that Coddle oh, dead. He'll get the Coddle dead. There's a reincarnate Axe effect. Is it really going to do much, though, in the end? Probably not. Storm Stormer. He doesn't care about being in a vulnerable spot. He says, let's bring it. Wraith King reincarnation has already been used. And he's just about dead again. No one with that buyback, remember. He's going to be pulverized into the ground, and he is going to go for a dieback. Reincarnation, uh -oh. but... Well, they're still here. It's a matter of time. two seconds. Yeah, it's just going to wear off, and eventually they're going to be staying dead. And that's the, again, the firepower just too much. GG is going to be GG. official. It is going to be a 1-1 one -one split. And that means Entity, at the very least, is safe from elimination. Wow. Our Entity had an incredible game. Yeah. The way that they played their lanes and then continued on afterwards, yeah, they must be... Damn. I don't know why Fishman looks so despaired. I mean, maybe they're like, oh, well, we already knew from minute five that we won, but honestly, they played very well. Very deserving win here. Yeah. Well, it's one of those... That's an interesting point you bring up about the reaction of them. It's like... It doesn't look like a team that just necessarily like won the game slash prevented themselves from being eliminated right now. But I think that it's understandable to be cut still a little bit exhausted slash frustrated yeah, after a game yeah. like that. Cause you're right. It's like, Hey, we could have finished that game so much sooner. It feels like <laughs> and maybe even the first game, they feel like they should have won. Right. But yeah, in the end, Hey, they won the game. That's what matters. And like, we keep going back to a four and four record does mean they are at the very least staying alive here on the road to TI and that will continue. So you got to feel relieved about that in the end, certainly. But yeah, look at the highlights. This is obviously going to be very one sided here. Yeah, this is going to be uh, I don't even know if we have any SMG highlights in this highlights. <laughs> this yeah. is going to be very biased towards entity, but that's just how Dota goes sometimes. You know, like you play really well in your lanes. You outplay your opponents a bit more than maybe what should happen. Maybe your draft is slightly better. And if you execute well, it can look like this. This is like a master class of executing your draft and outplaying your opponent. Mm -hmm. So I was double checking on this. So I guess EG versus nine pandas is currently playing at the same time. And EG did win the first game against nine oh. pandas. So that means evil geniuses now has the same record uh, two and five compared to two and six SMG. So if EG wins game two, it will be SMG being eliminated. However, if Nine Pandas wins, then we are potentially going to be looking at that tiebreaker between EG and SMG in Group A. Yeah, we'll have to. Uh, this is just kind of, you know, it's heartbreaking. I think to kind of lose the game like this, if you're SMG, it's like what you're down like ten thousand gold already at ten minutes, and yeah, I think it's uh, just very disheartening to be losing this way. Yeah. But again, this is the road to TI. Obviously, so much quality competition across the board. And he with a team like Team SMG, like we talk about these players, all five of these players, certainly uh, some higher expectations and have done well in even TI itself. And um, it, again, it's not official yet, so definitely don't want to start going down that road. But it's out of their hands is, is the, the biggest thing to take from this for SMG. They have to just want to wait and see how it all plays out here with Evil Geniuses over there. But 
Yeah. That's T. Focus on them for sure. Again, dominating performance. I I, I mean, the stat line, of course, is going to be beautiful across the board. I think oh, yeah. As far as an MVP goes, I think it's... Uh, there is only one option. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Wraith... No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, spirit Breaker. <laughs> yeah, it's the a cow, man. Honestly, Gabby from the laning stage to just how he played the game. Uh, this hero is definitely gaining popularity and respect, I think, all around. But yeah, this is just a... I don't know, just like a wonderful and masterful performance. Mm -hmm. it, it's a couple of times now we've just happened to see this hero just be so good and both in the very late game to just this early game when we know there's that potential and like we were even talking about in this game as well. I, it is a fun hero to watch. Oh, so yeah. It, it is kind of cool having a meta right now that Spirit Breaker certainly is one of the more quality heroes and it's going to quickly become, if not already, uh, one of these initial ban heroes for sure in a lot of these series because uh, just another performance gabby in this case doing so well with it and uh allowing them to split this series which yeah. once again makes them a 4-4 record and advancing on to the next uh next round right here but uh anything else casey before we go on our break uh i mean we gotta look out for this eg game huh like smg yeah. or you're totally right they're they're not done yet. Their hopes are alive. Going to have to put in your eyes on this, what, EG versus Nine Pandas match. But yeah, we'll we'll be back soon. And I don't know. It's just the TI time. You know, it's uh, everything stressful, nervous. Can't help it. Hey, you, and you know what, though? As far as this stream goes, though, we're going to take a break. We got a great series coming up. It's Gaming oh, yeah. Gladiators versus Beast Coast. We're going over to Group C, which is what we were covering yesterday. And a lot can still happen in that group. So we'll definitely break that down a little more as we get back for the break here. But you do not want to miss that series. Two games coming up there on this stream. I'm Breaking CBK, joined by KZU. Stay tuned. More coverage coming up next.
All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Breaking SPK, joined by KZU once again. And the road to TI continues. We're getting down to the end here as far as the group stages initially. And we're going to hop over to group C now where, again, still so many things can happen. Uh, we're going to be casting Beast Coast versus Gaming Gladiators. I'm about to say this, and this is this is true. Gaming Gladiators and Beast Coast, both these teams, technically, there is still a possibility that there is. they can't be eliminated. <laughs> And we could be dealing with some three-way tiebreakers. I mean, some crazy stuff can still happen. And I say that more so for gaming gladiators, because let's be honest, wouldn't that be one of the craziest things ever? Yeah, I mean, they're only three and three right now. That is, it's honestly not that incredible. And look at the rest. It's act, it's a very close call between the teams, apart from LGD, you know, who were kind yeah. of cruising through the groups with seven and one, but three, three. 2-4, two, 2-4, four, two, four, two, four. and I think the other match between VP and Nouns, it's going on right now, and Nouns did win the first game, yep. so like, they, they could split too. Exactly, that, exactly, God, you brought that up, because yeah, so right now it's technically 3-4 and 2-5, but if they split that series and both those teams 3-5, and five, it, like I said, a lot of crazy things can still happen, so if you're gaming Gladiators, kind of like Entity in the last series, at the very oh, yeah. least win one game and you are at least moving on, that's the focus here, but you got to talk about pressure. I mean, obviously both these teams filling it, but certainly would even lean more towards gaming gladiators feeling a little bit more, but either way, the draft, we are ready to go here. Keizu and excited to see how this plays out. Obviously Beast Coast, a very formidable team themselves. Uh, some, some solid expectations coming from South America. Um, they could definitely give gaming gladiators a run for their money here. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, so gaming have kind of, I mean, I don't know if, if I would want to say they have regrouped, but they have not had the best start to their group phase yet. So as you've been saying, it's important for them to show up here. I think Beast Coast, they're like a very, they're like a super wildcard team for me. Like if I were gaming gladiators right now, and a South American team is not who I want to play because they might just show up like 200% or 0%. And yeah. if you get them on a bad day, you know, Beast Coast, this might just be their day. Yeah, absolutely. I and mean, you guarantee you Beast Coast is very aware of what uh, is on the line right here. So yeah, but as we always go back to one game at a time, it starts with this one here, game yeah. number one, and pick is about to happen as far as the bands go. Uh, maybe the Batrider band stands out a little bit from gaming gladiators, but they are going to go the primal beast for their first pick. Yeah, I mean the, the dark Mago. I think his his Batrider was pretty damn solid. I think what we saw it like yesterday. I'm yeah. pretty sure they did end up losing that game, but it was very good. They also took out the Kunkka first phase. Does make sense. Looks like they're just going to go for Primal Beast. I mean, we did see Primal Beast win the last game as a first pick. Looks like Gaming also did it in their last series against Nouns and also won. So maybe Primal Beast winning and gaining some of these stonks. <laughs> yeah, another win there. And you mentioned uh, win rate for Primal Beast is upwards of 80% now so far in this event. So again, take the stats as you will, but... Mm -hmm. Certainly reflective of something right there. On the other side of it, we talked about also Shadow Demon, kind of the opposite. Not as it's downwards of about 30% or so win percentage for one of the more picked heroes in this tournament. Not usually the best, uh, but you were suggesting it feels that doesn't feel like something you should really take too much. It, it's still a very good hero. Yeah. Well, the hero's also good against Primal Beast, right? You can ulti him and trample. He doesn't really deal any damage. If anyone gets pulverized, we can put them under. You can also break him later, so that's not too bad. So, yeah, just overall good. And I think Beast Coast did have it in one of their prior series. So they they, they know their ways around the Shadow Demon. Mm -hmm. So they pick it up for themselves. And now more bands to come. The Templar Assassin and Morphling bands happening from Gaming Gladiator so far. But it also begs the question, who is Beast Coast going to match up in the mid lane uh, up against the Primal Beast? You know, you already have, uh, of course, the Pango banned out. Um, Invoker's taken away. Kanka's taken away. So what, like Earth Spirit maybe comes to mind? Yeah, I think Earth Spirit is definitely a good choice. I don't know if that's something that the Dark Magul likes to play, from what I understand. Or, I mean, it fits the type of hero he likes to play because he loves to just run around and be aggressive early on. But you need someone who's capable of playing the hero. So if that's in his pool, I would love Earth Spirit. <laughs> you know another hero, what? How can we overlook Spirit Breaker? Also an not option. Just that that is very true. How is he not banned, my friends? He made it through. <laughs> Were they not yeah, watching honestly, Gabby? Yeah, come on, guys, do your homework. 
Yeah, he's still there, so definitely could be an option. Something Beast Coast is uh, potentially talking about, at least. You see there, as a team, Jim Park right there, kind of talk with the others and know how important this match is for them. And start dipping into that reserve time. Earth Shaker. It's a uh, also a good option if you wanted to go mid. It has a slight flex potential to the four. But yeah, it, it lanes pretty. It, it does beat Primal Beast slightly in the mid lane. And Shaker is just overall similar to the other heroes we talked about, just maybe a bit less flashy, but he has stronger mid game. <clears throat> so Beast Coast settles with the Earth Shaker and now Game and Gladiators. And the usual direction here would be some of that support option. Uh, Dark Willow, I got to say, I've definitely been pretty impressed with. Still not seeing the core Dark Willow yet, but the support <laughs> Dark coming. Willow is pretty good too. So Yeah, give the Dark Willow core like another two days. Okay, <laughs> that's for that's for the playoff stage. We'll save it for that. Yeah, yeah that's uh, LGD playoffs right there. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Gaming Gladiators, what do we want? It's likely that you have at least one of the two supports coming out. Um... Wonder what happened to Trian, but I do feel that Trian is not oh, yeah. as good against SD, so there's definitely a chance you can skip that. Okay, yeah, Dark Willow, just solid, seen it before. Phoenix also makes sense. I wasn't too sure how much Surrey loves to play that hero, but I think just having... This is a combo that LGD just had yesterday. The Primal Beast Phoenix, you go in with Primal, you get the backup from the Phoenix, you have a good team fight. just checks out to me. Mm -hmm. So now Beast Coast needing to figure how they're going to deal with the Phoenix, especially. Do they get something that, you know, the A killer, or do you just play the whole runaway strategy? We, we've seen a hero like Centaur popped up quite a bit yesterday, earlier on. So that would fit under that theme if they wanted to go that direction. But certainly uh, one of the several options to think about. Mm -hmm. I do think it's a hard Centaur game. So I would uh, like for them to take a different route because. Like, you play into Bedlam, that's a lot of damage. You're playing into Roots. I feel like Primal Beast also has a lot of damage. Sunray and Egg. So, perhaps they can look for... I mean, if Beast Coast is going to run, if anything's going to run a super weird support duo, it could be them. It is a pretty damn good silencer game. You can mm -hmm. take other heroes that can go in for you. But, uh, yeah, it, it's Beast Coast. I'm ready to just be surprised. <laughs> Fair enough. <clears throat> and you know what? With what is on the line here, that's been the final series, and knowing that potential tournament lives could be even on the line. Um, sometimes that curveball, sometimes that out there yeah. pick to throw off your opponents and maybe you've been practicing in your back pocket. This is the time to do it. I'm not saying they have that by any means, but <laughs> it's uh, it's certainly uh, a possibility. Yeah, but I will say they are, they are definitely dipping a lot more into that reserve time as understandable, of course, but figuring what they want for these three, four picks. I mean, I do think having like another hero that can get into the backline later with your Shaker would be pretty nice. It will be up to them to decide where that truly comes from. Okay, so it looks like they'll take uh, the approach with the Snapfire. We talked a bit about like maybe yesterday. You can kill the egg. I think you also Snapfire is pretty good against Dark Willow. Even if there's a Shadow Realm, you can just kill the hero. And it could wow. even be an offlane for a team like Beast Coast. God, you know, Keizu, I, I go to search for Snapfire and just be like, all right, so where is Snapfire on this list? Nowhere, right? Literally has not been picked yet. Yeah. That, that's a surprising one. Yeah. I, I was sure that this, this hero is definitely better than people give it credit for. I don't think it's like you can't just take it every game, but yeah, I'm happy to see it at least pop up here and there. We've seen it banned a couple times, but yeah, zero picks throughout these group stages so far. But yeah, and it makes sense, certainly. And that Shredder, great against the Phoenix Egg and a strong support and you maybe mentioned could be that core if you feel necessary too but 15 seconds man they really are going to have to think about this quickly also given more time for gaming gladiators to figure out what they're going to do but okay there we go we mentioned this as well bristle pack mm -hmm. has been one of the top picked heroes in this tournament and we've seen it work very well okay so they do go for the bristle i think it's honestly it's pretty good for them uh Phoenix is maybe a bit annoying for you in the game, but in the lane, he doesn't do too much to you. It's like very slow damage, low damage. He has low armor. So let's see what Gaiman's response is. I know yesterday they tried the life stealer, which honestly, it did not look good. You're doing it into SD. It is good against the other three. I was Ooh. thinking there's a potential for them to do this. It can also still be flex. It does not have to be the Rachio's hero. Honestly, you need to be a little careful. SD is a hard counter to Necro. You can never go Shroud. Yeah, and you know what? Necrophos has actually been seen three times. Mm -hmm. Two and one record. 
two of those games were by gaming gladiators actually okay. so they have been playing this a little bit here in these group stages and i was gonna say because i recall seeing it on one of the other matches uh well, as being a viewer and yep that was it so you, like you talked about too it does make sense into a matchup such as the bristleback because of the percentage and you know you get him below half life and throw out that reaper scythe and gg i guess also the ethereal is all pretty good too the shroud yeah, I guess so. It was Quinn playing it in both of those games, which then, of course, would kind of put the Primal Beast into the offlane. So, I mean, it depends a little bit on how they want to go about their lanes. Because, yeah, Necro Carry, hmm. I don't know how much I love it. Like, you have, you're against Snapfire in the game, you're against SD, you're going to need a lot of levels. So, I would kind of want him to go mid. And I think it does make sense. You're going to go against Shaker. I think Necro does enjoy that lane. And mm -hmm. I think Beast Coast, they, they're they on the train. They understand. Yeah. Gaming, they still need a carry. Yeah. Right, one more Bandit going on either side. Faceless Void. The Sven is mentioned. So going with that theme. Ten seconds remaining. Beast Coast does have to pick pretty quickly here again, though. They will have the overall final pick, or more so Bane in this case. I mean, yesterday, I think you talked about Slark, and I wasn't sure what type of lane he would have. I think oh, this yeah. time around, you could go for Slark on Gaiman, because I feel like it would also help your Necro quite a bit, like later when they go on him. Uh, like, you can throw the shard on him, you can save him, and I think kind of like help him out on this one type of go they have on him. Because otherwise, I'm still not able to find this hero where if I pair him up with Phoenix, that he just destroys this Bristleback in lane. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't know, I just can't seem to really find it. Well, it's back on game and gladiators for the ban, but they'll be able to pick right after. And so, yeah, certainly could be one of those options, a specter ban happening. I mean, maybe like they did do life It didn't look good, but you get the infest for the necro to like semi help him out. I wouldn't be super opposed if they want to try that again. Um, mm -hmm. Just looking if there's some gotcha pick that. You know, because you, you see Bristleback in a lot of these games. I feel like at, at some point, someone will come up with a good response. But it won't be Life Stealer, as they take that out themselves. Chaos Knight, I like. Yeah, I, I can dig that one. Hmm. So the CK direction. 30 seconds for Beast Ghost. Essentially, they have to do their own final pick now and going to complete the lineup. So Slark is still there themselves if... It's the direction that they wanted to go in too, but you have to choose quickly wants, here. Yeah, you need a strong laner and someone that's going to have some sort of AOE damage, I think. M Mjolnir or Battle Fury Carrier. Troll Warlord, maybe? Oh. oh, that's neither one of those. That is interesting. It does give you some AOE damage, and I am generally a very big fan of the SF carry, and if you get to the lane, I think it's very strong. I, I actually like what they do with the SD, because I think SD will be a 5 again. Every time they have SD5, they have a super big stack taker. Yesterday they had yeah. Sven, today it's SF. But the, the laning stage against Primal Beast Dark Willow is not an easy one. But if mm -hmm. Beast Coast early game is good, if their lanes go according to plan, this is not easy for a game to win. Sure. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's a bristleback after all. I'm sure they got the Necrophos to ideally help deal with that. It's so bristleback. We've seen a lot of success with in, in general. And oh, yeah. with you there, they got one of the best stackers in a hero like Shadow Demon uh, to, to do that. So certainly a game could swing either way, it sounds like. But I want to readdress the Chaos mm -hmm. Knight. Uh, you mentioned you like the Chaos Knight pick. Uh, it made sense for you for Gaming Collider. So why is that? Yeah. I think it lanes pretty well, actually, into Bristle. You have Sustain with your Lifesteal. You have Minus Armor as well, and you can pressure him with the stun. Mm. And I think it was nice to get, like, another semi-hero that will go in, because Necro can't really go in. It helps your Primal Beast. So overall, yeah, I think solid pick. All right. Well, Gaming Gladiators gets the thumb of approval there from Keizu, <laughs> and it's a matter it's a of executing. <laughs> you you got to execute in the end. That's what really matters. And here we go with game yeah. number one. Like we talk about, man, this is... it. I, I love it, but I, you can also feel for the players at the same time, knowing that how much, how tense they must be, knowing that uh, elimination is possible for oh, yeah. still both of these teams with this final series in play right here. So we'll be loading in, the, in a second. The SF is interesting, though. I was hoping to see more carry SF around this stage, and 
you know, it is popping up. I don't know if this is the first one, but it is at least one of the first ones. And if he can have a good early game, like you get this mid-game BKB on this hero, then you don't care about Dark Willow, you can kill the egg, you don't really care too much about the Necro. So honestly, Beast Girls definitely have the tools to like have very nice tempo in this game. Yeah, it got me to look that up actually when you asked that. Uh, Shadow Pain has only been seen once in this tournament so far. And, yeah, and it, was it was a loss. It was a loss right there. So. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> it's time to win. There you go. That's how you can think of it there. Apparently a lot of lag to start things off here, but we're going to be loading into game number one. Of course, two game series as it's always been throughout this group stage. Setting up uh, what potentially will be tiebreakers from uh, multiple groups after the fact, but both teams are going to be smoked off off the bat. I hear as they start. Uh, out. Also, like kind of looking at a little bit of the early game, I think stacking is incredibly important for this dire lineup. We already talked about okay, they have SD. He's going to stack some stuff there, but also stacking the triangle maybe with your snapfire a little bit for your bristle. Like, then suddenly you have both SF and Bristol. You're stealing all of that. You help your Shaker get a good blink. Like, a good blink timing. Suddenly you have three cores online and the supports with levels. I think that if they can hit that timing, that would be nasty. So what kind of build is it we're going to see from the Necrophos, do you think? I mean, I know he's played a couple times. I didn't get the chance to see exactly what he built in those games. But what would you expect? I think generally when you're mid, if you can, you try to go Boots of Travel and like then you scale a bit because the hero's very stationary from mid if you don't get those. So like, yeah, Bracer, Magic Wand, maybe Boots of Travel, Blade Mail. Sometimes you get to see a Radiance or even like rushing a heart. I think, yeah, he's going to have to tank it up. Like you're playing into a lot of physical damage. So maybe Blade Mail into Radiance or Blade Mail into Heart. Okay. All right, we'll see what... Uh... Quinn decides to go for it once we do get out of the pause and get into that laning phase. But yeah, gonna see the carry Shadow Fiend, Jim Park, playing it here. Throwing a couple of Iron Branch build early on, a couple of mangoes. But we'll eventually head to that top lane, of course, early though, is uh, scouting things out. So do we expect this to be a. I mean, being position one, you'd figure it's usually. Well, actually. But it's position one, right? Yeah, yeah. So with Jim Park playing it. So is it going to be more physical yeah. presence or more smoke? Yeah, I, th okay. I think it's got to be physical. Like, you're going to need like him to have a BKB to, I think, kind of also deal with the egg and like, a, like be able to stand his ground and help his team out with like a Requiem in the middle of the fight. So I think lots of stacks. Get your type of game going and look for these mid-game team fights because that's where Beast Coast has to strike. Their Roche taking potential is also very good and super strong. As of or you get the quills with the goose from Bristol, all the minus armor to start stacking that up. Yeah, you get an SD ult later on Quinn. I think that's really like all of these timings. That's what that's what they're looking for. Yeah. Oh yeah, Shadow Demon Ultimate against that Necropost could absolutely be big with that purge. So on that gameplay back and forth, expect to see in these fights. But yeah, Bristol back. There's been impressive performances. Well, this tournament, uh, it feels like Gaming Gladiators, so though, has a, a solid answer with the uh, the Necrophos, one of the few teams to try it out. Um, but yeah, Prospect, yeah, 22 games up there is literally second place. Most played just by Muerta, who's been the most picked overall, but been banned in our games today so far. Yeah, sadly, we're, we're not getting to see the, the dead gun lady no. at this point. Just seems to be, well, yeah, banned for the most part. Bristle certainly... He is getting up there. I think some of like the laning stage, what I'm looking for at least today is I want the Rachi to have better games. He ha did not really impress me yesterday. And I think if Gaiman want to continue like their six streak or kind of come back to the six streak, I think they're all going to have to make sure to kind of, you know, pull their weight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apparently, you no know, Dota sounds for one of the players. So. Want to reconnect here, and I suppose sounds pretty important. I mean, oh yeah, I'm not playing without sound. <laughs> I would, yeah, they need to make sure to get that sound going because I'm pretty sure they can be like, nope, I am not playing this game. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, you, you think a stage like this, especially, you certainly want to make sure they have everything working. But that does bring up an interesting point, like just a side topic here on the pause. You think about like a, an FPS, like a Counter Strike, of course, where sound is certainly understandably very relevant. You know, footsteps around corners, et cetera. You know, make sure you're aiming in the right direction. But yeah. the game like Dota 2, I mean, I can understand a lot. It's like, oh, it's not as important. But as you're making a point right there, it's 
it's still very important that oh, yeah. you want to have that. Well, what are the cues that you think you're picking up on as a result of sound? Honestly, like nearly everything. Like even just nowadays, what's new is like some twin gates, buybacks, you know, like even like just small, small things like this or knowing if they're, I don't know, channeling some spell or using something. I feel like even if you just remove it and it's not like, okay, then you don't hear the sound, you just get screwed. I feel like you just lose your entire ability to play the game. Or at least I cannot play without sound. It throws it's you off. Yeah, it's yeah. You, you, these players, and you, you're definitely included. You played so many games, and that you expect, you know, to be a certain way. And then I can imagine uh, having something like that just taken away. It's like, wait yeah. a second, something feels really off here. It's also just about like comfort, right? Like when you travel to these events, something that people don't really take into account is that. Another reason why it changes, like you're you're not at home, like you're changing setup and all of those things, you know. So it's just important that you feel comfortable. And suddenly you don't have sound, you're like, what the hell is going on? This is not like being in my living room. <laughs> all right, five player smoke. Gaming gladiators are really. This deep is here. a super interesting smoke I've never seen before. So it's a late smoke. They're gonna oh. go super deep. No way <laughs> they get this kill. Okay, it's done. I guess they are. Yeah, no! Tier 3 towers oh are God. strong, Dimaggio! <laughs> okay, he's gonna die for that. Ends up killing Shadowfin. Now, what is happening? They're going tier 3 tower to start the game. And it's a one for base. one. Ace, he's probably dead. He only has trample, which is on cooldown currently. He has stick charges, but no point to use them here. Oh. They'll save them <laughs> up. And that's double kill, double Bristle kill for Bristleback, yeah. I mean, they did kill Shadow Fiend first, but CK had to die for it. Okay, let's yeah. let's check the bounty rooms and then we'll decide how good this play was. Dark Mago. Tofu. Tofu's gonna grab it. Nice. Oh, that might be four bounties. It's a genius play. Well, Tofu's gonna die for this, though, too. Screw it. First blood plus four bounties, I take it. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There's that kill. And yeah, you're right. It is gonna be the, the four bounties, right? Yep, they do get all four. Yep, gold lead on Radiance, stats don't lie. <laughs> Three to one, and here we go with the creeps just now spawning. You'll love to see it. But yeah, that was that was an interesting smoke play. I mean, clearly Jim Park had zero clue, understandably. Which, huh. By the way, yeah, he is mid. That, yeah. That's what I was saying earlier, the way he's positioning, it felt like. Interesting. Yeah, so he is mid. That is, I kind of like that change up. The only problem he could run into is this enemy team getting four bounty runes and him dying. Well. That happened. So Earthshaker's top lane, and it is going to be the sacred, of course, of Bristol in the, in the bottom lane, as you'd expect. So, yeah, it's a safe lane Earthshaker, essentially, is what's happening here now. I mean, Jim Park is really going to be testing his limits here. Like, you go mid, which you, you know, it's like their carry player, mm -hmm. and you do it against Quinn. Uh, you've got some yeah. big confidence, <laughs> my young man. So. The cojones there, yeah. That's, yeah, uh, they're huge. <laughs> uh, okay, you know, I was going to bring that up, too, as far as that, that's a great point. Because, yes, I mean, I'm sure he's played mid in his career in general. Oh, yeah. Obviously yeah. being a carry player. But to that point, yeah, you're playing Quinn, one of the most experienced and best mid players in the world. Obviously, you're at a, it's a little bit out of your comfort zone there. So it's certainly that, that, that has to play a role. But, I mean, so far, hey, he's toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's 7-0. Yeah, I mean, he's he's doing good, right? Like, you know, first waves are at least even. I think his bottle's coming right now. Got some more audio issues, so don't worry. They'll be fixed soon. Uh, the Sacred, I think he's already got, like, his Ring of Health coming since he had a double kill before the lane even started. That's nice. So, uh, yep, yeah, pretty sure he's having a good time. Oh, the slug model's throwing me off from Snapfire as well, though. Schofield playing it. <laughs> That's cool, I suppose, but I miss the uh, miss the dragon. It's a good old dragon. Uh, but all right, gonna be reconnecting here. Oh, looks like uh, I guess Stinger still needs to be reconnected too. We'll be good to go. But yeah, certainly gonna keep a close eye on the mid lane matchup, especially. Obviously, Gaming Glider is putting a lot of value into this Necrophos. They they definitely want him to have a good game and progress as a result of a good laning phase. So AC right there using that death pulse and getting a couple CS as we come out of the pause. But so we're focused on that mid lane quite a bit, but how is this going to be for Earthshaker? Dark McGo on the Earthshaker playing safe lane. What, what are the huh. expectations there? 
I guess he's gonna be just like fine. I, here it depends a little bit on how good S uh, Stinger can do on the five SD for him. The only thing that's a bit weird is that late, like Shaker is not the best stack clearer. So like the map could be a bit weird when Stinger does what he's doing now, where he's stacking both the camps up north. Like Shaker doesn't really clear those. Whereas if you have SF, he just walks over triple raids, boom, baby, it's mm -hmm. gone. Well, we'll see. Dark Mago kind of being zoned out right now. At the top lane, bottom lane, a bit of action there. You see Chaos Knight getting pretty low, but in the end, will manage to live. And he does have 15 wand charges, so I suppose he wasn't uh, necessarily that close to death. But Tofu, top lane, the Bramble Maze hits both. And going to Shadow Realm even. They're really. Ace is getting free farm here right now on the screen. Yeah. Play. I guess it's not really gonna change. Like in mid, it's very easy for you to play this matchup. As oh, gets into a bramble very late. Vanish, put in up. A stinger. Stinger is likely to. Well, very far, gonna keep him alive a little bit longer. Bramble mace hits though, and another auto attack will do him in. You see, Ace goes right back to the creep wave. Well done by Tofu. They might get sacred as well. Yes, they will. Gaven having some very good side lanes. That's a big kill. Lotus oh, sacred. Yeah, Lotus is gonna snatch that up at least, but. Gonna take a Chaos Bolt even. CK really committing for this. Get a nice proc there, Reality Rift. Gonna force him to use it, and Schofield will live, but a lot of regen, a lot of damage. Yeah, that's, oh. I don't... So Raja definitely has to start... Oh, Dark Mago in some trouble. Black Grenade. Yeah, Tofu now might be in some trouble, or yes, maybe Lotus the Stinger. Yeah, Four fine. stacks of poison if he gets a fifth stack. Uh, oh, he just misses it. All right, well, we got plenty of action this game, that's for sure. Oh, we do. Even with me, too, like this SF versus Necro matchup is, uh, you walk on a very fine line. That's Stinger, back in trouble with Fisher. Oh, Stinger is now dead, and Dark Mago is trying to get that turn kill. It's just not going to be enough, I'm guessing, at least Dark Willow. He's really committing for this, though. Dark Mago wants this kill, but ah, another enchant telling him not nearly enough damage. Uh oh. Okay, bottom lane. <laughs> Some more action. There's a lot of back and forth going on. I would like to highlight the mid lane. Uh, if SF ever gets in this position where oh, Necro wow. gets to out region you, if you don't have enough mana, he just gets to bully you. Like, this is a matchup that it ends very quickly for one side. Mm -hmm. And Jim Park, he's feeling it right now. He's feeling the pressure. Is this, a, I was going to say, is this a play where you get support roaming in and maybe try to, like, because he's diving at tier two tower, like, in between them, so you pick up position. And you definitely but... could, right? You can look to, like, bring Stinger mid, which is, I guess, something they try to do. But maybe his TV was on CD. But yeah, if he goes between the towers, I think, bring your SD disrupt and, like, triple raise his ass. Mm-hmm. Raggio should be fine. Everyone is playing on such low HP. They really are. Phoenix, is he a little too low? Yes, he is. Dark Willow TP's in, though. And with the Shadow Realm attack and the Bramble Maze. Oh, Snapfire! The slug! It's not fast enough. The killing spree for Tofu already. He's 3 1 and 1, so having high impact on the Dark Willow. Gets revenge for his Very TP. high impact. Even like a very cute play. Shadow Realm before the TP. By the time you go in, it's already nearly fully charged. Get it out there. So, yeah, Tofu. Having a very nice early game. Yeah. The Necrophos is almost level six, and you know, that means that Reaper Scythe will get online. Snapfire gonna TP middle and help with the bottle there. In the meantime, just drops it on the ground for him. But yeah, Necrophos, Reaper Scythe is online, so gotta start thinking about that now as well. Bottom lane. That sacred certainly dead. Got him. Another Shadow Realm snipe and dominating indeed is Tofu. All right, Tofu is doing some very nice plays. So Ace is kind of chilling top. You can use that. So for now, very low. We'll be taken out. They should know there's a high ground ward now. Yeah. They do decent, pick it out. Do some bounty for Schofield there. Oh, absolutely. But hey, it's, it's been 10 seconds. Why not go for another kill? Let's go, Phil. Double bounty rune right there. Duraccio is going to try to avoid that snap fire. And he's still manning up here in the process. The little shredder. Oh, it's enough damage, though, to take out the snap oh, fire. However, nice try. Jim Park with the raise to kill the chaos knight. But now look at this, Quinn. OK, never mind. <laughs> it's going to be OK. Even drops the raindrop so it doesn't start fading even more. So he only has two charges on the SF. Nice try by the Rachi, though. He tried to, like, stand still, hope that the race would miss, but it barely clipped him. Yeah. Seven to six. We already have 13 hero kills. Just now six and a half minutes into this one, and there, there definitely could be more coming. Top lane, Dark Mago. 
First crown. We got Stinger with the disruption. It's helping his team out somewhat, but cannot do much more. And now Quinn shows up. Oh, that's a dead Stinger. It's going to be Reaper Scythe. Yep. Oh. Cuts him down. That's great. Get your first stack of the game. Get yourself to full HP, full mana with all the nice heal. Boots of Travel are queued up. Yeah, Quinn having a oh, all the cores on game and having a good a good time. Even Tofu. It's higher net worth than Darkman going to Shaker right now. Yeah. Yeah, that is a technically is a position one Earth Shaker, so certainly a big factor there. Jim Park though on the Shadow Fiend is is doing his part. He is uh gonna be trying to build the Dragon Lance next. Top net worth, bottom lane. Andaraccio. That cookie beat oh, used oh, little and here comes our Shaker. Okay. Gets involved because CS hasn't been the greatest for him, so it gets involved in some hero kills. And actually, the early minus armor between the goo and the little shredder is like no joke. It's minus three armor from little shredder. Every goo that you stack up, get them a couple more. Suddenly, those quills they do hurt. Uh, Tofu is rotating over. Eight minutes are coming. Stinger was already here to protect. He will be illusions bottled up by. Jim Park here on the Shadow Fiend, so he'll have that to take advantage of as well. And as I mentioned, I mean, his farm's looking very good overall. He's got the yep. Dragonlance being built. Well, he's definitely having a good time. I guess it's most about the fact that Gaiman, I guess their are having an even better time. Sacred also doing well, so maybe you want to need to look at some stacks if you're Beast Coast, because yeah, Dark Mago, he's going to need help or a lane at least somewhere, because he's suffering on the Shaker. Mm -hmm. you know, we saw him assist in the kill on CK, and He's kind of in the Radiant jungle right now. Speaking of that, Shadow Fiend's also in his jungle. Trying to split some farm throughout the map, but Primal Beast is going to freely push in the top lane. Although he might be going hunting now and noticing that Shadow Fiend's been missing. I'm just going to pull a creep wave here. Oh, it is so hard to deal with some of these tanky heroes that are mobile. 1500 HP and a getaway. Let's see. Requiem. Nope. Not the best timing. <laughs> Slightly off the mark. Yeah, it's tough right there with the onslaught you. It's oh, precise. Nice. That's a kill. And that's, again, the position one Earthshaker going down. So the struggles continue for Dark Mago. Or bottom Good lane. Luck, Dyer's tower well, still two attacked. TPs forced by Sacred. I guess one is a Boots of Travel TP, so it doesn't matter. But you did yeah. also get Tofus. Yeah, Necropulse even just cancels it in the end and just sticks around mid. So Quinn figuring no point as CK TP'd out anyways. Yeah, the Boots of Travel already online and has a thousand more gold saved up. So that Vitality Booster has been clicked. Dragonlance though is finished by the Shadow Fiend at least. God, look at this Primal Beast. Like, he just keeps on pulling this creep wave axe style. Yeah, it's kind of what like Storms were doing in the last game in mid, right? Like if at some point you can just take these waves, find them with a neutral camp as they go aggressive on Dark Mago. <laughs> Dark Echo going. snap ult. Yeah, popping the Echo Slam in response. The Curse Ground eventually going to take off, though, and that Snapfire missing a couple ah. there on a Primal Beast. Well, they kill Phoenix, actually, so there's that. But now Quinn shows up, and you got to be a little more scared. No Scythe, but Pulverize does plenty. Mago going to be picked off. Jim Park, however, you're on Shadow Fiend. He still has his Requiem. is here. Hello, my friends. Yeah, he sure is. Chaos Knight, definitely a hero that can get involved early. Reality Rift, there's a Chaos Bolt. And there's the death on the Shadow Demon, and they want more. Shadow Realm attack, Schofield taking some damage from that. Ace is baiting them right here for sure. Uh-oh. There's the uproar, Wreck and the them. bait works. A Requiem, though, yeah, very good placement. Not only saves his teammate, almost got a turn kill. But uh, nobody dies in the end. Ooh, if they had any more spells, that could have been good for them. But either way, they get to force gaming gladiators away. Looks like Sacred is in the triangle, maybe doing some stacks and farming those. Because, yeah, Bristleback, this hero just kind of wants to farm. You want your Vanguard, maybe get closer to your Aghanims. Looks like Quinn might be looking at this heart. Already has a vid booster, but they want to say hello to Sacred. And Sacred immediately turns in the direction. But now, what do they do with a stack is the question. Want to stick around and maybe go for it, or do they get distracted by mid? It looks like they want mid instead. Mago could be in trouble. I First think crown. he is. Scythe is available later on. Oh, he's just out of range. Okay, now he's in range. There's the Scythe, and that will do it. Killing spree coming out for Quinn as Dark Mago just hanging around a little too long in the mid lane. 
For sure. Our game is moving right now. It's very good. Jim Parks will top of the net worth, but yeah, the one thing that is really struggling for Beast Coast is the Shaker. His blink is going to be very late. Quinn is going to walk his body on in there. Oh, they're Steal stealing the all the Ancients. What yeah. a nice play from Gaiman. That's all I'm saying. They got that information earlier, and just a matter of them actually taking it now. Snap bolts. Mortimer kisses, but he's just going to pop the Ghost Shroud, which I don't know if that necessarily helps in that case or not, but either way, he's got plenty of regen. Going to set up the kill on a Shadow Demon, so even more regen. Cookie, oh, does not stun, but Quinn is going to TP. No, he cancels because he was going to get feared, but... Is it going to be enough to stay alive? Heal bomb? Never mind. A big kill for Shadow Bay. That's a lot of gold going to Jim Park. Yeah, that was a big kill for them to get. In the meantime, they Tofa had a very nice terrorize to save the Rachio. So nicely done there. So I see a blade mail on Sacred. Huh. Okay, interesting. So going to delay his eggs a bit, but yeah, blade mail's a pretty good item. It feels like one of those kind of reacting to the game state. Didn't necessarily have the greatest free farm himself, so. And there's a lot of fighting. <laughs> so oh, Blade yeah. Mail is certainly good for that aspect. That's yeah, non-stop fighting. They're even just running after each other now. The Rachu now decides, okay, I'll go on you. Nope, never mind. I'll run away. Uh, it just, it's just insane. 24 hero kills. We're, we're it's almost at minutes. The, yeah, two hero kill per minute mark is just absurd. Now we've got another ancient stack for Sacred. We're gonna try to farm those. Uh, of course, you can as a Bristleback. Yeah, so having that axe now queued up, it's of course still a ways away as mentioned, but it's going to be worked on and kind of puts that clock on there as far as when he's able to get that and see the impact. But this mid tier one tower finally going to fall in favor of gaming gladiators. Ooh, Shadow Blade on Jim Park. They don't know about this. There's no wreck here, but still, that's a surprise factor here. Ace, he went a bit too deep there. However, with the blade mail on the onslaught, he is good. Earthshaker running in. Tofu is a lot of trouble. Enchant Totem sets up the raise. Jim Park with the kill. So yeah, that Shadow Blade you mentioned. I mean, that's another kill for the Shadow Fiend. He's 3-1-1. I, I, I know this has been a great start for gaming. Gladiator is like, it's on the feel of it, but it also feels like Beast Coast is certainly not out of this by any means. This is still... Oh, definitely not. No, they're, they're still kind of getting what they want. You know, if Dark Magogo gets to farm his plague or maybe get a kill somewhere, then it's going to be A-OK. -okay. It's definitely going to be a lot about, okay, how do they get to incorporate this Bristle back and how does the first Roshan look? Because we talked about it a bit before, but Bristle SF can definitely take Roshan. Beast Coats are going for a very deep smoke. But it looks like they will not look for the Rachio. I was going to say they were hoping that somebody was over here on this ancient stack, but not the case. However, the Rachio's running over. Oh, now they see him. They're right. We have right on top as a result, and that could be a kill. <laughs> it is. Hey, you know what? Why find them when they come to you, Kazu? Exactly. I'm just going to wait here for his angels because he's coming anyway. Jim Park, he knows. Oh, that's got to that's feel really good. Another 1,600 gold saved up just like that. For the Shadow Fiend bottom lane, though, it's been about 30 seconds. More action to come. Dark Mago, he's, he's definitely dead. Dead Mago, see you later. There His you go. Blink gonna get delayed even more. As Quinn, like, looks like he's gonna get the shard. The shard on Necro is so nice. More mobility, you can dodge some stuff as well. You can heal, you deal more damage. As he finds Sacred, there is the shard already. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a disruption, my friend. Disruption, pretty clutch. It saves him initially, oh, still but got it the kill. doesn't save him. The Kobe. Coming out from Ace, ends up connecting. Yeah, see, that's still result. that's still nicely done because I probably wouldn't have siphed him. But let's see, Dark Mago, he's teeping in. Yeah, that's a dangerous spot though. He's got Echo Ooh. Slam level one. Okay, Snapples. They want Ace. Another onslaught. Never mind. It's gonna be that Mortimer kisses helping to get the kill. Okay, oh. good kill, good return, good return. Yeah, that's uh, it's a heavyweight battle for sure in this one. I mean. He's, I think on one side you can get some, little, get some good blows in there, but then Beast Kills recovers and they get a couple of good blows himself. I mean, it's 13-16. Like, hero kill, they're, they're certainly keeping up and they do continue to have the top farm in the game in the Shadow Fiend. And we all know about a Shadow Fiend snowball effect. And it, it, it is certainly potential to be there. Yeah, no, for sure.
Uh, I mean, they're gonna get some of these hearts, which is maybe a bit hard for them to deal with. Because they're so CK is getting one, Necro is getting one. I mean, Jim Park has got a silver edge. He does hurt quite a lot. Wow. Oh, Dark Magul. Don't, guys, let him get his goddamn Blink Dagger. Yeah, They've just, got his number. <laughs> they really do. 2,000 gold, never mind. Yeah, that guy, he could have had his Blink like five minutes ago if it just wasn't for death after death after death. But obviously, that's the credit of Gaming Gladiators. Oh, yeah. Keeping that pressure up. I mean, that certainly feels like a good prime target to keep the focus on and keep that delayed as long as possible. Absolutely. So I guess Jim Park is probably needs a BKB later. It could just be his next item. So that kind of just deal with the team fight. Make sure you get those Requiems off. It's, yeah, East Coast. I mean, I'm still looking at Sacred. I think his net worth is do he's doing okay, but he needs to speed up this Aghanim. So I think it's getting a bit late. Yeah. Oh, we're going to see a three-player smoke. Ace leading the way. That's Tofu and Celery joining him. Going to get paired up with the uh, Duraccio here. Doesn't look like Beast Coast. As crazy as this may sound, but they're not going to engage because <laughs> the other team's not here. Looks like they'll take the mid tower and said, Dark, no way, guys. All right, they got him again. Well, okay. <laughs> that, that, I guess they do eventually find him. Oh, no, he got the blink. blink. Yes, he Good finds job. it. He's like, all right, now you can kill me. Gosh. Looks like he did lose a tier two token, maybe. I don't know how that even happened. Mm. Like it shouldn't have dropped, but yeah, he did get the blink because he echoed before he died. I like that. So he will be ready upon respawn. Quinn, meanwhile, he is going to have a heart in a couple of seconds. Yeah, he is wow. a big boy. The Rachio also, he's like halfway to his, so there's going to be a lot of tankiness going on. With And remember, it's not just tankiness, it's hearts that will get amplified by a sun raid, so it will make Celery's game even better. Oh, true. Necrophos, he's sitting at the twin gate down here at the bottom. You see the top lane, they're pushing that tier two, but clearly Gaming Gladiators wants to protect this tier one. Yeah. Sacred. No Axe yet, still about a thousand gold shy. Axe just picked up though by Snapfire, so got the gobble up, all right. All right, so they wanna play for some gobble gobble action. Okay, so what, you're gonna get the Axe on Bristol, pop him in there and hope you follow up with Snapple and then it's enough. Hmm. I mean, SA Snapfire, they love their Axe. I feel like there's, all, for this region, there's only one build for this hero and it's this one. So you're thinking aggressive movement. Well, actually, we'll get more on that in a second because yeah, aggressive movement indeed coming out. Ace, he's got the on That's a great board. Park. That is a beautiful work. Great vision. Can they get the kill with it? No, the stop from the Earthshaker keeps him alive for the time being. They pick up Shadow Demon, but Shadow Fiend is able to escape. So Gaming Gladiator is unable to get the target they hoped for. Okay, it's Duracho. That's <laughs> doing some nasty stuff in mid, at least forcing away Sacred. Dyer's middle tower. Under attack. So, so I was going to say there, though, gobble up. Are we thinking that or, or maybe the Earthshaker? Have them throw him in. I mean, yeah, I guess you can do that, but it's probably just Shaker who will set up the fight himself, I guess, with a blink. Sure, he's got I, I, Yeah, I, I think just, just throw the bristle back in there. Oh, uh, let's go. Careful. <laughs> not worth it. <laughs> let's not go for that. Yeah. Oh, that hurts. All the HP gone. Dark Mago is able to blink out. Yeah, they tell Bristle to finish off the Tormentor. <laughs> Bristle's actually over there now. He's going to goo it on up and eventually get the kill. So they will get the shard out of it in the end. It takes a little bit longer and it's going to go the way of Dark Mago. So it's going to be Earthshaker picking it up. His shard now. Oh, oh, Ace already has an Aghanim Scepter. So yeah, that makes a yeah. lot of sense. I love the Primal Beast Ags in this game. You can break the SF, remove his aura. You can break the Bristle back. So they have some very good tools to deal with him in this game. Looks like they might yeah. want their own little Tormentor. Yeah, we saw that uproar in that last fight even doing the Ags effect. So yeah, he's had that for a couple of minutes here as Duraccio. Able to finish off the terminal. Tormentor, as mentioned, Tofu will get his own shard now and more farm for Chaos Knight there. Right. But so, finally, right. we've calmed down a little bit. Yeah, Dark Mago is getting to recover a little bit. You know, it's got the shard working on his BKB now, but ah, these 
I know Jim Park is having a good game and he is top net worth, but when you play SF, you want heroes to die quickly. And I think Necro Primal CK with hearts with a Phoenix behind them, they die anything but quick. What's going on up here? Disruption. That's okay. That's why Shadow Fiend's running because do not want to go for a Blade Mill Primal Beast. Just let it be. Get out of there and Shadow Fiend's almost got the BKB finished. Be a lot more confident once uh, Jim Park is able to pick that up. How's that Ags looking on Bristleback? Okay, he has it now. So yeah, Ags has been concluded on Sacred. So we're getting to see that effect. Yeah, that should at least help quite a bit. I do think the Ags is, oh, okay. Dark go barely does get the blink up. Yeah, so PKB SF, Aghanim's Bristleback, I think it's go time. You force a Roche fight or take a fight around this area. I think both teams understand. This game and bring everyone a Beast Ghost are smoking. Yep. It's, uh, it's crunch time. <clears throat> It absolutely is. It's been a couple minutes since we've had action, and we're due for it. Into the Roshan pit they go. Those gaming gladiators. So now it's Beast Kills. It's on them to decide how they want to play this out. You have Sacred smoked up. So there is the gobble up. Throws in Jim Park, actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, no Requiem for him, because obviously Game Gladiator is already falling back. Bristleback. Gonna get pulverized, immediately stopped by the Fissure. Sacred has that oh. axe. But okay. he needs to run. Gets to tank through it. I mean, Game and have a lot of items now at this point to like, I think kind of, ooh, I like this move. Just go for the second smoke and just try to get around them. Ooh, if they get Shadowfin especially. Well, they got the Bristle back at least. The Onslaught forward. Cookie going off, and now BKB actually with the Requiem from Jim Park. Gets the Fear on the Primal Beast. Is he tanky enough? It looks like it. And Miss kicking in, and he's going to manage to put Echo. the Echo Slam. Comes down to finish the job. However, Dark Mago in a bad spot because of that. So it will be a trade of a one for one. And Shadow Feet TP'd away. They're just saying, we got to get out of here. Yeah, I mean, they did use a lot already, right? They've used BKB on Jim Park. Requiem, Echo is gone. He traded himself for the Primal Beast. Definitely a good play by Dark Mago. But yeah, SF without BKB, incredibly hard to play. And let's see, do they want to force Roche here? Looks like they do not. That's what I was going to say. It means they're giving up Roshan, but never mind. They they don't force it. Yeah, I but... guess that Gaiman might just be happy enough that whenever Beast Coast posture towards Roche to just fight them there. Okay. And that so, just, you know, it's like, okay, we don't want to... Use wanna, it as bait. Exactly. Like, just let them go there. We go fight them. So they're going to take a little more time, control the top part of the map, because in about 30 seconds, obviously, Roshan is going to make his journey through the Twin Gate towards the top. It's still, feels, I know it's been in the game for a while, and it still feels weird uh, to say that and see it in action. It's like, Roshan, oh, I'm going to go on a walk. <laughs> uh, it, honestly, it's still pretty funny to me as well. That's, okay, Jim Park going to go for a Mask of Madness, which, of course, will help him with a lot of damage output, and then you can split it later. But the Rachio, top of the network now. He is, he's having a very good game. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that CK showing off. But side of the chorus, heart, echo saber, armlet, blink, and now he's thinking the assault Kiros, which will certainly be great. Roshan has made his journey to the top, so so far not making a play on it yet. Jim Park, meanwhile, he's still red into the mid lane and. It's actually going to just take up the creep wave. No one there to fight. But now they're going up to the Roshan, so they know he's up here. And here comes the, as you're mentioning, is Beast Coast going to try to respond to this, or do they just let it be? Maybe it's hard, but I feel like they should probably look. Like, you have to gobble up. You know, maybe you can smoke up, pop someone in, snap holes on top. Because we have not seen the snap axe actually come to effect yet in no. any of the last fights. So it looks like it's free road for gaming. Yeah, they, they tried again with the launching in the Shadow Fiend, but, but at that point, Game of Gladiators had already fallen back. So, yeah, they're they're just gonna give it up, no fight, and in the end, it will be free for Game of Gladiators. I'm sure Aegis. I mean, who do you give this to? I guess CK is the obvious choice. But, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, honestly, so you'd you'd be happy with any of them. You could even give it to Ace, like if you think that okay, Quinn doesn't die, the Rachi doesn't die, give it to Ace, but. You know, if it allows Darachi to just go ham sandwich, get in the back line, then sure, let's go for it. So it becomes official with that kill there. 
on a Roshan. Earthshaker did spend that time farming up uh, and finishing his BKB at least. So yeah, it's good news for Beast Coast. Stinger has his Aether Lens, has the Shard, of course, over on the Shadow Demon. So he's doing his job there as well. I mean, Beast Coast, I don't think they have like too many plays on the map at this point. Like, you have, sure, you, your Bristle is strong, but if they catch him off guard, he kind of dies. Same with, honestly, most of your heroes. And most of your kills can only come through Shake or Snap. So it's on them to like see if they can find that. If not, I think this whole map is game -ins. as well. Like, they also have a gem. So they'll slowly just shrink it more and more. So Beast Girls have a hard couple of minutes ahead of them. Mm -hmm. Well, Jim Park trying to finish a full Hurricanes fight, but just really trying to keep on top of that net worth chart. If anything, him and CK have been bouncing back and forth. Mid lane bristle back. Feeling a little more comfortable to oh, Glyph TP. That's going to be a initiation for the CK. Oh, Garaccio going in. Blade Mill comes out the gym part. The Gobble to throw it. The Requiem. Necrophos. Can they come in time? They yes, got they it. can. He does get the turn kill to Bristle back. Bristle has a flyback though. He wants to use it. Shadow Demon going to be picked off. The Echo Slam hits Garaccio. And the Fissure to take him out. So the Aegis is going to be burnt. But Shadow Fiend was killed off. In the back line, CK now looking to help out his teammates more, including Ace to get the pulverize on Earthshaker and help slam him down. And now Bristleback is also going to get caught up too. So, yeah, the gobble up initiation. I mean, yes, they killed Necrophos, but it's just still not enough across the board. And Gaming Gladiator is too strong. I mean, the support is actually so much. You had the full Sunray Spirit Vessel terrorizes is coming out. That was a dieback as well for Sacred. Uh, maybe oh, yeah. if the initiation was a little bit of a beast goals that could have worked out. I kind of like the play, but yeah, Gaben, and they, they just get to strike back. Like here, maybe if the gobble up stun like connects and it's a bit more clean, everything could be cool. But yeah, I mean, Jim Park is just kind of alone, right? Egg comes out and looks great. Like who, who can help him? <laughs> and the live action you saw on the bottom right there as we're replaying this fight. Of course, so, yeah, I'm with you there with the gobble. It's Hey, you mentioned this region especially they love it but it's it feels they like do. such an all-in tool that yeah, it's hard to really have when it comes together boy is it beautiful but that's like that's an 0 for 2 now and that feels pretty bad but yeah snapfire was just found in the trees there in the live action and easy kill for Duraccio on the chaos knight so um, even more adding to it it's essentially cleaning up the whole team there yeah Man, and this Necro is it's getting, Quinn is getting so strong in this game. That's a third hard on gaming gladiators with some tankiness now on the Primal Beast as well. You're about to have Sanj completed. Ogre Seal Totem as well on Necro is incredible. Generally, when you play against SD, you can't really move, but now he has the Shard, the Ogre Seal that allows you to maneuver. So yeah, some very nasty things coming out for gaming. Mm -hmm. Pushing on the objectives now, feeling confident to do so as gaming gladiators. Well, kind of. They send the creep wave up at least, but the rest of them are going to fall back. We're about to hit 30 minutes into this game, and I think that's the that's the cue, Casey, as you were mentioning in the draft. I think uh, Beast Coast, have they, have they hit that marker? Have they hit that limit? Of uh, yeah, I think it's getting hard for Beast Coast right now. Like I was hoping for them to be doing a little bit better. Uh, they, they have to execute big combos right now. Because for gaming, I think it's chill. You know, you have the three bros in the front line with the heart, the sunray in the back. But for Beast Coast, it's a little harder to play these fights now. Mm -hmm. Well, Sacred in pursuit. No, oh, nice stun, but Necrophos. Oh, gobble, gobble. Took it away initially. There's the gobble up the kick. Okay, that was pretty. But the same result, though, perhaps, as the Echo Slam, the Fissure doing everything, disruption onto the Chaos Knight. Scofield manages to barely stay alive. Never mind, he's dead. And this CK, again, that they kill the Necrophos, but and break. you still have Ace and Duraccio just way too strong. There is so much stupid HP you have to... Oh, I kind of like to play as... Well, hold on, it's it's not done yet, Stinger. Trying to put on the Juke Boots, did get its <laughs> TP cancelled. All right. Uh, looks like he will make it out, so two for two at the end of it all. Goblop did work out beautifully, but yeah, there is so much HP that you have to kind of like chew through. Like what, 4K on Ace, 4K on the Raj, and like 4K on Quinn. It almost feels, I, I, I also don't even know if I understand the whole Shadow Fiend sending him in either. It, it's like, yes, the blow up is nice, but I'm kind of with you that the Bristle Pack, just get him in a good position in the midst of them. 
let him be the chaos factor and have your shadow fiend not be in a very vulnerable spot of the process because that's I mean, I also pro an issue yeah i guess because the problem is when you put in the sf like this maybe they feel like it's their only play but to be fair, the moment he BQB's Requiem and they kill Necro, his fight is over. He yeah. cannot really do anything after that, which just means that Ace and Duracho, they're just gonna go ham every fight. Because if there's no SF, they don't need to be scared of anything. Yeah, so we'll see if maybe that change up comes into play or if they're still committed to this idea of launching in the Shadow Fiend as pretty as it is. But Sacred, he is gonna kill off the Tormentor once again for his team. So going to be another shard going their way at least. But how about that pick up there? Duraccio does manage to get the overwhelming blink. Oh, yeah. That's big. So, and we have similar builds coming out on Quinn and Ace, where you have the heart into, like, the Kaya Sanjas. Just amp up your region even more. Looks like Quinn is like, okay, screw this gobble up Requiem combo. He's queuing up a BKB. Ace is looking for a catch bottom. And also like Duraccio, they leave the arcane ring for him to pick up. He pops Phantasm with it, and now they're charging on over. As you see, meanwhile, Ace is going to get the one kill on Shadow Demon. There's the Reaper Scythe to take out Crystal, who's now dead for a minute with no buyback. Oh, oh catch. Jim Park Ooh. gets caught. That's big. Gobble up, launches it oh, backwards. Gobble. Okay, well, it <laughs> saves him at least. So, very defensive one, but Earthshaker's just going to be killed in the process, and... Chaos Knight taking some auto attacks from Shadow Fane. Hurricane Pike pushback will continue to keep him alive, but obviously still the damage has been done on this team. Oh, no, okay. should be, never mind. Hey, heart region, Sunray, you no know, back to half HP, all good. Hex good. completed on Celery. It just up the Rachu looking for more. Easy kill. You can see Shadow Fane, I mean, he's, he's able to get in these right clicks, but yeah, the. The stupid HP, as you called it earlier, it really is that on this <laughs> radio. It really side. is. I mean, CK has 5,000 HP. Like, yeah, you can kill one of them, but I just, it just goes back to show that SF is the only one that can deal damage right now. He's not getting to hit. Bristleback doesn't really feel like Bristleback. He just gets broke by Primal, and yeah, game in. They're getting at least a second set of racks. Mm -hmm. I mean, CK just jumps in with that overwhelming blink. <laughs> Going very confident. Primal Beast, he'll also follow up his teammate, Sacred. It's a Bristleback, but he's not as farmed as the others. He's dead. Even the egg going off right from there from Celery, and you gotta think uh, Beast Kills could be thinking about game number two at this point. Absolutely. I mean, Jim Park's trying his best. You know, he's using his hero pretty well, trying to go in and out, taking them away when he can, but yeah, it looks like game in. They just click away at these racks, and I don't really see what's going to happen to them. You have Echo Slam in 10 seconds. Requiem is ready as well. Gobble up's ready. I mean, go for one last all in here, perhaps. Shadow Fiend sitting right next to the Snapfire. He's ready to go. Obviously, they're, they're spreading out, though, on the Radiant side, so not making it easy. And now you got the Phantasms coming in, <laughs> and they find Shadow Fiend, actually, so. And just give a Mega Creeps. Oh my god, oh, I go at least he echo flames before, but... <laughs> oh, it goes Glimmer! Oh, he's still alive somehow! <laughs> okay, he actually gets out. That's kind of crazy, but does it really matter? Not really. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> 30k gold lead, just keep backing away. It, it, it's just too much. Sacred even. Like, Phoenix alone can like one me one him and be like, yo, what up? Bristleback. Gonna get stunned in the base with his teammates. The tank meta is here for sure for gaming gladiators. Earthshaker, he dies. There's a snap fire throw in. Shadow Fiend's like, all right, now's my chance to shine. All right, now what? Back to the fountain. Oh, they might kill Duraccio, he's getting low. A little fountain diving may be going on. Just a tad. See, it's Jim Park, it's trying to hold, trying to do his best to hold this one. Yeah, this is definitely that overtime phase now. Stat padding a little bit, having fun with it. Because clearly game number one is just all about in the books for gaming gladiators. <laughs> See Shadow Fiend. And just one set of auto attacks dropping the half line. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, now CK uh -oh. is going to fountain dive for sure. And the egg on top of that, you'd love to see it. Yeah, I mean, that will certainly make you call GG roll play when you lose like four heroes in your fountain. Yeah. And a very, very good and important win, I think, here for Gaming Gladiator. Oh, yeah. That should make them...
will put them in a pretty good slot, at least when it comes to their standings in the group. And Beast Coast, they need a win in their next in this next game, mm -hmm. or they're done. Yeah, and so to to that point a little bit more, I mean, I'm also looking at the updates of the other series. You mentioned Virtus Pro and Nouns going at it. They ended yeah. up splitting that series. So okay. both of those teams finished three and five, which means, yes, Gaming Gladiator is their second seed no matter what. Now what this means, though, is Beast Coast, if they lose, they're the team eliminated. If they win, we got Ooh. ourselves a three-way tie here in Group yeah. C. So, again, it, I, I'm not suggesting that Gaming Gladiators, you know, obviously they know this. It's like, oh, well, they're just going to come and not care. I'm sure they'll still give it their best effort and everything. Oh, but for sure. You factor that in as well. It is it is very real. Yeah, I mean, you, it's, it's just crunch time. Like, you, you see teams, you get eliminated on day two of TI. You know, if you have one bad day and your second day isn't amazing, like, you might just be done. So, for Beast Coast, it's going to be important that they have the correct talk now in between game one and game two because, I mean, their opponent is not an easy task. You're playing against gaming gladiators. I think they're finding their form again. So, yeah, I hope for Beast Coast that they can find the right things to tell each other right now. You can see right here the highlights of this game and later on again that and it's certainly not put in blame on as far as like, oh, well, they lost because they went this gobble up strategy. I mean, the laning phase was very good for gaming gladiators. All oh, three yeah. cores did very well. We we're stressing that and you kept making that point over and over. And obviously it was a very action packed game, a lot of action, a lot of fights, but the three cores all still felt really strong on the side of gaming gladiators. Shadow Fiend, yes, he was doing all right, but Earthshaker and Bristleback, Earthshaker especially, it was a rough game. I mean, maybe the I understand the idea behind the lane swap, but I think Dark Mago had a really, really hard game on this Earthshaker. Like he didn't really like get back into it. Uh, he had a a tough lane. They kept having his number in the game. They kept slowing him down. I think even Sacred, like in this next game, I think put everyone on comfort, help out each other, and try to really go for like a nice game for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as far as, you know, MVP goes, I mean, this is, again, a case of you really could throw it in the air. I think there's a suggestion for any of these uh, players to deserve MVP. I mean, I'm personally going to go Tofu, though, on, on yeah, Dark down. Willow. So I think, uh, yeah, it sounds like you go with that as well. Nothing wrong with the Dark Willow. So I mentioned going into this before the pick even happened. Dark Willow has kind of been this support hero that we've been seeing. Very impressive. And this is no different here in the hands of Tofu. Oh, yeah. No, he, he played beautifully. He had nice value usage up top. TP's bottom gets a kill there, has good items. I also like his picture. He, he's a good dude. You know, I got to support my <laughs> fellow countrymen. So, yeah. No, he honestly, he played he played beautiful. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, also, I mean, yeah, actually, maybe it might be his second TI. Maybe it's his first, maybe it's his second. I'm not sure. But, yeah, if you play well like this, you deserve my MVP. Yeah. And so he gets it there, deservingly so. And, of course, Game and Clatters, again, as we, as we talk about, it's, as it stands right now, they are locked in. No, nothing else will change the fact that they are now now finishing second place here in, in Group C. But ladies and gentlemen, it's Beast Coast with their tournament lives oh, on yeah. the line. Can they win to at least force a tiebreaker or will it be over for them? We're going to find out next as I'm Break CBK joined by KZU. Stay tuned. More Road to TI.
All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to our coverage here of the Road to TI. We're doing some Group C action. Oh, it's the final match before potential tiebreakers here in Group C. As once again, we got Gaming Gladiators going up against Beast Coast. The final game, and what's on the line? Well, Gaming Gladiators, they're secured. They're finishing second place no matter what happens here. Yeah. You know, take the case. Okay, so we've been to this spot many times before, right? Where one team, they're not necessarily <laughs> yep. playing for anything. The other team is definitely playing for something. I'm sure gaming gladiators are still going to give their best effort. I think especially when I think gaming need to just play for themselves, right? They've been yeah. good all year. Now they've been struggling a little bit. They want to make sure like, you know, get the, get the mood back up, get your performance back up, keep it cool, keep it steady. Just play your game and go win. And the other thing that Dota players love to do is destroy their opponents and drag them down. They know that Beast Coast <laughs> are down low. I think they want to keep kicking them down in the ground. Yeah. That's just Dota player 101, baby. That's just the mentality you got to have sometimes. No, but, yeah. you know, on the other side of it, it's like kind of play the, is that Beast Coast, like I said, obviously the pressure is on them. If they lose yeah. here, they are the ones eliminated from Group C. If they win, then we go to our tiebreaker situation. Um, you know, they're kind of, you know, probably factoring that in too, but at, you can't at the same time. It's just Beast goes, you just worry about your game. You play yeah. your game and you, uh, you hope it works out in the end for you. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, last game we saw glimpses. We certainly saw glimpses of it. I mean, they had a, they, they swapped some things up. The shadow being going mid the earth shaker mm -hmm. safe mm -hmm. lane, but obviously it didn't work out in the end. So I'm very intrigued yeah. to see how, what direction they go this game. I hope that this time around that, they give Dark Mago a hero that just has, I think, less cooldowns and more mobility. Uh, I think gaming gliders know this, which is exactly why they're banning the heroes that they are. They take out his Kanka, they take out his Bad Rider. I think Primal Beast is also taken out by themselves. But like his Tiny is great. I think last game we suggested the Earth Spirit. I think that fits him really well. Like, sure, he can play Shaker, and uh, they, you won't lose if you give him this hero, but I think this guy is so strong when he just gets to run around and kind of like just do whatever he wants to do. Mm -hmm. I think this team is an absolute different team when he gets through that. Yeah, I'm with you there. At the very least, seeing him go mid with a hero that can have that capabilities is uh, on the menu. It's not going to be with Panga, though, because Quinn, he's he's played this hero once or twice, and he wants it again <laughs> here. So it's going to be the Quinn Panga this game. He's, he's played it once or twice, you know, not a, not, not a problem at all. So, yeah, he's uh, going to play his 999th Pangolier game. <laughs> They've got some good bands for it, too. No Kanka in mid, no Shaker around. Uh, I mean, there's definitely a world where you... Any team that is practiced with TA, I think you just pick it up here. It has, it seems to always have been the best answer to that hero. Or this one, which LGD has done, so I'm not too opposed to this. Yeah, it's as we mentioned, and uh, again, on paper, it makes sense. The Grimstroke, if you think an anti-Pango, he's up there on that tier list. Soulbind specifically and how good it is against him. Um, it does mean, though, that they first pick a, a support and they don't get that mid-option response. And now it's going to give Gaming Gladiators a chance to maybe, you know, ban out a couple more heroes that Quinn isn't as comfortable against yeah. in that mid-matchup. Actually, a great call that uh, a mysterious caster DM'd me. If Quinn, if they win, they help Nouns go through. So they Quinn can single-handedly oh. save NA Dota that they have two teams in the playoffs. <laughs> Honestly, Quinn might owe it to that region. He's played there his whole life, then he betrays them to become the best mid player in the world. Yeah, I'm I'm down for it. That's, you know, th there is something to that. Absolutely. Again, I, I'm still on the boat. I, I don't think they need the extra motivation necessarily. I still think they're going to give us a good effort in the end, but... That, hey, you know what? That sold me, if anything, if there was any doubt. Because you're, you're, you're all right. That means Nouns and Virtus Pro are the two other teams that are in that contestion here. If, uh, yeah. if Beast Coast wins, then we would be looking at a three-way tie. And I believe it's best at a one between those three teams. You kind of figure it out from there. So more matches to be played. But yeah, no. if, if Gaming Gladiators wins, then Nouns and Virtus Pro both moving on. So definitely yep, for fair America, point. baby. Yep. And <laughs> they, 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 they will, they will do it. Okay. So TA and the Dawnbreaker bands coming out. And now the final band for Beast Kills before we go into those plethora of picks. Okay, Mr. Dark Mago. I hmm, I want him to have an aggressive hero. Let's just bank for the Earth Spirit again. Um, cause mid pool's already shrinking a lot. I do think that he is very good at this one style of mid, um, which 
would work very well, I think, in this game as well. So I'm just banking on him getting what he is best at. Hmm. Gonna ban the Centaur. That works for me. I'm not my favorite hero when it comes to playing against Pango, but it's a Dark Go hero. You go mid, you get your stuff, you're tanky, you have low cooldowns. Let's go. Let's get online, get online fast, and make plays across the map. Certainly a good hero for that. So, kind of step number one, taking care of for Beast Coast. Five seconds now remaining. gaming gladiators, they'll figure who they want to respond with, of course, support themselves. Once again, I look at the Dark Willow on the board. Need I say more? Uh, no, Dark Willow's always chill. I like that. Uh, I mean, generally, I think something else I called it earlier, I think Pango, when you play this hero against burst-type heroes, Kado always becomes an option. You start refreshing him. You help him out with the heal against some tiny bursts. You can stack. But at this point, you can just get a lot of, like, you pick comfortable heroes and then make sure you have damage into the role. I think Phoenix as well is also pretty good. Tiny hates playing against this hero. Your high HP, Sunray owns you. You never hit an egg against that hero either. True. So let's let's see what Gaiman have cooking up in the in the kitchen here. Yeah, they cooking up something that's taking a little bit longer because... Down the 35 seconds and counting already with that reserve time. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit out of left field there, but Jakiro is going to be their option. Uh, Jakiro, what in God's name made them think of the Fire and Ice Dragon? I don't know, has this here even been picked this tournament? Uh, some... One time. You're, you're the stats, man. I did a win or lose. Uh, it lost. Yeah, call it. <laughs> so not a loss. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely nah, lost. I'm just kidding. It's, a, it, it's some... Ca like the way I see Jukiro set the heroes like very casual. Like I feel like there's maybe a better pick, but at least you know it gives you some follow up into the role. He lanes well. There you go. Oh, I you know, I, I refreshed it by the way. An update. There was two oh. losses. Oh, two losses. It's even two. better. Amazing. <laughs> no, but okay. You know, like Jukiro, he never like wows you. He gives you damage. Gives you a good lane. Okay, I take it. Muerta, great. Moritz is great, yeah. It's like, we've <laughs> talked about how this hero's been banned a lot, but the most picked hero up there with the Bristleback, etc. cetera, uh, of this event so far. So going to be in the hands of gaming gladiators. And in our case, we've been seeing it more in the support role. I know there's the potential for that core. Yeah, yeah. But probably are you leaning towards support here, though, in the end. Uh, probably. Or? Like, I think Tiny can already be kind of annoying. Like, anything that can jump you in the back is kind of annoying. So it's more of the fact... Let's say all the next Beast Coast heroes are all like very stationary and backliney, then I think you can play Carry Muerta. But I guess it's just so nice that you just get to decide later down the road. Mm -hmm. right, Beast Coast. Do they want to pair up with their tiny Grimstoke opening? Yeah, banning that Centaur right there. Usually that's where that Muerta ban would be happening, but they take the Centaur out instead and. Thus, uh, Marta picked, but Centaur we have seen some success with as well. And it also makes me wonder if they were thinking of going more of like a hero that maybe is not as much of a fan of a Centaur, something like a Trowel strategy even, but mm -hmm. see if that comes into play. Uh, that's, this double pick is very important for Beast Girl. So I don't know who they're going to last pick like and leave for the very, 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 very end. Like maybe it's just going to be their carry. Because if so, yeah, this... Double pick is just very important for them. And they're burning a lot of time. Yeah. As you said, it's important, but it feels like we are seeing teams do this in this He's mid spot and spending a lot of time on that three, four pick. You know, Bloodseeker obviously comes to mind too whenever you're dealing with a Pango. And I, fi I, I figured with the Grimstroke, they weren't going to like overdo it, but they still feel confident that Bloodseeker is strong here as well. The problem is that I. I don't like I don't like picking this hero blind in side lanes. Like you don't see the carry, you don't see the off lane. Mm -hmm. Even if you feel like oh, but we can flex Bloodseeker to off lane. Well, you don't know what carry you're playing into, and the five is a Jakiro, the four is a Muerta. So yeah, I understand you will rub to the Pango in the game, but I think this is gonna make Gaiman's next pick very easy. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's something to be said about really locking down Quinn as a player and. I understand that strategy, but with you there as well on the other side of the logic. So is it overdoing it or not? But that's a Chen pick to also babysit the Bloodseeker, though. Yeah, so the Hand of God is pretty interesting. I think in this mid game, like all Bloodseeker and Tiny want to do is continue to run in. So I think when you start giving them some mech, the Solar Crest, maybe Hand of God, a 
it could enable them to really get in there and do it. I think Bloodseeker Chen not the scariest lane when it comes to the end of it. Mm -hmm. Well, Gaming Gladiators, again, as we mentioned, both teams, in fact, using a lot of reserve time, so going to have to start picking up in terms of that decision-making here. Yeah, Sacred What's needs to wake up, like... man. Well, he does. <laughs> I think Tide, Doom, any of these heroes would be pretty chill. Ooh, I have been waiting yep. to see more of this hero. I'm pretty sure that this is an offlane lone druid for Mr. Ace. Okay. Yeah, I know you're Believe it or this. not, it is very good. We were seeing fans of it yesterday. I know you're, you're talking about the possibility, but yeah, um, sure enough, yeah, Gaming Gladiators, they figured, hey, this is a game for it. So offlane, so is it good against the Bloodseeker matchup then too? It's just very nice against lanes that don't overly pressure you because you're kind of like, he's a bit similar to Bloodseeker in terms of laning that you sustain a lot, right? Every time your bear hits, your life steal, you have very high damage. Chen doesn't pressure you at all. And I feel like you, you and Bloodseeker do the same thing with sustaining. But you pressure him more, so eventually you should kick him out of the lane with continuous roots. I gotta say, I was looking at Jim Park right there when that uh, Phantom Assassin ban happened. Face made a reaction as if, like, I kind of wanted that hero. Uh, but let's see. <laughs> Gaming Gladiators uh, taking it away, so. But that's kind of interesting, though, right? Because, wait, so. Is Beast Coast, is that not a position one Bloodseeker? I guess they also think it's an offlane blood secret. Yeah. Like that's what gaming are going for. But then I like if I'm gaming right now, that's why I feel like that pick was kind of easy. Like they feel good about the loan. And now it's like, okay, if they can just take a carry where offlane blood secret like doesn't overly pressure, like I think Gaiman will be super happy. And hmm. Jakiro 5 is already good against Seeker in the lane as well. Well, we're gonna definitely find out some more information here. We'll be gaming gladiators with not only the last ban, but they will be picking first as Beast Coast will then wrap it up with their final pick. Five seconds remaining. Let's see in what band direction they go. Do they go another carry? Gaiman Gladiators turn. Uh, they go with just... Doom. Yeah, I feel like Gaiman will... I mean, I'll definitely end up taking a carry. Oh, it's Bristleback. <laughs> oh, jeez. I guess I could even flex between the two of them still, between like who was one and three, but... I'm just gonna assume it's a, a ace lone druid. I think I've seen him play that hero a bit more compared to uh, the Rachio, but yeah, the flex is open. Could you just like really shift it up here and go like a necrophos yourself if you're Beast Coast, man? Like it, it does seem really you, good in the Bristleback matchup. And yeah, honestly, you could. It's pretty good against lone. It's pretty good against Bristol in the game too. And you have like Necro Chen that could go together. I think like maybe. I mean, their lineup is going to be very volatile, so I would not mind them, like, double downing or something like that. Well, decision time. Tournament lives on the line for Beast Coast and their final pick. Oh, it's going to be the win your lane, and we'll see what happens, Hero. Yeah, it is. Uh, this entire draft is based around you better do well in your lanes because, yeah, if they're not up by, like, 2K, 3K by minute 10, I think this is an incredibly hard game for them. Like, if Bloodseeker Chen, hopefully good stuff happens up top, and then maybe you start using the gate with Chen, you go down bottom to, like, your Grimstroke Viper, make stuff happen there. Because, yeah, I think Viper is not even that good against Bristleback nowadays anymore. Sure, mm. you have the potential break, but later when this Bristleback gets Aghanims, Viper has no armor. Boom, baby! <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> he just gets shredded himself before oh, yeah. that break really matters. Yeah, no, that's... It's definitely a win your lane, like I said, win your lane and hopefully win the game strategy from Beast Coast. Yeah. All three lanes, I mean, these are definitely all very powerful laners, certainly, as far as getting CS goes. And I will say this, I mean, Dark Bago, he got his hero. You can talk about Casey. I think that's the key as well for Beast Coast. They got a, him in Tiny, so that idea of moving around the map and setting up kills earlier on is certainly going to be there. Um, but, yeah, it's they Beast Coast, they need that early start, and they need to execute with the laning phase. The thing is, so the Beast Coast have lanes where they can do that, but I'm never the biggest fan of drafts where if they see, if game and see one hero, just one hero on the map, like if they see Tiny, then they don't have to be afraid at all. Viper isn't going to make any moves. This hero is like 100 sure. move speed. 
Bloodseeker's gonna hit Creeps. <laughs> Chen and Grim rely on Tiny, so it's all about the Dark Mago Tiny. He yeah. needs to go. He needs to put on a gunner performance from yesterday. 15-0, 10 minutes. If not, well, probably a hard game. <laughs> <laughs> Just go 15 and 0, bro. It's easy, bro. <laughs> yes. Oh boy, that's a man. That that is a tough. Nah, man, it's right it's there, easy. But... It's it's very okay, easy. I do okay. it. I do it every day. Casey does it every day. Dark and go. Just <laughs> pause the game real quick. Watch some of those replays. Get caught up and how he does it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so. No, simple. this is the, the pressure's on Beast Coast. More, even is. more pressure on Dark Mago. It sounds like to definitely have that star-like performance. That you know, hey, yeah. we're, we're saying this too because we know it's possible. I'll put it that way. That's Dark Mago. He's a great player. And I uh, could certainly uh, live up to the hype right there. But here we go. Game number two in the final game here of the group stages. Pending tiebreakers. We already talked about what's all on the line. Let's get into it now as the game is on. And it's going to be a five-player smoke off the bat for gaming gladiators. Yeah. Moving quick. Well, it's... Uh... Okay, so we've got a lot of so the early stuff with the import with the lanes is so important that yeah you're gonna have some early smokes coming around maybe you get some good wars. It's Gaben looking for another aggressive smoke. We saw what happened last game. Remember they killed Shadow Fiend early on in an awkward spot, and now they're trying to get a Viper and Goo level one. That'll do it. Yep. That is a. Uh... Quite the easy one, if I may say so. So yeah, you get first one even on the Raju himself. So he's gonna be very happy about that. And I like this Goo level one. Like it's, this spell has been buffed a lot. I think people underestimate it. If you click on the spell, the first Goo you apply to a hero is minus 3.5 armor. That's like half a Desolator. How's that balanced? It's not balanced, guys. Oh, it's more than half a desolator. I think Loda is not liking this right now. You're stuck in this patch, at least for TI. So yeah, it's just something you gotta Better accept Better get there used to it. Exactly, get used to it throughout this event. Because it ain't going nowhere right now, at least. But that's a free kill though off the bat. But now here we go for the bounty runes and it will be a two for two bounty rune. But of course, Gaming Gladiator is working off of that first blood as well. Yeah. And Ace tried to get both the bounty runes, one with his hero, one with his bear. Honestly, if he had gotten both, I would have started screaming, because that means he has to outclick two people at the same time. Oh, I don't know how that would be possible, but yeah, he got neither, so everything's fine. Two for two bounty split. It's not as good of a lone druid player as we thought, I mean. Yeah, of course, I would have gotten two <laughs> runes. Obviously. Yeah. Well, what's going on bottom, by the way? Look at Tofu. He's, uh... Uh, he, they are, it's the classic anti-Viper strat. Oh, they're well. like, they think they're so cool picking this Viper and you just shit all over him. Oh, well, that's definitely going to be doing just that. The dead shot connects and it's just a matter of who's going to get the last hit. It will be Celery on Jakiro. You saw Schofield there. He has a stroke of fate, so not a whole lot he could do in that case. Yeah, and now Tofu's just going to TP to the top lane. Mission accomplished there. And this is certainly not the start that Beast Coast was looking for. Oh, absolutely. And this is really cool. Like, this is what you can do when you're laning against, like, Chens and Warlocks on post 5, especially when you're offering your Sloan Druid. Ace is not going to get pressured in the first wave. Sure, he doesn't get all the CS, but he's totally fine. Well, key continues to be. Nothing's changing here. That Beast Coast needs to really try to have the good laning phase and keep an eye on that CS chart. Now that continues to show in the next really, first five minutes or so. Uh, but early on in the mid lane, as you'd expect, I mean, Tiny is definitely doing his part, the tree grab and getting those last hits in there. Apply some good okay. damage. Uh, mid lane is going to be, uh, it's a slightly tiny favorite lane, of course. You've got three throw, Avalanche is pretty good. It was a counter pick in a draft as well. Top lane, but ooh, Ace, see ya. That's a that's good a kill. Big, yeah, that's a huge kill. That was a net coming out from Chen, and he did not expect that because uh, got in a bad spot. I believe the Bloodrite hit and couldn't get away. Yeah, I guess net Bloodrite, you have very high movement speed with Bloodseeker. I think Quinn was like a little bit low. So yeah, great job by Beast Coast. Mid lane, oh geez, again, Dark Mago getting low there, but not low enough, knowing the limits. Gonna do some bottle oh. control. Gonna get Quinn. the bottle, get the water rune, down bottom, bit of pressure on Schofield. That's the TP. Gets out before death there, but TPing back to base, actually. I thought I might have TP to the tower, but that does TP all the way back to base. Going to make the long journey back into the lane, but Viper, meanwhile, is going to have to accept that the CS is going to be lacking. 
Oh, flap is Bates wings. will have to be a little careful because yeah, he of course only has one bear, as so he did have to resummon it. So looks like Beast Coast is pretty happy in this lane for now. Oh, Tofu's in a bad spot. Calling goes down, but oh, Jim Park gonna be silenced, running around. He has some stick charges, not the most. Tofu avoiding death so far, but good job by Jim Park going all the way around and comes in for the last hit. Doing some nice maneuvering on this Bloodseeker. Ace definitely trying to get a root, but I mean, level one root is still pretty pathetic. Like once Lone Druid hits <laughs> this level three point, it starts feeling a lot stronger. Yeah. And all right, as far as CS goes, uh, I would say it's not too bad, it's, especially when you factor in the Bloodseeker couple of kills right there. Mid lane, Dark Mago. He's fine, more harassment from Quinn, but it does continue to be pretty even with the CS in the mid lane. Both with round 20. As Dark Mago has that creep wave being pushed into him now, but look at the top lane, by the way. That's Celery uh -oh. rotating over. Uh, let's see, Stinger. He's having decent positioning. Uh, they want Bloodseeker, but Jim Park, he knew something was up. Yeah, I don't know if you want to run him down, though. Yeah, and a two versus three, that would have been risky. He's surprisingly fast on his Bloodseeker. I feel like he's always kind of zooming around, even though it's just Celery being low HP. But mm -hmm. nicely done by Beast Coast, who so just kind of be chilling up here and not go down to this little gang from Celery. And, of course, they know Celery's top lane, so Viper feeling a bit more confident in farming bottom. Of course, with the Grim Stroke, Bristleback having to do some great pulling. They're gonna go for a dive. Oh, they sure are. Jim Park, he is gonna die to this. The stick, it's not enough though with the calling on top. That's a double. Really go anywhere and it should be a double kill. Stinger goes down as well. Schofield teleports in, but he gets here way too late. Honestly, pretty nicely done. Like they just push in with the double wave and the bear, it can tank the tower. So even though the initial move didn't work, they set it up so that their next move can work. So very nicely done. And now Jim Park teleports back in. And so does Chen. That's uh, bottom lane, though. So Sacred. He was left by himself there. And with Jakiro coming back to the bottom, now they make a play on him back to the top lane. Could still have action, though. Grimstork is still hanging around, Blood Ray. Tofu's going to avoid it. Puts down the calling. Schofield on top, though, with the ink swell. There's a Stork of Fate. The Mud Golem's assisting. <laughs> Oh, still okay for now. now. I'll go. die. Uh, yeah, I mean, Sacred is strong. His CS is pretty good on the Viper, but this is the worst and the best feeling at the same time. Like, mm -hmm. you last pick this Viper, you get super owned. If you're gaming, you're like, <laughs> look at this idiot. And if you're the Viper, yeah, you feel horrible. So hopefully for him, he can start to stabilize his game a bit. Yeah. Well, it certainly feels like he, he kind of is. I mean, three deaths considering. I'd say it's not too shabby, but yeah, he is a bit behind. Wants to stabilize, as mentioned. Top lane, Lone Druid. That could be another death on oh, him, Ace. Ace. One more attack, maybe. Woo! <laughs> Run! Play. He's so fast. As the phase boots and Jim Park just runs him down. Classic Bloodseeker style. Mid lane, Schofield. He's trying to get away. The ink swell. Going to help deter Tofu. Yeah, it doesn't have a dead shot anymore. Already used it. Okay. Good get away. So, yeah, well, Quinn did get the active rune, so that's pretty nice for him. And yeah, the Rachio, he's got some pretty nasty CS. Might be some easy camps and whatnot, but yeah, Dark Mago, I'm starting to look at what he can do for his sidelines. Well, he's being pinked out right here. It's plenty of vision to see him kind of running around in circles currently. I think he's even sure exactly where he wants to go. I suppose uh, he is having some items delivered. Gonna get a clarity. But trying to figure out where he wants to go with this. Currently headed towards the bottom lane. Maybe going to do some stacking in the meantime, but not much else with that. There are Wisdom Runes coming, and both teams look like they're going to control their own. Well, just a pretty easy one-for-one -one trade. Do you think Schofield on this Grim, he's going to have to continue to... Like, the support levels for Beast Coast are incredibly important. You need Chen to get levels to help your cores. You need high-level inks for... Oh, Quinn is here with an Invis. Yeah, Rolling Thunder. Jim Park, he knew something was up though. The spider sense is tingling, avoids the initial stun, but eventually gets connected. The blood right foot down. Round two. It's not gonna matter though. Very nice move, and this is why active runes are ever so important. Grants them the first kill up top on the oh, blood seeker. We keep yeah. on Stark Mago. Oh, get some revenge at least for his teammate. Ends up taking out the Muerta. Bottom. 
Jakiro gonna hit by the ink swell. There is a Viper Strike ready. Not gonna use it just yet. Eventually get the kill. Blocked. Oh. Should be okay. Yeah, it's fine. It close call there. Yeah, holding on to that Viper Strike. Okay, oh, TD bottom. Oh, never mind. You're right. Yeah. Ace falls. Ace is dead again. That's this Chen. Good job with the centaur stun. Yeah, they're really getting a lot of pressure done on the lone trade. I mean, his network is still great. Quite surprisingly so, but yeah, I fit in this position. I think he may have like one level of Savage Roar, but you know, sometimes you don't have it and they abuse it. As Beast go for a quick play. I love this one. You win your lane, try to go for more. Dark Magoan's in trouble. A Bloodseeker's coming over though, Crook quickly. He has his ultimate. He's got Rupture. Rupture. He's gonna use it on Quinn. That's the target they want to use it on. Penitence. And it yep, is they got him. Stinger credit for it, but yeah, the timing there to rotate over just in time. Sick get that kill. Moves. I love it. Like you just you just feel it in the moment. It's like go smoke. Like you get level six on both your chain and blood you push in the wave, you go mid, bam. Uh, this is a great kill. And Bloodseeker, he is getting very close now to that maelstrom pickup. And as we know in a hero like this, that's that amplified farming tool. As Tiny running around with phase boots, he wants to blink next. Of course, still a little bit off of that, but looking for another kill. And if Muerto's not careful, could find something. Looks like Tofu's falling back though, so no cigar there. Okay, it looks like Stinger's gonna be rushing the Solar Crest. Yeah, I kind of like that. It uh, looks like Quinn wants to return the favor to Jim Park as he's gonna smoke to him now. Yeah, definitely a fight up top. Bruin again. Tofu running in. Deadshot ready. Has calling. There's the calling. Deadshot connects. Nice hand it got initially. Really trying to save Jim Park. Get some more regen. Here comes Daraccio as well as Bench at Jim Park. He's just so tanky with the team support, but it's not enough. They finally get the kill. He couldn't rupture either. He tried to. Not in time, though. He has flyback, but it's not going to be worth yeah. it here. Oh, Dark One Goats going in deep. Yeah, he is. Combo in the back lines. He's trying to at least kill Tofu. Should maybe do that. Yeah, the tree though. Yes, that's uh, enough for the kill. Over to the holy left. Viper's damage. showing up, though, and Viper gets shredded. That swashbuckle doing plenty, but does end up killing the Bristleback. Well, it did get quite a few turn kills, actually. Okay, yeah. so not too bad for Beats Ghost even. Sure, you do lose your carry, but you're getting a lot of gold, like, injected to your support, some gold to your cores as well. So, yeah, I've I think Beast Ghost actually pretty happy with that. You know, Viper was the most damaged that last fight as well, and they actually slightly won in terms of gold change. Uh, about a 200 gold advantage for Beast Kill. So, yeah, it, numbers backing that up too. That actually did pretty good for them. Oh, Stinger, some top of Celery. Blood Rides here too, and that's definitely going to be killing Celery. It's can he maybe get a turn kill, but that's not going to happen. Eventually gets run down. Right, Stinger on his chin doing some very good stuff. Yeah, Dota Plus is. has 56, 55, 45. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. Does Dark Mago have Blink yet? I think he does not. Yeah, so he's still a little bit away. Does have a Haste Rune, though, so it does make sense for him to play together with his Rimstroke. Yeah, it's. I mean, you look at the net worth, and I'm actually a little surprised. He's. Wow. <laughs> he is down there at seventh in net worth on Tiny. Yeah, I guess he's been. Looking a bit like around, and there's been like some moves made. You had to go to base, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you exactly. It doesn't feel like he's been doing that bad. The landing phase was all right, yeah. but yeah, he, he is a bit behind, so that's kind of the difference maker as to why now you certainly slightly favor gaming gladiators. But mm -hmm. as you pointed out, you know, he is working on the blink, he has a haste rune currently. If they can find yeah, something with help. it. I mean, Stinger is doing very well. He's got the solar crest. I think mech is still great if you can look for that next, like. Just keeping people top topped off, and I guess Ace is looking for the Radiance build. That's for, there's like two builds on Lone Bird. You either rush the Fusal Blade into like some Echo Savers as your Universal, or you go the old school build with the Radiance. I do think this is a good Radiance game. Yeah. Tiny clearing up more creeps, but Muerta protecting the Lone Druid up here. But yeah, Viper can't overlook his success either. Sacred's actually managed. He is 0-3-0 oh, oh earlier, I want to say, in the laning phase, but yeah. You know what? That last fight, especially, we saw the damage he put out. He's got a Dragon Lance now, and he's competing with the best, then with net worth. Yeah, absolutely. He just has to make sure he continues to keep up the scaling. That's sometimes like the hard part about Viper. Like, you feel slow if you can't take fights. How do you farm? Like, some people like to go Midas. 
But for now, Beast Girls don't care about any of that. They want to use their Chen strength and try hitting this mid tower a little bit. Uh, Tiny's 2,000 gold saved up, so maybe this creep wave here manages to get the last hits, could eventually purchase it. Now yeah, it's going to be a little close, so it needs a tower kill, but before that, Skofu gets got it off to the side, Inkswell on himself, as well as the ultimate Soulbind and TP out, so Schofield will survive. Oh, he just gets out, huh? Okay, not bad. Yeah, I guess they didn't want to overcommit to it. Bloodseeker is to the right of this, so he is ready to engage if need be. Okay, looks like they will get the tower. Yeah, nice job. It uh, looks like, you know, Gaiman's plan right now is just, okay, make space for Ace, because Ace is like saying, okay, guys, we're close to Relic. I want my Radiance. Once I have that, we can start doing a few things together. So it's just time to make some space. That is true. And that's to the credit of Beast Girls. They, they know that Gaming Gladiator is just playing yeah. down a hero in that sense, where, yeah, Lone Druid doesn't want to fight. So um, they, they do take advantage there, and it does get Tiny to blink. So. That's the timing that they've been waiting for. Lone Druid does have the Sacred Relic, as you mentioned, but they got about a minute window here, so that slight advantage. Tofu gonna be tossed back, so the debut of the Blink Dagger looks like it's gonna work out beautifully. There you go. Got him. It's very nice, and uh, an Arcane Rune as well. Like, taking out this mid-tier one is very great, because it always makes it so much more awkward for the enemy team to play here, which now means your mid-hero, he, he just, like, could just have all the runes. Meanwhile, Duraccio is just taking out an ancient stack, and he is getting very close to finishing that Ags. So we certainly yeah, can't overlook that. They're going to hit some big timings. I'm also happy that, you know, there's no blade mail, no shenanigans. I don't think that was the greatest, but, you know, here, you're going to get the Radiance. You're going to get the Aghanim Scepter on your Bristle. I think Queen already has his Diffuser as well. So, Gaben about to be very strong around the 60 minute mark. Tiny with an Arcane Rune bottled up. He's he's sitting here with uh, Grimstruck. You know that combo's coming. The I mean, they don't well. have any they don't have any vision. If they did of this triangle, like they could really do a lot here. But Dark Michael's oh. wards, they're they're in the backpack. And they get that scanned. Like, yeah, Gaiman, they, they they can smell it. Yeah, they they scan it to confirm, and yeah, Gaiman Gladiators immediately runs away once that scan hits. So. Yeah, not going to be the hero kills, but these kills will come in and infest the uh, Radiant Jungle, although Stinger is getting a bit aggressive himself. Here on Chen, needs to be careful. Going to get some deep vision down, I suppose. Yeah, that's prob... I, I think Celery saw him there. Yeah, so that's that's a quick D-Ward. Yeah. Hmm. It's a good try, but that one will instantly be taken away. Oh, but Stinger is... <laughs> I know you stressed, but man, that's Solar Crash. I mean, this Chen is... Pretty damn farmed. Yeah, looks like he's queuing up a pipe. Uh, perhaps that has a lot to do with that. He's like, oh, okay, this guy's going Radiance. I'm gonna go get that. It will mitigate a lot of damage. Yes, they're still looking for more, Dark Mago. Nice job by Tofu. Does kind of put some fear into Dark Mago's eyes here, or some way. <laughs> Literally doing that with a dead shot, but there's the axe finished on. Garacho and Look, we can hear it. <laughs> yeah, instantly me. clearing the camp. Quill spam begins. So it's going to be a tower kill. The tier one top now is also going to fall. Radiance All the tier one tower is dead on the radiant side, at least. Um, speaking of that, Gaming Gladiators only has one tower kill themselves so far. Mid lane. Oh. Toss Eva. Combo. The macro pyre is down. It's going to hurt a little bit, but the soul bind is nothing to tether to, though. Slowing him a little bit. Dark Mago, can he toss back? Yeah, to get out. Never mind. Wait, what? what happened there? That was fun. What happened? I don't know. It's like, did he swash book at the same second? Because, yeah, it looked like it was out of the way. He's still in the back spot, anyway, by the ruptured. way, with a rupture. And it wears off though, at the oh, last he was... second. He's going to get away, isn't he? Okay. Crystal back, though. Maybe not the same. Nether Toxin down. The break oh, is up, dead. and that is a kill on Duraccio. So, Axe doesn't matter. He's dead for 45 seconds, and they're going to chase it. Can they still get Pango? No. Quid's a little too far. Was there... I feel like that was something weird with Soulbind. Anyway, fight isn't over. Ace is here. He's ready. His Spear, I don't know if he's as happy. No. Spear Bear's Bear's down. Dead. Man, he's going to have to restart. This for is the second one. you got to be careful. Wants Sacred, but Sacred just alive oh, enough. The... Uh, Radiant Ooh, the Radiance, get him away from the Viper, oh, bro! No. Help me, team! Do something! Uh, he's dead. <laughs> uh, they can't do something, oh, Grimstruck is also yep. shredded, jeez. 
All right. Well, two kills do go the way to Gaming Gladiators in the end. Huh, yeah, I still wish I knew what happened to that one toss back earlier because that looked very bugged. I'm going to call out Soulbind having a weird interaction, even though yeah. it didn't connect to anyone. That's possible, yeah. I mean, something definitely happened. It was funky. But either way, I mean, whatever happened, happened. And now Pango, yeah. again, he did survive barely, but... Somehow. They, yeah, <laughs> somehow. The Dota God's in his favor there. So they did kill the bear, though, but uh, another 60 seconds before Ace will have another respawn. Yeah, so they only have one at least for now, so they could open up a little bit for Beast Coast to take a couple more fights. But yeah, I must say, Jim Park still doing pretty damn good. Like, his net worth, top of the board, is probably going to continue to stay there until... I don't know, until they lose a fight or something, because for now, yeah, his farm speed is very high. Mm hmm Absolutely is. He wants to go the Phil Mjolnir after the BKB follow-up to the Maelstrom on Bloodseeker. Well, that's going to be some fun attack speed. There's that pipe you were talking about. And yeah, it's Shen a strong it. one. Really good like, this game. It's got the Hand of God, Solar Crest, the pipe against like the Radiance, the little bit of Jakiro damage and whatever it may be. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like Ace does not actually feel that strong. And this smoke is a powerful one. Oh, yeah. It's at least a Jakiro kill. They want Bristle back, though, for sure. They open up Bristle. Where's the Nether Toxin? There it goes. The break is up. Bloodseeker, he's going for Celery. They're splitting, and it's working. They got both. They absolutely get both. Do they go for Roshan? Nah, they got to do it quick. Yeah, it looks like a free one. You have almost Destruction. You have Penitent, Solar Crest. Does someone break the Lincolns if possible? And throw the bug from Stolfield on it, I think, to break it. Or you use your porcupine because Penitence is pretty good. There we go. So, yeah, it should be a free Roche. Yeah. I was going to say they got to do it quick because 20 seconds he's going to head south, but I think they're going to kill him before that would happen. So, that's the good news there. And I assume they give this to Bloodseeker with the Aegis. And a god oh. even going to be used, oh, and there you go, Mago. gets it. Good soul binds. Mago trying to live, getting a TP support. Now, don't overcommit if your GG is the thought here, I'm sure, but the swashbuckle will secure the kill. Bloodseeker, remember, he has that Aegis, though. Ace going to lose his bear. Plus Second 300. one, spawn immediately. Yeah, you, uh, Ace does have the shard already, so yeah, that does make sense. But I think he, he really needs it. Like, being able to dispel, like, the Penitence of Solar Crest with Jim Park. That's a rough show on Tofu. Oh, got him. Nice play. Yeah. Let's find him. And Tofu is going to pop the Pierce the Veil. Might as well try to help get away. Going to use that pick pull of his. And he will survive, actually. Hey, they're just going to live. They couldn't click him. Ace is around. He could have feared him away if they kept chasing. He's got the Glimmer. Hold on. So not so free of a kill as they thought, but calming it down a little bit. Beast Ghost, they do have an Aegis. They're going to get a Wisdom Rune here as well. Maybe they go for a Tormentor, but they're also going to have the Mjolnir finished on Jim Park in just a couple of seconds. So that's coming into play. Looking at Viper. He's got a BKB now. Yeah, he's doing good. He's got the BKB. We'll, we'll see if he can continue to scale. So as long as Jim Park stays up there and Beast Coast continue to make nice moves, I think they're doing A-OK. -okay. I think the Rajo should look to... I think the Tormentor's up. He can just solo it at any time when he feels like it. I'm going to double check to make sure it is there. Nope, they already took that. So old brain Kezu <laughs> one striking once more. What did they just get right there? There was an Axe pickup, I want to say. Uh, maybe I saw that wrong. I guess we're both getting old. Yeah, <laughs> it's getting late. Getting I mean, old, the, getting late. And the only one has an access to Rachel, and he obviously has had yeah, that had for a while. while. I guess I missed all that. There's a blade mail on the bear. I have seen Ace do that build before. I do think it's super powerful. Like there's some random stuff. You just run your bear in with radiance blade mail. So much damage coming out. It's actually Dark Mago gets the shard. He'll be pretty happy about that one. Mm -hmm. tower is under attack. Yep. So he's got the tree grab. Uh, no charge limit now. Not too shabby there. Get plenty of thwax in. Uh, He's going to get the BKB, and then I think they can look to go a bit more together, because, I mean, Stinger is queuing up the shard. He's going to get to go take some Ancients. But yeah, tiny BKB, Aegis, go time. I think shard on Chen is definitely good, too, and that's yeah, coming out right so here. it's so good. It's so strong. 
So he's going to have that chance. I mean, there's no Ancients currently right here. He's going to have to wait about 15 seconds before he can use it. But that's uh, going to allow for an Ancient pickup now, too. Mid lane. Uh, just clearing out the creep wave, I suppose. What's going to be his Ancient? He's going to get a Granite Golem. That's pretty good. Just some bonus HP for everyone. I will definitely take that. Yep. Which I guess like like against kind of lower ish damage over the fight, Pango, Lone Druid, Bristle, all these heroes I kinda need longer fights. Uh, uh, he doesn't care. He, he no. just kills that shit. <laughs> he's like, I want the gold. Uh, he's like, I don't want any of that shit. <laughs> That's that a little curious to me, but either way. <laughs> it's also a queuing up a Bloodthorn. So he he's got big plans in this game. He also Bloodthorn and what the Rachios ass. So yeah, I guess so. All Why right. not? That's a carry Chen later on. Yes, it is. This is uh, yeah, that's a statement right there of hey, we scale. <laughs> Chen's gonna be part of that. Okay, it is smoking time. I'm generally not the biggest fan of five minute smokes because yeah, I mean they're fairly obvious because you're not showing anyone. Let's see if, uh... but Game and are like we will come to you as five. Let let's see who will get the better of this. Aegis still has a minute remaining, so clearly Beast Ghost wants to. Oh, really make go. a play with it. Oh my god. Gonna break on each other. Matt didn't really find the jump himself though. Duraccio is gonna even pop the axe and do plenty of damage to Tiny BKB committing on top and taking him out of the fight if anything. Meanwhile, Grimstroke, he's locked down thanks to Jakiro and Man, not a fight. That's Pango with a double damage and doing plenty of damage, but now Jim Park showing up. What's the rupture out? It looks like onto Lone Druid. Wants to get Lone Druid, but he's being protected. It's a tough target to go for. Aegis is still at 28 seconds on it. Ace, Ace in trouble. He's in the ultimate form. Is it taking enough? The answer is no. He's down on Lone Druid. And now Bloodsucker hunting for more. He's going for Celery. The roll around from Pango. The swashbuckle. Viper, he's doing a good job of kiting. Duracho's back. Bloodseeker gets the kill. Duracho does show back up. And that's triple a triple kill. kill, in fact, for the for the uh, Bristleback. And now Bloodseeker, five seconds on the Aegis, by the way. They know this. Oh no, it's gonna get reclaimed, isn't it? Here in a second. Yep. There's the reclaim, and now he's in trouble. Yeah, they got him. Good timing there from Gaming Gladiators. They're gonna get the complete wipe as well as they take out Schofield. Gaming Gladiators, beautiful fight. Ah, uh, such an outplay. I also love how Deraccio played that fight. Like, he just gets all the way in. He just chased Dark Mago for like 30 seconds. He even used his BKB to force Dark Mago to then use his, but he gets to come back in the fight, and Beast Coast. They need this time. We talk about their draft. They have no engage. If Dark Mago dies, it's way too easy for gaming to just dance all over their bodies. Yeah. Oh, that was something though. Yeah, it's the the Bloodseeker just really committing for that. Yeah, he beelined into that <laughs> straight up. I mean, yes, he gets the kill, but I, I do think yeah, Dark Mago getting completely left out of the fight thanks to your saying Bristleback right there was uh, the absolute key. Uh, to the success of gaming gladiator so again still game left absolutely but we are definitely seeing the biggest lead yet coming out for the side of gg in this case and yeah more scaling as a result bristleback the heart is going to be just around the corner now lone druid yeah. what's the barrel looking like he's got a blade on it too yeah they've all like they're starting to overtake the entire dire lineup tofu has drums now as well I think A is it's like now the 25 minute mark. You just get like mass amount of Wraith Bands. It's like he's getting them on his bear. He's probably gonna get more on his hero too. Because you share the armor with your bear. Yeah, he's got double Wraith Band Bracer on his hero. He's like, yeah, you're gonna keep rupturing me? Good luck. The Quinn, the Basher is gonna get delivered right here. So we have a uh, Pango. There you go. It's official on him. With that with the Lincolns and Diffusal. He's also got the roll up as he shows off there. As he'll join the team. We're busy pushing the bottom tier two tower. And by the team, it's really just the spirit bear. And it's easy one at that. And we're going to definitely start seeing more of the bear impact as well, especially for siege oh, yeah. towers like that. You get the, the heart on the ratio that you already touched upon. He can split his vanguard for that. Maybe go for the bloodstone after by even splitting the arcane boots. So yeah. He is uh, top net worth. He's ready to roll. And tier three neutral items coming out. Perhaps that could be a bit of a comeback for Beast Ghost. Looking at Viper still sitting on the BKB and I guess it's the Hurricane Bike now, but 
hasn't really made a lot of progress top lane though they want okay. bristle back rupture toss back they, they don't have the break though and with the bkb the soul bind it's just it's too difficult to really commit for him so parts kind of looking for more never mind he's not Viper's coming here, but he's going to get here pretty late. Hannah got to use. Jim Park turning around. Already used that ultimate. Oh, break. God, they blow him up, though. There's the break coming into play. And speaking of that, the Spirit Bear is also going to end up going down. Minus so. one bear. Okay. The second one summoned. Bristleback's out for 70 seconds, by the way. Dark Mago. He's out of mana. Tango's in. Quinn wants a kill. Good blink, though. Has another swashbuckle. I'm not going to use it on Tiny. They're trying to cut off Jim Park over here. Never mind. Back Never to mind. Tiny. <laughs> they do indeed go back to him, and Tiny's out for 50. So Very right nice ward. Like, Celery placed this one right next to this high ground towards the end of the fight, and Quinn instantly sees it, gets a Swatch Buckle badge on top of Dark Mago, and they get to clear him out. Because that honestly looked pretty decent for Beast Ghost until the very end. Mm -hmm. I mean, Beast Ghost, uh, as far as the fight recap goes, it suggest that uh i guess that was pre tiny death though i believe um, yeah. yeah the one that he's looking at is a little bit different there so it's still very slight advantage for beast coast numbers wise but obviously they have a big bigger hill to climb uh silver edge just delivered a blood seeker though so we talk about that break i mean you do see the impact there on bristleback and they'll yeah, have we, a bit more guaranteed of it now. Yeah, we do see a second break, but now you've got the pipe on Tofu to like try and help out a little bit more as well. So they're going to mitigate a lot of the damage and they can certainly try to help out the Rachio. I guess Sacred's game has slowed down a little bit as, you know, it does generally happen with Viper games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, BKB, Pike, it's like, this is a bit of the <clears> awkward <throat> stage. Like he needs another 10, 15 minutes, I think, to rack up another one, two items to be useful. Yep. Trying to build this eye of Scotty this whole time, but that's certainly a ways away. Not the most room to farm on the map. And we're going to see another smoke play. This is the five player smoke from Gaming Gladiators. They're taking over the middle. Roshan is on the menu. He's coming bottom right now, so this is what it's all about. That's a dead oh, Dark Mago. Uh, maybe not. Is he going to get the team support, though? They have to decide if they want to help him. Oh, the Savage Rory gets screwed away from his teammates. The Hand of God, they try and they're darn his skull filled with the Ink Swell as well. Can they save him? The Soulbind coming out. Dark Mago finally falls, but now the reinforcements are here, baby. Spirit Bear is getting low. They want the Pangle though, and see, and Quinn that is. He is actually going to get locked down and get killed. So he's out of the fight now. Okay. They lost Grimstroke as well as Tidy though. Sacred. Oh, the Force. TP's out. Uh, Ogre Seal, he missed! Oh, 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 oh that dead <laughs> shot. That was a nice try with the Ogre Seal into the fear, but barely off the mark. But they're gonna clear the family from Stinger. There you go, but I mean, hey, they, they kill Quinn. I mean, again, that was really dark, but go get it chased that whole time. So, like we say, considering how that fight was looking, uh, actually not too bad. The Dire will scan GG in their own jungle as well. They did also get the, the gem out of Quinn there. I think he was holding it, so no. nicely done by Beast Coast. Ace got the Vlads on his hero as well to help him with some more lifesteal. Pretty nice for his Pango as well. Like, if you get Ruptured, you can Swashbuckle, you lifesteal off of it. So oh, Ace. I like that choice. Ooh. Yeah, so be careful. Yeah, I think Ace was doing some microing right there and almost got caught. But down here, look they at Blitzkrieg going this whole time. They do get Tofu. Calling is using everything to glimmer. Is it going to matter? Dark Mago on the back lines. The break is up, gets pushed out the Garaggio. He's out of a place now. Nope, he gets tossed back in. More break once again. Fear on a blood seeker, but now he's able to turn the stage. A macro pyre push Soul down. Binds. You got to be careful of that. The soul bind is holding them in place, though. Garaggio included. He's low, but it's bristle back. He ain't low enough. He's staying alive. Quinn is in trouble. He's being activated. CC and C's in trouble. Quinn. He's Swap dead. Buckle, he is dead. The tree. Yes, it connects. The Kobe from a distance gets the kill. Dark Mago, he's still alive. Buyback is ready for Quinn, but he's not going to use it. They do take out Tiny, though. Viper using his. And Araccio, now it's his turn to be in pursuit. Okay, Sacred is coming back, but looks like they don't want to turn for now. 
<laughs> very strange and dragged out fight. I, yeah. I must say that Jim Park is playing these fights fairly damn well. Like, he's getting a lot done on this Bloodseeker. He's always starting the fight, staying alive, moving around nicely. These soul binds are starting to be very annoying for Quinn, but Roshan for gaming. That's going to be Aegis and Cheese going the way of gaming gladiators. So, I guess who do they give what? It's going to be the Aegis for Bristleback. Uh, you just saw the last by how difficult that was to kill him. Obviously, they couldn't even do it in the end, and now he has the second life. And you get the Cheese to Lone Druid. So, yep, another hurdle that gaming gladiators is able to get over to make this task that much more difficult. Oh, 4k now. HP now on the bristle and yeah as you said first time trying to kill him once is hard now you have to kill him two times you might have to play on like some toss bags with ruptures and like really get something nasty going on Bloodseeker and TP to the top lane as they're moving up here though on the radiant side Quinn leading the way not necessarily hunting for a kill but they know he's here they say they have the vision Oh, dead shot almost hit. I feel that okay. The shard sadly did not go to the Bloodseeker. I think Jim Fark needs to buy shard. It's so good in this game. You upgrade your blood rate. You deal like what 1.8 percent pure damage that heals you against Bristleback with 4k HP and Lone Druid. Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely something that he should be looking towards. Chen gathering his army. Meanwhile, the gonna use that shard. He actually takes over the ancient frostbitten golem. In the meantime, double damage rune though is uh, spawn top, and I believe Gaming Gladiator saw it. Just waiting to see what they want to do with it. Arcane rune bottled up currently for Pango. I think Laundry made us go pick it up. Yeah. Okay. Let's see, got the chrysalis on Dark Mago. It's gonna. Cross you reaching the state where you really need to start scaling even harder, the ratio. It's gonna force the issue. Well, Jim Park, he's pushing out bottom lane during this, but Saracio has mentioned forcing the issue, gonna get a fortification out of it. Bloodseeker, TP's in. Gonna clear out the top creep wave first. Axe used there by Bristle. There's a That's toss a back. Bear. Tosses them back into the tier four. Double damage bear is scary, but... Oh, nope, that's a Zia Duraccio. That's a dead Duraccio. Again, they got the break still. Or do they have another one to use? He's going to get four staffed and save for the time being. Jim Park going and has Silver Edge for the break. Puts a rupture on. Another oh, toss back. Rupture, toss back. They don't have the break on him, though. So it's difficult. And he got to respect the damage he puts out. He pops the axe. Sacred's going to get picked off, most likely. There we go. Half a new toss soon. Oh, he's here. Bristle's barely alive. The fear of the tree. It's not enough. Can he maybe get a toss in for the kill? I don't know. Bloodseeker. He's lifted up and oh, now the is in a horrible spot. Rooted as soon as he comes down, able to speed away barely. Beep, beep, here comes Quinn. Quinn is in hunt. <laughs> He's going for it. He is going to put the stud on Grimstork at least and take him out. He has buyback, Stinger. Oh, Chen's likely dead. Double kill for Duraccio, but oh, did he get too close toss, toss, toss back the into the fountain? There you go. That's more like it, but he has buyback. But meanwhile, oh, the they're hitting the done. throne. It's time to hit the bear, my friends. Hit the bear, hit the bear, hit the bear. Yeah, the bear. You're not going to kill that bear, are you? Is there another Maybe one? They yep, are. bear number two. Bear number two. Be summon to the kill of the agent, and that'll do it. Game and Gladiators, they win this game, but more importantly, Beast Coast, they are officially eliminated here at TI-12. Uh, game and Gladiators, they just did it. They just played... Too good. Beast Coast had some really good stuff in this game. Like Jim Park, how he was playing on the Bloodseeker, how they were moving together. I think they had some really nice team fighting, but eventually it got a little too hard for them. Yeah. I mean, again, good fight. Really, both games. This game certainly had their chance here. Did Beast Coast and envisioning what could have been maybe a three way tie. And that could have been fun to, yeah. uh, to see play out from there. But. Uh, with the with the O2 here against a team like Gaming Gladiators, which is certainly you know understandable to be honest. Obviously, Gaming Gladiators had high expectations coming into this whole event with the season that they had, but uh, in the end, it is just too much firepower as we're going through the highlights now. It's uh, yeah, I think it hurts a bit, of course, for Beast Calls. I think they expect better as well for themselves, but 
I think game. It, this just happens to some of these top teams where they have a very good phase, then they drop a bit, and I think they're, you know, they're they're going upwards again right now. I see a lot of good plays coming out. How they're helping each other, what they're doing. I think individual play, but also team play. And yeah, some of these highlights, Beast Coast is doing good, but game and just hold on, and then they end up outplaying you towards the end, like mm -hmm. later stages of the fight. Yeah. Again, uh, multiple times in this game where you think, okay, like right here, I mean, B-Skill certainly had some hope, but then Duraccio shows up and you know, three kills and Jim Park, you know, eventually trying to make his way out of here, but just unable to do it in the end. The firepower, like I said, just not enough for them. And you see there, again, a spam happens from the Ags. It is just uh, absurd. bag is so strong. Like... They did have good answers for him, right? You had the rupture, you you had the break, you even bought a silver edge as well. But I just think some of these breaks are like unreliable. Like trying to get it from silver edges, yeah, I, I feel for them. Mm -hmm. As I've been there, getting eliminated right now is uh, probably the worst thing that can happen to you as a Dota player. Yeah, I know. Like you, you, you think not qualifying to this stage hurts more? I think. Losing at this stage actually hurts more than not qualifying at all. Yeah, it's understandable. Obviously, yeah, you're, you're certainly, again, speaking for personal experience right there, so you can relate yeah. in that sense. But I, I also think as just a spectator viewer, I, I can understand completely where, where you're coming from there. I mean, knowing yeah. that you're actually kind of at the event, the road to TI, obviously they're all in Seattle here, but you fall just one last step shy of qualifying for the actual main event portion. But yeah. It is what it is. It's a it's a brutal game at times, but that's goes back to that's why we love this game in the end. One of many reasons. It's uh it's brutal but beautiful as yeah. well. So look at the stats here for all the players. And uh again, it wasn't wasn't the biggest runaway game by any means for for gaming. Glad here's Jim Park. Honestly, didn't have a great performance on the Bloodseeker Stinger. I really another shout out to him one more time on the channel. It was uh, fantastic in terms of his yeah. farm and being a big reason why they were having so much hope, but in the end, uh, wasn't enough, but I think as far as MVP goes, uh, what are we, how good. about Mr. Mr. Quinn? He's yeah, saving, uh, saving the day and the night for NA Dota. Now to get yeah. to live on, he plays well, like even against what, like even against Bloodseeker, you know, like making it work, laning well against a tiny as a, oh, that's not Quinn, <laughs> but I'm down. <laughs> it just, it can't be Quinn. I guess. All right. Well, let's go, let's yeah. go to Bristleback instead. We can go with the Roger. He, he uh, pressed W, he pressed the Ags. And Bristleback is gaining stong, so I'm down. We're just raising sure. awareness for Bristleback. Yeah, it's just, uh, we're seeing so much of it, so why not give it to Bristleback? I mean, we've seen plenty Quinn uh, on the, on his Pango, you know. Oh, that's the, true. The I mean, Quinn so. probably already has like 18 billion yeah. MVPs anyway. So I understand. Cares? No, the, the, this is appropriate as well, certainly. Duraccio is definitely yeah. deserving too. So, uh, but again, the big smile on his face there in that picture, and I'm sure a big smile is right now for them. Is, is it maybe not the most beautiful performance from them in these group stages, but you know what? They got second place. They're moving on at the very least. We'll obviously see it on the next stage here, the group stages. Uh, how they uh, ultimately place when it comes to the brackets, but yeah, and we're looking at here as far as uh, things and how they're all shaped up. Um, I believe SMG and EG are in a tiebreaker right now. Uh, best of three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So yeah, I think they are uh, outside of that. I think uh, that, that that's, I believe the only, the only match remaining that is still happening now, because again, as we mentioned here, Beast Kills officially yeah. out, Quest also out. I know that's surprising a lot of people there. That is super surprising. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it just happens. You have one, two bad days, you know, you don't perform. Other people have a good day and you're just out. Yeah, that's how it works. But uh, in the end is what it is. And Thunder Awaken, of course, uh, being eliminated from Group B. So yeah, Group A, SMG and EG in a best of three right now. Uh, of course, EG... Uh, trying to join uh, KDS actually as two of the uh, what would be then two SA teams moving forward, but SMG putting up a fight there, I'm sure too. But as far as this uh, coverage here on this stream, that means uh, we are going to be coming to a conclusion. Kezu, uh, it's been yeah. fun couple of days here overall. Uh, oh, I was going to give you the chance. Any any overall thoughts? Any final thoughts throughout it? Ah, uh, final thoughts. I think more like people should continue to enjoy these games because I can assure you that your favorite team, they're dealing with a lot of stuff. Whether they move on or not, this is very stressful. And we're getting to see some good Dota and Team Spirit 8-0. I must say, I am not surprised. This team is, uh, you know, they're scary teams, scary players. I'm thankful that I just get to watch them instead of having to play them. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's oh, it's TI time. All right, Team Spirit yeah. is here. That's for sure. Uh, that's a good point to bring up. Now, again, group stages. Obviously, the brackets uh, to come, and who knows what's going to happen there. It, we're just getting started. This is the road to TI here. The TI main event itself is just around the corner too. But again, that tiebreaker matchup still happening on the other stream. Definitely head over there and uh, continue the bit, last bit of final coverage for today. But from myself, uh, I'm Brick CBK, joined by KZU. It's been a pleasure here casting these first couple of days. Uh, shout out to everyone tuning in and well, enjoy the remaining coverage until next time.